What's up guys, welcome to a brand new 7 Days to Die Alpha 20 series on the channel. This is actually my first Alpha 20 series and I've finally gotten round to doing it. This is a world entirely comprised of the desert biome. Now that will have many advantages and disadvantages that I'll explain throughout the series, but in the meantime, I need to reclaim something because you see I woke up here in the middle of the night, no gear, and... I swear I had some kind of vehicle, but that's also disappeared. And my home, Ranger Station 6 over there, appears to be infested with zombies, which is what I would call suboptimal. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna solve that problem very quickly. Before we go in though, I should probably spend my starting skill points. I think to keep it interesting, what I'm going to do is an agility build. Yeah, that sounds fun. And because I'm on insane difficulty. I'm going to go for 2 points of agility and 2 points of sneak attack damage. That is going to allow me to one hit kill most of the basic zombies. This isn't exactly the type of desert ranger you might have been expecting, uh, but technically a bow guy is still a ranger, right? We'll get a pistol, we'll have the big iron on our hip, but we must achieve smaller things first. Now don't worry, it says no trader because there's a bug. Because I had to manually turn this world into a desert biome, something broke somewhere and now it doesn't know where the trader is. Fortunately, I know the trader is over there, you can see him. It's Trader Hugh. So we'll go there after I've cleared this. Hmm. I need some more arrows first. Okay, looks like I am going in with six arrows. I cannot find any more bird's nests around here, and I don't want to spend too long without a house, so let's begin. Oh, we have an enemy, and I'm, I'm looting the truck. No, 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 I'm looting a truck. And my one benefit, sneak attack damage, is already nullified. You love to see it. Let's club him. I don't want to waste the arrows, so it makes sense. Once I get some more bones, I'll make a knife, and that'll be a much smarter option considering the investment I've put into agility. Come on. Get me out of here. Oh, I fell and I'm trapped. What was that? Right, we should be good. I don't have any sexual Tyrannosaurus, so I have to be careful. So I know through here, there's gonna be a guy behind there, right? Yeah, and a guy behind there. Right, let's see if I can one hit kill them with my perk point investment. Oh yeah. 4.5 times sneak attack damage. This is insane difficulty. You'll love to see it. Now, both of those were actually decapitations, so that doesn't really prove much, but it's uh, a good sign. Oh, give me those arrows back. Ooh, I'm going to have a working vending machine in my house now. Nice, nice. I'll probably move into, like, a big concrete base later on. I like base building in the late game, but early game is so tedious. Oh, I've woken them up. I need to remember I'm trying to go stealthy here. It's been a while since I did a stealth build. Maybe I should have gone with just archery points. Another purse, come on, toilet pistol. Nope. Well, it'd be a purse pistol, right? But, you know, it's, it's the same thing. I believe there's a vulture up here that I have to worry about. No? Is it in a different area? Oh, hello. Oh, nice. That wasn't even a decapitation. And that was on a male zombie, which have a higher starting health than the female ones. So we're going to be one-hitting them if I can just remember to sneak. Hello there. Ah, uh, you get the arrow at home? That nah, must have popped. Right. Everybody home? Genuinely don't know if any zombies spawn in here. Right, let us tackle the main building, which is going to be a bit of a pain, but if I use angles correctly, I could make this quite easy for myself. Oh, hello, Vulture. I'll take your feathers, if I can hit you, that is. There we go. I'll also take your bones, which I need for a knife. There we go. Now we're a real ranger with our knives, and soon we'll have a pistol. More, hello. Oh, this bug. Is this bug still a thing? I have to switch back to the arrows. There we go. So, how am I going to get a headshot shot on these guys? Can I? No. Well, we'll just have to go for a knee shot. It'll probably soften them up considerably. 
Don't want to waste too many arrows. Let's just go in and bait them and just fight them the good old fashioned way with a knife. Let's step outside. Are they gonna come out? Oh, yeah, hello. The bleeding is very nice. I always forget bleeding exists until I use knives and I'm like, ah, yes, this is why I like them. Yes. Knives are great. Let's try and go sneaky mode. Don't press that damn shift key. This is a tier 2 POI by the way, so I am getting a decent little loot stage boost from that as well. Oh, hello. What do we got? Ah, knuckle wraps. Uh, let's pop this open. Oh. Still, I'll take an axe. And then you, give me a beaker or acid. Oh, bar brawling, of course. Why would that not be in there? I'll sell that. Right. Let's go up into the main area of the ranger station. If you haven't figured it out already, I'm going to live in here. I'm not going to do a horde base here because it'll just get ripped to pieces. I want to... Experiment with some of the new blocks and maybe make something nice looking in here, but I definitely don't want a horde base in here. That's just going to be a miserable experience. Maybe I should keep this glue and leather on me so I can make a pipe pistol. We can become a real desert ranger. <laughs> With a big iron on my hip, but it's made out of short iron pipes. <laughs> you just eat some of this aloe here to get the health back up, and then need arrows. Right, so we need to go see Trader Hugh, who we saw was over there. He's rendered out. No, there he is. Yep. Let's deal with this guy really quickly. Fight me. Facing the wall. No, face the wall. I lied. Right, bleed. Bleed out and die. Faster. There we go. Right, let's go see Trader Hugh. Right, Hugh, I'm going to raid your whole house and then come sell most of it to you. First munitions box. Nice. Oh, he's got pigs. I'm going to be swimming in meat. Ah, oh, just hold still, bro. Just hold still. There we go, one down. The hell? <laughs> you flying low enough there, bro? Oh, there's two of you. You love the desert, don't you? You gotta love the desert for that. How is that not hitting? Game sucks. There we go. Oh, and then he runs. Let's get down there. Start skinning those. The other one probably despawned with how long that took. Here we go. I can see three vultures already. This is misery. Where is the other board body? I've lost it. Oh, there it is. Q. Oh, a forge schematic. That's the goal. That's what we're buying. You also want all this cobblestone and wood. Okay, I've got my goal then. There's also a bunch of explosives in there, which will be very nice. Right, do you got any jobs, bro? Clear 150 east, nice. Oh, I see what this is. Yep, 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 yep. This is that one. Don't know what happened to those vultures. They must have just stopped chasing me. Must have gotten distracted somewhere. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be sneaky. Be sneaky. Oh, she sensed me. Anybody hiding in the obvious spot? Yep, let me get a headshot on him if I can. Nice, skill point. Uh, I'll put that into... Probably, I want to go for... Mm, deep cuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to give us bleeding again and, and slow on our melee attacks, which is going to be very nice. Let's open this up. There's the nurse. Ah, two ranks of hidden strike is all you need. 
Reminder, I am on insane difficulty. So this is as much of a damage reduction as I can physically give myself. And I'm still one hit killing them with two perk points. Well, four perk points, right? Nice. They made that really easy for me by all hiding in the open. In the open. Ooh, grilled meat. Grilled meat isn't fantastic, but it's better than nothing. Especially considering I have all that meat. I'd rather turn it into grilled meat than charred meat. But uh, boiled meat would be ideal because it gives more health than grilled meat. Let's grab the loot out of this place and go... Level 3 baton, don't need that. Sell it though. Just need to repair my bow. I got any bones? I do. Let me make a better knife. There's 10% more damage, so we're doing 20% more damage already. That's good. Ooh, that's nice. Scrap this for metal and let's get out of here. If I can get one more job done and then take a third job, I think I'll be in a good position. Oh, I should have kept those machete parts. I am doing a knives build. <laughs> that would have made sense. Oh well, we'll find more. What was that I wanted to buy in here? Oh yeah, that AK. Oh, the forge schematic though. So many options. A decent trader for once. I think I'll save for that forge. I guess you're not so in the meantime. Bad after all. You know what? I'm going to cheese some fetches. They're slightly further away, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to make a little storage chest outside for some stuff here. Right, let's go do one more job here. We might have time for this job and then at least getting the next job. I don't know if we'll have time to do it before nightfall and I do not want to be out here at night, but it's worth giving it a try. Right, let's rob this place and quickly. Just want the stash and then leave. At the very least, I can get the third job and do it in the morning, which is a good, good start. I think he has two other Buried Supplies missions anyway, and I refuse to do them, because Buried Supplies are awful. All in all, even though it was kind of a slow day because of that start having to clear out the, uh, the ranger station, it went pretty well. I'm, I've pretty much maximised what I could have done in terms of jobs. Ooh. But not great. Oh, you know what? I have a bunch of 9 mil ammo, I'll take an inventory slot, and let's take a fit. No, let's take the closer gas station clear, and I'll do that in the morning. Let's see. Nice. And we got a skill point again. I don't want to waste a perk point on advanced engineering, so we'll start with that. Nice. That is going to allow me to make iron arrowheads. And those are exactly what I need. Iron arrowheads are going to make sure that there's no basic zombies that aren't going to be one hit killed by my stealth attacks. Because there will be some male zombies who have plus 15% health above their base, which will probably just save them from the sneak attack. So having a few iron arrows will just really finish them off. So I could make a lot of grilled meat right now and I'm thinking it might be worth it. Where did all the meat go? Oh there it is. So yeah I think I will actually make a bunch of grilled meat. Gasoline will do. Don't try that one at home. Uh, I think I will do a bunch of grilled meat just because I have so much meat and so little water. So I would rather keep the water for drinking and glue and all that kind of thing and just make grilled meat for healing and food. I need some wood really quickly. Some wood. I might go ahead and put a point into pistols because that would unlock a better pipe pistol for me to craft but at the same time do I really care? Nah I'll just wait until I find a good pipe pistol. Let's go more knives. Let's see I need some trees. The problem with trees in this biome is they won't fully regrow. I think they'll only grow to the 600 health variant, but that is better than having no trees at all, so I will plant what I can.
Okay, let's get a little bit of a tree farm started. It'll be useful for me in a couple of days. Let's go make that forge if I have enough stuff. And that's the night time coming. Right, let's see, do I have enough stuff to make a forge? We got the clay, we got the stone, we got glue, leather, pipes. I need some cloth. Am I actually missing the cloth to make a forge? <laughs> What a weird one to be missing out on. There's probably three cloths somewhere in this building. Ah, here we go. This will do. Five. That is enough. I just need three. Ah, should I make a pipe pistol? Why not? It'll be completely worthless, but at the same time... Desert Ranger, guys, right? Right, let's get this forge started, and as soon as possible I'll get myself a bunch of iron arrowheads. That'll be very nice. Sounds like trouble. Oh yeah. I cannot see where that nurse went. Right. Oh, I can hear her though. Is she inside the house? How? Where did she get in? Oh, really did I miss that? Get out of my house, lady. Right, let's go find out where she got in then. She went all the way under there and came in here. Interesting, right. Uh, easy fix, I suppose. Temporary, but easy. That will have to do for now. And with that, I think I'm going to end the episode there. We managed to get ourselves a forge set up. We got ourselves up to a level where I can one-hit kill most zombies with my bow here. Even though it's just level one. I made a pistol just for the memes, uh, big iron on my hip as it were, but it will not kill anything. It'll be decent for spamming at vultures I suppose. I want a bicycle, and I want to get a bicycle on day two. The problem is, is that in episode one I only got two jobs done because I spent half the episode clearing this place out. Anyway, I have to get six jobs done today, including the one I got last night. I need to get five jobs done because after five jobs, I'm going to get a bicycle for free. On top of that, it will mean that at the start of day three, I will start with tier two jobs. And that is what I want. Would it be unwise for me to start walking to that place over there during the night on day two, when there could be ferals running around whom I would not be able to kill at all? It would be unwise. It would be very unwise, viewer. And that's why I would never- And here I am. I couldn't stop myself. Just in time for morning as well. Might as well wait. Why risk it? And there we go. So, let's clear this place out. So, here's the thing. This is only going to take me a tiny amount of time to clear. Just because it is literally two rooms with two zombies in each one. And... I know I'm probably going to have this done before Trader Hugh opens, so I might as well double loot this place. Which isn't something I like to do generally, because it's not worth it, but I genuinely have nothing else to do for the next two. I just missed that shot. There we go. Anyone else? Well, yeah, I know there's generally at least three zombies in here, so there's probably someone, right? No? Maybe behind here? Okay, just one in this room today. Go around the other side here. No dog. Oh, hello, though. She's hiding. I heard you. Come on, let's fight. What? There's another one. I'm going to let my stamina regen, because these guys can hit hard, and if she gets enraged, she's going to start sprinting, and I need... Yeah, she's doing it. I'm going to need to be able to keep her back. Would you just bleed out already? Damn. Right, let's go deal with the other one. Hello. Oh, I can stab you, actually, since you broke this open for me. Thank you. Making my life way easier. Ow! Oh, almost through. Let me heal up really quickly. Okay. Do you want to pick a way to exist, lady? Whoa! Oh, she bled out. <laughs> right, let's grab the loot. Ooh. And also, more importantly, this is what I wanted to see. I guarantee I end up getting a forge schematic from this. Which would be annoying because in the last episode I bought one. 
Oh, no, we're good. Right, let me just grab this wood. Some medicine. Nice. Some purified water? No, okay. Come on, mineral water. Oh, nice, I actually got it for once. Right, I think I'm done in here. Let's reset it. Oh, wait. Ah, coffee. Right, let's do this again. Nice, let's go around this side, check if there's a dog. No dog. Arlene hiding up there, though. And I think that's Joe. No, that's not Joe. I don't know what that one's called. Is it Yo? That might be Yo. Ugh, metal chest armor. I do not need that. Stone arrow? No stone arrow on that side, though. Oh, no. Anvil schematic. I'll take it. Be helpful later. Right, let's get out of here. We've got 15 minutes to get back to Trader Hughes. Hey, just in time. Another survivor. I hope you got money. Mm-hmm. You must think you're pretty hot shit now. Craft steel spears or ten Molotov cocktails. Hmm. So, Trader Q. Ooh. 340 West Fetch. I'll take that. We want to just cheese as many of those fetches as possible because they... Sell this. Are going to get us that bicycle faster. We're going to dump some stuff in the chest I left outside and I'll see you guys over at this next POI. Ah, okay, it looks like we're being sent to what I call the meth lab because it's like some burned out house with a load of chemistry sets. I assume that's what they were going for. Where are the supplies? Let me grab this real quick. Some glue, nice. Like I said, I don't really care about early game loot. Alpha 20 early game loot is genuinely worthless. Uh, it looks like it's back here. End game loot in alpha 20 is good and in alpha 20.1 it's looking like end game loot is going to be insanely good. Um, I have some pictures on my Discord, which you can join in the description. Oh, hey! Can I not hit that? No. Looks like I'm gonna have to kill her. She survived? What are you made of? That really is very rare for uh, the female zombies to have enough health to survive that. This must be a plus 15% woman right there. I don't care what oh, great. <laughs> Neither of these are great, but I'll take the serrated blade. Extra bleeding on the knife, can't complain. Another close by fetch, let's do that. What do I want to buy from him again? I suppose the AK would be good, but I think I probably want to prioritize just building materials. Oh, feathers would be nice as well. Also, I got a skill point there, what can I put that into? I think it would probably be worth going into four agility and then maybe get two points of parkour since we're already in agility and then get another point of agility, go into deep cuts and then Maybe pivot into strength so I can get minor 69er and stuff just so I can make a horde base in time. And then maybe pivot into intellect and then maybe pivot into perception because I want to use sniper rifles. This is going to be a whole thing. There's some decent POIs down here. I don't see any tier 5s though. Unfortunate. I see that vulture though. Anyway, we're here at the POI. It is just a fetch, so if I can get in and just steal the bag and leave it, that would be ideal, but sometimes the game just doesn't allow you. Oh, I'm going to have to go down. That's the worst. Right, well, I'm going to have to secure the area. This is going to take ages. Whoa! He came out of nowhere. There we go. He was like bled out to 10 health, so he actually died to that. You good there? <laughs> Just balancing best you can. Wait, I don't want to waste ammo on you, so. Nice, let me heal up really quickly. Where'd that vulture go as well? I want its feathers. Oh, more of you. This is why I hate the town. There are just zombies everywhere. It's annoying. Oh, he bled out. An iron armor schematic. Okay. Weird one. <laughs> Quickly snipe him. Oh, he tanked it. There we go. Like I said, I do need some iron arrows to fully one-hit kill every single zombie, but most of them are one-hits. I don't know where that dog is. It's kind of weird. 
Pipe bomb schematic. Nice. Although I will be doing explosives anyway, but, you know, it's nice. Let's head down a little bit. Okay, we don't have to do the entire PY at least, but uh, I'm going to have to clear down this, this area here. No one's in there. Oh, and I'm hungry. One second. Some of that grilled meat. Anyway. Nice, bled out again. More bandages, always welcome. Right, anybody here? Ooh, a passing gas container. I'll grab that really quickly. I don't want to spend too much time here though, so I'm, even though I'm halfway through this POI, I'm just not going to finish it. It's not worth the money you get paid to do it. Okay, seems like I've awoken them above. But I am good to leave. Let me quickly search this car. Apparently this car is meant to be black, but this is definitely grey. We're making good time though. Uh, by about 11am I'll have had 5 jobs done. That's not bad going. Truck and shells, yeah. Let's grab fetch. Sell him his armor stuff. Okay, let's go and do this next job. We're making fantastic time so far. Oh, hello, I see a Trader Bob over there. Nice. He'll be good for buying, like, motorcycle parts from if I don't get the bundle for tier 3. But I'm not going to run all the way over there for no reason right now. It's not like if he has a motorcycle for sale I can buy it. I mean, 700 dukes. Okay, it's uh, this burnt house. Hopefully this is a really easy loop. Well, okay, looks like we're going up. This is the cheesiest stuff ever, man. This is some big cheese, but they're just not worth actually doing early on. Need more frames. I want my frames back. Okay, that was any percent speed run of a fetch job, literally like four seconds. Let's get back there. <laughs> Yo, Trader Hugh. Drop your weapons or drop your drop. Not bad. Batter up five. I'm not using bats, and I'm definitely not using that, so I'll sell batter up to him. The tier one job rewards are kind of bad, but they're still better than the loot you would actually get. Once we get those tier twos unlocked, though, that's when it starts getting interesting. You can start getting, like, actual oh, guns for those. Like Let's do clear zombies. Gas station one. Is that the one I did this morning? That's not going to be very action-packed. <laughs> okay, it's a different gas station. That's good. Okay, let's quickly search this. Sell that. Sell that. Sell all that, basically. Oh, I see a head. Nice. Oh, hello there. Nice. There he is. Grr. Shot him in the arm. And it looks like there's some on the roof as well. Cool. I'll look this room first. Ooh, semi mod. Does that go on this? Nah, I didn't think so. Nice, some gas, bicycle chassis, probably sell that. I don't need a bicycle chassis. I don't think I have ever actually crafted a bicycle in Seven Days to Die. And I didn't even use a bicycle until Alpha 20 made them so ridiculously easy to get. Oh, nice. We'll do some of that later once I've got the iron tool schematic then. Still don't have a wrench, so can't do much. Lead car battery. Right, let's just be careful in case there's a dog out here. Nah, it doesn't look like there is. Yeah, it's all going to be on the roof. It's going to be a vulture, probably. Oh, a chemistry station. Oh, I was expecting to get, like, a chemistry station schematic. That would have been really nice. Let's get an angle here. Hello. Nice. I love what they did to bows in Alpha 20. It makes early game agility builds viable on Insane. Back in Alpha 19, agility builds basically just didn't work on Insane difficulty because you just couldn't do this. Like, it just didn't work. They would just tank the damage. Right, we got a skill point. Uh, I think I want to do first point into parkour, second point into parkour. Parkour is kind of not the best perk to take very early on, unless you're on Insane Nightmare, in which case it is actually pretty good, but it's a perk that will be interesting to play with, at least. And we're already going agility, so it's already, like, suboptimal. I might as well just have fun with it, right? 
a wheel, nice oil schematic, recipe schematic, whatever it is, I don't know. Oil spell, I'm going to call it that, it's the spell to create oil. Oh, what the fuck? No! Why is there a wolf in the desert? What sense does that make? He made no noise until he was ready. He was re- Oh, he's probably spawning in that POI's radius, right? Ah, idiot. Don't walk through tier 4 POI's. Jeez. That made me absolutely die. See how much damage he did. That's why insane difficulty is still scary. He's gonna come for me, but I'm probably gonna be fine. Oh, he lost aggro. Not on my watch, bro. No one hits me and get away with it. I died to this, I swear I'll actually cry. Reload quick, he's running away. I do like that in Alpha 20 they replaced the wolf AI with um, the coyotes AI, so they have like this attack and run away pattern. Uh, they used to be just like zombie dogs and they would attack unrelenting and it was kind of bad. Oh, I'm hungry. Don't you run away from me, demon! I'll have my vengeance! Oh, that was nowhere near. <laughs> Holy shit, he just tanked all that damage. Right. Get out of my way. I need a better pistol. I used so much healing there, but I think it was justified. <laughs> uh, they need louder footsteps. I'm in here unzipped. Fuck you. Incredible. Ooh, nice. And there it is. Your body. So, you will always get the bicycle, by the way. This is a guaranteed drop for the tier 1 complete. We could get the food bundle. This will give you 10 of some decent food, like sort of uh, blueberry pie meat stew tier. The three book bundle is literally three random books. The farm bundle is three farm plots and three random seeds. And the ammo crafting bundle will give you enough ammo to craft, I think it's 100 9mm bullets or 33762. And it'll also give you like 100 buckshot if you want to make shotgun shells instead. But, bicycle. Got any special jobs? Trader Bob to the Good south. Sell him some stuff really quickly. Oh, there's that tier 2 money as well. Okay, let's go see Trader Bob. Because if you look at the jobs here, I'm not going to get tier 2s until tomorrow morning, and I still have plenty of hours left in the day. So we might as well go and see Bob get a little bit of XP for that, and maybe loot something? I don't know. Whenever I do this in my own playthroughs, I usually just kind of run around collecting cobblestone, but I'm not doing a strength build right now, so that's not going to be very fun. So... I'll wait until later to do that when I've got some slightly better tools, for example. Put that back on the hotbar. Those pipe bombs are going to come in handy, though. Right, bicycle, let's go. Let's go see Bob. Culture. Oh, he bled out. Where's the other one? Yeah, there you are, you little shit. I hit, but didn't kill him. Really? They have no attack animation, I swear. It's so unfair. Oh, yeah. Come on, you pussy. Come on! Just look away from him and then stab. <laughs> I swear, they must have some sort of, oh no, the player is looking at me AI. Because if you look at them to try and shoot them, they sort of turn and fly away. So, I've been trying the whole look away, let them think you're not aware of them. Oh, hello, Arlene. Hello, fifth vulture. Ow. These things just bleed your health so slowly over time. But there is aloe everywhere, so if I need to heal desperately, I can do that. Actually, let me eat some of this aloe. Bear here. Yo, Bob. Here you go, friend. Whatever you need. What are you selling, Bob? Oh, he's got a motorcycle chassis, as you would expect. I'm not going to bother myself with motorcycle parts right now. Um... They're pretty common in trader inventories, so I'll just leave it. I'll buy the cobblestone, because, again, as I keep saying, I am not running a strength build, so gathering that's going to be slightly annoying. A wooden bow might be nice. 
You know what? That, that's kind of that's appealing to me. Let's see. Is he got any sugar butters? No. I'll just buy it. It's fine. It's a little wooden bow. Kind of shitty, but you know what? It was also kind of cheap. Nice. Yeah, that solves the iron arrow problem. Can I unlock this? No, I don't have any log picks. Right, let me mark Bob here on the map. He is the gateway to another town, it looks like. Did I not mark Hugh on my map? That's kind of dumb. Ah, it's nice not having to worry about encumbrance because I have a vehicle. Day 2 bicycle, though. Now you know how to do it. Ah, home sweet home. Ah, lots of stuff in that box now. Right. Let's make some more raw meat into grilled meat. Because that's just what I'm eating today, apparently. Game hasn't given me a cooking pot anyway, it looks like. Well, to be fair, I've not loaded any PYs. Right, let's check the forge here. We've got a little bit of clay in there. We need some more, though. And we can probably tell it to smell out some iron arrows. And this bow is going to be beastly with iron arrows. Oh, perfection. Right, let me get another storage container. You guys know the rules. Or maybe you don't, if you're new. The rule is, once you fill three of these, you need to get a storage system. That's my rule. I can live with three random storage boxes, but once it comes to four, it's too much. Too much randomness. Too much nonsense. Right. So some people correctly pointed out in the last episode that you can replace the soil with a different type of soil and trees will grow fully. One minor issue with that is it's kind of hard to tell which blocks are made of the new soil, because if we dig up one here... Uh, I'm gonna have to dig up two to make one topsoil here, hang on. So, craft a topsoil- oh wait, can I maybe use dirt? Comments, tell me if I can use dirt for this, we'll do our own test here. What does dirt do? The block I was going to make is a block called topsoil, and I know that one definitely works. Let's see if dirt works. Is that different? I can't tell. Uh, I'll need some more clay to test that. Okay, we'll get another dirt block here. I just realized you could use these dirt blocks to make a dirt house like in Minecraft. For some reason it doesn't want to place there. Is there something blocking this hole? No. Okay, is that different? Right. That looks loosely different to me. I can sort of identify that there's a patch there. Let's see. Uh, I'll need some kind of seed. There's one... Oh! There was a vulture living in that tree apparently. Where did that come from? Oh, there's another one. Get the hell out of here. Now, he just seems to have, a, like, a little a patrol thing. You know, we could test this right now. If we went into debug mode, and then pressed, is it insert? We could see what he's doing. What is that vulture doing? Target air. Waypoint somewhere. He's on wander. This vulture is not currently trying to attack me. I wonder why. Let's see here. I'm not going to be able to hit it with that info up. You press the insert key or zero on your numpad to bring that up with debug mode on, by the way. Oh, let me turn off debug mode. Eh. Why is this vulture like this? I don't want to waste any more of my nine mil. He's just going to do that forever now. That's just his life. I bet if I get on the bicycle and move like two feet, he'll go into his attack animation. Oh yeah, yeah, that was what he wanted. Ah, but I turned around, he doesn't know. Come on, stop, stop baiting me. Ow. I don't like that vultures can just smash into the floor with no consequences. Oh, infected. How much health have you got? What? <laughs> what were you made of, vulture? Okay. Those problems are all pretty solvable, I'm not too worried. Um, I mean, the health is low, but whatever. Let me go grab some medicine really quickly. Uh, actually, just to make sure. So we cure the abrasion with the first aid bandage or some aloe. I could have actually went and got some aloe. That was a waste. What do we got? What do we got? Got any honey? Don't have any honey. So we got some vitamins for the fatigue, but we might just have to deal with the infection for a hot minute here. Uh, where's that first aid kit? Just eat it. I'd rather save the bandages for, like, small heels. All right, so I need some antibiotics. We might want to go check Trader Q for that. Let me load some iron arrows real quick as well. Yo, Hugh, do you got any medicine? Nah, he's not got any medicine. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Okay, minor problem infection, but really that is 
as I said, a minor problem. It will take a very long time to have any effect on me. And the trader inventories will reset on day four, and they have a 25% chance to have an antibiotic in there. So we're probably fine. All right, I'm back at the base. It's almost night time. I think I'm about to end the episode here. I'll make some iron arrows. Uh, let me know in the comments if this dirt works. I've never tested it. This is the first time I've really tried to survive in a desert biome. Um, in the next episode, we'll do some tier 2 jobs. And I'll make sure to gather all the cobblestone and stuff as I go. Although I really need wood. That is going to be the big issue for this series, I think. Infection. I have one. And it's getting pretty severe. Fortunately, I was out on my bicycle at night, you know, looking for tree stumps, looking for pharmacies, and I was lucky enough to find this. Show you where it is on the map. So you can see Trader Hughes over here. I decided to go up this little street here, and sure enough, my salvation. Let's start this episode off with a little bit of nighttime raiding of the poppin' pills, which will almost definitely have the antibiotics I need. Really, that missed. Getting really close to a level now. Now, yeah, I was going to say, these guys usually spawn in like that. That's kind of weird, actually. Now we've got a skill point. Let's put that into parkour. And now I can do two blocks of jumping like that, which is really nice. Now then, the reason I came up here was actually to get angles on the guys below. Like that guy. Let's head down the ladder here and see just what happens. This room probably is an attack trigger. Be very careful here, because it's night time. And there'll be sprinty boys. Oh. Sounds like something fell. No, it spawned in. Oh. I don't know if they know I'm here, though. Oh, no, they know. <laughs> Are you really going to sit and do that instead? Ow! I hate this new crawling mechanic, man. The animations don't work. They're way down here and they're hitting me when I'm up here. It doesn't make sense. Li what? This game sucks sometimes. He survived? It wasn't a sneak attack. You just know I was there and decided to not do anything about it? Oh, he killed himself on spikes as well. Ah, a random desk. <laughs> That's not where I was expecting to get that from, but okay. Uh, let's take the lucky goggles, they'll, they'll do for now. Ooh. That's very helpful. Oh, hey, it's morning. We can be a bit less careful now. Ooh, a blue loot bag. Let's go. Oh, Nothing amazing. Okay, I think I have all the medicine I'm getting out of here. My infection is cleared up. We got some spare honey for later. Oh, I missed one. Hang on. We've got some aloe to heal up as well. I'd call that a victory. With that out the way, let's head back to Trader Hughes and start on those tier 2 jobs. Yo, Trader Hugh. Let's start with a fetch. Get out of the way quickly. Alright, let's get on this. Again, I'm going to be cheesing even the tier 2s here because the rewards are just so much more valuable than anything I'm going to get from the inside. Missing out on the XP kind of sucks, but honestly, it's worth it. Alright, here we are. Hopefully this is one of those really easily cheesable tier 2s. What do we got? Oh, it's on the first floor. That's a good start. Let me in. Really quickly, let me grab these drugs. Because I like drugs. Okay, I'm done here. That's all I want to do. That lady didn't want me to let me leave. But she wasn't fast enough. Right, so the first tier 2 is done just like that. <laughs> hey, Hugh, I'm back. Oh, a decent wrench. I'll take that. Let's do the next closest job, which is this one. But let's go do this fetch clear here. I know this PY. It has loads of breaking floors, right? Yeah, it's got like double layered broken floors. It's so annoying. Loot is on the other side of that, apparently. Ugh. What the hell? <laughs> Let me kill this dog real quick. 
died so hard it went over the fence. I see lots of red dots on this and I don't see a single zombie, it's kind of weird. Wah. Don't do the weird animation, it makes you so OP. Anybody here? Anybody back here? Looks like a no. Pop this open. More broken floors. The game loves that. Let's see if I can repair that at some point and sell that for a lot of money. Pop this open. Okay, let's see what am I dealing with down there. Oh, nice. Capitation. Right, we can probably just jump down and deal with this one now. Santa. <laughs> Oh, it's not better than my hood, good. Oh, this hood might be. Nope. Red skirt. We'll take the die off in case I need that for... I'll put it on my bike, actually. That makes sense. Oh, it looks like we found the room where they were all hiding. Nice, another skill point. Let's put that into... I think maybe one point of agility. And then we'll do level 3 knives. Let me make sure I grab this bag before I leave, because that would be embarrassing. There we go. There we go. Alright. Super important to make this bicycle red. Let's get out of here. Yo, Hugh. Oh, nice! That's actually... Big help, thank you Hugh, that's a massive upgrade for my pipe pistol. Sell the Santa hat, this thing, and these boots, great. 4k, nice. Let's go do another fetch clear, because they pay slightly better than regular clears, so, you know, might as well. I don't recognise this house. Hmm, is it maybe new in Alpha 20? Yeah, we'll soon see, won't we? Yeah, not so tough now, are you? No one there's real firearms on the field. Oh. Fell for the oldest trick in the book. The old jump through the window, fall through the floor trick. Whoa. He was just hiding in there. Sounds like one of them's digging, so I may have woken up someone above, so maybe it's worth still sneaking into this room just in case. Yep. Hello? Man, if Feral Sense isn't on, you really don't need to put points into stealth. And even if Feral Sense is on, it's probably a bad idea to put points into stealth, because of how OP it makes the zombie searing. You might as well just be better at sneaking without it. Did he just fall down? <laughs> oh no. I'll come down there and fight you. I'll fight you. You just want to fight my frames. How dare you, sir. Now bleed out and die. Hey, Mo. Oh, I'm terrible. Oh, and that woke him up. I'm so sad. So sad. Hello? Ah, ski goggles. Nice! That's better than the lucky looter, I think. Because the lucky goggles aren't going to give me much, but the agility goggles put me up to 6 agility. That means I could invest 2 points and get myself up to 7 agility. And then I could go into, into Deep Cuts 4 here and get level 5 knives, which could be cool. Seems like there's a wandering horde outside. Nice. Oh, where does she hide in here again? I think it's like on my left, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I get a view of her? Nah. Oh, another chemistry station schematic. I'll probably just sell that since it's worth like 160 dukes. Some meds. Oh, a level 6 bow. Nice. That's probably a shotgun shell. Uh, it's probably better than my wooden bow if I load it with uh, Iron Arrows Watch. Because it's so much higher level than the wooden bow. If we load this up, we do 48 damage with this. 
145 damage with this and this has much better damage potential because it has four mod slots instead of this one's one the projectile velocity is a bit different but i can live with it so yeah we'll go back to the primitive bow for a bit and uh, we'll sell the other one a no trader oh but not great okay just don't let this go to <laughs> well good thing i didn't buy this AK then right yeah level four for that much no way if there's nothing else, right. you what other jobs do you have? Plane. 398. Clear. Here we are. Another burned house. This is just a clear. Oh, instantly detected. Lovely. Let's use that new knife. Hunger? Is this just a house purely of jewels? Oh, hitboxes, 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 they suck in this game. Ah, oh, and no, he wakes up. Oh, did you see me with your eyes closed or something? Come on. Oh, hello. Utility worker. Oh, there's a dog around this corner, isn't there? Nope, different house, cool. Anybody home? No, okay, this is the way we're meant to go, so I'll go the opposite way. There, oh, I know this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? He hit me there? Referee. He hit me through like a body. That's... I mean, does he have the penetrator perk or something? Come on. Give me a break. Any snakes in here? No, okay. Shoes. Oh my god. The first shoes I actually found in there are actually cowboy boots. What what an absolute nightmare I live. Uh, there's always a crawler around here. Ah, oh, of course he was on the left. Classic subversion. Not gonna bother with a safe, I just do not have time. Right, how many we got up here? Four. Maybe hit Mo here if I'm lucky. Nice. Maybe we can try and backstab Arlene very slowly. Because the sneak attack damage does apply to everything, including my knife. It's just the bow is a lot easier to work with. Because they're very perceptive. Probably did a decent amount of damage. Nice, another one down. Hey, potato schematic, sure. Scrap these bolts, use them to repair that, and that'll give me a lot of money. Some 762. And leave. Wait, wait, wait. Weapons back, I remember now. Ah! The level 3 pistol is 100% going to be better than the pipe pistol, I don't even have to check. The pipe pistol may have actually slightly higher damage, but the magazine size is just awful. And the accuracy is awful, so I don't even have to check. Yo, Trader Hugh, it's me, ya boy. I don't care what Iron crossbow. You <sighs> You're almost a <sighs> That's that good. That's a lot of damage. But it's also only really useful for sneak attacks, and I'm already one-hitting most of them. And I don't need terrible antibiotics either, but I don't want to carry bolts around. I'll take the biotics. Right, uh, there we go. Hardware store. Oh, that's a good hardware store too, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Nice. I'll just save to see what he has tomorrow. This is the good POI I was thinking of. It's filled with lots of resources. I don't want to clear it this time for its resources, but I will come back here tomorrow when I'm gathering resources after I've done the jobs. In the meantime, let's just clear it out and get loot. Oh, I missed, seriously? Oh, I blew his arm off completely. Didn't even fall off, it just popped. Right, let me really quickly put a point into... Let's go minor 69 or why not? I need to be able to gather more wood, so it does make sense. Let me go into the main area here really quickly. Hello. You want an attack trigger? I imagine you probably are. Oh, 
Haha. -ha. Nice, more armor I can sell. Anybody lurking back here? No, cool. Diamond tip tools, cool, that's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, come over here, come over here. I am done with this place, there's just way too many zombies beating on all the walls because the game's just like throw another wandering horde at him i'm sure he loved the first one they're not even hard to kill they're just annoying i will be going back there tomorrow though to get the tool crates that i missed and of course gather up all those good resources yo hugh it's me the employee of the month Never would have guessed Ugh, and this is my gift for it is it but you did. yep so all the tier twos are done i don't want to do any tier one jobs the rewards aren't worth it right so i can sell some of this stuff and get some money back Nice, 10k. Nothing I want to buy, but you will be resetting tomorrow, and we can also check out Bob's inventory. Well, it's about time you bought something. Right, so I got a cooking pot earlier today, and it's given me a bit of an idea. Something I can do quickly before night falls. Oh, I have a bunch of stuff. One second. Let's dump this in here. There we go. Can't forget all my antibiotics. Right. Where is my base? Over there. I want to gather 20 yucca. Because that's going to give me enough for 10 yucca juices. And that's going to stop me drinking coffee, which I would rather save for Horde Night, and water, which I would rather save for, you know, useful healing items and stuff. Yucca is basically free out here anyway. There we go, 20 yucca. That'll be enough for 10 yucca juices. And that is going to keep me hydrated probably for the rest of the week, I would imagine. Grab this leather, this iron, this duct tape, bandages, glue, cloth, more glue. I can make even more glue if I wanted to, which I might. Okay, let me craft a poncho. First of all, I realized that today I should have one of these crafted in the desert. And I'll need the knife which is going to need more forged iron do i have any crafted no let's spit that out really quickly and see if i have any more clay to add to the fire here nope i do have some more iron something at least right and cooking pot chuck you on the fire 10 yucca juices and 19 glue we want that to be turned into duct tape, so scrap those bandages really quickly. Duct tape up, there we go. What do I need for my knife? 20 forged iron, that's fine. You know, I kind of want to go and get a workbench just for the sake of having it, because I know I have all the stuff for it and I can make a claw hammer pretty easily. If I smack at these a little bit, do I get any mechanical parts? No. I know a place I can get some mechanical parts in here, so grab those. I don't think they do, but this definitely does. Oh, stuck on something. Right. There's two. Here's another workbench. That's going to be helpful. There's three. Uh, I need, what, 25 or something? Something wild like that, but I do have some already. I need 20. Yeah. There we go, up to 13 there. It might be worth taking down this army truck. Let me put on the poncho here. Now we're looking more outlawish than rangerish, but you know what? It's good enough for now.
Oh, I got an engine and a lead car battery. You know what? I'm going to leave this here. I like the look of the army truck and it's not like I can just plunk them down wherever I want, so I'll keep that there. But I got a lot of good stuff from that. And yes, if you didn't know, you can wrench trucks and buses to get engines and lead car batteries. It's not 100%, it's like 75 and 65, but decent. And I'll need those later for my motorcycle. Um, right, I need more forged iron go and I'll need even more than that so let's get the knife first because that's more important and then let's get the workbench. There we go and let me get my other wrench back out. Now I need a claw hammer which is going to require more iron. Claw hammer is just for my use. I'm going to need another duct tape. That's going to be a minor issue. Any cloth? Any cloth at all? No, nope, looks like I'm going to have to go down here and grab a little bit more. Parkour, let me do some weird stunts there. Nice, 10. Okay, and let's get some more duct tape. And then I'll get a claw hammer sorted. This is going to be quite the upgrade. I'm going to take this out in the middle here. While I wait for the workbench to craft, I'm just going to upgrade a few windows to get myself another level here. Ah! Ah! Okay, it's fine. <laughs> There's a minor flame. There we go, level 10, another skill point. Let's put that into Sexual Tyrannosaurus. 15% less stamina usage on powered attacks and 8% less on normal attacks. Sounds good. Some more forged iron. I'm not gonna have enough clay. I'm not gonna have enough clay, oh no. Okay, we'll have to go dig some clay. Oh, hello. Just a feral one of them, huh? If he hits me, I'm probably dead, so... Do not let him hit you. Oh yeah, he's a big boy. Stop running away from me! There we go. 1200 XP, that's how you know he's dangerous. Already started a big ruckus, might as well continue it. Where are you gonna try and attack me from? The front door, makes sense. I hope you're not a feral, because otherwise I'm screwed. Oh. <laughs> Yep, 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 go attack the door. Still, good XP delivery at least. Right, we done here? Looks like we're done here. Right, let's go take some clay. I'm gonna have to reinforce this wall with like concrete and it's gonna have to be like five blocks thick. And that is not an efficient amount of clay to get. This is why I hate the desert biome sometimes. It's fine, I can't craft anything in my inventory for another three minutes anyway. That should be enough for some more forged iron. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio on clay anyway. Please don't be a feral as well. Like, what's with all the ferals? What are you? You're just a regular zombie. You're gonna get shoveled to death. Unironically, probably more effective than spears are. <laughs> oh, we need one piece. We need one piece of forged iron. Why you like this game? Turn that on. Smelt this tiny bit of clay I got. Turn it into one piece of forged iron, please. There we go. Workbench, are you done yet? No. Ooh, but the knife is. Let me make sure I grab that. Oh, semi-auto pistol trigger group. Good idea to have that as well. Right, let's take the knife, take the serrated blade mod off, put it on here. Here we go, level 4 iron knife, that's going to sort me out for a while. I'm not going to go 7 agility for a hot minute here. And a workbench, ready for when I need it. Didn't cost me much to get it really, just forged iron which I wasn't using too much of. Right, and that one piece of forged iron, there we go. Now we can make a claw hammer and we're sorted. Oh, and pistol. Semi-auto, 10% more damage, 12% more fire rate, great. I need 
resources. And I need to complete all the tier 2 jobs, which seems like a good goal for today. So, I've just finished cutting down these trees that I had here. They only grew to mid-height, of course, because of the limitations of the desert. I'm still waiting to see if the dirt block works. I could use topsoil, but I'm interested in the dirt block because it's visually distinct from regular topsoil. Uh, and that would be really helpful for a farm later on. Let me replant these. Hugh, it's me, your number one employee. Let's see what you're selling here, Hugh. Ooh, I kind of want this. Well, I actually really want this and I can almost buy it, but i just seen motorcycle. This would be pretty good. There's a lot of good things in here. I'm going to have to get so much money so quickly to unlock that before the restock, but I really need building resources first. I think I can do it though. I think I can get 30,000 dukes in the next few days. Okay. With that in mind, it might be worth just absolutely spamming as many jobs as I physically can in the next few days just to get that motorcycle early and maybe the magnum. I might get a magnum as a reward for a tier 3 job anyway at some point, but still. Dump my building resources in here. We've got enough wood. That's good because wood is annoying to gather. Um... Also, yeah, I got my yucca juice there. Right, let's go. Let's do these jobs. We know marketing. Never seen this before. Looks like I'm going to have to fight at least a couple of these guys. Or maybe I'm not. Let's just jump over them. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to have to use my gun here. Nice, my points and agility doing work there. <laughs> like this. Grab this. Okay, he's not too close. Let's go ahead and jump over them. Haha! -ha! Parkour! <laughs> uh, I'll heal that little hit I took from the crawler. Those guys are annoying. They have weird attack ranges. Let's get out of here. Yo! Oh. Take the first aid bandages. And another fetch. Might even be worth tearing every single card I see apart and selling him the pieces. That is a very, very good way of making money early on. It's kind of annoying because the cars don't respawn and the parts the cars give aren't craftable. But it is kind of worth it for a motorcycle. And you would use a lot of those parts to make the motorcycle if you were going to do it that way anyway. Mm. That's definitely something to consider. Right, can I cheese this one? Oh, it looks like I can. What's slightly below? It is going to be behind these bricks, right? Oh, do you think... Do you think they're going to be... Are they this bad? Oh my lord. <laughs> this series exists just to get the fun pimps to look at what they've done to their POIs with these fetch jobs. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, surely that's not intentional, right? I don't care what folks say. Painkiller is nice. Okay, this is a bad sign already. It's all bundles. <laughs> uh, let's see. Range mod bundles, melee mods bundles, scrap armor bonus bundle, both armor bonus bundle. Write down in the comments which one of these you would take. There is a correct answer. It's the scrap armor bundle. Here's why. Open this up. Boom, boom, boom. Money. We're going to keep them, for now, because I want to put mods on those to make them more expensive. Do I have any armor mods I could just make? No. Okay. Now, I am a free agent. Tier 3 jobs will be unlocked tomorrow, and I have got to get myself that motorcycle. So I can't, I can't, oh, my inventory screen broke. There we go, fixed it, right. So, it's time to start scrapping cars, because if we can get like a bunch of level 6 batteries, for example, that would be big. That would give me like 600 each, I think, and that would catapult me towards my goal. I, pr I should probably take a bunch of tier 1 jobs anyway, but uh, yeah. I'm going to go back to my base really quickly and check for a couple of things I could sell, and then I'm going to destroy every car I come across and just absolutely work towards that car that motorcycle as soon as possible right first of all let me check my vending machine it might have some sugar butts might have some of those uh, i forget what they're called 
The one that gives you more harvest yield from wrenches, though. Let's take apart this. How much is an electrical part worth these days, then? Six. Not a bad, not a bad amount. Might as well grab them, right? They're here. Right, let's see. What can we sell them? Uh, shotgun shells? I don't have a shotgun. I'm going to sell them the ammo. That's that's where I'm at. Sell them the brass. Headlight. Don't need it. Just don't need this stuff. Keep that just in case. Uh, lead. I'll just sell him literally everything I can sell him. That makes sense. Oh, we could make some robotic turret ammo to really cheese it. Oh, yes. A nice car battery. We can sell that. Plus, doing this is going to give me a lot of gas for the motorcycle, which is going to kill a couple of birds with one stone there. Alright, I think that's all I really have to sell, but it's a good start. I will go and collect a bunch of cars and sell all their pieces. Particularly those high-level batteries and stuff. And I'll keep an eye out for armor mods just in case. Because you can use armor mods to just ridiculously inflate the price of things like that, so... I think it's a good idea. Right, let's get scrapping. Oh, new claw hammer. Is that worth selling? No. Oh, level. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. I really want that motorcycle, and I'm torn between salvage operations to get 20% more resources and harvest faster, or just straight up better barter to get 5% off. You know what, I think I like better barter, I'm always going to end up with better barter anyway, so that seems like a good investment. So that, that motorcycle is going to cost 5% less now, which is going to be 1500 off. That's a good start already. Combine that with the sugar butts and we're on our way. Okay, my inventory is basically full, so I'm going to go back to the trader really quickly. I should probably take some tier 1 jobs, just while I'm doing this, for the sake of it. Uh, I could take some tier 2s, but I think my options are buried supplies, which don't give very good money, and restore power, which I can't do until night time anyway, so no point in worrying about it. Oh hey, an airdrop. Might be worth grabbing that, actually. It could have an armor bonus bundle, and that would be pretty good for money as well. So... I'll grab that. Remember, it's sort of to the south of the trader there, like 300 meters. Maybe we can check in with Bob over there. Yo, like you. Lounge to you. Right. Uh, you know, That's I wonder if it's worth... Okay, he's got more of those, so it's probably worth doing that. Selling him this first load of stuff with the sugar butts. We can get a, a sneak peek at how much this motorcycle is going to cost me. Twenty-five fifty. That's not bad. Right, I wanted to get rid of all the shotgun shells because I'm not going to use them. And all the brass. Can't hold it, just sell it. Okay, we made a dent. Let's get a job here really quickly. Hopefully one to the south. Let's grab that, just in case. Still, we're about halfway to the motorcycle. That is a good start. And we also have all of this. I'll, I'll leave that just in case I happen to stumble on some... Armor mods. We want to go south here to the airdrop and we'll also grab that job and we'll also check out Bob Willem there. Ah, there's that big orange smoke plume, that's what we love to see. It's my loot stage. 26. We're probably not going to get a bonus bundle in here, but could be something good anyway. Worth grabbing it and we're going to come down this way anyway. Food bundle and the boiled meat recipe. Great. 10 steak and potato meals. Not worth selling, but Definitely worth coming and getting. <laughs> That's actually huge. How much health do they give? 25. Damn. Remember when I said airdrops are good and people were like, oh, I've only been getting crap out of them. I haven't. I've been getting shit like that. Oh, not bad. Oh, yeah, let me take this car apart. Well, I'm still under the effect of some sugar butts here. I think we should sell what I have. I should maybe take a job from Bob here as well, because I'm in the area, so it does kind of make sense. Uh, he's got even more sugar butts. Just keep those coming. Uh, what do you got for sale? Nothing of particular note. 
love a cigar because that would give me a 15% discount and it'd probably be worth the price. That those are cheap. Um, okay, we're getting there. Once we have tier 3 jobs unlocked, this is going to be way easier, but in the meantime, this is kind of what I have available to me. Let's do a really close by clear. Oh, more mechanical parts. Loads of hammers today. Doing these trucks is probably worth it because they have that extremely high chance of giving me the battery, and batteries can give you some crazy good money if you get them. This is like gambling, if you think about it. Okay. Once you get the battery, just run. Level 4, nice. Hey guys, I'm just jumping in the middle of this video here. The next half an hour of footage is just me cycling around and wrenching trucks with occasional fights with zombies. I think what little commentary I did provide would be fairly unfocused and unhelpful. So I've sped up to about a thousand percent so that you can get the gist of what it was like and I'm basically just going to explain my thought process here. I started to prioritise the trucks, buses and ambulances around the map because they give you a 75% chance of an engine which I can sell for 200 dukes and of course I'll need some of those later for cement mixers and vehicles but you also get a 65% chance of a battery and batteries are great for selling as I said earlier in the video. One mistake I did make in this process though was selling level 3 and 4 batteries. This is slightly wasteful so here's what you should do with regards to the level of your batteries. You want to keep your level 1 and 2 batteries for vehicle crafting. The level of a battery you use for a vehicle is actually completely irrelevant so you'll want to use your worst batteries for that. Selling them is a bit of a waste because each trader can only be sold 3 stacks of a given item per trade cycle. This means you can only sell 3 batteries per trade cycle so you'll want to keep those low level ones and sell off your level 5 and 6s first. You may personally want to keep your level 6s for battery banks later in the game, but I'm not too worried about finding more level 6s later in the game, so I should have been selling as many level 6s as possible due to that trade limit. As for level 3, 4 and 5s, those are easily craftable later in the game if you're really in need of them. So selling them in the absence of level 6s isn't a terrible idea, but in this situation I should have prioritised my level 6s when selling because they're worth more. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys here, remember to like the video and enjoy the rest of the episode, and see if I was fast enough to get that motorcycle today. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. The universe is hanging in the balance. We need like 70 dukes, come on. I'm sorry, little one. <laughs> there we go, 2550. Motorcycle. With one duke to spare, you can keep it. Don't care, not my problem. There it is, folks. The day four motorcycle. Consider that a little mini lesson on how to get like 15,000 dukes very quickly. Cars, my friend. Cars. Red motorcycle. It goes faster, trust me. Put some gas in this. No more pedaling for me. This is going to be very helpful. Yep, right, let's drive this back to the base here. Where do I live? There. Oh, this feels so good to have. Maybe put the cowboy hat on. Oh, you can't do that while driving, okay. Safety guy over here, am I right? <laughs> also, I've just considered I'm going to make some more padded armor when I get back to the base. Because I need some chest armor and some feet armor. This, this isn't going to do. This isn't it. <laughs> Alright, let me grab everything from the motorcycle except for the gas. We can live without the gas. Right. Ooh, more gas. Good, good. We ended that with still loads of engines and batteries behind, so no need to worry about those things at least. Uh, okay, did we get the resources we need? That's the big question, actually. Oh, did I leave them in the box at the trader? Okay, we won't know until I go back to the trader in the morning, but I think I did get enough resources anyway. Really quickly before I end the episode, I do want to try and do one thing. I said I was going to do. Be annoyed if I forgot. Let me go downstairs really quickly, grab something here. Okay, so what do I have? I need leather as well. Right, let's see here. Uh, pocket. Two, what am I missing? Two clothing pocket mods. We can get a third one once we find another sewing kit. And then I'm actually going to craft some padded chest armor and padded boots because I'm annoyed. 
Like my chest and stuff are exposed. You know, it just looks weird. So we'll fix that up. And get rid of those silly boots. There we go. Now we look a bit better. Let me take the brown dye off of this. Because it's kind of making me look very muddy. There we go. That's that's cleaner. Keep the brown dye for some things later. Eat a vulture. About to attack the house. Annoying. Whoa! He did not flap away. He was waiting for me to start my outro. The rude bastard. Welcome back to Desert Ranger. Today I'm going to be building a base to help me survive the Day 7 Horde and I'm going to be showing you guys how you can build this base yourselves on your own servers and world. Now this is a very cheap base design. It costs about 2,000 cobble and 2,000 wood. It really is not too difficult to construct. It won't last you until like day 70, but it will keep you alive relatively well for the first few weeks in the game. Let's get started with this base build. So the first thing you're going to want to do is clear the area because there's always going to be some zombie who shouldn't be there. And then you're going to want to start digging. We want a 1 by 16 footprint for this build. And we're going to start off by doing a 1 by 5 section and we'll go from there. Need another one. I cannot count to five. You heard it here first. Right. So you just want to fill this in. Five. Right. Next, you want to dig out three on each side at the front of your base. Okay, let's fill those in. Next thing you're going to want to do is reinforce this all the way to however far you want to reinforce it. In my case, I'm going to do cobblestone. And the reason we're doing that now is because some of these blocks are going to be annoying to reach later. So we want to make sure that we don't have to take out any other cobblestone to come back and reinforce it. So let's start by reinforcing the floor here. Okay, so we have the footprint of the staircase we're going to build to make into our base here. This is going to be a catwalk corridor base combo. And it needs a staircase to get up into that catwalk. So you're going to want to bring your staircase at its highest point four up from the ground. That's five total from if you're coming down under the ground there. So four above the terrain. And that's going to be the ideal height for this build. So we have this and we're also going to want to bring in the stair block. And we're going to put two of these stairs on the sides as well. And then we're going to bring in the corner stairs. But before we do that, we should reinforce this block here, which will become hidden after we do the stairs. That would make sense. And fill that back in. Okay, so we have the frame for the staircase we're going to use to get into the space. We want these staircases to come up on the side so that the zombies have a very easy route to get up the catwalk. Okay, oh, and we got a skill point. Which is the reason I am going from wood all the way through to cobblestone rather than just placing cobblestone, by the way. The XP you get from upgrading is pretty, pretty good, especially in the early game here. So I'm going to take my skill point and what was I doing again? Ah, strength. Yeah, let's get that up to three. And then I'll do more sexual tyrannosaurus, more minor 69er, and maybe some mother load. So what we're going to do now is a six wide catwalk or a six long catwalk yeah six long not wide the reason we want it to be six is the potential for putting blade traps down here in the future this will allow it to be one blade trap here and one blade trap here this is actually a suggestion from one of my viewers on a stream where i built this base and it only had five long they suggested that i should extend out another one and i could fit two blade traps in there and i think that is a decent idea even if i don't really plan on putting blade traps in here it's always good to have the option, and it only costs one more block. So we're going to want to reinforce this pillar here, because if we do this catwalk first, it'll all crumble. This cobblestone will be too heavy for that. Right, so we have our staircase and our catwalk for this base. 
it's time to make the third section, the corridor part of the base, which is going to start with digging out four more blocks at the back here. Fill this in. I again cannot count to four. I'm terrible. Fill it in there. And we're going to need a few more frames. I think I'll probably need like another 150. That should be good. We have plenty more wood, plenty more cobble. Like I said, it'll take about 2,000 of each. I would highly recommend having extra wood so that you can do some cool stuff with wood spikes later on though. So next you want to build this up. It's essentially a foundation for your corridor base. Okay, so now we have the foundation of the corridor in. We need to put the supports for the walls in first and reinforce them before we do anything else because if you forget to put the supports in and reinforce them fully, you could have a bit of a disaster where your walls are too heavy and they break. And that would be a waste of materials. Great, so now it's time to put in the walls. You're going to want to put three high on each side. And again, reinforce this. Okay, now we have the walls. This isn't going to do much right now, though. We're going to need to put in a ceiling and reinforce this again. And as a precaution, you're going to want to do a quick pillar up here, and you're going to want to make sure that there are two blocks above your doorway, because zombies can pile up on each other, and if it's only one high, they will run over the base, and they might find a way to come in the back. And that's going to make your life harder. So the next thing we need is some hatches, specifically about four. And you'll also need about four iron hatches as well. I'm going to need more iron if I'm going to fully reinforce these, but that is fine. So when you're placing your hatches, you're going to want them to be hinge outward, like so. See the three hinges at the top? Let me see if I can look at them. Almost. Yeah, you want that facing out the way, because that's the way it pops open like that. And reinforce those all to metal. The most important one is, of course, the front one, so do that one first. And it looks like I'm going to have to come back and get more metal. Although I have some random forged iron here. I think I got that on the way here. Just out of a bag. So maybe I'll scrap this up. Just to make it so I can reinforce my hatches here fully. But you get the picture. I don't actually have to do it right now. Uh, in previous alphas, you would put a plate along the top of this. This is no longer necessary. And it actually hinders the base's performance. This base is tested, by the way. I've used it multiple times on streams and in my own playthroughs. It will keep you going until about day 21, at which point you're going to want something a bit thicker, something that can withstand a higher brunt of force from the zombies. This will do you for the first couple of weeks. Fundamentally, this is all you need for this base. You stand two trapdoors back, and you just hit or shoot. It's fine. doesn't matter. Either or works perfectly well. But there are a few things you're going to want to do to this over the course of its lifespan, as you gather a bit more resources to make it a bit more secure. And the first thing you're going to want to do, first and foremost, culture, is thicken out the foundation here. Because when harder zombies start to spawn, they might just randomly start punching this. And over the course of a long horde night, that could break and your whole corridor is going to come crashing down. So your first course of action should definitely be to fill in the foundations. We got another skill point really quickly. I'm just going to deal with this bird. Surprised I actually killed him for once. Right, let's put another point into Sexual Tyrannosaurus.
there so now your foundation is a little bit less shaky but there's more problems to be solved with this base over time the next thing you're going to want to do is put a little area on the back here this will be the foundation of either just the area you use to climb onto the top of the base in case there's vultures or it can be the foundation of the rest of the base if you want to extend this into a bigger base and have this be like your entryway during the during the general day now what you're going to want to do here is some ladders i prefer the scaffolding ladders and you're going to want to do one and then i can do that is two zombies will not target this ladder they won't randomly come here and then try and jump onto it it's just not something zombies do zombies will only climb ladders if they're accessible to their feet so for example a zombie will see this one and go ah yes this is fine but a zombie will never jump onto a ladder that's just not something their mechanics do there could be some reality in which zombies are here for some reason and they start to pile up on each other and jump on and for that reason i like to keep my external ladders like this frames just in case it happens i can pull out the ladder and it falls down and problem is solved now i actually have rank two of parkour so i can just do this i don't need the extra one but you if you're not using parkour will need an extra one down there and we're going to do another one here. Again, you'll want that to be two. And then, like so. Again, you'll want this to be two if you don't have parkour. And you're going to want to climb up. And the next part of your base is going to be the biggest problem you're going to face. And that is vultures. This base has basically no countermeasures against vultures. Aside from just thickening the roof. And putting some spikes or turrets or traps or whatever up here. And hoping for the best. Okay, so I'm also just going to make sure I reinforce all my hatches here. It's good XP, and these are your main line of defense against the zombies. Cobblestone is basically just here to make sure they come here, rather than attack everywhere else. And I'm out of iron again. Interesting, right. I also want to put a door here, and the reason I want to put a door here is so that if this base is being used at the same time as cops start spawning, this will stop the cops even trying to shoot you, you'll be fine. This will cover your back and you won't have to worry about it. It'll also stop spider zombies from trying to jump up the back. If they happen to run along here and see you, they may try and do a jump to land next to you and get up into the back of your base. And that could be annoying as hell if they do spawn behind you. I'm going to take one of these ladders because I forgot I extended the roof here. Copy the shape and there we go. And also I only need like one, right? Yeah, so I'm good. This ladder is going to protect you from cops, but... If you're still using this base design by the time cops come, yikes, but you, you can do it, definitely. I've done it before. This base is expandable, but you may want to just start with a new framework entirely once that kind of area of the game comes around. You'll probably want to move your horde base at some point in the game anyway when you find the big city on your map with all the tier 5 POIs that you'll want to loot and build a new one there. So, there is one more thing missing from this base, and that is... The countermeasures to the destroy area mechanic. In seven days to die, when a zombie falls, they go into a mechanic called destroy area, where for about 10 seconds, they'll just try and attack the closest block randomly like this. And they'll do this and they'll beat the block up and then they'll go, oh wait, no, wait, I want to kill the player. And they'll get back on their way and they'll try and do that. The fun pimps have graciously given us a bit of a countermeasure. If a zombie falls and then takes damage from something, specifically an entity, they will go out of the destroy area mechanic. And the most primitive way you can do that is with spikes. And we're going to need a lot of them. 40, that seems about right. Uh, let me scrap all these extra frames as well and then I'll make some more. So, I'm going to wait for those spikes to craft, which I actually should have started crafting while I was doing the rest of this, but that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to show you where you're going to want to put your spikes to make sure the zombies don't attack random parts of your base. So we have 40 spikes. That was just a rough number. It doesn't actually matter. What you want to do is make sure that if a zombie falls off of this catwalk, they fall into spikes. And that is going to make them take damage and kick them out of the destroy area mode. So this is just a really rough way of doing that. This isn't very precise, there are probably better ways of doing it. 
The whole point of this base is that it's just a little bit primitive, but it will survive the first few weeks. I would say quite easily. If you know what you're doing, you have a double barrel shotgun or a pistol or an AK, you should be fine with this base. Even if you're just using a sledgehammer, it'll be good. A club should be good. Knives should be good. Even a bow should be good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using a crossbow in Horde Knight though, they're very slow. And the last thing we're going to use our spikes on here is the roof. This is going to be the most simplified vulture defense system you can make. Essentially, the vultures are going to want to try and get on top of you and you're going to be standing in this middle row. So if we just cover the middle row, a bunch of spikes, I misplaced one there, it should spike them. Now, if you do hear vultures getting through your spikes, or they're maybe not going for the spikes, maybe they're trying to go diagonally, just come at the back of your base, obviously keep your trapdoors up, you know, bang bang bang, ah zombies, oh I hear vultures, really quickly, just jump up onto the back and shoot them. It's not too much of a big deal, the zombies aren't suddenly going to break through four layers of your defences, this is an early game base design, you can get away with things like that. And later in the game, you can build a good base. And the resources you'll save on not crafting some big elaborate base early on will allow you to take your new base out to where you actually want to live, say the wasteland, for better loot. Which is a good idea by the way because the wasteland is going to give you a loot bonus so when you get those loot bags you'll get better loot in them. So having a horde base in the wasteland is a good idea. Now this whole series is exclusively desert biome if you're new to it, that's the whole point of desert ranger so I don't have to worry about that really. But this base is going to let me just basically be very lazy for the next few weeks, I don't have to do much horde base building, and then later on once I've got all my perks and stuff I can come back and make a really good big base. If you want to see this tested you'll have to come back for episode number 7, which will be in a couple of weeks probably, because that's how this series is running, it might be out by now if you're watching this in the future, if not, sorry. Anyway, this is part of a series, and we have other things to be doing, so if you came along just for the horde base build, that's it. This is all you need. Remember to upgrade it to concrete at some point, and remember, don't upgrade your hatches too early, otherwise the zombies won't go for the hatches. So keep those away from vault hatches until this base is made out of steel if you're gonna go that far. Wouldn't recommend it though. What's up guys, it's Prebuilt from the future here. This video was plagued by audio issues with my new microphone, so I thought I would cut it short here and save you having to deal with any more of that horrible clippy audio. After this I did a tier 3 fetch job and got some bandages, and then I did a tier 3 clear job and I got some military gloves, and then I did another tier 3 but Trader Hugh closed before I could get it done. It wasn't too interesting and the audio was terrible, so I thought I'd just cut my losses and make a reasonable horde based tutorial out of this. and move on to episode number six where I'm gonna try and complete all the tier three jobs I need to unlock tier four by day seven because that could give me some really good stuff on day seven like a pump action shotgun for example. Welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. Today, as I said at the end of the last episode, we're going to be trying to complete as many tier three jobs as possible because in the section I cut out due to audio issues, we got three tier 3 jobs done. If we can get four done today, that will unlock tier 4 jobs at the start of day 7, and that could be pretty big for getting some good equipment. So, we're gonna get started with that. Oh, so the reward from the last quest is giving me a compound bow level 4. That is nice. Now then, let's see what jobs he has. Nice, a bunch of clears and fetch clears, so those are really easy to do. There's no cheesing fetches today but I'm, I'm sure I can still get four of these done. Let's start off with the furthest away one and get closer over time. Pharmacy 2, nice. Let's just get over there then and get started with these rewards. Hopefully I can get some other great rewards like tier 4 firearms. Okay, it looks like he sent me to the pharmacy that I raided on like day 2. Right, so what I'm gonna do since you guys have already seen me clear this like two episodes ago, one second here. As I was trying to say before he interrupted me, since you guys have seen me clear this like two episodes ago, I am just going to show you guys the highlights of it, so let's go for the super fast version of this POI.
And that is all the zombies I have to kill dealt with. Let's get that loot. Since I actually have a jailbreaker, I'm going to open up this metal crate here. See what we can actually get from a tier 3 job. I think this is the first one I've actually opened. Let's see, grilled meat recipe. Nothing amazing, but the sewing kits are really nice. Alright, let's get out of here. See what Trader Hugh has to give us. Okay, so all in all, that quest took about four in-game hours, including the time I'm about to spend doing this. If I can speed this up a little bit, nice. If I can speed this up a little bit, I can probably get all four of the ones I need to get done today. Also got a magnum there, but I doubt I have any ammo for it, but we finally got it. We just didn't bring any ammo for it, so that's going to be very helpful once we've got some. Right then, I got a skill point there as well, and I don't remember what I want to put it into. Probably a bit of mother load wouldn't be a bad idea. Just for when we want to start mining later. Right, let's head out to this next job, which is to the southwest. Right, let's get this started. We need to be very, very time efficient if we're going to get four tier threes done. All clears, anyway, in one day. So we're going to have to skip some of the loot. And basically just do this as soon, as quickly as possible. This looks like a fun room, a lot of landmines down there. Okay, place is clear. I still have a little bit of jailbreakers left. So it would be smart to maybe grab this as quickly as possible. Let's see, we got a treasure map, some leather gloves, lots more lockpicks. That's nice. Is this any good against snow? Oh, wait. Oh, no. Cowboy hat or nothing. Let's go. I will read the treasure map closer to my base because they were fixed and now they calculate from the correct distance rather than zero zero. So it's worth actually doing it close to your base now. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, we're making really good time so far. That last one took a lot less time than some of the others. Yeah, this really quickly. Not too worried about selling anything right now. Just want to keep going with the jobs as much as possible. Double barrel shotgun. I will take it because it's great for the first horde. Now let's go for the furthest clear. A church. Nice. Where's that? To the southeast. We're going everywhere today. We're going to see the entire map. Put that in there and save it for later. Oh, it's this place. This is one of the bigger tier threes. That's kind of annoying. This bow is actually too accurate. <laughs> kind of hard to arc shots over things.
another skill point, nice. Again, I'm just going to keep leveling Mother Lord because we're going to have to make up for the fact that we don't have very high strength by maximizing what we can do mining wise. Oh, these rooms are always fun to go into. And we're clear, right, let's get the loot and leave. I do have a lot of lockpicks, I wonder if it would be worth trying to get the loot in this place, because I believe a beaker is an option and that would be nice. Then I also have to consider time. Let's give it a try. Almost. Oh, here it goes, here it goes. Gonna snap every 0.1 seconds now. There we go. Right, what do we get? Beaker, nice. Improved fittings, mod schematic, nice. Are these better than what I'm wearing? Yes, let's put those on. Oh, I was wearing level 1. Right, let's get out of here. And drink some damn water. Painkillers have been sapping all my hydration. Ow, cactus. Alright, we're still making good time, let's head back over to Trader Hughes. I think I can probably get two more done. I don't even know if I need to get two more done. Is it one more done or two more done? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I need to get one more done after this one. We're going to make this time very easily. Maybe we can do... Maybe we can do that buried supplies mission as well, just for the fun. Because I don't think I've done any in this series so far, because they're kind of miserable to do in Alpha 20. Come on, follow the bike. You might just actually give up. I'm getting too far ahead. Right, these jobs are really great as well for XP. Ooh. There's no room in my base for these, and they nerf them quite a bit, and I, I don't really want one, but I'll take it just in case I need one. Let's go do this fetch clear, 440 meters away, and then we'll come back and do that buried supplies, because why not, right? Let's do five tier threes in one day anyway. Because tier threes give good enough rewards to justify it, in my opinion. Grab this because, you know, wood's hard to get here. Nice. Pop that and go back and get more wood. Wood is annoying to gather, sue me. Right. What a fun room that was. I'm gonna have to craft more iron arrows before Horde Night. Oh, I always forget about this one. Oh, more free wood. Uh, more trigger rooms too. <laughs> I need to upgrade my sneak skill at some point to avoid those. Hello. That doesn't seem like it was worth it. It was cool though. Where am I? Oh yeah, I know this place. Great! More trigger rooms. Thanks, bum pimps. Whoop. Let me run around in circles a little bit here. Take this outside a little bit. Ah, 
And we're clear. Right, let's get the loot out of this place. Ooh, gas can schematic. That's actually very nice. Because we are in the desert. So getting oil shale is really easy. Meaning that we can craft gas as soon as we get a chem station now. Oh, this is such a fun mechanic. There we go. Pistol beat 6, AP 9 mil, very nice. More lockpicks, ammo. I'm gonna scrap that sledgehammer and let's go. I hope I get something good for this tier 3 complete. Like a chemistry station or something like that. Right then, so. First of all, he's asking if I want an AK that's slightly higher level. Sure, I would have preferred literally any other tier 1 firearm at level 5, but hey, I'll take it. And there we go. So we've got the chemistry station. The generator bank bundle, 10 time charges, some ranged mods, and the farm bundle. I'm not sure if this is the one that gives you super corn or whatever, but chem station, way more useful. So we can just craft gas as soon as we find some oil shale now. That is so nice. And we'll take the buried supplies. I hate them, and you're going to see why when I do this job. <laughs> right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is activate the job so I know where I'm going to be doing my thing. And then I'm going to build, like, a pillar. Because these jobs are going to throw so many zombies at me. It's not even funny. Uh, let's start digging. Uh, I'm going to try the old southwest corner trick. I don't think it works as reliably anymore, but might as well give it a shot, right? The little staircase to the southwest here. The clay is also nice. Okay, it doesn't look like it spawned any zombies this time. That's good. Uh, here's the problem with the tier 3 buried supplies. Spawned like five zombies. I'm just the, sh the second shrink. Great XP, sure, but if you're doing this on Insane Nightmare, you're dead. You have just died. And if it turns to night, I might die. Which is why this pillar was here. Just in case. Zombies again? Yep, more zombies. Why are you going for the pillar? Uh, reloading. Hope I don't attract a screamer with all these bullets. That would be very unfortunate. Should be fine though. Just a 9 mil. More of them. Is it going to happen every time? This is a huge radius. I hate these quests. Right then, let's continue. Almost night time as well, what could possibly go wrong? Ah, finally. Pistol and a pipe baton, woo! Let's see if we can get back to Trader Hughes before nightfall so I can get the reward today. And that is why I refuse to do Berry Supplies missions at all. They're just a bit miserable, especially at like tier 3 and 2. Your ones are okay, the, the waves aren't very large, and they don't happen like every time you dig, but oh my god, on tier 2 and 3 they're terrible. Hopefully the reward was worth it though. Hey, don't come in here unzipped. It wasn't. Right then. I've done five jobs today, but I still have a little bit of a urge for some treasure. Because tomorrow the traders are gonna reset, and there could be some dukes in that treasure. It's rarer than it used to be, but it's not terrible. Let's head over there. Here we are. Just outside some kind of military base over there as well. Nice. Now, buried treasure missions are nowhere near as bad as buried supplies. They're just bigger and you have to unlock something at the end. But there's no, like, distance problems or zombie wave spawns. I'm still putting this here in case a wandering horde comes by. 
for the most part, I should be fine. Uh, where to even start digging? Look at the size of this place. Ah, there it is. Right, let's get this open. I have 12 lockpicks. Hopefully I can do it. Yeah, this seems about right. <laughs> oh my god. Seriously? This is a joke. Oh my f Well, I'm here. 12 lockpicks game. 12 lockpicks and I couldn't even open it. Oh my god, the stone axe actually broke before it opened it. Oh, that was actually like five minutes of just hitting that. Seems like I've attracted attention. So we got a terrible bone knife, iron breaker, a couple bits of ammo. This was not worth the time it took to come out here or the time it took to dig it up or the time it even took to break it open. I am not happy. Fun pimps, why don't you just make your lock picking minigame actually fun? Like your name would suggest you know how to do. Hey guys, welcome back to Desert Ranger. Today is day seven, and that means that tonight we're going to be fighting the Horde. But before we do that, we're going to have to do some stuff during the day. Now, I think my base is as done as it needs to be, but we did unlock tier four jobs yesterday, or rather, we're about to unlock tier four jobs when Trader Hugh opens, because I've already completed all the tier threes. And it'll be really interesting to see if we can get some good tier four rewards today. Maybe we can get two tier fours done and then do the Horde night. Hopefully that doesn't make the episode too long. Really quickly, before we get started, I brought some stuff over that I'm going to sell the Trader Hugh here because his trades reset on day 7 if I remember correctly and I have 17,000 dukes as well so we have room to buy a lot of stuff. I also need to buy some water because I forgot to bring any. I did put some water in my Horde Night box back at my base though so not too bad. Yeah that seems good. Let's buy a health bar and some rock blisters. Pick up some of this coffee just to deal with the minor thirst issue. Right, Hugh, talk to me. Let's have a look in his secret stash first. It's the most important part. Nothing I really want. Looks like I missed out on the Magnum schematic, which I probably should have bought. Electric fence posts would be nice if I could get a generator set up quickly, but it's kind of overkill for a day seven horde. Acid, I don't feel the need to buy because it's kind of nowhere near as bad to find as it was initially in Alpha 20. I'll buy more cobblestone because I need more resources. And yeah, let's buy some, oh wait, wait, wait. Get the sugar butts. Yeah, yeah, before we go buying a big stack of uh, concrete. There, that saved like a thousand dukes right there. Any more arrows? I do need more iron arrows, so I'll take those. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna buy today. So, right, so here are the jobs he has. There's two relatively close by, one kind of far away, and two nighttime jobs, which I'm not going to be doing tonight, as I feel something may get in the way of that. But let's start off with the further away clear zombies. The school one. So we're going to Navisgain High School. That is a great PY. Now one thing I need to make sure I do is bring lockpicks. And it looks like I didn't, so maybe we need to check back in at the ranger station really quickly and grab some of those because that would be a terrible, terrible eventuality if I had to mine my way through 10,000 health of tier 4 chest. Right then, I'm back at the base and I don't think I will have any lockpick spare considering how we ended the last episode, but it's worth checking. Maybe I'll have some time charges or something like that. Doesn't look promising though. Yeah, nah, I don't think we've gotten lucky this time. Chuck this coffee in here for later and that health bar. Put these in here. Grab the Aqua Juice. I wonder, do I know how to make lockpicks? No, you need the first rank of the lockpicking skill, right? Well, maybe we should really, really quickly upgrade some of this base, get some XP, and then go out on this job with a few lockpicks crafted. I know how we could get some XP actually, I just bought some concrete. Maybe we should head over to the Horde base and reinforce some of it tactically. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start by just reinforcing the foundations, just because I don't wanna mess up any of the pathing by making key areas too strong initially here. There we go, so there's a skill point. 
I am going to be going into perception much later in this series, so I don't mind putting a point here into the lockpicking. It doesn't feel particularly wasteful. And I know I have the forged iron and mechanical parts to make some lockpicks at least. Well, I don't think I have any dire need of any more mechanical parts for a while, so I can spend a couple of minutes doing that. There we go, there's our 11 lockpicks. Right, let's head over to the high school now. The reason I crafted lockpicks there is because you're going to get a lock chest at the end and it's going to have 10,000 health and I'd rather not bash through that with the stone axe. Also, this POI might give me a lot of ammo at the end if I get it open, so it's probably extra worth it on Horde Night. Right, let's get started. Oh my god, look at the amount of acid I'm getting now, thank god the fun pimps fixed that, or rather I shouldn't say they fixed that, thank god they changed that, because it wasn't a bug, it was just, you know, a questionable game design decision. Oh, okay, I just have crazy luck today with, <laughs> with the acid, I don't even need the acid for anything right now, I have a chemistry station, and I don't need any wheels, I suppose I could make a fuel saver if I knew how to make one. But I just don't have the schematic for it. Right, let's have a look over here. Here's the final loot room, and this is how I like to deal with it if I can. There's one. Where is the next one? There's one there. But this bow is genuinely too accurate. I try and aim above things, and it just goes over them. Here we go. Uh, I see him, but can I get an angle on his head at some point? That would be useful. And I see that soldier as well, but again, a headshot would be nice. Although... I'm probably never going to get headshots, so let's just aggro him. At least there's 10,000 health of bars between us right now. I would rather that than the alternative. I suppose he could go for the door to my right, actually, wait. What is he going for? Is he just hitting a wall? I suppose the wall is weaker than the bars I'm behind. Well, I think the tourist just heard me and fell. Or maybe a cop. I don't know, nothing to worry about, though. Oh, sounds like he's breaking through. Oh, it's a feral, hello. Let's go melee first. Because he has sledgehammers for hands, so I want to deal with him quickly. Oh. And I'm back, right. Imagine if I'd gone away and forgotten about this guy. He would have just clotheslined me. Right, it sounds like I woke up the other guy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, those feral tourists can break blocks like nobody's business. It's really scary, actually, in, like, feral sense and stuff. Okay, we're clear. I don't know if there's any good loot in this other room, but... Just give a quick look. Oh, yeah, here's something. I checked every vending machine in here, by the way, and none of them were working. So we're going to have to be doing this... Without jailbreakers. I hope we don't have a repeat of the last episode. I can only survive one brain hemorrhage today. Right, let's just give it a shot and hope for the best. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, okay, it was only a few. I only used, what, three lockpicks? That's not too bad. Okay, so we got impact driver schematic. Nice. Ten lockpicks. That solves the first issue. Urban combat volume six armor doesn't slow you down. That's very, very good. Muffled connector is probably worth using for this build, and I even got some magnum ammo, which I've been looking for for a while now. Put these muffled connectors on... you can't put muffled connectors on padded armor anymore. Why? Why did they do this? Okay, let's put them on the gloves then. I also have a hood now, which I can use when I'm not cowboy hatting it. Right. Let's check this other stuff. What? <laughs> what? 
What a weird combo of items to get in a bookstore box. Take them both though. Come on, fuel saver. Or schematic. Damn it. That would have been so nice for all the acid I got, but here we are. Four grip schematic. And is that it? I think I got everything else. Yeah. Well, that wasn't too bad. Also made a big profit on lockpicks there. Almost got all the lockpicks back from the, uh, the incident. I wonder if this is going to give me enough XP to level up. That would be really nice as well. <laughs> uh, Just don't let this go to your head. Of course it's a level 6 stun baton. What else would it be? <laughs> of course. Of course. It could have been a tier 6 knife. Could have been a tier 6 baseball bat. A tier 6 iron sledgehammer. But of course, instead, it was a level 6 stun baton. Oh, do I want 3 painkillers or do I want 600 dukes? <laughs> Honestly, I'll take the painkillers. Enough to level up. Nice. Right, let's see. What can I put that into then? I have all the strength I want to go for for now. Perception's kind of fine where it is. It might be worth putting points into like pistols because they're going to be my main weapon eventually. So probably about time I put points into them. Let's take that second job. I am going to go over to that job and do it. Right, let me dump some stuff in here. And let's get on our way and get that tier four done as quickly as possible because we're kind of pushing it with the time. This guy out here counts, apparently. Okay, so the guys in the garden count as clear. Okay, fair enough. You stop my stamina jumping down, I'm an idiot. I'm really disappointed the high school didn't give me any 9 mil bullets because give me a bunch of ammos I would rather not have right now. Like, I would have preferred 9 mil over more magnum ammo. Oh, the decap chance with six agility is disgusting. Oh, nice. That's just a straight up level six pickaxe. Sure. That'll help me if I run out of lockpicks for sure anyway. <laughs> oh. Oh. What level of machete can I make right now? Four. If I got another point, I could make fives. I need to go and get some machete parts then. Hmm. I'll need 15 for a level five, I think, if I understand the maths on that correctly. So that is going to be a bit of a goal for the short term here. Hello. Ugh, I shouldn't have tried to make that jump while reloading. Whoa. Nice, more magnum ammo. Another beaker. Okay, we're coming up on the end room here. This one can be pretty scary sometimes, but let's try and get a few stealth kills. Oh yeah, that's a room filled with guys. Okay, that thinned them out significantly. Really? I don't one-hit that. Oh, that's a waste of arrows. Let's try to go melee. Oh, looks like we're going loud. Ish. I mean, I'm still using a knife, but I'm not sneaking anymore. Ow. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Quick little first aid bandage here. There we go. Are you a feral? Oh, he's a feral. <laughs> oh, we bled out. Nice. No 9 mil for Horde Knight, though, but honestly, the 9 mil isn't fantastic on Horde Knight anyway. Let's open this. I didn't bring my lockpicks. Oh my god. I hope they're just in the motorcycle outside, or I might just retire.
custom fittings. Put those on the gloves. And a double barrel shotgun schematic, sure. Okay, that didn't take too much time to clear at all, but I do still have to go and get some lockpicks here. By the way, what's my loot stage? 57. Utter trash. We are not getting good loot yet, but that's the thing about the new loot system is even if you're getting low level loot, you still get good stuff from high level POIs now, which I love. Big pile of lockpicks, some ammo, usually something like some acid or something like that. It makes it feel a lot more worthwhile, you know, having lockpicks to open them rather than just being like, I'm not going to get anything good, I'm not going to bother with this. So, good change, fun pimps. Right, let's pop this open. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> funny game, funny game. Oh, you're so funny. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ooh, extended mag. Crucible schematic. See what I mean? The loot is worth it now. Also, 10 time charges are basically like a load of lockpicks, so I'll take it. Iron armor is no use to anybody. Some 9 mil and some more magnum ammo. We're gonna have more magnum ammo than bloody 9 mil. Not that I'm complaining, I'm just surprised. Right, let's head back to you, get the quest reward really quickly, and set up for Horde Knight. Cutting it kinda close, but I should be fine. I've got a motorcycle after all. Alright, and we might just get enough XP to level up again, if not. Uh, when I head over to the Horde base, I can put some concrete in and I'll probably level up. Uh, sure. Level 5 Steel Knuckles. <sighs> well, those rewards are kind of terrible, but they're also kind of good, they're just not good for me. That's the annoying part, it's like, those rewards would be great if I wanted them, but I don't want those particular rewards. Right, let's head back to my base, grab all the stuff I need, and then head over to the Horde base. Right, Horde Knight box. Everything I need. Nice. Let's put the shotgun on here. Move all this down. <laughs> and the Magnum. I actually think I put the Magnum in the wrong box. But we should be good. Right, Magnum, shotgun, everything. I think we're good. Let's go. Right, so we have the motorcycle in the emergency position. Uh, let me swap out the axe for the hammer. Oh no, the hammer's here. Let me put some pipe bombs in here instead of the axe, right? Let's get a skill point really quickly. Just keep leveling up the foundations. Well, I didn't do this part. There we go. Put that skill point into pistols. Even more handgun damage. One thing I'll definitely want to try and do is get into that block there. There, so there should be no chance of them breaking through this and crumbling the base beneath me if something goes wrong. Because it's made of concrete and it's only the day 7 horde. This is kind of overkill, but better safe than sorry. Try and do this. And I do a similar situation to that other thing back there. I don't think I'm going to be able to thread the needle. Yeah, I'll have to wait for some of those to break, which they will. Yeah, looks like we're good. Let's head up. I'll do this way. And it looks like I missed an iron hatch, but honestly, not that big a deal. I'm also going to upgrade this block. Oh, are we out of concrete? We're out of concrete. Right, this is what we have. So we have a bunch of iron for the repairs. I have money on me. Why have I got money on me? Nice big stack of dukes there. Um, I'm probably going to find money in the bag, so having a stack of dukes open isn't a terrible idea. We got everything else I need. Plus a bunch of stuff I just didn't have time to put away, because, you know, we're kind of cutting it close here. So... I've got my AK for if they get through. <laughs> I have the pistol if I need to do some extra DPS. I'll try and not use my 9mm because I'd rather use it for clearing. I've got my shotgun with a lot of ammo for it because the game just throws it at you. Keep in mind in episode 4 I sold this much shotgun ammo and here I am with about the same amount. I have my magnum with 80 odd shots here. I also have the bow, which isn't terrible on the first horde, and I have some pipe bombs, some molotovs. I'm going to take some vitamins, just because I don't want to get infected, and I rarely use vitamins anyway, so it makes sense to do it now. Now it's a waiting game. Oh, here they come. Yep, they seem to be doing just fine. Stack on that bleed. You know, if they're going to pile up that quickly, I can always just do this instead. Never forget your pipe bombs, folks.
Yeah, with this build, I might just have to use my guns. The uh, the knife is not a good Horde Knight weapon. <laughs> oh, she can reach me. Okay. <laughs> hey, some loot. So when you're doing this, you may want to keep an eye on this one and repair that. Very, very cheap. And that top block. Don't forget that top block. Because that'll get you. Okay, they're bunching up again. Let's use a pipe bomb. You can use Molotovs, but they are so unreliable for me, I just hate it. There we go. I should probably use the Magnum a bit. Desert Ranger, after all. It just feels like the ammo's too precious to use right now, though. <laughs> Check that top bit. Yep, they're really going for it. Whoa! Whoa! How did she do that? Okay, I gotta watch out for that then, apparently. You really can't go wrong with a double barrel shotgun for the first horde. This is with no points in Boomstick either. It's a, such a reliable weapon, I love it. Of course, I'd rather have like a pump action. So they broke through the first layer of hatch. Don't be too concerned about that though. Just hold this for a bit. You'll get there. There you go. Keep this bit reinforced. No problem. Oh, brought up chat there. I think a good upgrade to this would be a few electric fence posts along this uh, front part here. Just slow them right down and line them up for a good penetrator shot later in the game, maybe. I think I'll make a bigger base later though. Something that can handle a bit more demo issues. I also should have put a block above there just so they stop piling. Not that it's a big issue because it's just cobblestone. Pop, pop, done. Pop, pop. Let's chuck a pipe bomb while they're piled up like that. Oh, that bounced. Yeah, that missed. There we go, that won't. <laughs> There's a level. Gonna put that into pistols straight away. Before I forget. Speaking of pistols, let's go back to that Magnum. That can't be it all already. Sounds like she landed down and didn't land on a spike, so she's hitting the base, but that's the nature of the primitive spikes. Another pipe bomb time. Repair that. Check the ceiling block. Repair that. Pipe bombs are so OP, especially for the early horde. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what build you're doing. Pipe bombs and a double barrel shotgun with this base. No problems for the first couple of weeks. Although, maybe you'll want a pump action by like week three, but still. Okay, is that actually done? It sounds all clear. You can see, by the way, the pipe bombs don't do crazy damage to the surrounding area. They do like 10 damage every block nearby. You'd have to throw a lot of pipe bombs for it to be an actual issue. I'm going to probably put like a block here or here just to stop them doing the standing on top of each other thing because it's mildly inconvenient and I would prefer that to not be happening. Oh, look at all those loot bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spikes ran out is the problem. Uh, so they probably have put a few punches into this. But it seems to have done its job mostly of just landing in the spikes and stopping them. There is a little bit of damage because towards the end there you can see there is no spikes left. But if you were using like electric fences or blade traps, that would have been fine. Look at all these loot bags. Weighted head. I'm going to take those crossbow bolts because we might find a crossbow soon. Some food, some shotgun shells, some... Drinks, a uh, level 5 iron shovel, sure. Uh, some more ammo. Pipe pistol, I, I'm gonna look at it. Iron armor we can sell, some first aid. 
scope schematic, more magnum ammo. Thank you, game. Level 5 sledgehammer, scrap it up. Uh, more crossbow bolts. The goldenrod tea recipe. Okay. No need for Master Chef rank 1 for me then. Yep, yeah, okay. Is that everything? Yeah, the spikes really are the MVP here. They just stopped any damage to this. Of course, you can use iron spikes if you like, but they're kind of resource inefficient in my opinion. What's up guys, welcome back to Desert Ranger. So now we're into that second stage of a series where we have to figure out some long-term goals so that it doesn't become boring me just playing 7 Days to Die for no reason. So while I wait for the trader to open here, I thought I would explain some of the goals we'll have for the series. So one of the goals I'm of course going to have is going to be to repair the ranger station and make it nice and livable. For that I'm going to need some paint though and probably an excess of concrete because I want to level it all up to concrete so that it can actually withstand some attacks. Another Another goal is going to be to get a big horde base set up that can survive like a day 70 horde or something like that. And another goal I want to do is to show off all the tier 5 POIs in the game. Now obviously my map might not have them all. For example I have not seen the apartment building in Alpha 20 at all and it just went very dark. But it is a tier 5. It just doesn't seem to spawn anywhere. But all the tier 5 POIs at least on this map I want to show off. Oh my god. What is this rain doing? This is a desert series, come on! Anyway, I want to do all the tier 5 POIs that are on the map, so that'll probably be like Deshong Tower, Agashi Pharmaceuticals, Crackabook Tower, maybe the Shotgun Messiah, maybe the Shamway Factory, maybe the new Pop and Pills Factory. If the apartment's on this map, we'll do that one as well, and I think that's all the tier 5 POIs. Oh, and the hospital. What we're gonna do today though, zombie dog, what we're gonna do today though is fight this horde of zombie dogs. And then we're going to do a bunch of tier 4 POIs, because I need rewards. Because we're going to need better equipment and we're going to need more XP. Now come on dogs. Also, I'm apparently hungry and I didn't bring any food. Great. Outstanding start. Well then, that was a very interesting way to start the day. Let's go get some jobs. So, let's see. Let's do the closest fetch clear first. It looks like one I might have done before, so we can maybe speedrun it. Yep, it's this house again. Right, well, as is the protocol, I'll do this one extremely quickly. But you guys don't have to sit through too much of the same. Really quickly in the middle of this POI here, I got a skill point and I'm not sure what I want to put it into. It might be wise to start going into Daring Adventurer, but it would also be pretty smart to start pushing towards 7 agility and getting and getting Gunslinger to 4, Deep Cuts to 4, maybe Run and Gun maxed out, maybe Flurry of Blows maxed out, maybe Light Armor maxed out, and also some more Parkour at level 8. I think I want more Daring Adventurer, because... That is a very good perk, and you'll see why at some point in this series. We'll just have to wait for the good rewards to come in. Oh, I'm really sad. I got some nerdy glasses, but like, the agility goggles are also really helping me right now. <laughs> wait, actually, wait, 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 wait. Are the agility goggles helping me? Honestly, not really. I might lose a rank of parkour, but getting one intellect and 10% XP might be worth that. Okay, so we keep our rank of parkour, and we need to get a lot more points to get to agility 7. That definitely cements my decision that I'm staying in intellect for the next little bit here then. Okay, coming up on this room again. Let's see if we can replicate what I did last time. Oh, hello. Um, okay. Let's aim a bit closer to his face. That was a weird one. Oh, battle. Ow. Really? Another one? 
another one. How many ferals are in there? Whoa. Three ferals. Also, I forgot this bag. Right, we're clear. Let's go see the loot we get from here then. Okay, let's test out the time charges again because I left my lockpicks in the motorcycle. Take a little step back. How much damage did that do? Okay, so I'll take a couple of these. Still locked. Okay, it looks like one of those didn't actually do damage. So do it one at a time. That is a hard chest. We got a beaker, muffled connector, schematic, advanced connectors, leather leg armor, first aid bandage, some ammo, and money. Nice. Hopefully the reward is something actually useful this time and not like a level six stun baton. Felt incredible. Level four steel club, level six steel shovel. Hmm. Well, if I was playing a club's build, this would be great, but I'll take the steel shovel. It's at least useful for now. Till I get an auger. See, I'll sell him that shovel as well, because it's kind of worth it. What does he have? This is kind of close. Is that the same house again? I swear. It is the damn same house again, just in a different location. Hugh, what is this about, man? What's your issue? Right, well, since I've done this twice now, and this is going to be the third time, I am completely just going to skip over this for you guys. I'll meet you guys in the loot room. And here is the final loot room. Not much interesting happened during the rest of the POI. I didn't bring enough time charges, by the way, to open this properly. So I'm probably going to have to do like three time charges and then bash it open with the iron pickaxe, which is not going to be fun. Pistol Pete Volume 2, successive leg shots, useless. If you're aiming anywhere but the head, you're doing it wrong. The rocket launcher parts, I mean, sure, I'll take them. Ooh, a double armor pocket mod. Can I put that on anything? Oh yeah, my boots. There we go. Right, let's see. Ah, uh, we got about halfway, let's bash open the rest. It's not gonna be too bad with a pickaxe anyway. Nice, let's see what we get. Some more sewing kits, I have loads of these now, that's very nice. Another beaker, more money, more rocket launcher parts, cooling mesh, some ammo. Not great, but not terrible at all. Let's get out of here. And I swear, if the next one I do sends me to the same House Mansard 2, I'm gonna cry. Oh, I can one-shot this now. Nice. Right, where's the motorcycle? Before I do anything, remember to grab the lockpicks so that the next thing I open does it properly. And let me eat that. Okay. Right, let's go back to Trader Hugh. See if we can get a PY that isn't this one. I bet you'll send me to that high school or something. Oh, I'm not mad. Okay, not so great. we get a stun baton level 5 with 3 first aid kits or a triple armor pocket mod. I think I'm going to go for the pocket mod, to be honest with you. you. These are some terrible tier 4 rewards. Possibly the worst tier 4 rewards I've ever had. I need to make a single clothing pocket mod for these bottoms. I could run around getting all the mailboxes until I got needle and thread volume... What is it? Needle and thread volume 7. That would be useful. So we might want to check out all the mailboxes to get that and max out my inventory completely pretty quickly here without needing to go into pack mule. Also I'm going to put a point here into intellect. That's going to unlock nothing because I'm going to need four to get dating adventure or two and that's what I want so hmm. Anyway let's do fetch clear here. House old tutor one. What's the matter? Chicken? I've never heard that voice line but it was amazing. Right, let's do fetch clear at the Tudor 01. I think that's the colloquially known as the house on the hill. Kind of a big one and we probably will end up doing half of it during the night, but that's fine, that's fine. I'm going to check in at my base really quickly because it's on the way there and I'll dump some stuff and grab some of the things I forgot to bring the last time and I'll meet you guys over at house Tudor 01. Okay, so while I'm at my base here, I have realised that officially 
these three boxes are filled and that means it's time to make some storage. I'll do that when I come back from this POI of course. In the meantime, I'm gonna tell the forge here to just make me a bunch of nails. Um, 500 might be a bit much, but you know what? It's fine. We have plenty more iron where that came from, so we'll be good. Right, back to that POI. Here we are. Now this is a fun POI. Ah, it was hiding behind a painting all along. Anybody back here? Oh, hello Arlene. Come here. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do. I got a glancing blow on her. Right then, let's break through this because I see medicine and I'm a drug addict. Nice, painkillers. It all paid off. Tell you what, those points and pistols are doing really nicely for me. Advanced bellows, nice. Retracting stock, not awful. The structural brace and the stun baton, decent. I mean, the stun baton's kind of useless because you can learn that with the perk, but still. These are all great bookcases. This is better than going to crack a book. Compound bow schematic. That would be so good if I had actually put any points into bows, but I'm just using my sneak damage. Wrench schematic. Not exactly useful now, but I'll take it. Okay, is that all the bookcases? That was some decent loot. Anybody in here? Nope, let's grab this ammo and medicine. Okay. The game is really preparing me for what's going to be down here. But I know for a fact it's not that bad. You can go up, by the way, and get like a secret stash, but as you can see, I just fell. So I don't know if I can... Uh, we could pillar it. I don't know if there's any way to do this without pillaring. Maybe with a higher level of parkour or something, I don't know. Or is it... Yeah, it looks like it's just a hidden stash. Wasteland Treasures Volume 3. The one that gives you all the acid from everything. Fantastic. I mean, acid is nowhere near as rare as it once was, but that makes acid even more common, so I will accept it. I forgot that that was not going down to the bottom. <laughs> right, let's fight. Ow. Stabbed in the back. You coward. Oh, it bled out. <laughs> I woke up some of them. I can still get some sneak attacks at the back there, I think. If I aim it properly anyway. Can I thread this needle? I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to stealth attack any more of them. Nice, he bled out. I think they're all bleeding out now. <laughs> so now we're coming up on this kind of final boss room almost. Kind of a scary room. Might want to make some <laughs> makeshift defenses here. Did I bring my hammer? I did. Oh nice, we got a skill point. Right, let's put that into intellect again and then the next one can go into daring adventurer. Right then. Yeah, that's a room full of guys. Who do we want to target? He's not going to die from this. She might. He didn't, but it was worth a shot. Shoot him. Let's get a sneak attack on everybody. And then line them all up. So I've sneak attacked four of them. None of them have died because I've not put any points into archery here, so it's not great. But we're doing a lot of damage to them, so they'll be very weak when the fight actually starts. Hello. Fight has actually started. Yep, yeah, that's worked pretty well, actually. Softened them up. Hello, cop. You, I didn't soften up. You, I should be worried about. He's gonna pop. Is that feral coming out of there? Looks like it. Nice. Yeah, 
think we're done. Honestly, that room wasn't too bad, but if you just open the door and start shooting, it does get pretty ugly sometimes. More acid. Sledge turret. Burning shaft. Double armor pocket mod schematic. That may be worth making a couple of those. I'll probably wait until the triple armor schematic, actually. I don't want to waste all my duct tape and sewing kits on that. Gas. I can't believe I stopped in at my base and forgot to get food. I'm still sitting here hungry. Ah, oh. It was almost first try. Okay, the lock picking's being nice today. So, more sewing kits. Night Stalker 1, do 10% more sneak damage in night. Uh, acid again. More money, more ammo, armor parts, and a weapon mod. I'm gonna scrap that. And... What does that give you? I have two burning shafts. Oh, now you know it's a real problem. Let's put them on my tools. Useful for making things light when you're digging at night, actually, putting a burning shaft on a tool. Right, let's get out of here. We'll need to pop that button on. Seriously, why is it... Why is it a different block if it's got the same health as all the blocks around it? You're just baiting me. Oh, hello. I doubt she was alone, though. There we are, more of them. Right then, well, that was successful. How many tier 4s did I get done today? So, let's call it 3 today, 2 yesterday. If we can get two more done tomorrow, we'll unlock tier 5s on day 10. That's not a bad place to be. Right, let's head back to the base. Oh my god, the storage situation is just out of control. Right then, so I have a bunch of wood and this was making me a bunch of nails. So I think it's time we made some storage containers in the basement and got to work. I can make 50. I'll make 25 in my inventory and 25 in the workbench inventory. And I need some food. Right then, while I wait for those to craft, do I know how to make a cement mixer yet? No, that's kind of annoying. Why have I not found a cement mixer schematic yet? Well, in that case, we can go for advanced engineering too after we've done dating adventure or two. That's probably a good idea, actually. That's going to let me craft up some cement mixers because I have the engines and the other ingredients are kind of easy to find, so it shouldn't be an issue. Also, I have a single pocket mod in this hood here. And yeah, my legs don't have a pocket mod in them. That's a good start. Uh, you know what? I have three minutes while I wait for those boxes to craft. While we're expanding our storage in that way, we could go into the town and hunt down the mailboxes. And that's going to give me a very high chance of finding ranger books, which I'm using archery, uh, spear books, which I can sell, and needle and thread books, which mostly I can sell, or if I find volume 7, I can make double clothing pocket mods which would give me another three inventory slots. And I suppose it wouldn't be a terrible idea to upgrade all of my armor to having double armor pocket mods. It would probably unlock almost all of my inventory and just sort that problem out entirely. But that does depend on me finding volume seven of Needle and Thread, which might not happen. But it's pretty common nowadays in these mailboxes. I just have to go find some mailboxes. bloody desert. I'm not finding any books and this is so weird because in my own personal world every mailbox I open has a book in it. That is very odd indeed. Barrel extender schematic. Here we go, spear hunter. So it's proof it can be done but I'm just not getting any good luck. Ranger's Guide to Archery Volume 1, take 20% more bolts back, nice. Archery Volume 7, 20% greater chance of knocking down, nice. Needle and Thread Volume 6, that's so close to being the right one, why do you bully me game? Needle and Thread Volume 3, footwear, again not helpful, I'll just sell it. I think I'm done with this little neighborhood here. I did a big loop of this whole area here. There's more out there, but it looked mostly empty, so I'm going to go somewhere else.
Needle and Thread Volume 7. Let's go. I knew it. I'm so smart. I came to this little town to the west here. The one slightly closer to my house, actually. I'm still interested in archery books, though, so maybe I should keep going. I should probably get that storage system and stuff set up. We can come back here later and continue looking for those. So yeah, mailboxes are now a fantastic source of the archery book, the spear book, and needle and thread. And the big one you want is that needle and thread volume 7. It's going to let you craft double clothing pocket mods, and that is six inventory slots right there. Okay, let's take my 25 of these and 25 of these and go into the basement and see what we can do here. Because there's a nice little storage room basically built in. Uh, let me bring up my shovel for some light. There's a nice storage room basically built in here that we can use. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we line all of this up with storage containers and we use this area for crafting later once I patch that all up. So let me start by taking this out. Okay, each of these can fit nine of these boxes inside. That's pretty nice. In fact, I don't think I need to go and fully expand this. I'll just put these boxes in here for later. So let me put this as blocks. Medicine. Ammo. Materials. Weapons. Slash tools. Parts. Food. Clothing. And armor. And finally, mods. And later we can expand that, take some of these categories and narrow them down in the other parts. Let's start to transfer the storage down here then. I'm also really quickly going to get a box here. We're going to put it there and call it Trader. Just for things I need to sell and to store my money in. So I can take my books here. My money. And I think that's all I really have to sell right now. But that's fine. Oh, and do that. Okay, that is everything moved down from upstairs. We have our boxes here sorted out. Mods is empty because I didn't actually have any mods, but you know, it's fine. I've had to make some compromises on materials. Usually I split my materials into like 10 other boxes, but right now I clearly don't need that. So my last thing I need to do here is get all my stuff back that I kind of just dumped in here because I don't have the inventory locking, so I kind of just dumped everything for the sake of uh, time so that I wasn't constantly fiddling with everything. That should be enough there though. What's up guys, welcome back to Desert Ranger. In the last episode, I basically completed three tier four jobs, but I didn't quite collect the reward for the last one. So that's how we're gonna start off our day here. The plan is to do two more tier four jobs and unlock culture and unlock tier five so we can start doing some of them as i said in the last episode one of the goals of the series is to take a look at all the tier five pois or at least all the ones on this map because there's no guarantee i got all of them so hugh what do you got for me oh level six compound bow or level four military boots i think i'll go for the compound bow okay i brought the magnum today by the way because i was bored of the pistol i thought i would uh, switch it up a bit I'm going to grab these electric fence posts. I'm going to buy all this cloth because cloth has been eluding me. I keep forgetting to gather it and I need cloth to make those pocket mods that I found the recipe for in the last episode. So makes sense. Let's see what he's got. If I get Mansar 2 or Tudor 1, I'm just not doing it because I've done it so many times now. Housing development. Uh, That's the one with the zombie bear. I'd rather not. Oh, the other housing development. School 1. We did that already. House burnt 06. Let's do it. All right, let's head over to 1.3 km away and do. I've already forgotten what it was. It was a burned house. So that'll be interesting. And let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, two more 
including this one, and I'll be able to get Tier 5s unlocked. If I finish Tier 4 today, I'm not going to do the whole log off and reset the jobs exploit. I'm just going to do something else for the rest of the episode. Yeah, that's a lot more effective at that than the 9 mil is. <laughs> I see... is that a Dishong Tower? Hiding behind this tree? Looks like it is. Interesting city out here. Oh, and a hospital. Hey, this is where all the tier 5s are going to be. Oh, and there's Crackabook. Okay, there's a bunch of tier 5s out here, but let's do this place. Hello? Oh, I know this place. This is a weird POI, it must be said. For tier 4, it's very, very small, but most of the fighting happens outside. It's it's a different POI, that's for sure. Survived that, are you feral? No, nope, he just straight up survived that. I must have hit the body or something. It's also one of the rare POIs which has a wolf as a sleeper. You don't see that much. Hello there. Oh, he's feral. That explains that. Holy wolf, where did you come from? Whoa! Hey, that's the cop dealt with, at least. Come on, parkour, you can save me! Eh. One second here, quickly bandage up. The white seems kind of confused. Oh, he's going to go that way now. God, he's tanky. <laughs> what was that? I hear one. I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Snake. That was odd. I'm eating really quickly. Alright, now then, there's apparently still some zombies alive, but really quickly. Pretty sure the loot is in this room over here. No? Guess not, there's just a feral white and a feral cop guarding nothing. This is what they're guarding. Literally two containers. Weird choice, but okay. Let's head inside the actual POI then. Nice, we've got a skill point there. Let's put that into Danning Adventurer. We'll get an extra choice when choosing quest rewards now, plus extra dukes for doing it. Where is that? Okay, just have to kill some zombies now. Workbench schematic, I already know, but I'll just read it. Uh, okay, let's head upstairs. Wow, she survived that. She survived a sneak attack from a knife with like three points in knives. That was one high health feral. Okay, we're going on the roof. Oh, we're going in the roof. That was a feral and she died from that, well. Wow. I think he was a feral as well. Did you see how much damage he did? What? Oh, a few more it looks like. Oh, you're a feral too. Everybody's feral now. Just the big trend, everybody has to be feral. What happened to good old-fashioned zombies, hmm? 
And then let's take a look at this loot. Nice, some ammo. Right, let's hope I remembered my lockpicks. <sighs> yeah, funny joke game. Please just open the box. Let's see, double barrel shotgun schematic, 14 more lockpicks, some gold, shotgun choke, and some ammo. I'll put the shotgun choke on my shotgun, rather predictably I'd say. And we'll head back to Trader Hugh and see what he's got for us. I'm hoping for maybe a low level machete, that would make my life a bit easier. But I'm not even sure if that is an option for tier 4 quest rewards. Let's see what he has for us. I never would have guessed you'd pull through. Ah. Uh, so here you go. Nothing great. The polymer string mod would be great, but I, I wouldn't want to take that from a quest reward. It's really easy to find. I just haven't found one. Let's take the military vest. Good armor, at least. Yeah, a significant upgrade. 5% more damage resistance. Yeah, that looks better. Let's take another one. What's he got? I'll take the tier 4 clear zombies, okay, I suppose. We have a deal. Um, it's done. I don't like the PY I'm being sent to here, but there are worse ones. It saves me having to go like 2 kilometers to do a PY I've already done. Here we are. The housing development 01. Good place to find a cement mixer schematic at least. Hopefully we'll be lucky enough to find one. I'm gonna start right and go to left because that's where all the loot in the final dungeon is. Oh hello. There's another one over there. Don't you try and fly away from me. Over there. Oh I didn't even think I would hit that shot. <laughs> right let's check out this house here. Not oh, Annie bled out. Head down. Hello there. Whoa. She's got the moves. Another crucible schematic. That's why these construction site boxes are great. But I already know how to make the crucible because I got it in like tier 4 loot. Still though, if I hadn't found it in tier 4 loot, that would have been amazing. I think it's a 5% chance to get them from construction crates, by the way, if you're wondering. Motor tool part. Right, let's head over to the final house. I saw some dogs. Hello there. Oh wait, before we head over to the final house, there's one more zombie in here and a button to open the final house, I forget. It's him dealt with, press the button. Right. So here's the thing about this POI and it's why I kind of dislike it. Uh, there's just a zombie bear in the garage. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Wait for it. Yeah, he's just there. Why? Who knows? Let's wait for his head to come back up. And miss. Deliberately. It's a tactic. Trust me. Now, he will make short work of any cobblestone pillars I make, so there's no point trying that one, but... Headshot him there, and then run. Up the fence. Climb the ladder. And up here. He may have even forgotten where I am, I was so fast. I missed, apparently. You gonna go for the ladder and be terrifying? I think he's trying to, but let's just pop him in the head a few times. He's hiding. The zombie bear is now hiding from me and that's terrifying. Here we go. Nice little decap chance there to speed the whole process up. Right, there's still some more zombies in the actual house. And I guarantee I've missed a zombie somewhere in this, like, process. Really? Yeah, you can't really get many sneak attacks on these guys, so I'll probably just walk in and wake them up and get to a good position. Behind this one frame here. Okay, 
And we missed one somewhere. Where is he? In this house? Probably, right? Of course, I missed one way on the other side of the building. Okay, now it's actually clear. Let's go get the loot and get out of here. Also, I got a skill point. Is there anything good I can put that into? Uh, no, I'll probably just put more into intellect so we can get up to Daring Adventure 3 and then eventually Daring Adventure 4, which is the really good one. Right, let's unlock this. First try, nice. So, steel tool schematic, kind of good, I guess. I'm probably not going to bother crafting them, though. Those iron crossbow is good, but not at that level compared to the compound bow. Scope schematic and some ammo and healing, nice. Right, let's head back to Trader Hugh and get the tier 4 complete. Right, let's see, is there anything I want to sell in here? The silver, probably. The scope, I'll actually keep the, sc the scope for later. Uh, let's sell the tool parts, motor tool parts I'll actually keep, bow parts we probably just won't need now, and the rest of the stuff I'll just keep and put in a storage container later. You. Well, I guess you ain't so bad. Okay, so we got compound crossbow, painkillers, 4 times scope, level 5 ratchet. I'm gonna go for the compound crossbow and then I'm gonna have to make a lot of bolts because the compound crossbow is way better at what I've been using the bow for because it just does such a higher amount of damage. Ah, here we go. So, we can get Ranged Mod Bundle 3, Steel Armor Bundle, which will all be about level 3, M60 Bundle, which could be anywhere between level 1 and level 6, 500 concrete blocks, or 4x4 four four parts. Hmm, I'm torn between these three. I don't think I need a 4x4 four four anytime soon, and I'm going Intellect anyway, so if I want to make it, I can make it that way. 500 concrete blocks is really helpful for later, but the M60 would probably make every horde a joke. Ah, I'm gonna go for the concrete. I have to. Yeah, and the rest are all tier 4s, let's not bother with those. But let's head back to the base and do some renovations. We can maybe use some of those concrete blocks in the process, but probably better to just use it for XP. Uh, get some cobble and wood set up there for things I want to make the base look a bit nicer. The concrete blocks will put me further towards that big base I mentioned I want to build at some point. So keeping those for later is probably the smart decision, even though it's not the M60 decision, which would have been more fun. I think it goes against the spirit of the Desert Ranger, you know, all about magnums and lever actions to use an M60. Also, my trees are grown just in time because I'll need to cut those down. I really wanted a better axe. Now I'm probably just going to craft one. I could maybe craft a steel axe, but it might be a bit overkill. Okay, all my stuff is sorted out. I got some crossbow bolts from my storage containers. So we can use this when we're gonna go clear the next PY. It'll be very useful for a tier five for sure. So I've got a couple of things I wanna get set up first. First of all, those double armor pocket mods or the double clothing pocket mods more importantly. So I need leather, duct tape, cloth and sewing kits. And then two double no, three double clothing pocket mods. And what about the double armor pocket mods? What do they require? If I remember correctly, the difference is mechanical parts and scrap polymers, yeah. How many of those do I need? So we have a triple, none, none, one, double. So we need a double, double, double. So we need three double armor pocket mods as well. So scrap polymers, duct tape, mechanical parts. I don't think I have enough scrap polymers or mechanical parts right now. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to go out and scrap some stuff for that. But we have the clothing pocket mods we need for now. There we go. Sell those clothing pocket mods, I won't need them right now. Right, so that's that dealt with. We've unlocked almost all of our entire inventory here. If we get the double... That'll be one more. That'll be two more from that. And that... If I can get those three double armor pocket mods, I'll have almost all the inventory unlocked except this slot and then later on when we just find a triple armor, we can use Right, also I kind of want to take this oil shale and a little bit of coal and just make myself some gas cans. Because I'm kind of low on gas and the desert is full of oil, so it makes sense. I will need more, obviously. Next, I was thinking about a steel axe. I would need 12 tool parts and I doubt I have that at all. 
Yeah, I have two. So maybe we can go for an iron axe. Yeah, iron fire axe 50, forged iron, five leather, five duct tape. Don't know if I have 50 forged iron crafted, but I can definitely get my hands on it. Okay, the forge is going to need more iron then. Cool. Let's take half the iron I have. I have enough clay in there. So... I also want to get the advanced bellows set up, which will need pipes, more duct tape, and nails. Nails, pipes, and I'll just make a bunch more duct tape as well. Okay, we got the advanced bellows crafted up, so let's go put those in the forge and start crafting some forged iron. I've not been saving it up at all, because I really don't need much of it, generally. Right, and I can make a little bit of it already, but let's wait a second. It might be worth getting an anvil. Oh no, that's a lot of iron. Let me see if I have an anvil already somewhere. Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like I have an anvil anywhere, so that'll be on the priority list, as, along with a crucible, I think. In the meantime, I'm going to break these blocks out, because they're the wrong shape. There we go, let me grab some cobblestone. I won't be able to paint this for a while, because I just don't have any chrysanthemum, but we can definitely at least fix up functionally. Okay, the basement is looking mostly secure. Let me take out this cobweb. There's the 30 forged iron I'll need, so that'll take a few minutes to craft up. One thing I should definitely do is remove this door and replace it with a door I can actually use. Right then, let's get this forged iron. Oh. And get it crafting an iron fire axe. Level four, decent enough. And I'm out of cobblestone. Well, that's a decent amount of upgrading done. Base is certainly more secure. One thing I do want to do though is come through here with an axe. And deal with a couple of issues. There we go, let's take the iron axe out here. This is much nicer, much clearer. Right, let's take out these. Right, so the first thing I want to do here is take out this staircase because I'm going to stop using it now that I've got a door down there. Okay, I'm not fully done with that, but let's take this block and copy the rotation of these blocks. Just make it a full thing again. I got any food on me? Nice. And let's take these weird blocks here. I can get the thing for them. There we go. And copy the rotation. No. Copy rotation. I think we also need to fix this one. I see the problem. Does that happen on every corner? No. Weird. Right, well, what we can do... is a bit of this. Looks like it should be that way anyway. For some reason the designers put it facing in the other way? Unpimps, why? Why have you done this? Let me pick these back up. That is infuriating. Alright, and then we're going to have to also get more of these blocks here, because they have to provide support to the railing. 
how far apart are they? So there's one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So there's three blocks basically between them. So one, two, three, this one. One, two, three, this one. One, two, three, this one. One, two, yeah, that's fine. And then switch back to these. I can highlight them. Let's try it from down here. There's a crawler around here somewhere. He's going to bite my ankles. Okay, let's reinforce the railing. It'll need to be painted at some point, or the other railings will need to be unpainted either way. Okay, this place is done. Let's fix up the remnants of the staircase then. There's a bunch of crawlers around here somewhere. Where are you? Oh, we got a skill point, and I really want that treasure, but there's no way in there. How did he even get in? Oh wait, there probably is still a way in there, right? Yeah, here. <laughs> Alright, let's dig out a little way in. Worth it for loot. Let's see, ammo. The rest of it can just go on the floor. Okay, I hear one more zombie. Cool. I really need to work on the perimeter of this place. Right then. I think that's all the renovations I'm going to do to the base today. I'm going to take out this little stub here. Also, I got a skill point really quickly. Let's put that into intellect. We can now get up to level 3 daring adventurer and a bunch of other things in intellect which come from intellect 6, so that'll be good. Break this down really quickly. Okay, that's all the renovations I'm doing to the place today, except for... <laughs> There's always one weird little thing for that. There we go. So, I've now made the balcony just its own thing. I will take out this pylon thing and fix that up as well so that there's absolutely no threat up there basically. I won't have to worry about zombies coming in there. The main point of entry I want to be here and then I can go to the storage room or I can go up here which is currently the forge room with a forge in it. And I'm going to tell that to craft more forged iron. Hello everyone and welcome back to Desert Ranger. Today is day 10 and we are going to be doing our first tier 5 job. Hopefully Trader Hugh has some easier tier 5s because I don't want to go straight into doing the Shong Tower. That could be kind of difficult. Alright Trader Hugh. Are you a customer? Let's see. So let's take a look at all the ones he has. So he has tier 5 really close here. Job, Skyscraper 2. That is Crackabook Tower. Skyscraper 3. Three, that is Higashi Pharmaceuticals. Hospital 1 is the hospital. Skyscraper 1 is the Shong Tower. And Factory 3 is the new Poppin' Pills Factory. I think a good starting point for a Tier 5 POI is going to definitely be the hospital, because that is by far the easiest of all the Tier 5s in my opinion. And it's also one of the shorter tier 5 POIs. I find that a lot of the tier 5s take you about an in-game day to complete. The hospital and crackabook tower do not take anywhere near as long to complete. So here we are at the hospital. So the plan for this POI is definitely going to be using my compound crossbow as much as possible to minimize the potential damage I'm going to be taking. So let's just get this started. Cause you only have so long in the day and I'm thirsty immediately. First of all, let me check this ambulance for some medicine. Okay, painkillers are always good. Right then, let's see if we can sneak up on some guys here. I need to put some points in stealth at some point. Okay, we got some guys coming in the door I just closed. Okay, this isn't really the way you would normally do this, but since that zombie was determined to come in here, I'm going to take this opportunity to come into the playground area and take out these birds and some of the other zombies. Normally, you would come out of that door over there and do this, but since we're here, might as well. 
I think I'm being snuck up on. One second. Yep, hello there. Is there more? How many zombies are gonna come through this door? Why is there so many? Again, even more of them. What is happening out here? Is there a wandering horde? Oh, there's a wandering horde. Okay, is that all of the Wandering Horde dealt with? Oh, here's a stray. Really ruined my stealthy approach with that Wandering Horde just coming directly towards me. One thing you should be very careful of in Tier 5 POIs is how much you're using your gun. Every time you fire, you generate a small amount of heat in the area, and if you generate too much heat, you'll summon a Screamer, which will summon a small horde if it sees you, which could cause the problems to escalate, especially if you use your gun to clear out that Screamer horde and then summon another Screamer by using your gun, and it becomes a whole situation. So you do want to avoid using your guns where possible on Tier 5s, but sometimes you just have to clear things out efficiently. Oh, this is a fun room. Let me clear the floor here. Nice, some Mega Crush. That could come in handy with this room, given how likely it is that they'll all fall down and start chasing me, but I'm going to try and take out as many of them as I can sneakily. Yep, you can see all the red markers pop in now. Is that his head? It was good enough. See if I can get a couple more angles here. Pretty sure this is just a trigger room. So if I go in and my stealth check decides that I am not stealthy enough, then they'll just all attack me. Okay. Well, that's a good start. Oh, can I thread the needle there and hit his head and not her leg? Can we do it? Nice. And just chop out these little things. Oh, I see a radiated suit guy thingy here. The word I'm looking for is hazmat zombie. <laughs> we go and get her head. And then we can hit her head if the hitboxes will allow. I see that nurse, but she's in a weird position, so it's kind of hard to hit her. Again, clear these. If you just tippy-tap the keys, you'll stay in very low detection. You see what I'm doing there? If I was to do a full step, it would probably wake this guy up. So just tap, tap, tap. And just tap, 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 tap. Oh. Apparently I made a full step sound there. And pop. Looks like there's one more in this room. See if we can get an angle on our head there. Come on, these aren't jump onable. There we go. And... Is that this room clear? Without any incidents, did stealth actually work in Seven Days to Die for once? Fantastic.
Okay, there is another level. Let's put that into Daring Adventurer 3 and we'll get three more options now. And we need to rush to Daring Adventurer 4 so that these tier 5s are as worthwhile as possible. Because we'll get two rewards for doing them and two tier 5 rewards is better than one, obviously. Especially when you can only get one or two of these tier 5s done in a day. In your gameplay, you might just want to do tier 4s instead. The rewards aren't that different. You can get a lot more of them done as well. I'm just going to end up wasting all my crossbow bolts. I wonder. Hmm. Do I have wood? I have wood. Let's jump down a little bit here. Get the shovel out. Start digging some of this gravel up. Okay, that should do. Let's drop the sand. Oh, that is the art keys, not the 70 sty keys. There we go. Hop back up here. I have a plan so that I can keep using my crossbow. Won't be fantastic, but it will be better than not having a crossbow. I am hungry. Okay, are we clear on this little rooftop area? Looks like it. So... The reason I was gathering those bits of stone was so I could come over to this vulture and we'll find a few more of them and just make regular stone bolts. Because stone bolts are better than no bolts. They're not great, but they'll do. The damage difference is relatively minor. And it will allow me to continue clearing. I can save my iron bolts for the later stages of this POI. So let's head up here. Probably more vultures, right? Yep. Clear those out. Hopefully I can get to their feathers as well. But there is a lot of vultures on this PY, so there will be plenty of opportunities to get them. And I was up there, so let's pillar back up. Right, and craft some more bolts. So, so the bolts problem is temporarily solved. So we want to apparently go down here. I kind of want to go up there though, but this is the way the POI wants you to go. So let's, let's play its game. Oh, hello there. That's quite the entrance you just made. Ow, my knees. It looks like we're done with this area. Let's pop out the window again. Oh, this is the interesting floor here. Yep, you're seeing the ammo bags here. It's definitely prepping me for something. And then the first thing I'm going to want to do here is just block up one of these doorways entirely. And switch out the axe to the hammer or bolts great I don't need these regular bandages I'm gonna drop a bunch of stuff actually just kind of junk that I expected to find a little bit more of to make it worthwhile right so that's blocked up and let me load the good bolts because the surgery room is a lot of fun <laughs> there's a feral right there in front of me fortunately he died in one hit see who else we got where else we got i would not be surprised if there was a radiated zombie in here i said i don't want there to be a radiated zombie in here oh hello feral ow sprain <laughs> of course we should probably run <laughs> tactical retreat painkiller time uh, let's also... Steroids are already on. Cool. Grab that. Something in this doorway. Yeah, that's where the crossbow definitely fails compared to other weapons. I might be getting flanked here. Not to worry. We did bring some backup weaponry. Oh, 
Oh, I have some honey on me. Good. I can deal with that other disease there. Let me fix some hydration issues. Right then, so I see a red marker over here doing something weird. Let's have a look. Did he jump out the window and do some weird stuff? Yep, he did. Okay, that's one of them dealt with. Looks like there's one more from the surgery room who's on the loose somewhere. Ah, he is. Is it a feral biker or just a regular biker? Just a regular biker. Well, he's breaking that door open for me. No point in doing anything else right now. Alright. We have to pick up the pace a little bit because there's one even worse area than that. And night time is coming. Oh boy, this rooftop is going to be something. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not suffering the real effects of that sprain, steroids completely nullify it, so it's great. I still have the health reduction, obviously, but eh, it is what it is. There are worse fates than a little bit of a max health reduction. I'm still above 100, so there's nothing to really worry about. Let me deal with that really quickly. Well, that's a lot of birds. Let's use stone bolts on these, no point wasting iron on them. Okay, is this area clear? Okay, up there is where the bad things happen, so let's get this over with quickly. Nice, a load of ammo. Right, let me think about this. I probably don't want to go up those stairs just because stairs are stairs, they're buggy, they're annoying. Let's try and pillar up instead. And let's use parkour to sneak it up. Oh yeah, that looks like a fun area. If I activate these, I'm probably going to die. So let's hope I do this stealthily. Speaking of which, switch out to iron crossbow bolts. Good start. Okay. Oh, look at all the bikers, man. I hope they're not feral. He's feral. He's not a biker though, so it's less scary. Oh no, you're just you're just a tanky boy. Okay. Come on. He was a normal one, I think. Again, a normal one, I'm pretty sure. There we go. And this last one almost definitely is going to be a feral tourist. So, nope, just a normal one. Okay, so there's still some zombies alive in the area, but that was by far the hardest part of this POI. Uh, if not that room with all the ferals in it. Let's get down to the loot. We want the side without the spikes. Here we go. And I'll clear out the rest of this place in due time. So, we got a level 6 stun baton. Wow. <laughs> Bad start for the loot. Some medicine here. Oh, sounds like I activated them on the other side. Well then, let's greet them. I see. Are they in that room over there? One of them definitely is. And the other one I can't really see. We'll just ignore them for now. Right, let me get the axe out. Start popping these crates. Some medicine. I don't know what I expected out of that box, to be honest. Nice, some gasoline. Some motor tool parts. I do want an auger soon, and I might want to craft one, so that'll be a good addition to that. More medicine. Eh, we don't need that, or that, or that. But let's try unlocking the hardened chest. Okay, so, tier 5 loot is looking good already. So we got Night Stalker 4, never encumbered at night. Great, so I can stop using steroids. The auto turret bundle, that's going to give you, I think, it gives you an SMG turret and a couple of stacks of 9 mil. I won't open that because it'll take up more slots. We got the auger schematic, a double armor pocket mod, which I will equip. Mm 
We got some military armor parts, some money, some ammo, some medicine, some more ammo here. Just bring as much of it as I can carry. Uh, and some iron chest armor, which we don't need. That was decent though. Oh, we got some medicine here. Nice. And then we have one. Oh, I need to roid back up here. My sprain is back in effect. There we go. And let's. Oh, I'm terrible. Ow. Oh, is there some more I missed? Maybe I've skipped a whole floor here. Ooh. Ooh. I might miss a load of them on this floor. What? What if I... Oh, is this the rest of the surgery area? Yeah, they didn't activate. Oh, but it's just... It's mostly crawlers up here, I forgot. I'm doing this part backwards. I don't remember what part I've missed, but I know that you normally fight the dog coming out of that doorway there. Oh, yeah, I see what I did. Yeah, I'll explain it in a second. Okay, cleared. So when I was coming up here, I opted to pop up there instead of going through this area. That's all that was. It was a nice little room skip. Because I was determined to try and kill those guys before night came. Well, that was a lot of bolts, but we dealt with them. Get back to the motorcycle and then head back to my base. And in the morning, I'll get the quest reward. So we're here on the morning of day 11. We get a reward for that last quest just before we end the episode. I have to eat some food here as well. I went over to my base in the middle of the night and grabbed some stuff I could sell and all my money because I believe Trader Hugh actually reset yesterday and I forgot to check it so let's see what he has. These quest rewards are definitely interesting but not great. I don't need a steel club. Do I have a nail gun though? A nail gun's kind of a waste of a tier 5 reward because you can get it a lot earlier than this but you know what? Sure. Right let's see what he has for sale. I would like more crossbow bolts that's for sure. Uh, wheels are not a terrible idea if you have a lot of extra money lying around. SMG5 schematic. Hmm. I could make level 4 SMGs. Hmm, sure. Just in case I want to. Um, let's buy his concrete mix because I still don't have the cement mixer schematic. And cement for when I do eventually get it. And, ooh. That is expensive and probably not worth that price actually at all. Yeah, let's not do that. I will buy though is all those contact grenades, pipe bombs, more pipe bombs, and you know what? Let's buy a little bit of shotgun shells as well, right? Let's sell them some stuff back. Okay, that looks like everything I'm gonna get from him today. Okay. Well, it's about time you oh. something. Let's take a quest for tomorrow. Skyscraper two, maybe? Take a number. Skyscraper one, no. Factory three. I think I'm going to take Skyscraper 2, which is going to be a hard one, I'm not going to lie. But I think we can do it with all the newfound explosives, that's for sure. So I crafted some more iron crossbow bolts, and now that I bought those feathers, I'm crafting even more, so we'll be able to do that. When I go into the actual PY, I'm probably going to take the contact grenades, because they're a bit more responsive than the pipe bombs. Pipe bombs can be saved for Horde Knight. I'll take all the other crossbow bolts in, including the steel for if we see any armoured enemies. That way, most of this stuff away for later. We got a nail gun, which is very nice. And I got the SMG5 schematic. I'm not sure if the SMG5 really falls into the ranger kind of thing, but it's good to have just to be sure. And we can make it probably once we get the pistol parts because I can easily get 25 forged steel 
So it's just a matter of 12 handgun parts, or if I get my pistols upgraded, that would be 15 handgun parts. So that will be good if I want it, it's there. Next, I'm gonna save up a couple of points for seven and eight intellect so we can finally max out Daring Adventurer and probably go pretty deep into advanced engineering so we can get lots of traps on the base. It wouldn't hurt to also go better barter and grease monkey because intellect is by far the best late game skill tree. Hello everyone and welcome back to Desert Ranger. Today we're going to be doing another tier 5 job over at the Crackabook HQ. This is the second tier 5 POI that I have to cross off the list to hit that end goal of having done all tier 5 POIs on the map. And here we are at the Crackabook HQ. Now this POI very much favours a brute force playstyle, very heavily oriented around strength. Stealthing this one is going to be pretty hard, but I do have my AK as a backup as well as the shotgun and the pistol, so I think I can take it. I also remember to bring a bunch of contact grenades if things start going badly. What? What are you doing? There's a tourist trying to come out the POI apparently. As I said, this POI very much favours brute force playstyles and agility is not the best for brute force. So we may have to get a little bit cheesy with some blocks in this POI, but hopefully it should be fine. Anyway, let's start the quest. Oh, my frame rate is dying already. You'll love to be in the town centre in this game. Let's switch over to iron crossbow bolts and see if I can even try and stealth this POI. It's very much filled with trigger rooms which could make this very difficult. Okay, we got into the main hall. That's a good sign. Yep, there's all those red markers now. All of them are on this floor. I have to be very careful. If I take it slow, it should be okay. I can always remember to jump out the window, which is in that room there, I think. And a really bad idea would be to start looting things. Because that would make a lot of noise and wake up the zombies. So far, so good. I haven't been able to get stealth attacks on everyone, but they haven't all woken up, so that is a very, very good sign. I'm also glad this crossbow is good enough to one-hit kill a lot of the basic zombies without stealth attacks. So I've cleared this first uh, floor as you come into this building and it didn't seem like there was actually any ferals in there which is really, really lucky. Usually when you come into this POI, you'll come in that window, you'll probably step here, you'll activate the trigger and about 10 ferals will run at you but there didn't seem to be many if any ferals in this room at all for me so maybe my game stage is really working in my favour right now. So I've never actually successfully used sneak here, I'm not sure where the trigger would be here but I do see those zombies on the roof and I wonder if I should try and deal with them. And the last one hiding on the roof is Arlene. Oh, she caught it. Okay. All the red markers are gone, that is a good sign. Right, let's head up these stairs. Yep, there's all the red markers again. Okay, that was close. We could have made a lot of noise there and woke everybody up again. Ferals would be a really big problem for me because they'll sprint and I don't have much in the way of staggering when you play a knives build. That's where clubs and sledgehammers definitely have the advantage. And while it is time consuming, you do use a lot less health doing this. 
Okay, really quickly grab this courier satchel here, because I hate having to go back through POIs and grab those when I forget about them. So this side of this floor is done, let's head over here. the last guy on this floor, it looks like it. So I think I'm clear here as well. Right, I think it may be wise at this stage of the PY, because this is where things really tend to go a bit wrong sometimes, to use some wooden hatches to my advantage. So I'm going to pick up this broken glass again. I'm going to turn the hinges towards that. So now, when we come back this way, if we have to, I can bring this back up and zombies won't be able to get through. It's not great, but it's something that will slow them down at least. I don't think I have to be sneaking in here, I don't think I can activate the zombies on the roof from inside, but just to be sure. Oh, I heard a vulture spawn. Now this is a really miserable part of the POI. Sometimes this goes very wrong, but let's try and do our best to sneak it through here. Oh yeah, there's all those red markers. Sounds like I've activated a vulture, maybe one that was right above me, but if he's not at the door, he's not really an issue. Let's see, I can't get any good vantage points though. There we go. Let's see then. Pick off as many as I can. Oh, I hit her foot and not his head. Interesting. Let's try and hit that dog. I don't know if the bars will allow it, but worth a shot. Oh yeah. I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind people that I am not using any stealth perks and I'm only using two ranks of hidden strike so this isn't like some crazy stealth build because someone will inevitably ask to see my perks. It's just the bows have been buffed to such a significant extent that you really don't need to put points in archery or sneak damage and stealth is just a game of patience mostly. Oh I blew his arm off. It's just a matter of how much time are you willing to invest in moving really slowly? Oh. And how careful are you? And I'm a pretty careful person most of the time, so stealth works for me. There we go. It's nice to see those red dots thinning out a little bit, making this area a lot less dangerous. I, I can't tell what in there is an alive quote unquote a live zombie and what is like a dead body, but I think I'm seeing a dog and a Joe. So let's try and hit his knee. Yeah, it looks like he's dead. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more markers. I see one of their heads. And I see the backside of a dog. I don't know if I can one hit kill a dog without a headshot though, so I'm going to be careful there. There we go. And of course, as I've said, this is on insane difficulty, so this won't get any harder to do unless you turn on Feral Sense. This is as many hits as it's really going to take you. Bows are kind of OP, especially crossbows. They're limited kind of in the fact that they're not great for Horde Knight, but they definitely still work on Horde Knight, and they make your day very, very trivial in my opinion. But it's nice to play with bows rather than in Alpha 19, where they were pretty much worthless on any difficulty above Nomad. Uh, that's us up to 7 intellect. 2 more points, is it 2 more? Yeah, 2 more points, and then we can get Daring Adventurer, rank 4, and that is a really, really good perk. Also, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I've never tried to stealth this POI before, but it is actually kind of really easy. You just have to move slowly and it does help to kind of know where all the zombies spawn. Hello. Nice, so the roof's clear. The roof was one of the areas I was more worried about, so I'm glad that went really easily. Shotgun shells. Grab a little bit more ammo here, hopefully I'll get more bolts. Nope. Right, so let's head down these stairs. This is a really weird POI, they didn't do the best job with telling the player they're supposed where they're supposed to go. Normally if you're designing a level by the way, and you want players to go out on like a balcony like this, don't put a railing there, because believe it or not, humans are designed to see 
a thin ledge and a railing and go, oh, I shouldn't jump over the railing, but yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. And there's no real indication of that. You have to just kind of watch out for which of these windows has the hole. Hello? Oh, I hate this room. This this could be another room where a little hatch is needed. Just to be extra sure. It's very, very open, this POI. Which means you can clear it very quickly, but it can also go very wrong very quickly. As the numbers really stack against you. Especially if you're doing Insane Nightmare. Obviously, I'm just doing regular old Insane. Uh, no Nightmare, but it's still... Still scary, because you never know how many of these red dots are going to be ferals and are suddenly going to come sprinting at you. Sounds like there's a wandering horde outside. Ow. There's no point in complaining about the hit animations in this game. They have been borked for a very long time. Seeing how easy this is to actually stealth makes me think this might be the easiest tier 5 POI. I thought the hospital would be the easiest, but honestly, this seems really, really easy. Now, we do still have the basement to deal with, which is a horror, but the rest of it's been very easy so far. That dog... You think I can hit his leg? Well. Oh. And since he was the only thing left alive on this entire floor, nothing will wake up. Because this game relies very heavily on its sleeper volumes. I'm wasting first aid bandages at this point. I'm only taking like 12 damage a hit. I forget that I actually have decent armor now. Yeah, there's definitely a, a wandering horde trying to get in somewhere. I see him. I don't know how he got there, but he's not part of this POI, so I'm not going to worry about it. We might need more hatches, though. <laughs> now, that reminds me. I might want some metal, honestly. So, let's see. Metal, do you get from these? That's kind of decent. I'll take it. Just for some improvised defenses if things go wrongly in the next room. What is going on out here? Oh, I see. They've, like, climbed the ladder. They've worked their way over. Interesting. Well, let's help them out here. There's a feral out there. Ow. Is that it? We done? Okay with those stragglers there. Alright, let's head down. Bunch of red dots again. Now might be the time to use these explosives. You still alive? Not anymore. This floor is clear. Now, really quickly, I am actually going to loot these bookshelves because they have a tendency to get destroyed in the ensuing fighting. So, quickly grab these. Okay, I'm also going to read that ratchet schematic. I'll probably never craft one, but hey, it's free. There's a dog trying to come in there, but he'll die on the spike, so it's fine. Okay, so this is the really hard part of the POI. This is where things really tend to go wrong when they go wrong. So I'm going to fully reinforce that. I'm going to break this glass. And this glass. I'm going to place some blocks here. Just to slow them down. 
That's all the cobble I have. And I'm going to make it so that they can't walk through these windows very easily. Okay, so that's a little improvised defense over there. Open that up. It may be smart to also break a path through this. This is a strategy I have had to use on occasion on this PY. Which is, when this area falls, you run along over here, and you come out the PY like that. The zombies will come running into those spikes, and if you stand like over here, they'll continue to try and run through spikes. Which works pretty well. You just have to watch your back in the streets, of course. So let's head inside and see what we can do about this last room, which is an absolute nightmare. And I'm hungry and I don't have any food. Ah, I see, I might not actually be able to trigger the spawns without coming into the trap. There we go. Right, so the number one priority here is to kill things like that. That is a feral white and he's pretty hardcore, so if I can kill him with a stealth attack that would be a lot easier. Nice. He didn't die there. I thought I'd seen the XP pop up, but that was weird. There's another one over there. Well, he sprints around, we're gonna pop one. Oh, I missed. He's just gonna hit that, apparently. Try and take this room on slowly, because it can go pretty wrong. See? Oh, it sounds like we woke them up. Well, time to take advantage of our range and probably go loud. Well, louder than that, evidently. Yeah, I don't want to deal with spiders if I can help it. Now, I don't know how the volume will sound to you guys, but you can hear a lot of running right now. Yep, and all that kind of thing. Whoa! But he came in from outside. Let's use our grenades. And just keep throwing them in there. More, please. Yep. Can we hit 10k XP? Anyone else? There's a couple more in there for sure. Just don't want to deal with it. Not today, thank you. Anyone else? Nope, 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 there's some more. Sounds like one of the... This is a cobblestone broke, and she's behind me. Oh, some... Co I love that there's loads of bikers in the basement of a... bookstore for some reason. Like, they're guaranteed spawns, and I don't know why they're there. Yeah, it looks like we dealt with most of them. Okay, so there's some more zombies down here, but the main difficult part is dealt with. Big old swarm. You saw how much XP I got there. It was well over 10,000. You do have to watch that room. Now, normally, if you have, like, a club or something, you can kind of just brute force it. You know, put a trap door there and just keep bashing. But I don't have the crowd control potential that a strength player would have. So I have to be smart. Another little room here with yet more bikers. Very well educated bikers in this town evidently. Ah, he's enraged. Got at least one more, there might be another one over in another room there. And we've cleared it, nice. And here's the loot room. Let's start off with the best one. Okay, so we got the blueberry pie recipe. Nice, I guess. SMG auto turret schematic. Sure. Another auto turret bundle. So that's another two SMG turrets and another couple of stacks of 9 mil, which I'm going to open because why not? Structural brace, leather arms, are they? No, they're worse than mine. Baseball bat, silver, beaker, 
and some ammo and medicine. Nice. Some more ammo in here. Some more medicine, obviously. I'm gonna drop the brass. I rarely find myself actually crafting any ammo in Alpha 20. So I'll just not bother myself with it. Um, we got a couple more book crates in here. Uh, muzzle brake schematic. Probably not going to use that, but I'll just read them to get them out of my inventory. Chemistry station schematic. Sure. And pistol peak volume something I already know, so it doesn't matter. There's a few more book crates in here, though. Urban combat volume 7, take 5% less damage indoors and deal 10% more damage indoors. That is very good for POI clearing. And in a couple of cases, that might be the extra push I need to one-hit kill certain zombies with my crossbow. So I will take that for sure. Plus 10% less damage taken is always nice on a difficulty like insane. And we're done here. Now there is a few rooms up there I forgot to fully loot. Honestly, the Crackabook HQ is not a fantastic loot spot other than in the basement, of course, because tier 5 loot crates are always good. But... I think there is a weapons bag somewhere in there that I missed, as well as a shamway crate, but I honestly don't care. They are not worth the time it would take to go back up through the building and get them. Instead, I can go back to Trader Hugh, turn in this job, get another job for tomorrow, and start it at 4am straight away. So, rocket launcher, antibiotics, impact driver, exploding arrows, rad remover. Impact driver is nice, but it's not a rocket launcher. I can see uses for a rocket launcher, if I'm being honest. Uh, may maybe just a couple of uses, but I've got a uses. For Don't know what tier 5 I want to do. Again. Factory 3 will eat me, Dishong Tower will eat me. Agashi Pharmaceuticals could very well eat me. So, hmm. You know what, we'll take a break from doing tier 5 POIs to give him a chance to refresh and give me a couple of... Give me a couple of days to get better gear and more levels to make them more worthwhile. Because I don't feel like going into Dishong Tower just, just to get one tier 5 reward at the end. Well, in that case, oh, damn, things are selling like I guess I will just do some base upgrading tomorrow. Which is fine. Maybe we could do some crafting as well, some upgrades that I could get. I'm going to buy that one rocket frag because that could be very useful. And you know what? Ah, no, I'm not going to waste money on 44 Magnum ammo. So with that, I think I'm going to have to end the episode here. And in the next episode, we'll do some base upgrades, both Horde Base and Ranger Station, if we're lucky. And then on day 13, we can actually go and do a new Tier 5 POI. Hopefully, they give me something a little bit nicer than the options we have now. I'd love to do Shotgun Messiah. It's a long and hard POI, but I can definitely do it with this build. Um, Higashi has one or two kind of scary rooms that I would rather not do with just the basic knife. So I'd love to get some upgrades before I do that. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. It is day 12 and I spent most of the night of day 11 and the morning of day 12 running around the world trying to find a cement mixer schematic because it is still eluding me. I didn't want to just show you me running around clearing tier 1 POIs and stuff again. So I tried to find one, but I've just had no luck. And I didn't want all of day 12 to skip by without you guys seeing any of it. The best place to find a cement mixer schematic, theoretically, is a cement mixer. But I can't exactly find any. All the ones that are nearby I have checked. The next best place would be in working stiff tools crates or passing gas crates, which is what I've been searching for during the night. And I've had no luck in that regard. I wonder, would a cracker book have a good chance of giving me a cement mixer schematic? Also, the audio has completely cut out on my motorcycle and it's very eerie. Is that a reversing thing? No, that was weird. Anyway, maybe we should read this cracker book. And get a lot more books from here than we did from the actual cracker book HQ. Yeah, let's loot this cracker book here. See if I can't get lucky with a cement mixer schematic. Hmm, steel knuckles. I'll read that, sure. 
I doubt I'll ever craft any, but it's nice to know it at least. Hunting rifle and anvil. I'm going to read all the schematics I know. I could sell them, but I don't want to carry around a bunch of schematics. I don't have that much inventory space on me right now. The motorcycle is full, and I'm half full. So if I can avoid that at all, that would be nice. Ooh! Now that is nice. It's unfortunate, though, that I don't actually have any points in shotguns. I'm kind of just using one because they're good, but... If I do find myself putting some points into shotguns at some point, that will be fantastic. Ooh, bacon and eggs. I probably have some eggs I can use. All this paper I will take though, because I'll use it for shotgun shell crafting maybe at some point. Iron breaker mod schematic. You know, I've never crafted that. What does it actually take? Forge steel. Hmm. Not too bad though. If I need one, I can definitely craft it. Oil, which I know. Another pump action shotgun schematic. Extended magazine schematic. That could be useful, but the drum magazine is definitely better. Fireman's Almanac 5, reduced chance to be set on fire. That does barely anything for me in single player. There we go, Iron Knuckle schematic. Got all the brawling weapon schematics now if I need them. The Insulated Lining mod. Temperature mods are pretty pointless. Heat is not that dangerous. Baseball bat schematic, kind of pointless. If I want it, I can use clubs. AK schematic, again, pointless. If I want it, I can go for machine guns. Yeah, as I was saying, the insulated lining mod, not worth the protection compared to other things. Oh, super corn seed recipe. It's actually pretty rare. Well, at least in my experience, I rarely find it. I don't know if it's actually rare in the game's code or if it's just bad luck on my part. It looks like I've looted this whole main area here for all its books. Let's head to the back rooms. Also, I'm going to make a big deal out of searching every toilet I can find because those toilet pistols are good for handgun parts and I obviously want to make an SMG at some point. I had a level 1 SMG back at my base and I scrapped it for 3 handgun parts. And I only need 12 to make an SMG, 15 if I want to make a level 5 later on, so basically 5 toilet pistols and I'm set. Hey, a pistol, as I was just saying. And some silver, which is nice. So let me scrap that pistol, oh I did it already, handgun parts. Nice. As for the steel I'll need for the SMG, that's relatively easy to find. Just street lights and transformers. Also, I think I have a crucible, I can't remember. Either way, steel, not a problem for me anymore. At least not on a small scale for like a machete and an SMG. Maybe if I wanted to make a steel base, now that would be an issue. Nice one. We got a level there put that into intellect so now we have eight intellect which opens up a lot of the really good things in intellect for example daring adventurer's final rank which is the most powerful of them all you get the third rank of physician because a physician is on a very weird leveling scale compared to most perks you get rank four of advanced engineering again it's on a bit of a different scale compared to most other perks in the game and Grease Monkey 4, which is probably the most useful one, making you able to make gas 20% cheaper. Intellect is balanced in a very interesting way. A lot of the perks are made to be slightly harder to get than any of the other perks in other trees, but it's really a futile attempt at balancing, to be honest, because nerdy glasses exist and they're like the most prized possession anyway, so why would I really worry about it? Maybe if Nerdy Glasses didn't give an XP boost, people would be less inclined to go intellect. But given how useful a 10% XP boost is, most people just put the Nerdy Glasses on anyway. 
If you think about it this way, the maximum amount of skill points any other pair of glasses can save you is three. Being the final rank of perception or fortitude or agility or anything like that. Whereas the nerdy glasses not only save you up to three skill points that it takes to get to into like 10, but they also give you a lot more skill points. There's no reason to really use anything other than intellect glasses, because getting 10% more XP is generally more useful than saving up to three skill points anyway. And the glasses do save you three skill points if you're going to be using intellect. Plus the crafting time bonus is nice, but nobody really cares about that. <laughs> <laughs> Some more paper. Right, there's a dog in here, so let me make sure my guns are loaded just to be sure. Oh, hello. Did not expect them to be standing right there. They're usually over here. Let's close that and get some coffee. Right, so we got Fireman's Almanac 2 again, some nice leather leg armor, and a fortifying grip. So we can take that off. Switch out to the much better leather leggings. Probably just scrap these. They're just weighing me down. And I'm going to scrap the baton because the baton parts sell for more anyway and I already have a stack of them started there. That is worth it. Let's see what books we can get out of here. Mon Cement Mixer Schematic. SMG Auto Turret Schematic and more Iron Knuckles. And the Tactical Assault Rifle Schematic. That one actually is useful but again it's not really in my character build. The Motorcycle Chassis Schematic. Eh, I already have one so it's not as important. Would be nice if I didn't have one though. That would be like, well, the best thing ever, but I have one, so. <laughs> and some food. So no luck with the cement mixer schematic in here. Let's try maybe a construction site or something like that. Ooh. Level six scrap armor in general is fantastic for selling. You repair this all the way, just a little bit of iron, and then you fill it up with mods and you can get like 2000 for a pair of these. So I'm gonna keep those. Um. Where can we go next? Let me head down to the motorcycle. Maybe this is worth checking. There's usually a passing gas or a working stiffs in here. There's a biker as well, though, and it could be feral, so just, just in case. Oh, fuel saver, nice. That is actually really good. This will make you use 50% less fuel, so that is definitely worth coming out here for. Obviously, I live in a desert, so gas isn't exactly hard to get, but it's still nice not to have to refuel as much. And later on, if I get myself a 4x4 or a gyrocopter, that'll save me a lot of gas in the long run, so that is very nice to have found. Let's see, I raided this warehouse. No, and I see some construction crates which may have a chance for a cement mixer schematic, I think. Acid and wiring tools, nice. I never say no to acid, although I have like 13 of it now. Still haven't recovered from the initial Alpha 20 builds where it was extremely rare. <laughs> a lot of wood and forged steel, always welcome. Wood and forged iron, again, always welcome. Wood is a very annoying resource to collect, so I will never complain when the game just gives me like a hundred wood. Also, I got more acid there, which is nice. Anything of value up here? Doesn't look like it. Some glue. Never noticed this part before, though. Apparently there's something on the roof, maybe? More wood, great. Anything up here? Anything down here? Oh, I see, that's maybe how you're supposed to get that container. Oh. Ellen. Well, the search continues for the cement mixer schematic. The thing is, is I have a, is I have 500 concrete blocks in this motorcycle from uh, that quest complete reward I got, but I would really prefer to just upgrade blocks to concrete so that I can get the XP, and it's a decent amount as well. And it's not like my base actually needs any upgrades, this is purely for XP purposes, so it doesn't make sense to use those blocks. Seems promising, we got a bunch of, uh... oh we could maybe check in at Trader Bob's, maybe he just has the schematic for sale or a full, a full cement mixer, that's probably 
worth checking. Also, that police station might be worth reading for handgun parts. I don't, I don't see. Oh. Let's see, Bob, you got anything? Anything you like? A gyrocopter, just a whole gyrocopter and a, f a whole four x four. I could maybe buy this, but it would not be worth the money. But let's go to the secret stash and see. Motorcycle handlebars schematic. If I wanted to craft my own, I could do that now with that. High power 44 Magnum. I didn't bring any money, so I'm kind of screwed here, but interesting. Nah, it doesn't look like he has anything I really desperately need. I could buy his pistol, but it wouldn't be really worth the money. All right, let's check out the nearby area then. Actually, while I'm here, let me sell some things I don't really want, like this hunting rifle. And he's got some sugar butts for sale, so let me sell something really quickly. Get 100 dupes for. Slide, stranger. Right, let's see. Keep the handgun parts, don't want to sell those. And that will do. Oh, I see nothing of any real value there. Let's get back to looting. Okay, well, all the other PYs are really easy. I really want to check out the armory section of this police station, so I'll do this one during the day so I don't have to deal with, like, running cops. Nice. Looks like I have a really decent chance of one-hit killing them with just the crossbow now, without needing to sneak. Oh, I always fall for that. Every goddamn time. Toilets, check for pistols. Pop this open. Here's a little tip, by the way, if you're ever doing this POI, up there, there's a bunch of zombies, and when you open the final loot room here from in there, they're all going to drop down there, and this door will be unlocked, and they'll come chase you. If you're on Insane Nightmare, that can be pretty scary. So what you can do is kill them before you even open it. Get their attention. Um, or apparently not get their attention, you know. Apparently they didn't hear that. Kill them with some kind of ranged weapon here. And just not have to deal with it. They're stuck on the other side while you're out here safely. There we go. So that room just isn't a problem now. We just have to unlock it. I could even break through with the pickaxe, but there's no need for that. I have to get into another room anyway. Check for purse pistols as well. I forget those are a thing. One thing I'm also going to do here, since I'm doing a stealth build, is break this block right here. See, I'm in this office here, and then if you look behind here, you should see a cop. Now that cop gets stuck on everything in there and the, the spit is used frequently and it's a bit of a pain so I'm gonna try and just kill him like this. There. I have to deal with him because cop spit does a lot of damage on insane difficulty so any opportunity to not be spat on is worth taking and I didn't bring any lockpicks with me. But there could be a pistol in there. Quite the dilemma. I'll get my lockpicks uh, and come back for that. Here we go. Armor room here. Some more of those, those are good for selling at least. First aid bandages. For this part, you just have to break it open. Gun rack. Nice double barrel shotgun and some steel club parts, some more steel club parts. We press this and that door opens and then they fall and they come sprinting after you. But I already killed them all, so I don't have to worry about it at all. There's a dog here. Right, I'm going to have to come back for a lot of picks anyway to get that metal chest. 
no luck with handgun parts unless I get something in that uh, final box or in the safe, but still, decent loot. Not a cement mixer schematic either, though. I wasn't expecting one out of here anyway. No medicine. Off boots. Basics of electricity schematic, great. Oh, toilet. Paper. Unfortunate. Terrible luck today. We'll grab these uh, lockpicks. Wherever I left my motorcycle, we have to go 12 lockpicks. I did also notice a working vending machine in here, and maybe it's selling jailbreakers, and that would be nice. No, no luck. We'd maybe check Bob's, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> check this chest first. What do we got? Pistol Pete Volume 5. Some replacement lockpicks, at least. Nice old chain mod, I'll just scrap those, because I don't use a club. Some magnum ammo, some medicine, and a wooden bow that I'll scrap for the bow parts, which are worth more than selling the actual bow. Some mineral water. Let's check out the safe. Four pipe bombs and some money. Not terrible, but not what I was looking for. My quest for handgun parts and cement mixers continues. No luck in there, but that was the wrong type of truck anyway. You're not using these knees, right? Okay. Uh, construction crates, nice. Those could have what we need. Oh, I can't close that behind me. How do you lock a door open? I'll never understand that about this game. There we go, level 35, and with that, gaining Adventurer 4. So now tier 5 PYs are twice as worthwhile because we can get two rewards from them. And I can't remember if the final rank gives you an extra choice as well. It might, which would be nice. Also, the Duke's reward is also helpful, but it's not as good as the other benefits. But let's check these last few containers, and if there's no luck, then I'm just going to drive to the base and put my stuff away and get ready for the next episode where I'll be checking out the traders if they happen to have anything cement mixer related then we can upgrade the base if not there's not really anything I can do to upgrade the base because it's all cobblestone so yeah that would be something Okay, with that, I'm ending the episode here, guys. We did not find the cement mixer, unfortunately, but... Hang on. Oh. We did not find the cement mixer, but we have got some more handgun parts to put towards the SMG. And we finally got that final rank of daring adventure that I need, which is gonna give us some really nice rewards. For example, when we get the tier 5 complete bonus, I'll be able to take two of them, which is obviously really big because the tier 5 bonuses are pretty good, and I'll get two of them. In fact, generally, wherever possible, I try and not finish tier 5s without having that, but I started them a little earlier than I normally would. Anyway, I'm going to drive back to the ranger station, dump off all the loot I found today, and drive over to Trader Hughes, and I'll meet you guys in the next episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. I'm here back at the base after transferring a load of supplies I gathered in the past few days and I realized something. I have I have a lot of motor tool parts. So it would probably be a good decision to try and make an auger. Because I should probably have one for next week, because next week is probably when I'm going to have to build that new base. I think with the rate I'm leveling at, it might be a bad idea to continue using that small base after next week. But getting one of these is a good idea. Now, in my adventures, I've gathered 55 forged steel and a bunch of engines. The last thing we need is bicycle handlebars, which is three duct tape, three leather, one mechanical part, nine short iron pipes and three springs so now we can craft the handlebars and we just have to wait for those to craft and we should be able to make 
decent level 4 auger. Ideally, you would want to wait until you can craft level 5s, but honestly, I don't think I'm going to be going for minor 69 or rank 4 anytime soon, so I'll just do it this way. Now we can craft that auger and put some of those spare parts away. Now, my plan for today, once that auger is crafted up, is to head over to the trader because I have a lot of money and some stuff to sell. I'm going to sell them my SMG auto turrets because I'm not going to use them. The 9mm ammo will probably just end up being used for my guns. And they're worth a reasonable amount of money altogether. And I did check, they don't scrap down to pistol parts, which if you recall, I was collecting to make an SMG, which I can make with 12. But in the meantime, we'll live without that. So the traders will have reset today and hopefully they'll have something good for me in their secret stash. I'm also going to sell these old clothing pocket mods because they don't seem to be doing much for me these days. And I have some spare armor and spare clothes. Let's see, parts. I'm never going to craft any steel tools. I'm never going to craft a sledgehammer. Crafting armor is just a bad idea. And I doubt I'll craft a club. I'll keep shotgun parts just in case because I do like shotguns. And I doubt I'll actually craft a bow either. Okay, so we got a bunch of stuff to sell. Let's head over here. While that finishes crafting, I'm just going to double check my motorcycle and see if there's anything I need to put into storage here. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in my motorcycle on no. Now, we got that level 4 auger. What I'm going to do is take some of these mods off the shovel and some of these mods off this pickaxe. See what we can do to this one. So, I'll want to get an expanded fuel tank mod for sure, but in the meantime, Iron Breaker. Do I happen to have an expanded fuel tank? No. Can I make one? No. Well, I'll go for a grave digger in the meantime. The rest of those mods, however, can be put onto other things. I could possibly sell my old pickaxe. Oh no, the shovel would be better. If I put this serrated blade mod, which I don't care about, this burning shaft, the wood splitter I'll actually keep, the fortifying grip can go on there, and that shovel is now worth 3,000 with this stuff on it. And I can put the other two mods on my axe there, and that'll be fine. The pickaxe I will keep just in case I need a pickaxe, and the auger can go on my hotbar there, and the shovel I will sell because the auger basically is a shovel and I have plenty of gas and a chemistry station, so there should be no issue using an auger for most of my mining. Anyway, let's head over to the trader, we're a couple hours behind, but I wasn't planning on doing too much time-sensitive stuff today anyway, so it should be fine. Really quickly, now that I'm here, let's check if he's got any sugar butts. No, that is unfortunate. We'll be paying Are full price okay today. There? Right, let's sell all this stuff. Okay, so we got 43,000 dukes, so that is pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't got my better barter up to the level where anything amazing is going to pop up, but let's... Oh, a cigar. I want that for the bartering bonus. The strength bonus is also nice, but the barter bonus mainly. That's right. Do the math. Let's put that on. 10% off. I'll take the red die off my bandana and sell that to him. In the meantime, let's put the die on here. What else do you have? I'd really like some concrete because I haven't found that cement mixer yet. Oh, handgun bars. I have six, and I think I need six. So let's buy six of those. Okay. And... That's a lot of candles. Yeah, I see nothing else I really desperately want, but I might as well just grab the gyrocopter chassis schematic because it's fairly cheap, and I'm definitely not going to get Grease Monkey rank 5. So if I do want a gyrocopter, I should take advantage of this and grab that. If there's nothing else, you best be on your way. Okay, so I have Trader Bob somewhere nearby as well. So I should probably go and see. Now, I also have a quest to go see Jen. All the way out here. Um, I suppose I'll go down to Bob's and then discover what's in this town up through there. So yeah, let's do that. And we'll see what all the traders have to sell. Also, let me load my auger. Hopefully they'll all have something worth my time going out there for. Yo, Bob. Hello, stranger. We've met before. A lever action rifle. Hmm. Oh, he has a cement mixer. Nice. So, you know what? I'll grab the kind of terrible lever action rifle just for the, the theme. And I'll also grab 
the cement mixer. Not ideal, but at least it's something. Grab this wood, pull this cobblestone because it's really cheap. Pull this, this, and you know what? Why not a little bit more? Very good for XP. So we still have 20 something thousand dukes to Thanks go and see Jen with. Here. Come again. That's pretty good. We got our cement mixer. We also have the handgun parts to make the SMG and we finally got a lever action. Now I hate how these weapons look. Maybe I should get a mod for that. I wonder if anybody has made a mod to make a lever action rifle that doesn't look terrible. That might be wishful thinking though. Anyway, let's head two kilometers up there to Jen and hopefully she'll have something amazing for us to buy that I've forgotten I even needed. And here she is all the way up in the northeast, Trader Jen. First up, let's check all her workstations. Nice, some antibiotics, some lead. Ah, sugar butts, great. Apparently I had looted that before. Have I been here and forgot to mark it? That's weird. I definitely don't remember ever coming here. <laughs> That door's open, and that door spawns closed. Have I been here and forgot to show it? And forgot to remember it? And somehow un-need the map? Well, that's weird. Um. Anyway, let's go see what she has for sale, I guess. Right, what do you got for me? Art of Mining Volume 3. That might be worth just buying, because Art of Mining's a good series to have. Small motor tool tank mod could be good. Oh, she has the schematic for the large one, though. Might need to look into what you need to craft that. I get that you're a doctor, but this is way too many nerdy glasses, Jen. Uh, lots of cobblestone. Unfortunately, no, no concrete. But cement is there, which is, you know, half the battle. Advanced bellows. I might buy a set of those as well. Well, you know, a few let me turned up missing the other grab day. that. Let's grab... Art of Mining. Five Forge Steel... Two scrap poly, two duct tape, and ten gas. That's really cheap. Let's buy that schematic. Let's get all the cement and the cobblestone. Sure, just at least one set of advanced bellows. And yeah, that's all she has. Thank you well, so much. That was great. Hey, come again. Didn't have anything amazing, but a couple of useful things there, definitely. But let's head back to my base. Craft up some of that new stuff I just learned how to make and got the materials for. And I'll see you guys over there. Right, let me put the cement mixer down upstairs, and I'll see if I can just get a bunch of cement crafted straight away. I probably have some spare cement and sand lying around, and sand, a bunch of cement, and stone, stone, where's stone? Ah, yeah, we can get a bunch of concrete just crafted straight up, which is good, and I've also bought about a thousand it looks like, so that'll be good for my base. It's gonna take an hour, damn. See, that's why I would have wanted the schematic, preferably, so I could just have a load of those, but... We work with what we have. Okay, so one of the things I did get was enough handgun parts to make an SMG. At level four? Yeah, I need 25 forged steel. Do I have that? Just. And seven duct tape. Ah, I'll need to make some more duct tape. Do I have enough glue? Yes. 25 scrap polymers and seven springs. Oh, we got enough there. Let me put my bolts back onto craft there. And let's get this SMG crafted up. It's going to be really good. I'm going to head over to the Horde base. I'm going to probably get a couple of levels just upgrading that while I wait for the SMG and stuff to craft back here. It looks like I've come in and done some concrete before. I don't actually remember doing that, but clearly it's happened. Let's start with this. Okay, so this whole base is now concrete. I will want to put some more spikes or barbed wire down. Did I bring enough wood to just do that? 
spikes will do. Let's go for 20 more. And I'll just fill this all back in. Make sure that there isn't too much damage to this stuff if people start falling off. And while I wait for those to craft, I'll head back to the other base and get myself that SMG. Here we go, level 4 SMG. Let me just get rid of the pistol because it's simply inferior to the other one. Uh, where's that AK I had? I want some of the parts off of that for an SMG. Hang on. So it has a 29 round mag. I think that's on the upper end of the magazine size you can get on these. I don't have a drum mag yet. That's definitely a priority, but let's put that on there. That's going to increase our magazine capacity by 50% to 44. Nice. And then a muzzle break is going to reduce the recoil. Oh wait, I only have two slots and I think I would rather have... Well, I'd rather have a laser sight more than anything. Does anything have a laser sight on it? Because laser sights are fantastic for these uh, SMGs. Okay, so I'll have to go for a foregrip mod, which is a similar effect to the laser sight, but not quite as good. Either way though, that is looking pretty good. Very accurate. I'd love a suppressor as well, of course given the kind of stealthy nature of the build, but I always have the crossbow for stealth. This will be much better for when things go loud. I also got that lever action rifle. Maybe I should give that a shot today as well. Let's see, where is it? Lever action rifle. I believe the only scope I have that would work with it is the eight times, which is a bit much, but it'll work. Wow, four rounds. I got really unlucky with this one. You can get um, lever action rifles with up to six rounds in them because of variable statistics. I really love a bipod. That is a slow zoom in. I can't have the entire episode just be me doing some basic crafting and upgrades and not test out some of those upgrades. Maybe we should go do a POI. I don't think I want to do tier 5. I don't think I have time for that. But we could definitely maybe take on a tier 4. Why is there a snake here? But let's head over to Trader Hugh and see what jobs he has. He might have a good tier 5 that we can test out these weapons in. Right, let's take a tier 4 then, since all the tier 5s are miles away. There's this Underdown Business 5. Hmm. Get busy. Is that the one I think it is? That would be a very good test for my SMG if it is. Oh yeah, this is the BOI I was thinking of. I'm not sure if I've done this already in this series. So if I am repeating myself, I do apologise. This POI is scary, and I'll show you why. So when you do this POI, you go through all of this and you fall down into an area, and what happens is you get put down by that ambulance there, and you press a button which opens up both of these doors, and I believe it actually sets all the zombies in here onto a trigger attack down there. The problem being that, like, almost all of the zombies in this room are feral, which on insane difficulty is scary because they can do a lot of damage. Feral does a base of 50 damage on insane difficulty, meaning right now, not accounting for my armor, they would kill me in three hits. Counting for the armor, it looks like they'd kill me in six hits, which is pretty quick considering the level I'm at, really. So let's open this up. We can give our SMG a good old test here. Yeah, so there was, what's that, like five zombies in there and four of them were feral, I think? I think it was six and five were feral. Pretty scary, and it's made even worse by the fact that this isn't even the loot room. This is just a room you would never have to step foot into. The game, the game just wants to ruin your life. There we go. Uh, really quickly, before I actually open it, how much XP do I need? 778. That would increase my loot stage if I was the next level, so just 
place some weird blocks. We will need a couple more. There we go. And what I'm actually going to put these points into, weirdly, is better barter. Because I've already invested my way to 8 intellect, it'd be a shame to do that just for Daring Adventurer. And I'd really like to start getting some really late game gear. And while Daring Adventurer will make that a lot easier, it would be even easier if I just had better barter there as well. First mod. I might want to put that on my SMG just to control myself. Right, let's see if we can get back to Trader Hugh before he closes and get that tier 4 reward, see what we get. If it's an SMG, I might just end the series though. I don't care, Hugh, I'm coming in there and I'm getting this reward. You can't stop me. Well, I lost the bet on Swat this helmet. A level 6 steel man. sledgehammer. Damn. On a strength build, I'd be so excited by these options, but here I am. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the steel sledge and the SWAT helmet, and I'll sell them back to him. I could add more mods to this stuff and get even more for it, but I, I don't care that much. Um, yeah, just sell it. Fine. Right. Oh, money. And sledgehammer parts and bow parts and bandages. Stuff I don't really need. One thing I should definitely consider is... Oh, four times. Go. Trader Jones no! <laughs> no, I was going to buy... You know what? In retrospect, I was going to buy 40 coal. I think I can live without coal. The reason I was going to buy coal, though, is because coal does not spawn in the desert biome. So if I want to make gunpowder, it's going to be a bit of a pain without coal. So buying all the coal I find is going to be a bit of a priority. Whoa! <laughs> anyway, let me head back over to my base and craft up some of the things I forgot to do. And I got that 4 times scope mod so that I can put it on my crossbow. Because if you thought my crossbow was crazy now, wait until you see it with a scope mod and like a bipod if I can find one. It just absolutely tears through POIs. Another thing I should probably remember to do is put those spikes down at my base here. Did not do a good job of doing that, it would seem. That's good enough though. That will probably stop me having to repair much. And that should easily, easily hold the Day 14 Horde. Right, let's go craft that scope mod and the motor tool tank mod thing, whatever it's called. Also, I've just realized I've been using coal for fuel in this, and that's kind of a terrible idea. So throw that back in there, and we'll use some wood for fueling my chemistry station in future. Right then, so fuel tank. We need five forged steel. Do I have just just five? That's all I've got left. Two scrap poly. Of course, I can craft a crucible, can't I? Maybe I should do that as well. Two duct tape. I didn't craft any more, so let me do that. Right, let's see. Large motor tool tank mod. There we go. And for the four times scope, I will need 15 broken glass and 10 forged steel. So we'll need a crucible at some point, so I might as well see if I can craft one. 1,200 stone, 100 forged iron. Interesting. Let me see. Do I have enough oil? No, I don't have enough oil. How do I make oil? Need oil shale. Okay, so the crucible and the scope will have to wait until I have some more mining done. But this is not something I can't do. Very much achievable, but I've not been saving much of my, you know, mechanical parts and oil. I've been selling most of them or using them for crafting. But in future, we'll get that crucible up and running quite easily. I'll probably need to expand my crafting capacity up here because right now I've got one cement mixer and one forge. That's not going to be enough. There we go. Fuel tank mod. So now I can hold almost twice as much my auger. Right, so with that, I think I'm going to have to end the episode here. I'm not going to get much done during the night. I might start a mine of some kind, just to start getting some materials that we'll need a lot of in the future. And there's no time like the present on that, because you'll constantly need more anyway. I feel like this episode was maybe not particularly action-packed, but there was a lot of progression, so I hope... Some of you can at least appreciate what was done in that regard. Hello everyone and welcome back to Desert Ranger. Now as you can see, I'm in a bit of a weird position here. I built a mine during the night and I got a lot of stone from it. I've got myself up to about, was that like 7700 stone there? Just from going all the way to bedrock and digging south a little bit. This is so that I can get my materials later 
for when I'm doing my massive concrete projects, no doubt. I built this weird little main entrance for it just so I don't lose it. Yeah, got a decent amount of stone there. Spent the night doing that. Tonight is Horde Night and we need to make sure we're prepared for that. So really quickly, I'm going to put all these materials away and get back to you guys. Really quickly, before I do anything, I'm going to cut down all these trees because I completely ran out of wood last night. And I'll get back to you guys. Okay, all those trees down. We've got 2,000 wood. That is not a lot. But it gives me a good idea for how much wood I'm going to get once I replant all these seeds I got. Because you get two seeds from each one. So, I'll get 4,000 wood from the next one. And then if I replant all those after that, I should get about 8,000 wood. Which is a good amount for a harvest. Of course, for those of you who have forgotten, on regular desert terrain, trees only grow to half health which means you get a lot less wood from them. So you need to plant a lot more trees. If I do eventually get round to having a few more points in mother load, then that'll be pretty useful for getting more wood out of these. But otherwise, uh, it's just going to be building big wood farms rather than trying anything smart with it. While I was doing that, I was thinking, and the conclusion I came to is that I still need a cement mixer schematic because one cement mixer is not going to be enough for my needs. I need like five. That's how I play. So... With that in mind, I need to go out and find cement mixer schematics. And I'm going to go check Trader Hugh and see if he has the housing development 1PY. That's the one with the zombie bear in the garage, which is kind of scary. But, I mean, I'm well armed now, so I can probably take it. Warehouse 5. Warehouse might not be a bad shout, actually. House Modern 5. Let's take that tier 3, the warehouse. Warehouses have a lot of containers that are construction related. It's probably my best shot at finding that schematic in the meantime. Ah, yeah, I remember doing this place on Insane Nightmare once. It was kind of scary, but it should be fine. Of course, I'm hungry again. I'm always hungry. But let's head into the main area here. That's where all the containers that are going to have all the useful stuff are going to be. Oh, 12 blocks. Thank you, game. Have I done this PY in this uh, CDs already? I feel like I have. Well, I'll skip past most of it then. Whoa, feral. Yeah, there's a lot more ferals. Oh, I've backed into one of those boxes. There's a lot more ferals. Must have hit a special level where those start appearing everywhere. Still, the SMG will deal with them perfectly well. Whoa. Another feral. More motor tool parts. It's annoying, on all the playthroughs where I really, really want to craft an auger right now, I cannot find any motor tool parts. On this one, I'm just swimming in them. Oh, ow. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Stuck at a forklift. That didn't take that much damage, it's fine. Here's the satchel I came for. Oh, hello. I don't think I was supposed to see this. Steel spear parts, come on. More motor tool parts, of course. Be able to craft another auger any any moment now. Some ammo. Medicine. I mean I won't say no to it. Did I open anything important. Other than that big door. I'm not gonna get rushed by zombies. Hey, first try. What do we got? Steel tool schematic again. More of these damn spear parts. And a banded armor plate. That I do like. Where can I put that? Uh, there's room on these legs. There's 2% more damage resistance. Nice. 
Right, it looks like, other than a couple of boxes, this place was a bust. Still no cement mixer. And no machete parts, despite having three containers where I could have, and they were all, all spear parts. Why do you do this to me seven days to die? Head back to Trader Hugh, see if he has any other useful POIs I could reset to get some materials. Hello, Hugh. <laughs> Full auto mod, yes, I will take that. And some Molotovs, why not? Sell Molly's spear parts. I'm never gonna craft steel tools, there's no point. Right then, I'm gonna switch out my core grip here, which improves my accuracy basically. Put on the full auto mod. Now, obviously, the SMG is already full auto. But it also increases your rate of fire by 12% and I still get that 10% damage boost. So this SMG just became even more of a shredder. So thank you for that, Hugh. And I'm gonna buy his coal. <laughs> Those damn things are selling like hotcakes. Coal is selling like hotcakes, is it? Why do I think that's not true? Well, let's see, where is it? Pump action shotgun. Let me... No sugar butts, right. We'll buy that for that price, it's fine. Really quickly, is there anything else I need? You know what, why not? Let's also get a robotic turret. I have a lot of money and that's just a little bit of extra DPS, so why not? Okay, I think I'm good. I need to make some robotic turret ammo though, of course. Let's get like, I don't know, I'm not gonna bother reloading it, so let's get like 250. And while that does that, let me make my pump shotgun Decent. Oh yeah, we are well armed now. We can take on any of the tier 5s with this gear here. The Magnum, Shotgun, SMG. Even though the Magnum and the Shotgun are tier 2, they'll do just fine. Really would like a machete though. Maybe I'll get lucky with drops during Horde Night. I'm pretty sure uh, weapon parts are a drop in loot bags. So maybe I'll have some luck there. Didn't bring any water. I need to, I'll need water because like painkillers and fort bites and recog and stuff, they drain your water really quickly. Okay, I got some water, some yucca juice, and some goldenrod, and I got some of my boiled meat. We're good to go on Horde Night. I'm just gonna head over to the base and get ready for Horde Night. It's kind of early. When you're trying to make like a Let's Play episode that isn't like 50 minutes long. You have to kind of sit and do nothing to make sure the videos aren't too long sometimes. So let me. Okay, this came preloaded with ammo, that's nice. 70 rounds, okay. Um, Will it aim down there? I think it will. If it doesn't, we'll find out. It's really not going to be that helpful, but it is extra damage. Okay, we are very well prepared for a day 14 horde. This is kind of going to be a joke, I think. I'll meet you guys when horde night's just about to start. Did I remember to bring iron? Good. Right, let's go. I'll start off with a magnum here. Oh, spawned right in front of me. Well, at least it's shooting them until they get to like there. But you know what I should have done? I should have made some armor piercing magnum ammo. And wait, I don't know if I can yet. Because that would cut through these guys really well for this base build. Hold still, dog. Oh, sometimes they do that. It's if they really pile up on each other. Just make sure you don't uh, let them pile up as what as much as I am here. Fortunately, we do have the shotgun for situations like this. Keep that repaired. Hopefully, they don't break that top block because I didn't bring any concrete to replace it. I hear vultures. I'm just gonna have to not deal with them. Hope they don't break through two layers above me.
Seems like some of them are beating on the walls downstairs. Clearly the spikes haven't been doing their job or they all broke. Like I said, I will need to upgrade this base. Well, actually, I'm not going to upgrade the base. I'm going to replace the base. It's not a very easy to upgrade base, actually. You know, I really thought the Magnum would have a harder time, but doing fine. Eh, they're piling up a bit. Let's show them what happens when that occurs. Getting a little bit closer and try and keep it. There we go. Perfect. Some bleed on there. Like that bleed, hmm? Yeah, some of them are definitely having some fun down on the bottom there. That's concerning. Probably due to the destroy area mechanic though. Because you know the fun pimps hate us. One second. Close that so a spider doesn't creep up on me. Oh, that cop's gonna spit while I'm reloading. Oh, he's stupid. The buffoon. What else is down there, hmm? Stop it! Leave my foundations alone. Put the other side. Someone's missing a leg. Is that it? Or is there a third wave? Are we done here? Well, if that is done, it went very well so far. <laughs> Let's see the damage then. Yeah, a little bit there. It's the biggest area where they've been trying to hit. You can block that by just not letting them stand on top of each other here. If you put blocks basically on this, they just can't do much to it. Uh, I'll have to come back with some concrete if I ever want to use this base again, but I'm probably just going to upgrade to an even better one. But you can see it held fairly well, even on 14. It would probably do quite well on day 21 as well. And for most people, they're not going to be leveling as quickly as I am, so you wouldn't be facing as hard a horde. Um... So you could definitely keep this going like day 28 and further. But I'm going to want something a little bigger and something I can get a lot of XP from. But let's see what we got. Build parts and ammo. Ammo and the hazmat thingies are useless. Baseball bat I don't need. Medicine and ammo. Parts. Inks, ammo, schematic that I definitely don't need. Um, medicine, ammo, some armor, some medicine and ammo, money, food and ammo, a double barrel shotgun, just a whole double barrel shotgun in there. Scrap that down to shotgun parts, because I'm not going to be able to hold everything. Uh, mm, drinks and ammo, parts, ammo. Ammo, basically. That's all brass really is. Is that everything? So no parts for uh, machetes. Parts for a bunch of other stuff, but not machetes, of course. Why would I get what I want? The turret... It, it, it existed, I guess. It didn't do much. <laughs> I can't complain about it, though. It was, like, cheap and didn't cost me much resources to use. Uh, let me just do that so I remember to fill that in. Right, well, day 14 went perfectly well. As I suspected, with my amazing guns and pretty foolproof base design over there. 
Uh, yeah, but next week we're going to be building an even bigger one, just because that one won't hold forever, and because it's kind of boring to keep using the same base. I'm going to go put this stuff away. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. During the Horde night last night I got two skill points and I forgot to put this in the video but what I put those into, Better Barter rank 4 which is going to give me the even better secret stash and the first rank of advanced engineering. Naturally as you would expect I'm going to be putting my next skill point into rank 2 of advanced engineering to get the cement mixer schematic. And on top of that being able to craft 20% faster with the cement mixer is a huge upgrade. So what I'm going to be doing at the start of today is heading over to the trader to see what the new secret stash has. Okay, so nothing interesting on this trade cycle, but it will reset tomorrow and we can check that out. We could maybe go and see Bob and Jen. Hey, I'm sugar butts, nice. So if he does have anything, I'll get it cheaper. Right, I saw something pretty interesting there though while it was in here. The vehicle reserve fuel tank mod could be worth grabbing. Um, that is a really good shotgun perk, so I'm going to grab that. Did I buy the gyrocopter chassis in an earlier episode? I'll need to check that. Also, I've been buying Red. things without sugar butts again. Let me see, did I get the gyro chassis? I did. I could get a gyrocopter very early on then. That could be worth doing. Let's see, uh, gyrocopter accessory schematic. And I really want the reserve fuel tank mod as well. I'm not sure what you need to craft that. But uh, I'll I'll do it, whatever it is. So I'm going to head over to Trader Gen to see what she has. And on my way over, I'm just going to scrap all the cars and any really good sources of various things as I go. Interesting. I was on my way out to Trader Gen's and it looks like I missed an airdrop at some point. Let's see what we got here then. Ooh, 50 lockpicks. Only after I get an auger, of course, but hey, saves gas at least. Okay, so we're here at Trader Gens and uh, like half the day is gone. I have been scrapping a lot of cars, as you can see. I pretty much drove in a straight line from my base uh, over here to here and took out every car I saw along the way and I got a lot of stuff. By my calculations, I'll need about 99 mechanical parts and you can see I've completely overshot that and I've done that with most of the other materials. One of the things I am still short on though is electrical parts and I'll need a little bit more leather and some cloth to make duct tape. But that's really easily well, achieved. Now that you have some yeah, let's see what Jen has sale. here. So she has a triple armor pocket mod, which is probably going to be purchased in a moment. Drone cargo mod. You know what? I don't have a drone right now, but I will take this triple armor pocket mod. And I'll also take these electrical parts because that's one of the bottlenecks. And of course, I will take the cargo mod schematic. So that triple armor pocket mod, if it replaces a single mod, will open up my inventory entirely. There we go. And now the whole inventory is unlocked. No need for a pack mule, how about that? All right, I'm back at my base. I've done all the inventory sorting. Now it's time to get some stuff crafted. So we need forged iron, mechanical parts, stone, oil, and clay to make the crucible. So we can get that crafted. And I've been upstairs and checked the forge. I've not got enough iron to turn it into enough forged steel to make the gyrocopter parts. So I'm gonna have to mine some iron, of course. And really quickly, I should probably craft all the duct tape I can because it's just and weird. Now before I do that actually, fuel saver or fuel reserve, do you need any? No. And drum mag, do you need any glue? No. Okay. So I can just turn this all into duct tape. So I put about 1500 in before and I had enough for about 50-ish forged steel and I need about 200 so I'm gonna have to get probably about another half stack of iron which is not hard to do. I have a mine I can go and inject, but let me just make sure I've not got any spare raw iron down here. I could scrap down stuff like pipes and stuff, but I'll need those for other things. Right, so I'm going to go down into my mine for a bit and get, you know, half a stack of iron and get that to smell in my forge.
Okay, there's half a stack of iron. That took literally like 30 seconds to get. Okay, and our crucible is done. So we can now make our own supply of forged steel. But it's going to take a hot minute for that to all basically smelt into the forge. It's going to take a while, but we're good. Now, I'll set it to just craft as much forge steel as it can make right now, and I'll come back, you know, at some point. Let me make sure it definitely has enough fuel, just <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, there we go. So, what I can do, though, is make the rest of the gyrocopter while I wait and make sure I have the resources for the other half. So, the accessories are 49 electrical parts, 8 headlights, 75 short iron pipes, 15 mechanical parts, and 6 springs. Okay, gyrocopter accessories are now crafting. So what about the rest of the gyrocopter, the chassis? Do I have the mechanical parts? Yep, duct tape. Ah, I don't have enough duct tape, okay. Let's see, uh... Murky water, have I got enough? No, but I have a lot of jars. I have a lot of jars. And I have a chemistry station, so I can make glue very efficiently. I just need to go out and grab more water. So let's go do that while we wait for the metal to smelt and the gyrocopter parts to craft up. There, so that'll be all the glue I'll need. Okay, there's 57 more glue. Great. That's the duct tape issue sorted. What else did we need? 60 leather and 30 electrical parts. There we go. So now all we need is that extra duct tape to craft and then the forged steel and we can have a gyrocopter. I have the wheels, I have the engines, I have the lead car batteries, we'll be good. I guess I'm gonna have to wait for the steel to smelt before I can get that gyrocopter. In the meantime though, it is day 16 and since this episode has been so heavy on, you know, tradery kind of things, I should just go and see the trader when they open, and then when I come back I'll probably be able to craft out all the forged steel I'll need. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of a weird episode structure, but it would be dumb of me to get this close to a gyrocopter in one episode and not finish it until the next one. And what else am I going to do while I wait for the crucibles to do their thing? I'm going to grab any forged steel I see, because it really will speed up the process. I'll need forge steel for other things anyway. Damn, I got four from that. I guess those just actually give about four forge steel then. Nice. I thought it'd be like two, like the lampposts. Maybe those transformers are the, the best source of forge steel now. Still worth grabbing the street lights though. Okay, so the traders are open. I've got 20 forge steel so far. It is not the fastest process ever, but it does save time on the smelting laser. So, better to grab it while we had some spare time. I think if the traders have any forged steel, I'll just buy it to speed up this process a little bit. I have the money, and I have some extra stuff to sell, so... Makes sense. Ah, another trader here to the southeast. Nice. Well, get busy. We're burning daylight. Right, Urban Combat 2, Cigars, Urban Combat 1, Military Stealth Boots, neither are all that helpful to be honest. Urban Combat 7, which I already have. <laughs> the Gyrocopter Accessories, unfortunately not the one that takes steel so I couldn't have even saved anything there. Okay, he's got 20 forged steel here, let me sell some of the spare junk I have. There we go, and buy that. So there's another 20 forged steel. I'm gonna buy all that wood, because wood is a bit of a pain to get right now. Uh, has he got any machete parts? What I will do is grab that drone. It's kind of a terrible one, but it's better than not having a drone, because this base drone has like an extra 18 inventory slots, which is if there's nothing free else, inventory. Best be on your way. There we go, we got a drone. Nice. Startup sequence activated. Shush, don't talk. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> Listen, drone, this is a one-man show. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Yeah, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get 16 inventory slots from that. 16 inventory slots for about 3,000 dukes is not bad. I uh, don't really want anything else here. I could get some more rocket frags, oh, but I'll, I want else? a discount on those if I'm going to buy them. 
Well, I'm still waiting for that forge to smelt some forge steel. We can go and see Bob, because his trades will have reset as well. Yo, Bob, what do you got? Magnum Enforcer. Maybe. I've not got... Oh, he's got the whole gyrocopter for 100,000 dukes. Thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> oh, he's got a, a load of forge steel. Let's buy it. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but it will speed up this whole process for me. Nice, so we definitely have enough forged steel now. As good as Magnum Enforcer 3 uh, would be, it's not kind, worth it that much, to be honest. I'd rather have the forged steel. <laughs> definitely uh, to get it in the long run, though. I wonder, I could sell some other stuff and maybe grab that, actually. Hang on. Uh, Gold nuggets? And military armor parts. Yeah, there we go, we can grab it. Great doing business with you. Come back and tell your friends. So now the last shot in the Magnum will do double damage. So I'm gonna head back to the base and get this gyrocopter crafted up and I'll see you guys over there. Okay, we need 10 more forged steel. Uh, let me put the anvil in. There, that'll take a moment. There we go, 10 forged steel. Can we make it now? Gyrocopter chassis, nice. That's gonna take four minutes, and then the actual gyrocopter itself will also take four minutes. Uh, but the accessories, three wheels. Let me just get rid of all the resources. We don't need those now. Accessories, three wheels, engine, battery, and anything else? Just the chassis, right, nice. So the other things I was trying to make are the drum magazine and maybe two fuel tanks, so I'll need 30 forged steel, which I think I have enough to make. Yep, nice. So that'll take a few minutes to craft up. Let's gather the resources we'll need for the rest of it. So I'll need 10 duct tape, 10 scrap poly, and some mechanical parts. So once we get the forged steel, that's good. And the drum mag will need some oil as well. There, nice. We're making loads of progress today. Okay. Uh, let's see. Maybe I need another workbench, actually. Let's see. Do I have enough forged iron? Yep. And do I have a spare wrench and hammer? I do. Yep. Time for workbench number two, then. Please don't use my good wrench. Nice. Yeah, because the gyrocopters are going to be tying this one up for the next, like, eight minutes, and I still want to craft those drum mags and stuff, so I'll get that crafted out. And in preparation for the future, I'm going to take this stone and start smelting it into here. We can have this spit out a bunch of cement later. Um, it won't be much, because cement is one of the harder resources to make in the game, but it's better than nothing. Here we go, gyrocopter is crafting. While I wait for that to craft and for my workbench to craft, I'm going to go grab a little bit more iron, because we're going to need some to make cement mixers in the future. I just realised that... Cement mixers actually take a decent amount of forged iron, and I'll need a little bit more, so let's get back to that. Okay, my workbench is finished crafting, and I got about 5,000 more iron, that is going to be very good. Again, that only took like two minutes to get. Love the auger. Alright, let's see, where can I even put this? Maybe break this out. I kind of like that lantern though, so I'll keep it there. There we go. And let's get the drum mag going. And what was the other thing? Oh yeah, two fuel tanks. Nice, so that's going to take six minutes. Gyrocopter's got one minute. Let's go ahead and put the rest of this iron on craft in here. This isn't ideal, but I can't be bothered making more forges, to be honest. I'm going to have this one pump out a bunch of forged iron, because I'm going to need it. And yeah, that's pretty good good so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do next as a bit of an investment here is use some of the limited concrete I have to just upgrade the base because it's going to get me XP and if I can get a level I can craft cement mixers so I can get even more concrete so this kind of makes sense in my head anyway. Actually, maybe not. I've just had an idea. If I grab all this stone, I can then make stacks of stone and each of these is going to give me a little bit of XP, and the first one is going to give me like 18,000 XP. So that's definitely going to carry me over the line very easily here. Nice. Level 40. And we can put that into Advanced Engineering Rank 2, and now we can get Cement Mixers. Nice. I'm going to do that again, though. Maybe see how far I can take this here. 
just with stone because another level would be really nice as well. Paper Forge recipes is very useful. I didn't realise I had gotten this book by the way or I would have done this much earlier but now that I've realised I had found it, uh, getting a stack of all of these resources and doing this little cycle and getting all this XP from it is definitely a top priority. The next one would probably be iron. I don't know, we can just steal this iron temporarily here. We got all the forged iron we want crafted anyway. If I go down into the mine and get like another thousand iron, we can do this process with iron as well and probably just get straight up to level 41 from this. Just in case you haven't seen my video on it by the way, this is the effect you get from Art of Mining rank 5. You can craft basic resources into stacks and you get XP from it, but the XP is diminishing with each individual resource. So. You can do this process with stone once, you can do it with oil, nitrate, lead, all of those once. You can keep doing it infinitely technically, but the returns really aren't worth the time you would spend clicking on it at a certain point. There we go, we can now do the stacks of iron as well. First one's going to give me 18,000 XP, maybe more because I have nerdy glasses on, right? Yeah, 19,000 XP. Do that a couple more times and I think we can get a level. And just for the sake of completeness, I'll show you exactly what I'm actually doing because I realize I'm using hotkeys here. So, you craft the stack, it takes 10 seconds, and then you get XP. Then you open the stack at no loss of any resources, and then you craft it again, and you'll get more XP, but it will be less XP each time you do this. But as you can see, doing nothing but fiddle around with resources in my inventory, I have made two levels perfectly easily as well. So now we can get Advanced Engineering 3, which is going to give us the Electrical Trap Kills XP and Forge Recipe Discounts, especially on Steel and Electrical Devices. One more rank and we can get the fourth one here, which would be a priority. But I don't think doing this with Iron and Stone is really going to be worth my time, but I'll keep it going in the background while I do some other stuff here. See how much XP I can get doing it. It's not going to be a lot though. Okay, so the gyrocopter is done, one of the drum mags is done, uh, where's my SMG, put that in place of the shotgun for a bit, swap those out, and take the extended mag off of you and put it on the SMG, so what's the magazine capacity of this now, it was 44, now it's 59, not bad, this thing can really spray now, um, I'll keep this extended mag Probably have a use for it. Hang on, let me put it in the mods box here. Right, let's go get this gyrocopter out. Okay. So, first things first. I hate the, the white skin on the gyrocopter. I'm going to go ahead and dye this red. There we go, that looks much better. In line with my motorcycle. Refuel this. And that's it. We're ready to start taking to the skies. But I have nowhere to really go yet. I have more business to do here. But a gyrocopter is a significant upgrade to our mobility. We can head over to that 3km quest over there. A couple minutes, it'll be over easily. And the gyrocopter has like an exploit you can do with it, which basically means you can travel for almost free. It's amazing. So that's why I'm bothering with the gyrocopter, but not necessarily the 4x4, even though the 4x4 does have that nice inventory boost. Now, do I know how to make a cargo mod? I do. If I got another 5 forged steel, I could expand my robotic inventory here by another 8. That would probably be worth doing as well. There's all the forged steel I need for it anyway. So, scrap polymer, electrical parts, and mechanical parts. I'm surely running low on electrical parts. I can't have many more at all. Oh no, I have like 60. How'd that happen? Uh, let's see. Cargo that on there so there's another eight inventory slots basically for free and there's my fuel tanks i'll go put those on my motorcycle and gyrocopter each of those is going to give them 50 percent extra fuel capacity it's not amazing uh, on the motorcycle because the motorcycle is now only really going to be used for close range travel but i kind of like modifying my vehicles just for the fun of it so you can't stop me oh i forgot i already had a fuel saver um, I'm going to take that off of that and put that on the gyrocopter. Completely forgot I had that. Yeah, so now flying with my gyrocopter is essentially free. And I can do it for a very long time with a, a reserve fuel tank. 
This thing can stay in the air if you use the uh, the reduced gasoline trick, which I'll show you probably in the next episode, although I do have a video on it. I'll have it pop up on the top right now so that people can click on that. Uh, this thing will be able to fly forever. Now, it's insane. And it's got 45 inventory slots. Definitely worth having, and probably just take the motorcycle and have it be a part of the gyrocopter. That's, that's one thing I love, is that you can put vehicles inside of vehicles. So now, when I land, I can get the motorcycle out and go between quests and stuff. But when I want to go far, we've got the gyrocopter for it. And I don't have to keep them both out. There we go, that's great. Uh, I'm hungry, let's deal with that. Okay, so the stone and the metal are getting to the point where doing this is basically just wasting my time. But you see, I got another half a level from just those two. If I was to bring out the coal and lead and nitrate and oil shale and wood, that would be really good. It's worth noting that it doesn't work for gas cans, gunpowder, or lockpicks. Those are a different mechanic entirely. Here's the cargo mod. Drone, come here. I think you have to pick it up to actually put the mod on. Here we go. Now, if you have a better drone than I have, um, this will have more mod slots. And the cargo mod actually does stack. I'm told by people that you can't just shift click it and you have to drag it if you want to stack them. I don't know, I've never had the problem, but keep that in mind, you can absolutely stack the cargo mod. So now my drone has gone from 16 slots up it to... It is good to be online. What did I say? What did I say? Shush. Went from 16 slots to 24. Practically for free. So definitely get one of those if you can find the schematic for it. I think I bought that earlier. And let's put all my iron in here. We can turn that all into whatever I need. So, the next thing we need to do, cement mixers. I need a load of cement mixers if we're going to be doing that base build later. So, I'll need springs, engines, and mechanical parts. Along with forged iron, which I believe I had crafting in that other forge. Go, and it ran out of fuel. There we go. <laughs> Let that craft out some more. Now, in the meantime... Let's get three. Let's go two in there, one in there. Yeah, that'll be enough. That'll give me four cement mixers plus a couple more I can make. I can make one more. I've got one more engine, so I'll, I'll do that. And that'll give me five cement mixers. So the real issue is going to be stone, and I'm going to have to just mine stone, huge amounts of stone. The real bottleneck there is going to end up being wood. Yeah, because wood is limited. So let me go check on my wood outside. Nice, it looks like they're grown as far as they're going to. So I need to chop these down ASAP, get them replanted so that they can double in volume again. I wonder, does Rockbusters increase the amount of resources you get from uh, trees? That's something I've not tested. And it should, hypothetically, because it's basically just a rank of uh, mother load. So it might be worth checking that out. Trees are limited out here, and I'll need a lot of wood to make a base. So let's test that out. Increase the amount of wood, ore, and stone. It says it'll work. So I got 112 before. 126. It's not a huge increase, but it's something. Alright, so there's all the trees gone. If I replant these, I'll have 70 trees, which is a lot. I probably want that considering they're only actually growing to half health because of the desert terrain. The tree population is about to explode. Good thing about them only growing to half health though is it only takes half as long for them to grow as far as they're gonna grow. So I can just do this every hour and, you know, crash my computer with all the, the leaves. So I'll, I'll probably stop at about, you know, a hundred or something, I don't know. Also, with that, we got a stack of wood, which means we can continue this process with wood. There's two cement mixers, another cement mixer. We can make one more. I think that's enough. I don't think I'll need more than five cement mixers for this series. I'm not going to make some mega build. It's just going to be a big base, you know? Go one more and we'll probably get a level. Nice. And with that, I think I'm done with intellect. I don't think it's going to be worth the skill points to really up this and then get like the final rank of better barter or advanced engineering for a while. So I'm probably done here for a long time. I don't need any grease monkey. I already have the gyrocopter and gas isn't an issue in the desert. So I don't need to get the efficient gas can stuff. Position might 
might be revisited, but otherwise I think we're done with intellect. And what I think that means is we're going to go back into agility now and start getting some of the good perks like Gunslinger, get that up to at least here. Same with Deep Cuts, I think Parkour up to Max is a very overdue thing. And Flurry of Blows is a definite, definite must-have. I've just been putting it off because it's not been as necessary as some of these other perks have been. I might even go Hidden Strike and From the Shadows. And much later down the line, I'll probably grab a little bit more strength just to fix Minor 69 or Mother Load and Sexual Tyrannosaurus at some point. And if the series really runs for a long time, we'll go into some Perception with Deadeye and Demolitions Expert. That's the build plan, but that is a little bit down the line for the perception part, that's for sure. It's very low priority. Let's put cement mixers down. Uh, there's another one downstairs. While I'm down here, uh, stone. There we go. Also, I've got a little bit of cement that I've just been collecting. We can definitely get more when we start doing more tier 5 PYs. The tier 5 PYs are littered with concrete, so we'll be good on that part. In the future, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of mining underground for stone. That is pretty much the seven days to die mid game for me. I say that kind of humorously, obviously. I'm using a lot of end game gear, but this is the mid game of seven days to die for me because I can get all the end game gear I need by like day 10. That is not a difficult part. The part of the game that takes a while for me is getting all the resources to build a big base and then the game's kind of done because. You have endgame gear and you can beat all the zombies and everything so you know the next big goal for me is definitely going to be building that upgraded horde base from that getting that set up with power which means oh, a bunch more engines and i use them all in cement mixers well that'll be fun to go and scavenge for them hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of desert ranger Today we're going to be doing something a little bit more interesting, we're going to be taking on another tier 5 PUI, I'm not sure which one yet, we'll have to see when we get to the trader, but between episodes I spent a lot of time gathering stone, I've got about 34,000 and I'm going to turn all of this into concrete. So with advanced engineering rank 4, it essentially costs you 4 stone to make one piece of concrete, so we want to take half of the stone we have and we want to smelt half of it. We're going to use my two forges here. I should probably get some more forges, but honestly, it should be fine. And I'm going to divide the stone between them. And hopefully, they have enough fuel for this. So that's all the cement smelting in. Later on, we'll craft it out to get all of the cement we need for the concrete. Then we want to take half of the stone that's left and turn that into crushed sand. So I have 18,000 stone left we want to keep half of that to turn into concrete later store it on my drone here really quickly and we want to turn the rest into crushed sand we can make 9,000 I have five cement mixers so I'll divide it between them and the rest of the stone is just going to be kept because that is obviously used in the recipe to make concrete so we'll keep that and while I'm out today that'll all smell up at some point I'll come back and craft out the cement as well and we'll have plenty of concrete once that's all done. It'll be about 7,000 if I guess correctly. Along with the 3,000 I have, I'll have about 10,000 concrete, which should be enough for the base I want to build along with the 500 concrete blocks we got already. The bottleneck may be the cobblestone because I'm going to want to upgrade through all the paths because they removed rebar frames. So we're going to need to get a little bit more stone and a lot more clay. But right now, I'm going to focus on getting that next tier 5 job done. I'll bring the shotgun and some ammo for it just in case. And I'll bring an extra stack of 9mm because you never know when you might need it. And some stone bolts just in case I absolutely run out of everything else to use. So I'm going to head over to Trader Hugh and I'm going to take one of the tier 5 jobs that I haven't already done. Now one of the goals of the series was of course to complete all the tier 5s on the map and recently I was unsure as to what tier 5s were actually on the map so I made a copy of the map and I had a look around to see what tier 5s actually existed. And as it turns out, there are only three more tier 5s on this map. Yishong Tower, Higashi Pharmaceuticals, and the Factory 3, which gives me a very easy goal when it comes to those tier 5s. Apparently, I missed another airdrop. What's this? Farm Bundle 3? Okay, we got some farm plots, some super corn, and some stuff like that. Okay, 
That's probably the worst bundle ever. But yeah, as I was saying, we've got three more tier fives to do on this map, so we can cross that off very easily. I'll probably do Dishong Tower last, just to make sure that the zombies that spawn there are as hard as possible, so it's as interesting as possible. But today, we could definitely do Higashi Pharmaceuticals, or possibly the Factory 3. I would rather do Higashi, though. So he's got five tier five jobs. Let's see if we can get one that I haven't done before. Factory 3, okay. Skyscraper 1, that's Deshaun. We want to do that later. Hospital 1, we've done. Skyscraper 3, that is Higashi Pharmaceuticals. So we can do that one. It's three kilometers away, but with a gyrocopter, that is not an issue at all. Really quickly on the way there, I want to explain that thing I said in the other episode there where I said about almost free flying. If you're flying your gyrocopter and you level it off in midair, if you hold W, Shift, C, and Spacebar all at the same time, you essentially use no gasoline to fly. So what I'm going to do is fast forward through this so you can, yeah, you see it just went down now. It was at 97% when I took off. So. It really doesn't use a lot of gas, and this is flying at full speed. I know it doesn't look like it because it just doesn't seem as fast, but this is full speed for the gyrocopter. I'm going to fast forward this over to Higashi Pharmaceuticals, and you guys can watch the gas go down extremely slowly compared to just normal gyrocopter flight. Okay, so we're coming in for a landing near the POI here. I'm just going to set it down. And you can see I used barely any more gas from the last time I spoke with you guys. There we go. So, to get from my house about 3 kilometers away, it took 4% of this gas tank. Obviously, I do have fuel saver and the reserve fuel tank, so you would use a little bit more if you didn't have those. But... You do have those, it's basically free. So here we are, Higashi Pharmaceuticals. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven floors. It's a lot easier than Dishong, but it's definitely one of the longer tier fives that are available. I'm gonna clear the area, scrap a few cars, and then get started on this place. <laughs> Okay, I got some gas, I cleared the area. Let's get these vitamins so that I don't have to worry about getting infected in here and let's get started. I didn't bring much food and water, but I know I'm probably gonna find some in here anyway. Hello doggy. Goodbye doggy. Drone, you better not get in my way. Oh, I'm hungry already, great. Ow. Hi, doggy. Okay, so I've cleared the first floor and I've disassembled most of the stuff in here. And I'm going to clear the surroundings again because I attracted some attention, clearly. So I should deal with those before they become a problem later. Okay, now let's deal with this guy. Oh, hello. There's a load of you out here. Okay, so I've dealt with the initial response wave that happens when you fire a gun in the city center. Let's keep going. I've already run out of food, I think. Oh, wait, no, one more. Let's head up to the second floor here, or the first floor, depending on what system you use. The next floor. Ow. Oh, did we wake them all up? Great. That's always fun. I really need a suppressor for my guns. 
grab the satchel here. Probably heal some of those hits I took from the feral there. Whoa. Good bag. Nice. And more food. Great. And some magnum ammo. Good. Let's uh, close that door behind me and use the shotgun. Okay. And next. And next. Hey, a skill point, nice. Um, oh, is this a concrete clock? Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start working towards more agility here. I think really quickly before I do anything else, I want to get this up a slight bit more. And that's just going to make sure I'm killing even more of them in more awkward positions when I'm hitting them with a crossbow. Because Sometimes I'll hit a feral in the leg and it won't kill them and it's a nightmare. Oh, and she's just on an attack trigger. Hello. Didn't even get notified of her by an audio cue. Ah, oh, they do so much damage. Okay, so one of the ones in there is definitely feral. I know how this game works. And he was feral. Let's see, can I maybe stealthily break this glass? Somehow, yes. That works. He was feral. And he was feral. Pretty predictable. I can tell, by the way, because you get double XP for killing ferals. I'm getting lots of loot bags today, though, which is nice. And before I step into that massive beam of light, I'm going to try and just eliminate it. There, so when I enter the room, I won't be eliminated entirely. Aha! Let's run back. Fight them one at a time. Oh no. He's in crawl mode. He's stuck on a wall. Oh no, he was baiting me. <laughs> Close that door. They're so tanky. Problem solved though. Right, are we gonna get another one here? Yep, see why I brought so much medicine now? I should have brought more. Nobody in this one. Okay. Uh, just all in a trigger. Okay, battles come first. Um, did I hit the door frame or something? What was that? Here we go. And then get a headshot. Oh, he just tanked it with five times sneak damage. He straight up just tanked the headshot from that. Feral whites are so tanky. Still, set him up to die quite easily from other stuff. Well, if I can jump through the window with my parkour, there we go. I'm just gonna have to take a hit from him. How many ferals? Come on. You're just a normal guy? You're just a normal guy. Oh, you're your normal guy? Yep. Normal zombies really aren't a problem. Take the glass. I don't know how he doesn't hear that, but sure. Ah, that one had slightly lower health than the other one, so we got one hit kill. Now we're heading up to another floor. This is the fifth floor according to the game. I'm going to go with the game system here. Ah, yeah, this is the start of the bad place. This is the DNA testing room. Yeah, this is where we have to set up our defense. <laughs> uh, let's get two more hatches in that way, two more hatches that way. If I aren't that well hold all the same... Right, let's clear out some of these easy zombies. They aren't the problem here. All right, here's the fun room. Is there anybody on my left here? Ah. Careful now. Try and eliminate any of the 
people that aren't exactly a threat here. Just, they're so easy to kill. Right, let's... I don't know how I'm going to do this stealthily, but let's give it a try. Each of these tanks has a feral white in it. Uh. Seriously, game? Let me get a little bit closer. Oh, we've been detected. Run. I don't know how many heard us, but let's just run. <laughs> could be one, could be all of them, who knows. Looks like it's just one for today. Yeah, I've woke up the other ones by shooting though, but that's fine. We're in position to defend against them. Here they come, yep. Good luck standing and boxing with that. Well, they don't even flinch when you put shotgun ammo into them. I think that's all of them though. There is still a couple more scary rooms. Let's make sure we get an extra hatch set up. Also, the final room in this place is a nightmare. <laughs> yep, yeah, and this leads into another one of those nightmare areas. There's three rooms in particular in this POI which are just completely terrifying. If you're playing on high difficulties, look, there's a radiated guy in there. And I saw another one over here, I think. Uh, let's see, can we stealth attack one hit kill her? No. <laughs> Don't know what I expected. She has a lot of health. Ooh, watch that block damage. No, drone! <laughs> that could have been bad. Ow. You're so fast. Oh, wait, the fallback point. Forgot. And I'll just use that again. Fuck, oh, my frame rate. Ugh. Still plenty of XP. About to turn night. But honestly, most of the zombies in here are feral anyway, so it's not going to make much of a difference. Anybody? Nope, nobody's in there. Uh, uh, that's a cop, and it's night time, so let's try and. <laughs> Worth it. Oh, didn't mean to come out there. We're gonna take a hit. No, I'm good. Oh, there's a vulture somewhere near. Where is it? I hear it, I don't see it. I see its marker, but I still don't see it. Oh, there. Pull that one really quickly. I also get 50% extra sneak attack damage at night, so... This kind of still works. Come on, bite me. Oh, it just didn't press E there. <laughs> okay. Back behind me. Oh, sounds like a cop, maybe. Oh, nope, worse, worse, so much worse. Feral tourist. Wait for him to hit. Yeah, there's a reason you get that much XP for killing them. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of red. How am I going to do this? I'm not. That's how. Thank you for making that selection so much easier for me, Mr. Soldier. Let's just get started then. Oh, the frame rate. I cannot see a thing. Step out of my office. Oh, that worked. No, I didn't actually kill the, uh, the soldier that rumbled me. Problem solved. Reinforces that all the way up, so we should be able to hold at this point if anything goes wrong. Let's head outside and activate those red markers. None so far. Hello there. There's all the red markers. Yeah, look at that. Right in front of me on the top there on the compass. That's how many zombies are in that room, and they're just waiting for you to make a mistake like that. Not to worry though. I am prepared. We'll have a mini horde night right here.
still hear more flapping and I see more red markers. It looks like they're all vultures. Or almost all vultures. That one's inside somewhere. No, he's not inside. He's trying to get inside. That's weird. Where's this last guy? He's marker. I don't see him. Below me? Ooh. That's a lot of stuff. Um, I grab it. Where's my drone? Drone, where are you? Drone, carry just some of this so I can pick some stuff up here. Right. Let's see. So we got some more 7.62, some more magnum ammo, some more shotgun ammo, some rifle parts, some military armor parts, which I can eat some food and grab those. The beer recipe, again, eat those. We can turn forged iron into normal iron. Turn buckshot into normal lead. Uh, the food bundle. 10 tuna fish gravy toast. Not bad. 45 health each. And we got another treasure map. Deal with that really quickly. Actually, no, I'll read it back at my base because we are really far away. And it calculates from your position again. I used to be bugged and would calculate just from zero, zero. They fixed that so it's now useful again. Let's see if we can get back to Trader Hughes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We haven't killed the last guy yet. There's someone on the roof. Is it him? I'm just sitting there? That's weird. Anyway, let's head back down the building and get back to the gyrocopter and head over to Trader Hugh again and get my two tier five rewards because that's going to be nice. There's a bunch of zombies in here. I will fight my way through them all. Or they'll run past me. That also works. Oh, well, that's great. I need a level anyway. many of you are there tactical retreat outside there's a screamer a good way to start my day look at them all there's millions of them what happened screamer really where are you then that's a good source of xp as i was saying for dog right we got a skill point there i'm just gonna save it and i'm gonna get myself up to seven agility i think i'm not gonna bother dealing with that dire wolf anyway i'll head back over to trader hughes and get that reward okay so i didn't actually get much that i kind of want to sell to him but it's still worth selling him what I have. Now let's go get the reward for doing this. It better be good because it took me like an in-game day. Hey, well you did. Ah! Okay. It was good. So I suppose you want to be paid. Nice. So we'll take that and take that chainsaw. Because I like chainsaws. So yeah, the bolts, the string, the mining helmet, kind of useless. Let's grab those. <laughs> nice. Well, my SMG was completely broken anyway, so that solves that problem. Uh, let's put that on there, that on there. Oh, we can fit so many mods on this. Oh, that was so worth it. You wouldn't happen to have repair kit materials on you, would you? Oh, you do. Well, it's about time you bought something. Repair this SMG. Okay, not bad. I could put mods on that. I will put mods on that, actually. I'm not going to sell that just yet. Um... You know, I'm gonna buy these electric fence posts. We're about to get into that stage of the game. And you know what? Using no stamina while sneak sprinting sounds good. More electric fence posts, a few switches. It saves me having to craft them myself. They're not exactly expensive, but they are kind of annoying to deal with. All right, I think I'm done here. Okay, I've sorted out all of my inventory stuff. And clearly I got a load of gas while I was away, so that's good. Gas problem is officially solved. I've taken my fire axe, put it away, and swapped it out for this chainsaw here. Uh, I'll just keep 
chainsaw, auger, and gas on me. Okay, so it looks like my forge is a bottleneck up to 3000 max, that's fine. And I'll let that craft for the next 45 minutes. Obviously, sand takes literally seconds to craft, so we're good on that part. So it looks like we're gonna have about 9000 concrete once it's finished crafting, which is a bit of an issue because I don't think I'm gonna have enough in time for Horde Night, but we can always use that base one last time and absolutely run it into the ground and see how far it can hold when I'm kind of over leveled. I need some repair kits, quite desperately, hang on. There we go, repair kits solved. I'm gonna need to get an expanded fuel tank for my chainsaw here. All right, there's five forge steel crafted out really quickly. Let's craft that tank. There we go, chuck that on the chainsaw and we're good to go. Oh, I can't wait for those trees to grow now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. In today's episode, I'm going to be making a start on that brand new base I want to build. But I need resources and the one that's really going to be a problem is clay. But that's fine. What I'm going to do, so that this isn't a horrible thing for you to watch, is I'm going to start mining right now. And I'm going to skip forward until the morning of day 19, where I should have most of the resources collected. Alright, and that is the morning of day 19. And a lot has happened in terms of resource gathering, so let me get you guys caught up on what I did. So during the day of day 18, I came over here near to the base there and marked out a 49 by 49 square and began digging it out until I had enough clay. I got two stacks and I got my 9000 stone that I had left and I turned that all into cobblestone split it between my inventory and the two workbenches and I'll have to go get some of that soon. And that took me about until the night of day 18. During the night, I gathered more resources in my mine, including a lot more stone, which is very helpful, as well as a stack of lead and a stack of nitrate, which I'm going to use to do the trick that I did in another episode to get some XP. Speaking of XP, I used the point I had in the last episode, put one point into strength here, that would get me up to five, and then I got another point just while I was mining and I put that into Miner 69er. Thought it would make a lot of sense to just get that because I'm going to do a lot of mining in the coming weeks, so it makes sense to be good at it. That is really all I did, it was just a really grindy day. Now I think my forges and workbenches should be done spitting out various resources, I'm gonna have to tell my cement mixers to craft concrete. But we can of course start building the base while the concrete is mixing, that isn't a big limitation, so I'm gonna grab all this cobblestone I had, the cement, have loads of crushed sand because of course I get it when I dig the ground, and some of the concrete I already had, even more cobblestone, I'm gonna need more inventory space. Where's the drone? Just gonna store the concrete in here. That makes the most sense, I think. And also all that cobble. Wow, I got a lot of resources. Gonna go hopefully pretty far. Need to remember to keep doing the stack cycling in my inventory here. Free XP. I still need to find coal and oil to do that with. Weirdly, I'm kind of short on oil shield despite being in the desert. Okay, so I've got all the resources I should need. Let's get that all crafting up in my cement mixer. Did we get enough cement out of these? It really seems like I did. And this one's done. Oh, skill point, nice. Let's max out mother load. This is as far as I'm gonna go with minor 69 or mother load. I don't think it's worth it going all the way to seven strength. I will get one more rank of sexual tyrannosaurus, so that is just 
you know, smart. So I can make just over 8,000 concrete. What's the bottleneck here? Looks like it's actually cement. Interesting. Do I have any more cement lying around? Alright, it looks like I may have miscalculated how much cement I have, but 8,000 is still more than enough concrete for my needs. So let me split it between these five, and I'll get back to you guys. Right, there we go. And I have plenty of resources left over. They're going to take 40 minutes to be finished, but once it is finished, we're going to have so much concrete. The next thing I need to do is check my vending machines, actually, because I want to see if I've got any rock busters. Okay, none in there. I'm gonna head over to the traders. I believe the trader actually resets today, so we can check out his inventory as well. Not that I really need much right now, but since it's gonna reset, I might as well you know, see if there's anything I really want so I can have time to deal with that. Uh, no rock busters at his vending machine, that's unfortunate. He does have the first aid bandage schematic, which I would actually kind of like because I don't want to put points in physician if I can avoid it. And the contact grenade schematic for similar reasons. And you know what, plaster cast I don't really need. I will buy these blade traps. I'm going to head back to the base and get started on my next part of this project. Since all my trees are grown, I'm going to take my chainsaw to them because I'm going to need a lot of wood for this project as well. I'm probably not going to replant them right away and it's probably going to bite me later on, but will have to do. Okay, so it took about an in-game hour, but I finally cut down all those trees and I got about 8,000 wood from it, so that's pretty good. Uh, let me read these schematics. Oh. And I've got 142 seeds now. I'm not going to replant them just now. I have other things that I need to be doing. Ooh. Airdrop. Let me go grab that really quickly. Oh. 500 cobblestone cubes. What a useful time for that to happen, but I'm not sure where I could use that. Because I kind of want to use mostly upgraded blocks for the XP, but it'd be useful, I guess. Um, game, what is this? Okay, I'm going to log out and log back in, and uh, hopefully this weird visual bug clears up. Well, I re-logged, and this is still happening. I'm just going to choose to ignore it. Oh. Is that way? Okay, let me go over to this one, see if I can get the other one away. There we go. Well, that was strange. I'm going to get back to digging this infinite plane of bloody clay. Alright, that's this whole thing removed. Now I can put in my foundation. The foundation is completely unnecessary and it's completely oversized. However, I kind of want to do it and I have the blocks to do it. Okay, so I've done the outline. I'm going to get started here by building sort of a frame of the actual base. And then once I have the base kind of up and running and ready for Horde Night, I'll fill in the rest of the floor here because it's mostly not going to be necessary until I'm putting in like a load of blade traps and stuff. So let me find the center of this, which is going to be a nightmare. Then I can get on to actually building the base. And with that, I'm going to want to start building a bit of a staircase type thing here. I'm just going to preemptively reinforce the floor here. Okay, so we have basic walkway here. If we account for two blocks of space here, which I'll use as just temporary frames for the doors, and then do some kind of system here.
All right. So that's a good starting point for the floor I'm going to be standing on and the staircase. Now we need to have the actual defense, the walls. But first, this all needs to be turned into concrete. Okay, so here I'm going to get started. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do for this one? I'm going to completely fill in the foundations here. I don't want these to even be pillars. I want this to be full on just pure concrete. So there's no risk when it comes to putting this in here. So that if I've designed this wrongly in some way, the zombies are going to have a really hard time bringing it down, if that makes sense. It's not like I can't spare the resources to do a little bit of this, so... Oh my god, shoot me. There we go. So this is now like that. What we're going to use here is we want bars. Now, which bars is it? I always forget. We want outward bars like that. And then we want plates, specifically the one over two plates. And drone, if you would kindly move. Oh, I didn't mean to press that. I was trying to rotate. Oh, hello. That's him dealt with. Let's take down this one block. Seems like I've attracted a little bit of attention, but honestly, it won't matter. Next, we want eye beams. I word it. Wait, what are they called? Beam? Hang on, we got some enemies to deal with here. Oh, he's feral. Hang on. Just do this the easy way. I'm going to need to bring some iron out for this base, probably, and probably make some vault hatches. Dead? Cool. Yeah, vault hatches are probably going to be a really good idea for this base, actually. Um, but regular hatches probably will still hold, right? Yeah, I was looking for I-beam smalls. Here we go. Just rotate them so that they're like that. And then we want to do a similar situation here. Rotate them like that. And I can't place it because of the drone. There we go. So that's the bottom half of this done. This can just be reinforced to concrete. And I need hatches. We can put in some wood hatches just as a temporary thing here. You know what? If I can make iron hatches, I'll do that as well. There we go. So there's your main defense here. I'm going to replace these with doors later. But powered doors would probably be the better option. Do I even know how to make powered doors? I assume so. You could use a drawbridge, of course, but I prefer the doors option. Uh, vault door powered. Yeah, it's not too hard to get. So now I just need to make a big shell around this and make sure it's fortified all the way down to the ground. Oh, nice, we got a skill point. I will probably put that into sexual Tyrannosaurus and next we'll start actually saving for agility perks. Oh, and officially out of cobblestone blocks. We're going to have to go back to wood now, but that is fine. I have plenty of resources and that just means more XP. Alright, so I just took a break in real life there just because it had been a very long recording session, but I'm back. And here's what we're going to do. In order to make all the traps I'm going to want, I'm going to need a source of power, which is the generator bank. And I'm going to need a lot of stuff like relays, switches, and the actual traps I want. One of the things I definitely want is two vault doors for the design I'm working on here, so I'll need to get one, I'll need to get two of those built. And I also definitely want some electric fences deployed. I actually bought some, so I should be good in that regard. And I'll also probably want some blade traps, which I have lying around somewhere. I'm not sure where they went. There's one. I'm not sure where the other ones went, but what that means is I'm gonna have to go out and scavenge because I'm gonna need a lot of mechanical parts and electrical parts. My forges here are working on a load of forged steel, so that's good. I'll also need a lot of forged iron, so if I can just get all of that out as well, that'll be good. But yeah, what I'm gonna do next is spend probably half the day driving around on the motorcycle and grabbing any mechanical parts or electrical parts I can find. So it's gonna be a whole day of salvaging. So let me check my vending machine and see if it has any, yes, it does have hackers. That'll be very, very useful. Time to break out the old motorcycle because doing this with a gyrocopter is just a bit of a pain. 
Uh, we can always come back and get it later if we need to go further. So I'm going to go into the town here and just scrap basically everything I can find. So I've been out here scavenging cars for about half an hour now. And as you can see, I've gotten a lot of resources. Um, let's see, the main ones here, we've got 330 mechanical parts, that's decent. We've got a load of extra iron, which will be very helpful. Loads of pipes, I mean, that can be turned into iron. Lots of polymer, lots of oil. Actually, that's a surprisingly low amount of oil for the amount of cars I've been taking down. Uh, decent amount of electrical parts, as well as a, a million engines and batteries. And lots of brass radiators. So if I do want to craft ammo, brass will not be the limiting factor. It'll definitely be the gunpowder, which I can't craft because coal doesn't spawn naturally in the desert. So we'll have to find some POIs that have coal inside them, but that isn't too big of a priority. And if I do find lots of coal and do get lots of gunpowder, I'll probably invest that more into explosives rather than bullets because bullets are extremely easy to find. So yeah, now I'm going to head back to my base and start crafting up a bunch of electrical components I'll need for the second half of this base build here. Okay, so I've got all the materials back inside the base here. I'm going to put this 3000 iron smelting into this forge here, and I can use that for more forged iron or more forged steel, whichever I need. I'll wait to find out. I know I will need both of these though, so let's grab those. Let's also grab oil, mechanical parts, polymers, springs, some more forged steel there, and electrical parts, and we can get the other stuff as we need it. I hope I have a wiring tool. Oh, good. Okay, so the first thing I want is a generator bank. One should be fine. Then I want some relays. I'm not sure how many I'll need, but 10 seems like a safe bet. I have plenty of resources for this. And I have a few switches, so I should be good in that regard. I want some vault doors, level 3 for this particular one. And I want, th I want two of them, so... That's going to take a lot of forged steel, but otherwise we're good. And then I actually want to get a roll up 3x3 three three door at some point, but I'm not going to use all my forged iron on that just yet. I can make eight blade traps. What's the limiting factor here? Looks like mostly oil. So I have one blade trap still there. I think if I make just a bunch of electric fence posts, just spare ones, maybe eight more spare ones, that'll let me craft a total of 20 electric fence posts things in general. That should be good, at least for this board night anyway. I may want to get some light bulbs at some point, but right now I'll just conserve my materials. That reminds me, my SMG5 does have two more slots for things. What can I make? Foregrip. We need some glue. Foregrip is a definite must-have for an SMG. That's going to increase hipfire accuracy quite a bit there. And you know what, just for the sake of it, let's get a reflex sight as well. That's kind of Kind of counterproductive, but I think at the very least it'll look nice. Although, the retracting stock mod is probably better because it's like the foregrip, but slightly less versatile. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll get the retracting stock for it as well. The SMG is going to be kitted out, and if I get a suppressor, I'll probably put that on there at some point, but right now that will do. I'm not sure what other electrical stuff I'm going to need. It definitely seems like this one's going to be tied up for a long time. So let's go for more electric fences out of this one instead of the other one. You know what, since I have so many, we'll go for 18. And that should be almost all of the resources I have in terms of forged iron. We can always get more. So let's grab the generator bank and the wire relays and the switches. You know what, I'm going to craft up a few more switches as well. Five should be more than enough. There we go. So I'm going to head over to the base and get started on some kind of electrical stuff there. I'll also want to grab some of these. Six is the absolute max I'll ever need. I'm going to grab a stack of gasoline. And you know what? I just remembered I should probably make some vault hatches. Forged steel springs and mechanical parts. Let me see. Springs. Mechanical parts. Forged steel. And let's go to this one. Yeah, I can make almost a full thingy of vault hatches, but I think I'm just going to go for three and then upgrade them using the forged steel I have. So that would make sense. 
So let's head over to the base. Okay, so I'm gonna have to build up sort of a power room. So I'm gonna make a middle chamber here for just moving around, and then I'll get started on a power room where we can have all our generators and stuff like that. Okay, so I have made a little room in the back here. Just let me finish putting in this reinforcement here. And this is going to house my generator, my switches, all that kind of thing. I maybe should have put a door on the other side, but honestly it should be fine. This door is here so that I can get in and out quite easily and it will also stop, like say, a cop spit that misses me going all the way to the back and smashing into like my generator or something. Just to be careful, I'll probably put the generator like here so that it's completely out of sight. But yeah, that should be fine. I need to remember to bring some iron back here. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to put in my generator. I'm thinking put it on my right hand side, that makes more sense. And I want to make a base design that isn't completely covered in wires. So I'm going to put this up there as a bit of a hub for various points throughout the base did do something down here which might have confused some of you while I was doing it. This room is actually hollowed out in case I want to use lots of relays to send power to various points throughout the lower half of the base if I'm using a load of traps I'm gonna have to go back and get food soon. I haven't put anything in here yet but there will be a door here which should stop zombies getting in. Now I need to figure out exactly where I want my traps to be and exactly how I want the electricity to travel. Right now it would probably be a good choice to put in some switches that are going to be for controlling various points of the base. We can put this in as sort of a master switch, it's kind of unnecessary because the generator has that. That will just mean I can just flick a switch and emergency turn off everything. Then if we bring... I know it's kind of weird to have a switch above a door like that but just go with it. That'll let me control all the stuff in this corridor, so lights and all that kind of thing. And I don't want to have too many electricals down that hallway because explosives are going to be used in that hallway, I can guarantee it. Maybe I should make some stuff along the side. Hmm. Well, we could always enclose the stuff on the side. That, that would work. So what I'm going to do first is build a bit of a pillar here. And we want it to be... Not that height, that height. Yeah, perfect. That's going to be one of the power sources for the electric fence. We don't want it to be too close to the base or they'll try and run onto it and that could be an issue. And this can be the receiving end of one of the electric fences as well. You don't have to have too many electric fences. They really do do most of the work with just one. Okay, so those pillars are in. We can put the electric fences on those and then do something else to them. I'm going to want to find a way for power. I'm going to put a temporary staircase in here because probably going to be necessary. I could do a ladder, but this is fine. Uh, we probably want the power to go on the right, keep everything on my right hand side. 
So we would want this to power the main switch. Main switch to power that, but that looks kind of ugly. So if we do the, no wait, I'm a bit rusty on my electronics. We do that for that for that to you. I don't mind the tiny amount of wattage this takes compared to other things there. That's slightly cleaner. And then we have this one power into this one. And then we want to have something along the side that's going to power the electric fence. But here's the thing. Cops could spit and damage that. It's unlikely, if I put something on the side anyway, that the cops are going to target it. But it is a concern that I should be aware of. I think outside is still safer than on the inside with my explosives. What we'll do is a temporary walkway here. Just a little bit of scaffolding. It's normal in construction. Um, I'm going to want to figure out the exact height I want this at. So, not the door height, but a block above it. And then, I want to put it somewhere it can reach the electric fence. Like that. That should be good. If we grab this. And do that, and then into the electric fence. And then the electric fence into the other electric fence over there. I see a guy, hello. That should be good. So I'm going to go actually get some food and those electric fences and we can see about getting that first layer of defences set up. Right then, so first things first, I'm going to put the electric fence here and one over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to be at their knee heights, making sure that even crawling zombies or dogs are going to get electrocuted by the fence. Um, now I want this one over here to be the one that takes damage. So we want to power this from over here. The power is not actually on, so we don't have to worry about shocking myself. And we want this to go over to this one. There we go. We should have more than enough engines and gasoline for all this kind of thing. So this blue current is where the electricity is going to go through. If, I, if this was on and you stepped into it, you would take damage. So that's the first little bit of electric fence kind of stuff done. Let's take out this wood. And the powered doors can go in here. Now I'm going to have to do some illegal Lego building techniques here. I think that should be fine. I'm not too worried about the cosmetics of how it does this. That should just be okay. Now I want this to be separately powered, I think, from the electric fence. Separately powered from that there. So I want to be able to disable the electric fences without disabling the doors. So... That'll have to come separately, so if that goes into there, then we can have a switch next to it. I can see no way this would ever go wrong. Um, you know what, we'll have this one directed to the left. And have the electrical come out of this wire here, into the left one. We can put signs or something if I really care that much. And then we'll want another one of these on the outside it looks like so i'm gonna need more frames what i'm thinking here is if we do a similar thing with the wire relay on the outside here and have it come round and up into these that would be a really good idea right let's take these frames and i need to build a little bit more scaffolding something i can just rip out really quickly what height did i want it to be above the door but what block did i put it on it is two blocks back from the front. I want it to be symmetrical, even though it doesn't really matter. One, two, this one. Okay, so we take the wire tool, which is you. We bring it from this switch here into this here. And then, would this go in front of me? It wouldn't matter if it did, but it would be slightly ugly. Yeah, that is kind of ugly. What can I do then? Okay, we'll have to go for the slightly ugly option then, and do this, and wire this door to this door. There. So there's a little bit of wire that's going to be in the way, it's to be expected to be honest. I just don't want it to be a complete and utter mess of wires. It's getting kind of ugly, but let's um, do a little bit of thing here. So put all my generators in, and refuel it, and turn it on. So this is the master switch, if we switch that on, these two switches are now getting power, so we can turn this on, and that should enable the electric fence. Is there a way I can test it without 
using myself as the subject. Hey, come here. Come on, no. He's going to take a sweet time to get over here. And this switch should switch the doors. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so, if I use this switch, these will open, and the zombies will stop trying to path here. Or rather, the zombies won't try and stop pathing here, the zombies won't be able to path here, they'll just run along and fall down. You can use that to essentially turn off a wing of your base. The zombies will just keep falling down into traps. Let's see, is the fence working? Outstanding. that switch works and the door switch obviously works let me just go ahead and come out here and check on the repairs does it not even need a repair Ugh. no didn't even take enough damage to need a repair yet cool okay so only seven of the eight traps were actually crafted but that's perfectly workable i don't think i need that many anyway grabbing absolutely everything for this horde night including the rocket launcher because why not I don't have many height bombs due to the lack of gunpowder. That we should be good. So, one in there. Um, one like that. One like that. One like that. And one like that. That should be all the play traps the section really needs. Uh, where's the wire? Here we go. I'll just wire them all from the same one. I don't really care how it looks. I just don't want them to be dependent on each other. Because I don't want like one to break and then the others to stop working. I'll just pray that this relay doesn't break at all. Here we go. It's not that bad anyway. So they should all be in there. That's a lot of electricity, which is something to consider. But I think my six engines can handle it. Um, my gyrocopter's been left out, that's fine to be honest. I brought over a lot of extra supplies that I won't be needing for this horde night. Just to make sure I had... I've realised I've not brought anywhere near enough 9mm ammo. Still have to fix that. I'm going to dump away some of the things I don't think I'm going to need on horde night as well. So, 9mm ammo, 9mm ammo. Uh, let's just bring all of the 9mm I have, which isn't a lot. I've been using a lot, it would seem. That's fine, 9mm is a very common... Uh, quest reward so you can get a lot of it quite easy and let's bring all this extra forged steel and we should be good so there is the start of my new big horde base this is probably like a quarter of the way done in total last thing that needs to be done is upgrading these hatches do we do more just steel it takes nice so we have a lot of health on this. They may even try and not target those, which could have just broke this entire horde base. But if it does, I can always shut these hatches and move back a layer of defense and use the iron hatches. So that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to go. I just need to do one last check on the power side of things. So let's switch all of it on and make sure the generator can handle it. 150, it's good, it's fine. So let's turn you off, we can keep the electric fence on, and we can keep the blade traps on, close that up. Right, I'm ready for horde night. I didn't bring any repair kits though. Oh no I did. Right, so I am fully ready for horde night. This base is about to be tested, in case I come back later and forget to do this, just shut those. I think I'll be fine, but something can always go horribly, horribly wrong. In the last episode we got our base here built, I'm feeling 85% sure this will go perfectly well. I'm well armed, I have shotgun, SMG, pistol, rocket launcher, a wiring tool, uh, lots of grenades and various grenade-like things, lots of medicine, and plenty of gasoline in the generator. We have... An electric fence set up right at the front here, we can definitely do more with that later. You can see we have blade traps down there. Fulfilling the role of stopping the zombies from going into destroy area mode, I fully expect I'm going to be spending so much resources repairing those. And I'm going to pick up my drone here because it does not do anything here. And use this as a defensive layer and we always have another fallback. And if it all goes horribly wrong, 
I can jump out the side, get on my motorcycle, and hope for the best. Um, we can always do the so-called street horde in, in the desert. And let's double check my armor. Ah, my hood and my old feet are broken there. We'll fix that up. How much power is this using? Not much at all. Well, it's using a lot of power, but it's not using a lot of gas. That's fine. All right, I'm ready. I'm just waiting for this horde night to start. I'm thinking I'm going to be using mostly my shotgun for this because I have so much spare ammo for it. Here they come. Let's see if they even bother to come near me. Yeah, that looks like a good sign. Oh, some of them are going for the blade traps. That's fine. Just where they spawned. He just turned round. He decided to go up the other one, I think. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, they're perfectly fine attacking the vault hatches. That's great. Grenade out. All right, that was a lot of XP. See what I mean about the spit? All right, let me come back here. <laughs> We're definitely focusing the side I stand on, it seems like. Which is fine. Works for me. Oh, that guy got through. Weird, but that's fine. Pipe bombs are so good. Oh, nice. Seven agility. Let's go, let's go. Oh, that headshot damage with pistols. Let's use the magnum for a bit. All right, I don't hear any... Oh, dogs, hello. I don't hear anybody, like, hitting the sides, so that's a good sign. It means all of them, or at least most of them, are just coming down the main path here, which is perfect. Vulture, hello there. Deal with him in a second. Oh, the blade traps are doing something down there. Let's throw another pipe bomb. They're bunching up in the electric fence there. Perfect opportunity for it. going really well so far. I really thought there was going to be some massive blunder in the design that would cause it to break, but no, it seems to just be relatively foolproof, aside from the occasional zombie that breaks through, which is just a glitch. Any of those dogs still alive? No. Looks like one of them is deciding to hit the blocks down there, but we can afford that. I wonder how much damage is everything taken? Oh, this block's looking kind of weak. Oh, I forgot to grab some concrete. Give me a second. Um, there we go. That's fine. Just to double check the block health. I don't know what's happening to that guy down there. Sounds like the electric fence is now broken, which is fine. It did all it needed to. The sword knight is probably not going to last much longer anyway. still hit me all the way back here? Or maybe he spat at me. Whatever. I'll live. I feel like we've got one more wave, or maybe it's just a few stragglers of the last wave. I see someone crawling up that. I hear a few that must just be stuck on a wall somewhere trying to break something. Oh, yep, yep, yep. They found the blade traps, though. It's fine. One of my blade traps is definitely making some weakened noises, but that's honestly fine. 
let me go ahead and just turn off the master switch. Ah, sweet silence. Okay, I think that went well. Let's do a little bit of repairing here. I don't have much steel, but it'll have to do. Well, these blocks took some hits, but honestly, they're heavily layered for that reason. And obviously, there's a little bit of damage on basically every concrete block in here because of all the explosives, which is why I was so hesitant to put any kind of electrical components in this room. Because I knew that that was how that was going to go down. Tiny, tiny bits of damage. It's probably not even worth repairing them until later. But the door's doing. The doors are perfectly fine. Good. Let's get some loot then. Uh, coffee and 762. I'm just not going to bother repairing all of these right now. So the blade traps are the most interesting. They're all about half health. The two on the walls died, which was kind of predictable given their positioning. Uh, there's not much I can do to prevent that. That's just part of the base design as zombies fall here and come down onto a blade trap. But clearly, that means they did a lot of damage. Ooh, some new legs. Uh, um... My old ones are better. Okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, the old ones are better. Let's just uh, keep those for selling. Scrap that. Eat some food. Keep looting. Mostly just food, which I'm not going to say no to because I did forget to bring any over. Um, you know what? The hazmat jacket is kind of pointless. It doesn't have a purpose in the game right now. I could sell it, but not worth it. Uh, let's scrap this brass stuff. Grab these legs, machine gun parts, who cares? I'm not gonna craft a machine gun. Beer, I just don't use. And vitamin, and scrap those. Last two bags here. Dog's food. Could be useful, I think it's used in a recipe that is useful later on. And my queue is full. Well, we'll just fill it up with brass stuff. Uh, yeah, that went really well. We lost two blade traps, but all the blocks seem to have taken fairly minimal damage. I will come around and repair it all at some point. It's just really not worth me worrying about it right now. Um, I got enough levels there to get up to agility level 7, though, so that's pretty good. Alright, so I've spent the past, like, five minutes taking all my resources back to the space. I left the construction stuff back at the actual horde base, because it makes sense there. And I brought a load of loot that I got in Horde Night back, and I gathered up a bunch of things I can sell. I have so many motor tool parts, by the way. I did not realize that. But since I have the best auger I really care to have, I won't bother crafting a better one. So I'm going to grab the gyrocopter, and I'm going to spend the first half of this day just running around and grabbing traders and seeing what they have. Because there's still a few things I'd like to get. Actually, while I was flying over to the trader, I did see this, which is the Fates Motel. Now, it's a, just a normal POI most of the time, but it does have something quite useful for me, and I should definitely keep an eye out for various instances of this POI across the map. Let me grab my auger. I'm not going to do it the normal way because I don't really care about any of the loot or the zombies inside. Just not worth worrying about. So I'm going to cut open this door here. And kill him. There it is. What I've been waiting for. Some coal. So I got... Just over 1500 coal. I'm going to mark this, call it coal, and I believe this is a tier 3 POI. So when I head over to Trader Hugh, I'll check his tier 3 jobs and see if any of them send me here. That could be a very useful source of coal on a map with very, very little coal to give me. Cool, we've got some rock busters. I'll keep rock busters on me in case I find more coal. That's actually a really good idea. And some sugar butts, because why not? see what he has he's then. Still hanging uh, he's got an M60, which I don't need. Rocket launcher. Another generator bank. Pretty easy for me to make most of this stuff. Uh, mining volume 7. I am... 
I am looking to finish off Art of Mining to get the the 20% chance to one-shot any ore, so grabbing that may be worth it. Other than that though, he doesn't seem to have much that I want, so let me eat those sugar butts and sell some stuff. So we've got the old SMG, which we can sell for a lot, these legs, all these parts. I'm going to sell batteries to various people throughout the world. I don't know why I have my machete parts, I'll need those. Um, military armor parts, steel tool parts, sledgehammer parts, silver nugget, and diamonds. Here we go, so we got like 10,000 dukes now, let's head to the next trader and see what they have. Okay, I don't see any the fates most held down there. I know, there's plenty more towns in the, in this map. Let's head down here to Trader Hughes. One thing I will quickly grab at this new Trader Hugh though is his ammo boxes because I do need some more 9 mil. Nice. Hello piggies. And here's the second box. Nice. And some more magnum ammo. That's actually really good. Get out of there drone. Pistol Peak Volume 1. 20% more damage when using... 20% more range when using iron sights or a scope. Sure. Everything else I don't really want. Oh, gunpowder. I will buy more gunpowder. Always buy more gunpowder or coal. I'll take more wood as well because it could become a bit of an issue at some point. Other than that though, I'm good. Right, let's go and see Trader Jen. I am going to take a quick fly over other points of the map just to see if I can find any more of those coal POIs. Oh, I think I see a trader wrecked over there. Go see him, see what inventory he has. More rock busters. What do you got for me, wrecked? Part of mining seven. Didn't I buy that already? Evidently not. Pistol Pete, volume four, sure. Uh, first aid kit. Uh, nah. And I'll pass on the rest of that. What else do you have? A little bit of coal, I'll take it. And that's it. Apparently I just completed a book series. We completed pistol peats. Shots fired at point blank, ignore armor. Bulk craft 9 mil. Ooh, nice. So it, within about 3 meters, you'll ignore 20% of target's armor and they'll start bleeding. So that means basically if you put your gun in their mouth and shoot, you'll do a lot of extra damage, especially if they're armoured. So does that mean I can make like AP 9 mil? That might be worth grabbing. I didn't realise I was so close to finishing this. We're also quite close to the Fireman's Almanac. It's completely useless to me because the burned forest and wasteland aren't on this map, but it could be cool to finish it. Night Stalker, we need three and then we can do that. Yeah, we could finish off a couple of these books. That's where Trader Wrecked is, that's where Trader Hugh is. Let's go and explore the map a little bit more. Oh, I see an airdrop. Let's go grab that as well then. That's some forged iron. Well, that's not fantastic, but I'll take it. Ah, vulture. <laughs> this isn't the time. Leave me alone. There is a BBCC there, which is a Bob's, Boars and Carl's Corn. We'll want that if we ever need food. I see a Fates Motel over there. Hang on. Let's go grab that. Okay, so here's a bunch more coal for me to get. Hopefully I can get a stack of it and I can use that for a quick boost of XP and then, you know, actually craft some gunpowder. Remember to eat my rock busters this time so I get a little bit extra. We are, of course, very short on coal, so it'll be worth it. Here we go, so we've got 1600 that time instead of just the 1500. Uh, let's see if we can't search for some more of these POIs or maybe that Old West Coal Factory. Um, although, maybe I'm searching in the wrong places for the Coal Factory if I think about it. The Old West stuff has its own, like, towns now, so I shouldn't be searching normal cities for it. Why did I not think of that? Maybe I need to follow some of these wilderness roads. Hmm. I'm also interested in that big city over there. It doesn't look like I've been there, but it's huge by the looks of it. So there could be a lot of useful stuff down there. Oh, there's another one over there, look. Of my propeller. Nice. Right now, though, I'm just heading down to this trader wreck I found here. 
but we'll head over there in a second. Okay, we got another skill point. I'm thinking that putting that into Gunslinger, getting extra damage from my guns. Nice. Let's go talk to Trader Rex, see what he has. Oh, he has lots of gunpowder. Nice. Can't stress how much I'm going to need that. Oh. Magnum Enforcer Volume 1, do 10% more damage with 44s. Yes, please. Some more coal. A bunch of wood. I'll buy all the pipe bombs. Right, let's get out of here and head to that other motel I saw. And get another little bit of coal. This is going well so far, though. We go another 1600 coal. We're getting close to a stack. Good. Let's keep searching for a mine or more of these motels. Motels seem to be the way to go though, but respawning them is going to be a pain. I'm going to have to get everybody up to like tier 3. Over here I see some dirt roads in like a town configuration, so maybe we'll find an old west coal plant there. Oh, I think we did. Nice. Now that I've seen it, it'll probably turn into some other POI, but I think this is it. Look at all that coal in the back, and I think there's more below. And there's vultures everywhere. Ow. Right, well, my rock busters have wore out, so let's just take the next one and take this part of the place down. Okay, so we got a stack. Let's do the last stack of resources here in the form of coal. It won't give me that much XP, to be honest, but it's worth doing it as free. Um, all right, so we have a stack and a half of coal now. One thing I'm not 100% sure on is if this PY has any coal on the inside, but it's definitely definitely going to be worth checking that out so let's head in here clear the place out i think it's only like a tier two so it should not be hard at all out barrel Well, this is only a tier one, I forgot. Oh, some machete parts, finally. It's been so long since I actually found any. Still not enough to make my machete though. How unfortunate. Ooh. Flashlight, we can put that on something and sell it probably. This is a good hidden stash right here. Okay, so this place, I believe, is clear mostly. And there's plenty of coal to mine. I'm just annoyed I don't have enough rock busters to keep them going the whole time, but... Let me mark this on my map before I forget where it is as well. We're going to call this Big Coal. What we really need, though, is to find a trader nearby. Oh, this is lead. Okay, there's a lead mine in here as well. Okay, that's all the coal from that wall. That's fine. I'm gonna dump this lead just so it doesn't weigh me down. Where else is the coal in here then? Is there coal inside this? There is. How do I get in there? That's 10,000 L. Let's go around. There we go. That's all the coal from in there. Let's head up here. So there's even more coal. There's a little bit here as well. Okay, 
Yeah, that looks like more or less all the coal from here. Which leaves me with two and almost another half stack. This is going very well. There's plenty more coal in here as well. There's another big chunk here on this wall. all of that. Let's go down here again. Another big chunk of coal. Another big chunk of coal. This room has two big nodes of coal in it. This is so nice. Make so much coal. Probably gonna give me more than enough the rest of the series, but imagine. I'm just gonna keep the stacks going in my inventory here as well. 3 XP. Um I don't think I'm supposed to see this. <laughs> Ah, he snuck up on me. I've definitely got some visitors upstairs. I think I've got all the coal for- oh, almost all the coal. There's a little bit here. There we go. Then there's this lump of coal, the coal by the entrance I came in. There's two more big lumps of coal, but I should probably go and deal with the people trying to break in here. Uh, we want to go out the other way. Got more visitors from upstairs. Although I did get a skill point while I was doing that, and I should probably put that into... Probably knives, and that's going to unlock the final crafting stage of the machete, so now I need to get up to 15 machete parts to get myself a good machete crafted, but that shouldn't be too hard. I'm just having extremely bad luck with actually finding machetes, which is weird because I've had some really good luck with other stuff like the SMG. Are we quite done trying to attack me? Okay, one more lump of coal to go, and that'll be my fourth stack of coal so far. Where's the next one? Forgot where it was. Here it is. And I think that is all the coal I'm going to get out of this place. And that leaves me with four and a quarter stacks of coal. That is a lot compared to what I've had this entire series. Since there's been no coal in the desert biome, of course. I'm gonna head home and get probably mining nitrate. Because if I'm gonna make coal, I'm also gonna need nitrate. Fortunately, nitrate isn't hard to find. That that's just everywhere in the desert, like all the other ores. Okay, so the final tally for my coal is four stacks and 1782 versus one stack and 216 of nitrate. And what that means is I'm going to have to go mine a lot of nitrate. So I'm going to spend the rest of the night doing that. Set this here to finish crafting all that gas out. I'm not going to try and do the efficient stacks of gunpowder because that would take me seven skill points to get to here. And that doesn't feel worth it. Seven skill points to save 20% more of my coal doesn't seem worth the effort when I could just, you know craft the things I need and be done with it. I doubt I'm going to need that much gunpowder anyway. I just plan on making a load of explosives. I'll let the game just hand me ammo.
Okay, it is 5.47 in the morning and I've just mined out three more stacks of nitrate powder and 1700 more, which matches my coal quite well. So I'm going to unpack all the coal, unpack all the nitrate, and let's go and turn all of this into gunpowder. All right, let's get this started. We can make... I don't think it's a thousand. I think it's a lot more than a thousand. Yeah, it's ten thousand. That's... Oh, I can make more? Oh. Oh, it's twenty-five thousand. Okay, so there's twenty-five thousand gunpowder. I'm going to need a lot more fuel than that. Um... Half of that, maybe? There we go. That's going to sit there and make that incredibly annoying sound for a while. Uh, let me store some stuff away here. Let's see, I could maybe use a second chemistry station now that I think about it. What do we need? Beakers, do I have any? I've got one beaker. Uh, forged iron. 62 forged iron, but we can get a lot more quite easily. Three cooking pots. Uh, we can craft those. Oh, wait. I have six beakers. Okay. So I need short iron pipes. And I need acid in cooking pots. Well, the acid is fine. Cooking pots. Cooking pots. Okay, to the forges. So I'll dump all this iron in here. Has this one got any iron smelted into it? No, it's just clay. Just a million pieces of clay. Oh, it won't take any more clay. That's why. You just can't take any more clay, right? Let me go throw this clay away. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some iron mining at some point soon, because that seems to be the shortage right now. I could make up to five chemistry stations if I wanted to, but I think that's unnecessary. Maybe two more? I need more forged iron. I'm just gonna stick all the components for the chemistry station in this blocks box here. And yeah, so maybe two more chemistry stations will do. I have to use everything on it, of course. But it seems like between episodes, I'm just going to have to sit and do what I did with the nitrate and just mine a load of iron. But I'm going to want to get some rock busters first. But before I do that, there was one thing I didn't do yesterday, and that was go and check in at Trader Gems. So I'm going to go fly over to her now with all these gems that I gathered in the night. See what she has for sale. All right, Jen, what do you got for me? He has another... Magnum Enforcer book, 5% less damage when wearing a suit, that is a scam skill, but I will take it for the completion bonus. The damage reduction isn't really 5%, it's kind of a lie, and it's definitely not worth the slots that it takes up to wear the suit, so don't fall for that one. And that's all she had. Okay. So are these diamonds, the gold, silver, whatever. But with that, guys, I think I've done everything I want to do in today's episode. We did the Day 21 Horde, and it went really, really well. And we spent pretty much an entire day just trying to mine coal. But it was definitely worth it, because in the end, I managed to get 25,000 gunpowder. That's going to last me a while, hopefully, um, for crafting ammo, and more importantly, crafting explosives. Because ammo I can find a lot of. Explosives are slightly more rare and I want them in much bigger quantities. So that's definitely the next item on the agenda. Next thing I need to do is build a few more forges, build some more advanced bellows, build some more anvils, mine up just mountains of iron, turn it all into forged iron, forged steel, short iron pipes, and a few cooking pots, and then craft up a few chemistry stations to speed up the gunpowder, as well as any extra gasoline I want to craft. And then from there, it's gonna be upgrading the base, building a massive stockpile of pipe bombs for Horde Knight, and then all we'll need to do is complete those last two Tier 5 POIs, the Shong Tower and the Poppin' Pills Factory, and the last thing I'll have to do is clean up the Ranger Station, make it look nice. If I'm going to be doing that, I'm going to need some paint. I think what I'm going to do after I've done Agility, up to a certain extent, I think this is fine, I'll get three ranks of Flurry of Blows, and then, in fact, you know what? I won't get three ranks of Flurry of Blows, give me a second here while I regain some altitude, because of course I'm flying at the same time here. What I am going to do is pivot slightly into Fortitude, I'm going to get it up to like three, 
and put two ranks into living off the land. I don't want to go all the way into the third rank, it's just a lot. It's not really necessary for the farming plots, and I don't think I'll actually need a particularly large quantity of the item I want to farm. The item I want to farm is actually chrysanthemum, because that is used in paint. And once I've got all those chemistry stations set up, and I'm on to the part of this project where I'm going to be renovating that base and finishing off my horde base, I'm going to need a good amount of paint. Now, fortunately, chrysanthemum does turn into paint a very reasonable rate in the chemistry station. I believe it's like one chrysanthemum will get you like 10 or even 100 paint. It's been a while since I've crafted it. But the big problem with chrysanthemum and the reason I'm even bothering to farm any rather than just find it out in the wild, as you may have noticed in this entire series, chrysanthemum does not grow naturally in the desert. It's kind of a cold situation. I have to find it in POIs. Or I could loot the seeds, and stupidly, I've been dropping all the seeds I keep finding of it, but I'll keep an eye out for them in the future. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. In today's episode, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a lot of things I need to take care of, but I have nothing that is immediately threatening to me. I feel like the one thing I'm really missing right now is a load of iron, so that I can make those extra chemistry stations and make a bunch of iron pipes for pipe bombs. So maybe that's the first problem I should solve. I'll also need XP so that I can start that farm. Yeah, that sounds like a good way to start this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my auger, down into the mines and I'm just going to get a bunch of iron as well as stone because I'll need more concrete at some point and you know I'll also need a lot of nitrate because farm plots are pretty expensive on the nitrate so getting a stack or so of that would be a good idea as well. I'm going to get started here by checking the base for some rock busters. There's none in there, I'll go check my medicine box. And yeah, I have no more rock busters. That's okay. Um, the amount of time it would take me to go out to the traders and get rock busters would be completely not worth it. But I did just have an idea. I have a lot of aloe cream and I think I have a lot of cloth. If I combine these, I can make first aid bandages. That's a lot of healing right there. So I'm going to make 25 of those and I just realized they take like two seconds to craft. So that is all the first aid bandages I'm ever going to need, pretty much sorted, meaning I don't have to grow any aloe at that form. I was thinking about making yucca juice smoothies, but I realised getting snowballs is going to be hard in the desert. Not impossible, so I might just grow a little bit of blueberries just in case I do find some snowballs. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I didn't find any rock busters, wouldn't be worth the time to go and get them. I am going to go get started mining again, this time looking for iron, stone and nitrate. And I won't say no to other materials I find as well, so I'll see you guys when I'm done with that. Okay, so I have been mining for about 30 minutes now, it's just about to turn morning on day 24, and I've got myself 10 stacks of iron, 4 stacks of nitrate powder, 3 stacks of stone and some change to all of those, including some silver and gold which I can sell later. I'm just going to drop that random piece of oil shale. I am lost in this cavern, um, if you're mining at home, maybe put some supports in, but I don't care. So I'm going to go back up to the surface and start using some of these resources. Okay, so with the iron dealt with, now I need to put away all the other resources here. I might get more forges at some point, but two should be fine for now. Um, I don't need the stone immediately or the nitrate immediately, so they can wait. My extra resources in here. Even more sand to add to the infinite pile of sand that I already have. Okay. Let's see, so I have the materials almost for my um, chemistry stations, I just need more forged iron and a couple of pots. For the arm plots, I might need a lot more wood. Actually, no, I'll be fine. I will need rotting flesh though, have I been collecting any? We've got a little bit of rotting flesh. With a couple of perks put into living off the land, that should be fine. In fact, I can take the first rank already, which is going to give me 
the recipe to craft a load of seeds and make those cost a bit less. So now I need three less rotting flesh to craft a farm plot and a lot less clay and nitrate, so that's good. You know, it might be the time to replant some of those trees. Let's plant 70 of the trees. What I think I need to do now is get a tier 5 complete. Just grind out some better gear. Maybe I'll get lucky and get a machete. I'm going to craft some more iron crossbow bolts if I'm going to do more jobs. Because the crossbow obviously carries me through most of that. And yeah, I've got 400 arrowheads ready to go. I just need to see how many feathers I have. I have 37. That is disappointing. <laughs> okay, so note to self. Keep an eye out for those feathers. But it's still better than no more bolts, so let me take all these first aid bandages. And wait, can you make crossbow bolts in your inventory? Yeah, you can, of course. Silly me. Still take all the bandages. Uh, store most of them away. Your we medicine is now solved pretty much forever. I'm gonna put my magnum away, because that's not what I want to use today. And I'll grab the pump shotgun, because that is always very good. Right, so now. I'm definitely equipped to do some jobs. The thing is, is I don't want to do any tier 5s, or at least none of the new tier 5s that I haven't done yet, because they'll take a lot of time and that might make the episode too long. What I think I want to do is actually grind out the Crackabook HQ, because you can complete it very quickly. That might be the best way to get to that tier 5 complete as soon as possible. Uh, I need some gas. Where have I... Where have I been putting that? There we go. Because the auger and the chainsaw and the gyrocopter are going to need that. So let's go see Trader Hugh and see if he has any of the Crackabook HQ ready for me to do. Because it's such a quick and easy PUI. Especially now that I have an SMG and stuff, it should really be a breeze. Be good. Uh, so let's see. Skyscraper O2, perfect. Split. That is the Crackabook Tower. While I'm here, I will grab these rock busters since I'm already all the way out here. Um, and that should be fine. Okay, and here we are. Just outside Crackabook HQ. We meet again. Oh, and there's vultures, of course. Well, that's just free crossbow bolts if you think about it. Ah, there's the vulture. Don't know what he's doing, but... You can't stop me. Nice. A load more bolts can be made now. <laughs> right, let's get this place started. My frame rate's kind of dying. I'll fix that really quickly. There we go. Down to high. I should get a little bit more frames. Right, well, let's do this place again. Hopefully it goes as well as the first time, which was pretty much easy. Ow. Did not switch fast enough. Let's pop out the window here really quickly. Oh, how did I even do this? I don't know, but it works. Let me heal really quickly. wonder if they can get to me at all. There's a random feral. Hello. You hear all that running. That is a very interesting sound. Fortunately, I should be fine. I mean, this is faster, to be honest. It was my goal. Complete this quickly. They all just jump out the building and come fight me. That works to my favour. Oh, hello. Ah, there's loads of them. Hi there. Anyone else? Wanna jump down at all? 
Okay, there is one still alive in the building somewhere. That is probably going to shave a lot of time off, <laughs> off of the time it would have taken to clear this place. Not optimal, because I used a lot of ammo, but fast, sure. It sounds like a wandering horde has found its way over. Yep. Of course it did. I would say it was maybe me firing a gun, but this is a very... Uh, very large influx of zombies for just random gunfire to attract them, so... Yeah, I think this is some kind of horde. You're someone. Oh look, yeah, yeah, this was definitely a wandering horde. You just... You don't see two of the same zombies just wandering around like that. Oh, three of the same zombie. That only happens in uh, wandering horde spawns. Okay. Are we done? One second, I hear one. Where are you? Oh, it got in. Hmm. Well, I could take this opportunity to clear some of the other floor. I forgot to bring some water. That is annoying. Yeah, I might find some. Oh, wait, the kitchen got destroyed. I forgot. Well, maybe I'll find some in here. Nope. That's not the end of the world. Ah, wait a minute. Chrysanthemum. Very hard to find on this map, so I will take that. This is a very strange way of cleaning this POI, but it works. How many dogs are up here? Well, you know, I should be harvesting these dogs for their rotten flesh for those farm plots. Ah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Oh, there's his head. Grab the courier satchel here. Another dog, seriously? that feral will go. Oh, he fell. Why did I just get a bunch of red markers? Oh, the people downstairs woke up. Hmm. Well, this should be fun. Ow. Guns are so nice. I don't even have any points in the perk. And then let's set up a bit of defense here as well again. This room is still going to be kind of insane if there's a load of ferals in it, which there could be. Okay, that's a weird way of doing this, but should work. If not, we can always run to those metal spikes over there and I have an SMG with enough ammo, so we'll be fine. Now let's get some sneak attacks. Uh, I might have to place a couple of big blocks down because I don't want to go into my own spikes here. I have to activate the volume. Of course. Ah, there we go. Oh, there's a radiated feral white in here. This is hell. We have found hell. Well, uh, I doubt I'm going to get away with any sneak attacks on them, so I'm going to just do a load of damage to him and then run away. Oh yeah, it's time for explosives.
But there's still some alive down there. There's like a million. We got like 12,000 XP for one of those pipe bombs. You telling me there's more down here? I hate this room, but at least it's fast. But they're not even in this room game. Why why do you do this to me? There we go. Cleared. Now let's get some loot. Not that I'm really expecting too much. But worth a look. Ooh, the advanced muffle schematic, nice. Let's try and unlock this the normal way first. Damn it. Ooh. So we got a blade trap bundle. <laughs> nice, 10 blade traps. That's a lot of materials saved. We got a robotic drone med. Ugh. Robotic drone medic mod schematic. Not very helpful, but I'll learn it just in case I want to. The impact driver. A treasure map, which I'll read near my base. Machetes, which are trash, but can use their parts to make my machete, which won't be trash. Uh, some advanced mufflers, some lockpicks, some medicine, some ammo, and silver. Not terrible. Not terrible. I'm too used to playing on limited loot settings. Iron crossbow schematic. That will not be helpful. Op seed recipe. Not helpful. I'm going to get living off the land anyway. Oh boy, a level 4 steel spear. Just what I've always wanted. Um, these are some pretty terrible tier 5 rewards, I'm not going to lie, but I will take some contact grenades. And even though I have a bajillion of them, in fact, no, I was going to say, even though I have a bajillion first aid bandages, I'll take it, but actually, I could just sell them that chainsaw. That's It's a decent price. I mean, why not, right? right so let's get that skill point. Um... Well, I want to get to at least living off the land too, because that's where all the seeds um, are unlocked from. I, ideally, I would want to get up to three, but I think just two will do from now. So let's get up to three fortitude and then do the other thing. Uh, you know what? I'm going to quickly speed run a tier four. Why not? But first, I think I'm going to craft a machete. Since I've been waiting for one for so long, I finally have, I think, enough parts to combine with my other stuff to make one, so that'll be good. Let's see, how many treasure maps do I have now? Three. Might be worth grabbing those as well. So, yeah, let's go craft a machete and do that tier four, and then get the treasure. Why not? We also, we got 16. I think you need 15, so that's enough. What else do we need? Forge steel, leather, and duct tape. Duct tape. I'll need some glue and cloth, I think. Did I run out of cloth? Oh no. And I'm gonna have to spit out a little bit of forged steel because I used it all. Dirty forged steel. Should be easy. The forges should be mostly done now anyway. Yeah, they're getting there. Right, let's get 30 forged steel out. And then let me also get like 140 forged iron, I wanna say. And then this one, I just want, yep, that's a lot of pipes. Let's go for 400 pipes, probably exceptionally unnecessary, but just to be safe. Yeah, let's make that scope. What do I need? 4x, 15 broken glass, 10 more forged steel, a bunch of glue and scrap polymers. Did I ever keep any broken glass? Not really, but it's easy to get some broken glass. Uh, how much do I need? 15. Yo, there's enough broken glass for it. Now, I'm gonna go order some more steel. Now, cancel the iron. Go back to like 138, I think it was at. Forge steel. I still need cloth though. Is there anywhere I can Oh wait, do I have the plant fiber thing to make cloth? I do. Ah. Do I have any plant fibers? I have 20. That's not going to be enough. Where are all my plant fibers? What have I been doing with them? They like make a cloth. Not helpful. Um, but I can easily get more plant fibers compared to cloth, because you know, no cotton in the desert, but plenty of grass at least. And I only need like a hundred plant fiber, so this shouldn't take too long. Oh wait, aren't these made of plant fiber? Aha, it's way better. Uh, where's more cactuses? There's one. Also, bird's nests give you cloth sometimes. We'll get that. Okay, that should be enough cloth to make the duct tape I need for my machete. Um, yeah. Grab some more plant fibers though.
So let's get that machete crafted. Level five, right? Yep, nice. It only takes a minute. And I can put the knife to rest here. Uh, so the scope. What else did we need for that? Scrap polymers and forged steel. So scrap poly I have, forged steel I have as well. Also, I'm going to tell it to give me four cooking pots, I think is how many I need. No, wait. I'm not sure. It might be four. Anyway, forged steel. <laughs> and let's get that 4x scope going. Hopefully you can put four times this on crossbows, otherwise that'll be annoying. Not the end of the world, though. I can always make a 2 times scope quite easily. Just more broken glass would be the issue there. There we go. Level 5 machete. So the power attack damage on this machete is 46, compared to the hunting knife's 26, so it does almost twice as much damage. And the scope's done. Hopefully this can be put on crossbows. Nice. It's the eight times it can't be put on crossbows, unfortunately. Now we have a scope, which I can zoom in using the scroll wheel. You didn't know that, you actually have to use the scroll wheel to get the full zoom from, a, from anything with a scope. So that'll just make things slightly easier for me. Nice. Um, I don't think I'm even going to try and be smart about this. I'm just going to clear the area and then just start digging with a auger. First try, nice. And wood splitter, do I have that on my? Yeah, I do. Handgun parts, club parts, some ammo, and money. Not bad, not good. Let's go and grab the gyrocopter. And go to the other two. Um, oh, 12k dukes. Did they buff these again? Hold of ammo. Nice. I'm not sure. They were really bad at the start of Alpha 20, but they're kind of looking decent now. Or maybe it's just they scale better with your loot stage. And that's why I thought they were so bad. Uh, still terrible placement, must say, game. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is 300 meters away. Um, behind me. Well, yep. Cactuses have hitboxes. One thing I did see there, though, is there's some crops here. Which, given I'm going to start a farm soon, I should grab. Where are you? Oh, a feral. You see, they get staggered by the machete. The, the knife wasn't really doing that. So, good thing I got this machete. So now we can actually fight ferals just one-on-one. -on -one. I also want these blueberries, just in case I want to farm them. Need to keep an eye out for ice machines or snowballs. Because... I don't think there's any PYs which just have snow in them. If there is, let me know. Because snowballs are used in yucca juice smoothies, and those are really good. What? <laughs> is it even further down? Ah, there it is. Oh, of course, because I started a block up. Yeah, that makes sense. 4k jukes, a knife I don't need, and a bunch of ammo and machete parts. Nice. Not terrible. Oh, this place again? Ugh. Also, chrysanthemum. Drone, do you want to move at all? Oh, this one comes a feral. It 
seven times sneak attack bonus. Nice. Ah, none of you are even feral. Come on. And he just tanks it. Alright. Whoa, there's another one. Hello. Where was your marker? Just die, damn you. He might actually bleed out. Oh wait, he's healing as well, but yeah. I forgot. I'm not sure if the uh, the bleed outweighs the heal on that. Still like quite well. Right, let's get my loot and get out of here. Uh, machine gunner, craft M60s, not helpful. Open this up. Oh, and I left my lockpicks on the drone, I think. There we go. Steel club, which is not helpful. Another treasure map. Bill Reed. Lockpicks, money, and more mods. I'm loving the sewing kits, though. Thank you, game. They are a pain. Before I go back to the trader, I may as well grab that treasure map as well. All just money after all. Where is the gyrocopter? Getting so much ammo from this. I'm not complaining, but damn. Right, let's dig up this map here. Ah, there it is. Let's see, an ergonomic grip. Nice, I'll put that on my machete. And some ammo, and barely, no money at all, just some cash. That is disappointing. Take it, though. I mean, it literally took me like a minute to get it. It was just coming all the way out here that was the issue. Uh, machete, let's take the iron breaker off, because that's doing nothing for you. And... Let's go ahead and put the Iron Breaker temporarily on my chainsaw, just because it can take the slot. Right then, let's go see the traders. I think they reset today as well, so that is very helpful. Oh, I'll do business oh my god. As long as you're not a thief. Why, game? Why do you do this to me? After all that time, you gave me a better one from a tier 4 reward. You son of a bitch. I'm going to take this and the Art of Mining there. Yep, this this new one's slightly better than mine, isn't it? Let me take all the mods off just to be 100%. This one does 40, and my one does 46. Of course it does. Of course it does. You're really funny, Hugh. You know that? You're really funny. Really funny. And then some of this doing a lot more damage, and we got the ergonomic grip on it. That's nice. Still not finished Art of Mining. I need one more, and then I can get that really OP bonus. The 20% chance to one-shot any ore. It's insane. Quit wasting my time. Eat these really quickly. Um, don't need, 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 don't need. I don't have bones in my inventory, but I have thirty-five thousand dukes now. Uh, Magnum enforcer. Yep. Urban combat. Yep. I don't need that art of mining. I don't need any of this other stuff. I won't say no to more gunpowder, even though I mostly have the problem solved. Since it's not infinite, I will grab it. No oh, close to finishing Magnum Enforcer. I need two more of those. And what was the other one? Urban Combat. I need three more of those. Hmm. Let's go see the other traders. Uh more sugar butts. Great weather we've been having. What do you have, Bob? He does have Magnum Enforcer 4, which gives me better prices if I have a Magnum. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the Magnum with me, but that is useful. Uh, I'll be sure to bring the Magnum everywhere with me now. Uh, extended shotgun tubes. Do I have one already? Nope, I'll take it and I'll craft one. Why not? Otherwise... I think that's all I want from there. Let's check his other stuff really quickly. Won't say no to another blade trap. And more gunpowder. Okay. Thanks for shopping. He didn't have much, to be honest, but... Not bad. 
Let's read this. Read that. So I'm going to go back and get my 44, of course, because now I can get a discount while holding it. If we get one more, we can get the all shots with 44 ammo penetrate enemies. That is really good. Is that chemistry station done? It is. Nice. Drone move. Do that. And I can access them both from this side. Let's take all that out. And craft... Well, how much can I even make? I don't know. Let's go for 7,500. And then... Yeah, that's approximately distributed. I left my wood somewhere, though. Here it is. That's going to take 100 minutes. Okay, so that should be enough chemistry stations. I don't think I'm actually going to need more than two. It's going to take an hour and a half to craft all that up, but otherwise we're good. Let's check the drone. I'm going to grab all my magnum ammo. I should really craft more of that, but I'll wait until I can bulk craft it. Rugs, boots. What do you have, Battle. Trader Gen? Shotgun size 7. Sure, I'll get that in a second. Uh, military armor schematic. Ooh. Uh, it's probably not worth it. I'm not I'm not specced into light armor yet, and I don't have any of the stuff to craft armor, so that's probably just a no from me. What else do you have though? Some awesome sauce. Why not? If I want to make some bigger purchases at some point, I can use that. Otherwise, though, this was a bust. Jen doesn't really have anything, but Stay I will. Ah! It won't even save me 100 dukes if I just buy one book, so let's do that. Well, you just brightened my day. You know, I don't know if I remember to have my magnum out when I bought that other book. And you are... Uh, I don't really want... Ooh, vehicle supercharger. Yeah, that would be good. Maybe not quite worth using any sugar butts on, because it is just 1500, especially not the Grandpa's Awesome Sauce. But, yeah, I'll get that and I'll make a supercharger. So let's take some of that gunpowder. And... Plant fibers. And then make some pipe bombs. A lot of pipe bombs. Yeah, that should be enough pipe bombs forever. Wasn't even that expensive. A lot of pipes. Yeah, that's going to carry me right through this whole playthrough. Right then. Finally got that machete. I made many monies and used many monies. Oh, the supercharger. Oh, let's do the supercharger first. Hang on. I'll make two. One for my motorcycle, one for the gyrocopter. Even though I've not used that motorcycle in a while. Uh, let's get 20 forged steel, ensure iron pipes, and brass radiator and mechanical parts. Well, pipes I can do. Supercharger 2, and I'll queue up all those pipe bombs again. Perfect. Right. Okay, well, they're going to be crafted in the morning. I'll put them in my vehicles. In the meantime, though, that doesn't have to be done right now. So, we got a lot done today. But I've been recording for like three hours, so I think I'm going to stop here. In the next episode, I think I'll maybe just do more jobs. I want to get some of my weapons up. Like maybe if I could get a tier 6 compound crossbow and a tier 6 um, magnum, that would be pretty nice as well. Some better augers and chainsaws and stuff. I don't want to go back to doing base building or resource gathering. I'm a bit bored of it, so I'll do some, some questing. I'll try and grind out the uh, Rackabook Tower a couple more times because it's a really easy tier 5. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. Before we get started today, I remembered something that happened a few episodes ago that I never really did anything with. I completed Pistol Pete, which gave me access to bulk crafting 9mm ammo. And 9mm ammo is some of the cheapest ammo you can make, so I can make it even cheaper by bulk crafting it. So what I was thinking is, let me grab these superchargers, is if I can get some more bullet tips, I can craft a lot of armor piercing 9mm. Now I did say I already had enough ammo from questing, but this is much better ammo and I'm also getting so many explosives and I'm still able to make this much ammo. So I definitely think I'm gonna start adding these to my crafting queue as well. I might even need more workbenches, but I won't worry about that right now. Let me take all these pipe bombs, which have been crafting away during the night and just store them in here for now. That is a glorious sight. 
Uh, and what I was thinking is I can take all my regular 9mm with me and use that. And then on Horde Nights, I can just take the AP rounds I'm crafting there and, you know, go crazy with the even better ammo. On top of that, I've got my forges smelting up even more brass and bullet casings. Make sure that I can just keep crafting up those kinds of things. And I'm going to start making more bullet casings because they're definitely, they're currently the resource I have the least of. I did have a load of spare bullet casings and bullet tips from the treasure chest, which is one of the good things that they're for. Uh, I have two trader hues, which are all leveled up to level five, so I can do at least two crack -book towers in the same day. And I'm ringing all my 9mm ammo so that I can pretty much just spray and pray my way through it and I'll be fine because I have all that extra AP ammo crafting at home. First, let me put the new supercharger on there. I appear to have attracted... yep. And the screamer. There we go. Also, I put the flashlight on the um, SMG. It does basically nothing, but it does increase my damage by 10%. By just having the mod so i thought i would take it so i'm gonna head over to the first trader hugh and i'm going to see if he has any good tier 5 jobs for me to do buy these bullet tips because they're extremely cheap and i'm sure on them and let's Best see what jobs he has I got a job for here we go three kilometers away skyscraper 02 well, that'll do perfectly fine here. this is the same poi i've done like twice but it's easily the fastest tier 5 you can do Probably closely followed by the hospital. We meet again, crack about HQ, this time three kilometers away. Took me like an hour and a half to get here. I'm just gonna shoot and drag over all the zombies that are gonna annoy me during this process. Anyone else in the town wanna come and annoy me? that dog and that guy don't make me shoot my own gyrocopter that's just rude okay i think we're done <laughs> right i think for this one i'm just gonna basically shift w and spray and just see how quickly i can complete it Oh, we've all fallen down again. I feel like we just did this. Another screamer already? How could that possibly be? Remember to grab this, of course. There's the screamer dealt with.
and I'm pretty sure I've already cleared this room, but let's hop down anyway. Oh, I hear another screamer outside. She's on the other side of the building, though. Same old strategy here, I think. Just, you know, block them off. Oh, that's a lot. is this? <laughs> Where did these guys come from? Ow. I really don't know where these guys came from. They came from above me. Okay, so for whatever reason, they decided to break out this way, where that uh, big door usually is, and come around, and that's how I got attacked from behind. I've never seen them do that. I wonder why they even... Interesting. Still, though, it went relatively well. I got damaged a bit when I got stuck, but they were also kind of stuck on the same way, so... There we go. We got another auto turret bundle, which means lots more 9mm ammo I can use for the next one. A treasure map, which I'll want to keep, of course. Uh, gloves, I'll just get rid of. I'll read these for the XP. Insulated lining is the cold resist, it's just completely useless on this map. Um, first aid kits, though, I will always take three first aid kits, and I'll get rid of that. And okay, that went pretty well. And in the end, I didn't even come away with that much less ammo. I only technically used a hundred shots there, so there you go. <laughs> what I need is a repair kit. My SMG's about to break. Well, I'm gonna fly up to the other trader Hugh and see if he has any skyscraper twos available to do. And I'll see if he has any repair kits to buy as well. If not, I'll just head up to the original trader Hugh. Have a little ah, he does have a skyscraper too, nice. The exact same one, I hope. It's not, it's one to the north. Okay, I'll stop in at the other trader queue here to see if I get any good rewards from that, and then I'll head over to this tier 5 here. I'll need to grab some water and food as well, I always forget that. Let me check if Hugh has any repair kits. That is a no. Okay. I don't care what folks say about you in the wasteland. And uh, none of these are particularly useful, but I'll take the M60 to sell. And the legs are apparently slightly better than mine. Oh, and we completed tier five. Nice. I have a gyrocopter. I don't care about solar banks. I don't need 500 steel blocks, but 20k dukes would be nice. 100 forged steel, not helpful. And yeah, I think I'll take the blocks and sell them and the armor and sell it as well. I'm gonna hold on to this stuff for a little bit and wait until I have some consumables. That makes a lot of sense to maximize how much money I can get for all this. Let's get this forge spitting out some bullet casings. Same with that one. And this one ran out of fuel, but it's got a load of lead in it now. 
and have this spit out a load of bullet tips. Nice. I'll need a bit more fuel. Oh, so that'll fill that. Repair the SMG. Everything else can wait. I will repair these legs though, because why not? Okay, so if I wanted to maximize my profits, I would need some awesome sauce, some sugar butts, and I would need a bunch of armor mods. Now, this might not be worth it, but I feel like I can get my hands on a load of sewing kits. Oh, I have so many sewing kits, never mind. That isn't really an issue. My inventory is completely open. What's the cheapest armor mod I can make? Honestly, this looks expensive, but I feel like I could make a lot of those. Oh, I could definitely make a lot of uh, armor plating mods. Do I have any mechanical parts? Yes. Do I have any duct tape? No, I think I just crafted it all, but I definitely have bones. And I've got some jars. And I've got some snow somewhere. Oh, no, wait, I don't have any snow, of course. Wrong playthrough. Excuse me, this is the desert biome. Where would I have snow? So I guess I'll have to go and grab some murky water. But, once I have that, I can make a lot of glue. While I'm out there, I can maybe grab some more bones, so maybe it'd be worth taking the motorcycle and getting some glue. I know I plan to cheese a load of tier 5s, but this is kind of more interesting to me. Seeing how much money I can make off of that armour and the uh, 500 steel blocks, which I absolutely refuse to even entertain the idea of placing because if you misplace one of them it's like 20,000 health to go through so no thank you where is the nearest water uh, there there we go and glue I can make 42 that's all the jars I even have so it'll do right then so with glue handle do I have enough cloth probably probably enough polymers might have to make some steel and stuff for this to work fully, but it could be worth it. Make some duct tape. And how many pieces of armor do I have? One, two, six pieces of armor. I'm not going to do it for my leather armor because it's, it's not going to be that worthwhile, but steel armor might be worth putting mods onto all of this and then selling it. I could make some insulated liners. Uh, I would need more duct tape, but I could definitely do it. I could also make armor plating mods. I would just need more duct tape again and some leather. I could even make cooling mesh mods with more glue and oil. That's probably the, the most worthwhile one, actually. Take this glue. And don't seem to have much oil. Damn. But I can craft oil. Like the glue, so maybe I should do that. This is a lot of work for probably not enough money. Also, I hear a screamer, presumably from all the campfires and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to get some oil shale. And I need to tell one of my forges to craft out some iron pans. I can make some oil, which I can use for the cooling mesh mods. And no, I'm not going to make any of those for my actual armor because it's not worth it at all. The minor water cost really isn't that big of a concern. That should honestly be enough. I have this other chemistry station cleared out and have it craft me some oil and then go for five insulated lining mods. I'm going to need more cloth. I have a lot of plant fibers so we can do this the other way. I'll do some oil now. Here's two. Make one cooling mesh mod. Oil takes a while to cook it looks like. Okay, what's the other one I wanted to make? Banded armor? No. The other one I wanted to make was armor plating, which needs duct tape, of course, and leather. Leather. And with some more duct tape, we can also make some improved fittings, which can also go in the armor. And that'll be pretty decent. Right, let's mod these onto the armor because I'm running out of inventory space. <laughs> Craft up five of those. Five of those. These ingredients are relatively cheap. It wouldn't be like more worth it to sell them, for example, compared to the prices we're getting for some of these armor pieces now. But this isn't like completely pointless if you're wondering. The last thing was cooling meshes, which I just need more oil for, so I'll make those as I can. Take this banded plate off and put this one on, because it doesn't matter what the mod is, by the way, just that there is a mod on it and it will increase the price a huge amount. 
This is currently going for 4,500. I can get that up further though with the consumables and stuff. And I'll just keep that uh, banded armor plate just for my armor when I want to use it. Speaking of which, oh, I've got some advanced mufflers just sat in here. I'll take those. I'll take the retracting stock mod, put it on that. Never mind, I can't put it on the M60. I always forget what you can put that on. I think it's supposed to be for sniper rifles, but who cares? Go, even better. So this one's full. Pulling mesh. Pulling mesh improved fittings. Fill this one up. This one's full, this one's full, and this one just needs one more. And any extra mods I'll just put on this random piece of leather armor I have. And the oil I'll just keep for crafting, I don't have to make cooling mesh mods out of it. Right. So that's the armor pretty much filled up. Well, I could put the single armor plate on these leather legs. There we go, 2,000 each. It might be worth crafting just a couple of mods for the M60, particularly mods I actually know I can put on the thing. So that would be like a reflex, maybe? Forged steel, five. Ah, that's kind of expensive. Four grip. Forged iron glue, mechanical bar springs. There we go, I can make a four grip. And what's another mod you can definitely put on a M60? Preferably one made with like forged iron rather than forged steel. Um, a magazine extender makes sense. Let's go get four forged iron from upstairs and also craft out a bunch of jars. Where's that forged iron? Ah, here. So now I can make the magazine extender. I can also make a shotgun extender, which seems like a good idea for my actual shotgun. We go with the magazine extender and put these both on here. This is now worth 2,000. Eh, that's kind of terrible, but I'll get the price up. All that gunpowder, and let's see how many more AP boxes can I make. 13. Not bad. Let's do 7 in here and 6 in here. So that's going to be 900 in there and 1,000 in there. So that's nearly 2,000 armor piercing 9mm, which I can use for Horde Knight. And it will be really good on Horde Knight, trust me, and I can use regular 9mm that I find during the day. Let's take the retracting stock mod off and chuck the extended tube onto this. And put two shells in and somehow it's loaded with 11, just go with it. While I'm doing all this, is there anything else I want to sell that I can chuck stuff onto? I've got this lever action rifle that doesn't sell for much, but it does have a scope. And I've got a pickaxe I could maybe the price up on. Let's see what I can do to this stuff. Oh, one thing I could do is take that robotic turret, put on a full auto mod. And yeah, that does increase the price. I could even make another extended mag and put that on there. But my workbenches are kind of tied up, so I'll just not do that. And the trader is about to open and we can sell him all of this. I'm excited to see how much I get. I've put all my other money away just so I can know exactly how much I get from it. Go talk to him. So, Magnum out. Sugar butts used. Grandpa's awesome sauce used. Let's see how much the stack of blocks cost. 26,000 dukes. Just straight away, there's a stack and a bit of dukes. That's pretty good. Uh, let's also sell the leather leg armor. And all of this armor here as well. As well as these batteries I grabbed from my storage. The iron pickaxe, the axe, these knuckles, uh, this robotic turret, the M60, the lever action, the spear, the knife, which I got up to a thousand, and this robotic turret ammo is going to cost just about 3,000 dukes. And then the other stack would give me about the same if it was finished. Unfortunately, I just have nothing to spend it on. <laughs> but in total, I now have 90,000 dukes. Not terrible. So let's see, do you have a job? Oh, I'm already on a job, aren't I? Yeah, he doesn't seem to have another Skyscraper 2 to send me to. Right then, well, I think I have everything I need to just go and do that second Brackabook Tower. I've got all this ammo. All well, my guns are ready. I've got repair kits, food. Well, I don't actually have food, but I'm fully fooded up. I ate some tuna fish gravy toast before I left. I don't think this vulture's gonna want to die. 
He's too far away. Oh, no. There we go. And I'm just producing loads of robotic turret ammo in my pockets now. That's annoying. But let's go do this job. And here we are again, I think for the fourth time in the series, it's Skyscraper 2, the easiest tier 5 PY in the game. This is not a very good landing. Right, well, let's just start it. Well, that was certainly one way to clear the bottom floor. And we've got a skill point, which I'm going to put into another rank of living off the land. We'll have that farm going in no time. pop open the end crate before I've even cleared the rest of the building. Another blade trap bundle, <laughs> nice. I don't need any more of these, I'll just scrap them for the iron. Uh, another treasure map and a bunch of relatively useful stuff. I don't need any more beakers, but it feels wrong to throw them away. There's my drona. But let's go clear the rest of the building. <laughs> Maybe I can try and use stealth for the other parts this all just go a lot smoother. Let's fight very quietly. Oh, there goes stealth then.
Ow. Alright, I think I'm done here then. Certainly don't care about any of the loot. I will grab that. Oh, and the chrysanthemum, of course. Still trying to get ready for that chrysanthemum farm, so why not? I am officially sick of the Crackabook Tower. I've done it too many times. And I'm sure you guys are sick of seeing it too. But it's pretty undeniably the easiest tier 5 by far. Actually, I would maybe say the hospital's easier, but it takes longer. What the cat dragged in. You better have coin. None of these are particularly good. But I'll take these and this and sell it back to him. Does this you have anything I want to buy? No. Fortunately they all reset tomorrow, so I'll be able to use my money on something. Hopefully, anyway. And now I am up to 102,786 dukes. That's a decent amount of money. I can't complain. But with that, guys, I think I'm going to end the episode here. I've been recording for about two hours. And I've gotten a lot of money. And I've gotten tier 5 complete. And I did the Crackabook Tower twice, I think. On top of, like, the three times I've already done it. I have now seen every route you can attack that building from and it's still a nightmare, but it's very quick at least. I am going to fly back home and probably just gather resources or something in between episodes, and tomorrow I will go around see all the traders, because day 28, I believe, is the next trader reset. I've obviously got a decent amount of money there, so I'll be able to buy anything I want. And... Then it'll be Horde Night and we'll give that base another test. I haven't repaired it since last time. I'm probably not going to upgrade it just yet. There's no real need to. It will hold fine. I have enough ammo. I have enough pipe bombs, medicine, everything I need I have enough of. So this next Horde Night will probably be a breeze. After that, it'll probably be... Oh, I see an airdrop over there. After that, though, it'll probably be... I need to get... Factory 3 done, I need to get Dishong Tower done, and I need to finish my base and fix the ranger station. So there's still four more things to do, but we're coming up on the end of the series, I imagine. I'd say the series is probably about 75 to 80% done now. We just have those last few things to do and they won't take very long. It's going to be mostly me just grinding materials and building, which mostly is going to be done off screen. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for series you want to see me do after this. I know there's some demand for me to do a Darkness Falls playthrough, but I feel like I wouldn't be very good at Darkness Falls. So why would you want to watch me play it? You know, this whole reason people watch me is because I'm good at game. So I probably should either get good at Darkness Falls or do something else. But let me know what you guys want to see in terms of series uh, is is. One second, let me deal with these vultures. There we go, let's see, what do we get in here? A ranged mods bundle, which gave me a suppressor, a scope, and a battle extender. Hmm. I'm actually going to take that suppressor, even though it's going to reduce my DPS. More importantly, it's going to reduce the amount of heat I make when I fire. Meaning I can spray it probably a lot more before screamers come. I also like the way it sounds. Yeah, we got that now. Good. As for the scope and the other stuff, I'll just attach that to something I want to sell at some point. But yeah. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. I'm over here at the Horde base because I thought I would do some repairs. I have placed in the blade traps that were broken. Let's deal with this guy really quickly. And I've also repaired the electric fence. And I discovered, well, rediscovered, because I forgot, 
that I had a load of construction materials in here. So that's good for base upgrades then I suppose, because I actually made a load of construction materials back at my base between the episodes. So the horde base is pretty much ready to go for the day 28 horde, it doesn't need any actual upgrades to survive it, it'll just need a few repairs of which I've done. So we're free to do whatever I need to do in the day. So if I remember correctly, I think today is actually a trader reset day and you know what that means in this series by now. That means I'm going to go see all of them and buy probably nothing very useful, but it's worth checking just in case. And I do have all this money I got in the last episode, which needs to be used for something. Right, let's see what you have, Trader Hugh. Shotgun Messiah, sure. Shotguns are always good, I'll grab that book. Lucky Looter 5, sure. I'm also going to buy a load of glue from any traders that have it, just because it's becoming a real issue. I'm kind of short on it. And cobblestone is so cheap, I just always buy it, even if I already have loads. Same with uh, cement. Concrete can wait, though. Yeah, so aside from some basic resources, which are extremely cheap, it was just a couple of books. It wasn't even worth taking the sugar butts for. I need to finish Art of Mining. It's really going to help me out on getting more resources. I'm already getting an insane amount of them, more than my forges can even handle. But finishing that would be really nice, so keeping an eye out for that book is a good idea. Magnum Enforcer, of course I want to finish. Uh, get the AP44 Magnum ammo. Night Stalker isn't a terrible one. I use knives and I do sneak and I do sometimes do PYs at night, so having that isn't a terrible idea. What I'm going to do is go see all the other traders and... Once I have seen all the traders, I'm going to start doing some tier 1 jobs for a few of them. Tier 1s give you a very high chance of the Art of Mining book, so getting that from, say, Trader Bob, who's still on tier 1 jobs, would probably be a really good idea, and it lets me have more, you know, traders across the world. Trader Bob here doesn't seem to have anything I really want, maybe some crucibles, but honestly I have two. I can always craft more if I need more. Let's see what he has in the rest of his place. I'll buy more glue though. Again, yeah, not worth taking sugar butts for, it's just not that expensive. Shotgun Messiah Volume 2, sure. Cement, yep, because it's a pain. And cloth again, because it's a pain. Peace be with you, friend. Right, let's go see another trader. Let's see what Wrecked has. Hunter, more damage to humans. You know, Hunter isn't actually a bad book series because it does let you get more meat and stuff. So I will grab that. Although it's like one of the most common uh, reward books you can find. I might as well just grab it, right? It's not like I'm short on money. Again, cement, cobblestone, they're just so cheap, you might as well. Coal, because I am still, you know, never finding any more of that. Right, let's go see the next trader. What do you have, Rec 2? Another hunter book. I've not got my magnum out. My nerves, friend. Another hunter book. Bullet tips. And that is literally it. Peter Hugh too, what do you have? And just some basic materials. This is very disappointing today, it must be said. And the last trader we have to see is Jen, away up in the north. So Jen has the ergonomic grip mod schematic, sure. A good mod at least. Yeah, shotgun messiah one. Magnum schematic. You know, I do need a better magnum. So yeah, I'll take that. Bullet casing, sure. Gunpowder, of course. Otherwise, I think I'm good. He does have a whole 4x4 I could buy, but I just don't really want to, because I don't need one. I will buy these rocket frags, sure. Let me just dump most of this on the drone here. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to do some tier 1 jobs for Jen here, because I'll be able to get a load of... What are they called? Books for doing tier 1 jobs, and I want Art of Mining. Here I am doing tier 1 jobs again, god damn it. So, now that I finally found my wrench, it was at the horde base, and get some snowballs. Hey, everybody wake up. Such a high level, even the tier 1s are sending ferals. Of 
course, I shouldn't forget to get the actual bag I came here for. That would be annoying. These are not very helpful. Still, it's my best bet on getting that Art of Mining book very quickly, so let's do it. Besides, it doesn't hurt to have other traders leveled, so I can do more jobs in other places. Oh, some Mega Crush, nice. Look how fast I can run. Ow. Make sure to grab this. Oh, I can't. I've got full inventory. Alright, let's go back to Trader Jen's. It may genuinely be faster to just run with the gyrocopter in my pocket. Hunter, and I'll take more. I'll take the hunter mod actually. It's pretty useful at times. Uh, hunter book. There we go. Where's my drone? Keep up, drone. Come on. I'm not running that fast. Let's take another one. Uh, this one's pretty Where? close. If you finish too high, oh, the mega crush ran out. It'd still be faster to just run at this distance. Make sure to grab this ice. Reset the POI. Grab some more eggs. Oh, another suppressor. Nice. I don't know what I'll use that on, but it's good to have it. Uh, drop the leather. Right, let's go. Um, meds? Drugs? Booze. I've got it all. Let's take pipe bombs and molotovs. You can never go wrong with those. I need to sell some stuff. If I had a okay, let's do this I last clear here. And then we'll go back and do Horde Night. Here we are. The last tier one I'm going to do today. Just hoping for the art of mining. Ow. Well, this is an Art of Mining book, but it's not the one I was looking for, but there's still the quest reward. Ben, we're running a 10% off sale for the rest of the day. Damn it. Well, still, I got money for this. Oh, and Trader Jane has more rocket frags. I hope you come back and see me sometime. Good to know. Thanks for letting me take care of you. Right, let's go back to the base. Friends. All right, we're back. Let's dump this stuff and get over to the Horde base. I might just um, dump the stuff rather than sort it out just now because I'm kind of uh, running out of time here. <laughs> I don't need all this money on me, that's for sure. I don't need 762. I don't need regular 9 mil. I don't need sugar butts or those. I don't even need my chainsaw on me, really, so that can go away. Let's grab some AP 9 mil. That should be good. Let me just get another stack there to fill it out. And some rocket frags. The rocket launcher is back at the base. I'll bring some pipe bombs just to be sure. I'll bring some antibiotics just in case I get hit because I don't seem to have any vitamins, weirdly. I should grab a little bit of concrete and probably some forged steel just to do some basic repairs. Oh shit, it looks like a screamer got into my base and destroyed two of my cement mixers. Just randomly, because they're gone, and the door's gone. Really? While well, I was all the way over there, that happened. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't think they were doing anything, so I didn't lose much. Weird, I've never seen that happen before. wonder why it died. Really quickly, just check if anything else is damaged. Nah, everything's fine down here. It just broke that door, walked in, 
and punched specifically these two cement mixers and that forge once and then died. Interesting. <laughs> uh, let me also make sure I grab a little bit of food just in case I get hungry. So bombs, materials. I've got concrete over at the base. Oh, I hear another screamer. Right. Let me load this up with armor piercing ammo and go over to the horde base. Base is ready to go though. Everything's been repaired. Everything important has been repaired anyway. There might be some small block damage. Uh, where's my drone? Ah, my drone's filled with stuff. I can't pick it up. That's annoying. Uh, let's see. Rocket launcher. Oh, some vitamins. Nice. And here's all my recog. I was wondering where that went. Loads of materials. I'll grab some concrete just for making sure I'm good. Is the drone in here? Can I take all of that off you briefly and just store it? There we go. And then store the drone itself because it's just going to get hit with like cop spit and break if I don't. Right, so I have everything. Let's turn on the generator. The fences and stuff seem like they're fine. Good. Open these up. Close this door. Make sure all my stuff's loaded. I've got 10, no, 11 rocket frags. About 1,000 AP, 9 mil. I've only got like 150 shotgun shells, but there is more in the back if I really need them. Uh, I've got 300 magnum ammo. Again, there's more in the back. But more importantly, I've got all these pipe bombs if I really, really need to blow stuff up. And the crossbow can sit at the back there. The real challenge tonight is going to be not accidentally upgrading things to forge steel. <laughs> I guarantee it happens at least once. Let's see what time is it. Let's eat some vitamins now. They last for a long time. All right, now I wait. Here we go. Or you know, I forgot to take some recog. Let's do that. You can really see the target penetration working. I'm hitting like two zombies with every shot. So when I just do this, they disappear. And of course I have them running in straight lines. So this is working quite well. Got a skill point, nice. I'll save that for fortitude. Oh, it just shreds. Where's that vulture? Oh, it's so good. I've blown too many of their legs off. That reminds me, I should check something. Yeah, I might be able to see demos tonight, so I should be careful with the penetration there. This is unreasonably effective. I love the armor-piercing ammo buff. I hear some cops. The only issue with this is it eats a lot of ammo, but ammo isn't hard to make, especially not 9mm. And we're out of 9 mil. Well, actually, we do have some regular 9 mil, right? Oh, no, I'm out. Well, when the 9 mil runs out, we have plan B. And I missed. <laughs> well, let's just hit the base instead. There we go. 
clean 10k XP from that. Of course, the machete is no slouch either. Oh, that one's dead. it are we done let me repair my smg there turn this off uh let me eat really quickly and that was probably the easiest horde night ever even on insane difficulty armor piercing nine mil is absurd especially considering how cheap it is what did these do? They took a lot of damage, but most of them are still spinning at least, which is better than last time. There we go. Oh wait, there's more bags. Ran out of space again. Uh, read that book. Don't need that hazmat thingy. Okay. Inventory is now full, but let's see, what can I put that red dye on? Uh, cowboy hat. Let's have a red cowboy hat. There we go. Get rid of that and that. Any room for these advanced mufflers on any of my armor? Doesn't look like it, that's unfortunate, but we'll hold on to it. Anyway, I got two skill points. Um, What do I need? Fortitude again, fortitude again. The next skill point can go into farmer and then I can make that farm. Which will be good for the paint as well as some other stuff that isn't too much of an issue right now. Right, let me sort out this stuff. I need to keep some stuff here and take some stuff back to the base. Let's keep some food here. Why not? Right then, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of Desert Ranger. In the next episode, I think it'll be base upgrades. I think that's just what I have to do from now on. Get an extra skill point so that I can start that farm and just do some stuff to the base. It'll be pretty chill. Yeah, that was a really easy horde night. If you haven't already, definitely definitely give armor-piercing ammo a chance. It's uh, very good, especially on sniper rifles if you take the penetrator perk. You'll get yourself a lot of um, collateral head pops with a sniper rifle doing that, but I'm not spec for sniper rifles. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. Today, I'm going to be taking all of my resources and I'm going to be getting started on some more base building. And the reason I want to do more base building is mostly just for the XP, because I want to get that farm started, and I need a level, and I thought, why not use all these materials I have to build something? Just expand this base entirely, because I have so much materials. I'll need more uh, concrete though, that's fine. So what I'm thinking is I replicate this section here on both sides of the base, and that way, if, for example, the doors break, the hatches break, maybe the blade traps are all broken. I can go round to another area of the base and use that one instead and sort of shut this one off. I'll do it on both sides. Problem is, <laughs> I made this front section a while ago and I don't remember the exact measurements of it, but I'm sure I can replicate it. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably start on this side and then do the other side. Let me see, what do I have? I'm gonna need more frames for sure. Let's get that started. I have plenty of wood available to me, I just haven't cut it down yet. So I've made a little frame here of what I'm going to do to both sides. It's not going to be the exact same shape on every side. This square isn't big enough to do that. You can think of it as each side here is going to be a mini version of this with the same functionality, just less depth. And we come up here. I'm not going to have the back side be used for anything combat oriented. It could be for crafting and stuff like that. I'm not going to have this be like four entrances just the three but i'm gonna have a little room here where you can come out here and repair this electric fence and of course you can come in here safely and repair that electric fence which needs repairs and i'll have this all sealed up obviously yeah it's gonna be the same entrance design 
but we're going to have a little bit better accessibility to the traps and stuff here. I'm obviously not going to need one on this side because that electric fence is never really going to be damaged. And I'm not going to have an, an electric fence system on the back. And yeah, I'm basically going to replicate this on the other side as well. But first, I'm going to reinforce this one, make sure all works fine, and then see what I can do on the other side. Hopefully I can replicate it or it'll annoy the hell out of me. This is also going to be closed off, but I need it to have a relatively strong foundation on the inside. So I'll reinforce some of the internal reinforcements you can see on this side. It's not actually fully filled in, just mostly filled in. I'll get all that reinforced and I'll make it look quote unquote nice. It will still be a great concrete box though. Anyway, I'm going to reinforce this, hopefully get some skill points and then we can think about the farm. So while upgrading, I managed to get myself a skill point there and that is definitely going to go into living off the land three. So now there is no reason for me to not start a farm and I should actually kind of drop everything I'm doing and go and do that now so that I get the most out of the farm, right? Because it's going to take a couple of days for things to grow. One minute before I forget. There we go. Right then, so for farm plots, we're going to need rotting flesh nitrate and clay that one's still producing those let's see farm block i can make 54 that's a decent start let's do 25 in here and 29 in my inventory when i find more rotting flesh we'll do more that will do for now so they'll take like 10 minutes to make in the meantime i need some seeds and i don't have many seeds is the problem so I should just get every seed I can and just plant them for the sake of it. Because I'm going to have enough farm plots to grow basically anything. But I'm not going to have any plants to grow is the problem. <laughs> uh, let's also do something in here. Potato seeds. What else have we got? we got one of these left. Throw that away. Um, corn. And I have already set the chrysanthemum to grow in a few farm plots I had prepped outside. I don't know if they're grown yet, I doubt it. No, they're still going. We'll have to wait for those. One thing I could definitely grow sort of just while I wait for more things to be able to grow that are useful is just a load of aloe because aloe is everywhere in the desert and I can get a lot of it as you can see. But I would love to just have a huge amount of it from couple of days of farming it while I get resources on other stuff. So I might grow aloe as like my base crop and just replace it with anything else I can whenever I can. I'm gonna run out of inventory. Let's drop this one corn, this one uh, blueberry. I'll place the drone and the drone can hold on to all this cobble I have. Powering up. All systems go. There we go. Let's go collect a bunch of aloe. You know it would probably be a good idea to grow some yucca as well because why not, right? Is this where I spawned? Must have been. Just so I have something to grow. And I'm not wasting any farm plots or any time. But where possible, I will replace yucca or aloe with any other crop that's actually, you know, harder to get. Okay, so I have planted just every seed I have. Most of it is aloe. At least I'll be able to make a lot of extra bandages with all this aloe, though. And I obviously have a few spare seeds here that I'll fill in when I can. This is going to take two hours to grow, and that's two real-time hours, so two days, basically. So, yeah, it's going to be a while before we get much back from this, but the main thing is just to grow some chrysanthemums so I can get paint to, you know, restore the ranger station. Of course, getting a lot of chrysanthemum to start the farm is going to take a while. But with that, I'm going to go back to reinforcing the base, because it was going perfectly well, and I have so much resources. I have more crafting in the base. It's more than just what I have here. The chrysanthemums I planted her are at half their growth stage, so at some point tomorrow those will be finished growing and I'll have a little bit more chrysanthemum to add to the main farm. Uh, let me grab some more cobblestone here, I just have so much. And I believe I was crafting some concrete up here as well. Yep, and these were putting out cement, and now they're putting out even more cement. And let's get some more concrete mix added to the pile there. Right, let's get back to building that base. So I'm still upgrading the base, but I got another skill point there. I'm not sure what I even want to put it into, but I did invest a lot into fortitude just to go for living off the land. So maybe making the most of 
my five fortitude while I'm here is a good idea. Huntsman is a really good perk. It gives you more meat and stuff when you harvest animals. Um, well insulated, even on a desert series, is pretty much useless. Just have more food and water. I know I'm currently starving, so haha, <laughs> but it's not a problem. I just have to go back to my base and grab some food. Pain tolerance is... There's a wolf. Anyway, Pain Tolerance is an okay perk. It's not as good as it sounds. Reducing HP loss by 5% doesn't mean like 5% damage resistance flat. Basically, if we think about it this way, right now I have, let's just call it 50% armor rating. That would mean on this difficulty I'm taking about 12.5 damage per hit. Pain Tolerance then reduces that damage further by 5-10 through to 25%. So it's not a flat 25% damage resistance. It's uh, after your armor is calculated damage resistance. So it's not fantastic, but it is decent. If you're not using heavy armor especially and you're playing on high difficulties as well, you can actually get something out of like level 5 Pain Tolerance, but I don't think it's for me. Healing Factor, I have a million first aid bandages, why bother? Iron Gut, I'm not short on food. Rule 1 Cardio, I have a Gyrocopter, why would I run anywhere? So Huntsman, I'm guessing is what I'm going to take. It's a solid perk. I would never complain about Huntsman, it's just, you know, it's not that interesting. But if we go harvest this wolf, how much meat can I get? 30. I don't even think that's more. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even remember what the base meat is for a wolf, is it? 25? Yeah, it's 25, and then you get 5 for having one rank of Huntsman, so 30, yeah. Decent. That's one extra, you know, boiled meat from a wolf. It's one rank, guys. It's not going to be that amazing. <laughs> While I have you guys here, I should probably explain what I've been doing. So I've reinforced all the base. I've been doing some preparations for the electric fences. I've decided to make taller ones than I did before, and I made it the same around there that it's the same on every side and um, it's kind of hard to describe things because it's all currently just in grey concrete but you can see the idea I'm going for here and I'm gonna have to replicate this on the other side but um all I actually need is some hatches and the south wing here will work perfectly fine and also I'll need doors oh yeah there I've also left a door here so that later on I can always come back and get into this part of the base where all these cables and stuff are it won't matter because the zombies won't be able to take advantage of this at all. It'll be entirely self-contained. If anything, they would break down the door and walk in here and just find themselves at another door on the other side. And it won't take them anywhere useful. So, yeah, this is more just a service entrance that has no connection to the main base, so I don't have to worry about zombies coming up behind me. I'm thinking about adding some rolling doors. And, as you can see, I did have to auger out one of these layers of defense for the sake of like room but now it makes sense though because there's two of these on each side and there'll be two there and we'll have plenty of room in this middle part we still have the power room here obviously as well as a little storage room and then we have these back areas here which take you around to the other side and stuff and if i expand the base out wherever i want i can take these paths out into other sections and stuff i'm definitely thinking about maybe moving all of my crafting out to a building here since we did see that um, Screamer did break a couple of my cement mixers, it would have a much harder time doing that if it had to go through vault hatches to do it. So, yeah, that might be a good idea. And then we can just turn the ranger station into a house. It doesn't need to have any crafting or stuff in it. Yeah, it's coming along, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've mostly been turning on my desk fan and blasting music so that I don't have to really think about any of this because it's very grindy. Uh, also... This is going to be the access parts for the electric fences. I've obviously done it a bit smarter here than I did in the original one. Now that I have the idea of what I'm going to do, I'll do it on the other side as well. Yeah, it's coming along. It's just going to be a matter of time. <laughs> time and materials. Time I have plenty of. Materials, I seem to have run out of concrete. So I'll go back to my base and get some food and concrete. But I'm going to get back to upgrading this base. Probably just replicating the other side and coming back to talk to you guys. Unless I get a skill point. In which case, I'll tell you what I did with that. Okay, so it's the morning of day 31, and I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update here. I've gotten all the concrete down. All the structure is built. We now have three defensive positions. 
let me do that jump again and they're even wired up with electric fences i obviously need to bring in the power doors i don't have enough electrical parts at this exact moment to put all the doors in but i have got two more doors uh crafting so let me try and walk you guys through what i've done here so i've taken out this part as i said that's going to be a door later and this switch here leads into this relay into this relay which is going to go into the doors there so we can switch that off and open it and it's the same on the other side here and i have the switch to turn on the electric fence right here obviously it's disconnected from the main power right now but it'll let me you know not use too much power i can just turn off the whole part here come to this one if say these vault hatches break from a demo i can close the door that i'm going to put here turn off the power doors there and just come to the next one I have got vault hatches crafting back at the base as well so those will go in and as you can see around here I have this open area which is probably going to stay open aside from some doors which I'm going to plug up. This is going to be another part of the base I'm not sure what I want to do with it I don't need another defensive area but maybe storage or crafting I think is what's going to be in this part here. So yeah the base is coming along quite well. I forgot to mention this part here. So here we have a way in this is completely disconnected from the rest of the base but you can see you can come in here and get to the relays under here if you need to do more blade traps and anything else I want to connect down here. There's also two openings here on either side of this one. It's not symmetrical, I don't care, with this here so that I can still grab that and quickly reconnect these. Apparently that was damaged. This isn't a danger to the base at all. There's no way from inside here to get upstairs. There's no ladders or staircases. Zombies won't have any reason to really attack it. I'm going to fill it in with a door there as well along with doors in each of these so the zombie should have no reason to want to get in there and shouldn't accidentally get in there either i've been making these iron doors for that very purpose so two powered vault doors are ready to go here i'll need to get some more electrical parts before i do the other side but this is fine for now one there one there let's connect these up using this bring it around and do this door here i'm going to power this door to this one here we go so now if we turn on the power, we can essentially, I think it's this one, no that's my electric fences, it is this one and that will open these, zombies won't be able to get in there and then we can use the rolling doors I crafted, drone, if you would kindly get out of the way, there we go. Um. Do I want any colours? Let's go for some red. Yeah, that'll do. So now we can close that. Or open it, rather. And then if something goes wrong here, say a demo explodes and all the vault hatches are broken, then we can just disable the, the doors, close that, forget about it, use this side. And as well as, we can bring in this one. So we've got these doors here that I can just... I don't want to think about it, nothing's happening, I'm not dying at all, it's fine. And of course, we have the spare for right here. Um, I'll do a different colour. Let's do blue, I like the blue one. Why did it not change? There. And then with another iron door, there we go. So the zombies should see no reason to want to go into this area. There's doors in the way, there's nothing in here, it doesn't lead anywhere. Let me go ahead and do that. This is just sort of a maintenance corridor that can be ignored. Now, let me set this all back to the way it was. So let's turn off the door. There we go. And then I want this door to be on. Yeah. So now they'll stay open when the power is connected. The electric fence switch is here, so we can turn that on and that will enable the electric fence of this side. And the same would be on this side, but the doors aren't connected yet, but that's fine. So yeah, it's it's upgraded. I can now survive demo mishaps. I will get vault hatches, they're crafting, they just take a while. Let me turn off the power. Let's go check in on my chrysanthemum. Okay, so my first little thingy of chrysanthemum has actually grown. Here we go. We can replant those uh, once my doors are finished crafting. I don't think the other farm will be done though, because I started the other one like I filled the day earlier. Check it though. 
yeah, most of it is growing, but not grown yet. Well, in the meantime, I do have some slots here for chrysanthemum to put, be put in, so we can do that. One last thing I'm going to do here is put in the blade traps. I'm not going to connect them to power yet, because I just don't need to. I'm going to make sure they're in place so that I can just forget about where I'm storing them, stuff like that. Put this here. Drone, do you want to stop being the worst today? We go. Oh. There's not enough room for two blade traps here. Why is that? Ah, I see, I see. So on this side, that makes sense. Yeah, on this side, it's a lot tighter. As you can see, I didn't leave two spaces, I left one space. So there's actually only room for one blade trap down there. Which is annoying, because now I can't get this one. I'll just wait for that one to break in a fight or something. That's fine. Let's take a look at the other side for what I probably should do on this one. Uh, which is... Put it in the middle, like that. There we go, and we can connect that quite easily. Same layout for these ones, though. And so the last thing I would need to do is bring in those vault hatches, which are just going to take ages to craft, so I won't do it in this episode. This episode has been like four hours of recording and like ten minutes of speaking, so hopefully it was still interesting to you guys. You got to see the base upgraded to its now basically, you know, 100% more effective. If a demo comes along and blows up on these bridges, I can just switch to that bridge. Not that I think that's even going to happen. Also, kind of a weird thing, but these these points here that I'm using to encase my electric fences, you could take out that top part that you can barely see. Hang on, let me jump. You see that? You could take that out, put in a full block, and put turrets on top of those. And they would be a very good height to keep the cables out of the way. Maybe we should do that as well. They're good places for turrets as well. You've got good coverage over your bridge here. And of course, turrets no longer activate demo buttons, although the robotic turret does, so watch out for that. Hello and welcome back to a miserable day in Desert Ranger. As you can see, the weather is not fantastic, but some of my crops from the last episode have grown. In fact, most of them have. It's just these chrysanthemum here, which haven't. So let's harvest all these, see what we get. Okay, so it's clear aside from those chrysanthemum over there. I'm going to turn all the corn I have into seeds. And I think I have some more corn back at the base. Let me go grab that. Okay, so I had some more chrysanthemum, some more corn, and some more goldenrod at the base. So let's turn all the corn into seeds. And potato into seeds. And then I'll plant them and see how many more slots we have on the farm here. And that leaves us with loads of aloe and yucca seeds, which are just going to be used to fill in the rest of the slots so that the slots aren't wasted. Drone, please move. Which leaves me with a lot of yucca and a lot of aloe, which I can turn into aloe cream, which would be turned into 38 more first aid bandages, and these can be held for yucca juice smoothies. So in between episodes, I went to see the traders just because I thought I've done that so many times in the series, you guys don't need to see it again. I've been buying a lot of decoration blocks, and that's just so that I can have stuff to fill in the ranger station when I get around to repairing it. For some reason, I thought I'd need cash register. I don't see why I would need that. And it cost me a lot of money. I only have like 40k jukes left. So yeah, and I also bought a bunch of electrical parts and crafted those into powered vault doors, which I'm going to go put at the base now. Right then, so I think let's go and see Trader Hugh 2 down there. He's really close to Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn, so he could maybe even give a quest to go there. I believe it's a tier 3. I'm not 100% sure what the POI is called, so that could be annoying. Um, And he'll probably have a tier 4 available in this region there, and that'll probably be enough to get me the level I need. So hopefully that all goes to plan. I have everything I need on me, and I'll see you guys over at Trader Hugh 2. Alright, here we are, Trader Hugh 2. Now, one thing I'm interested in is how far away is that? So that's 750 meters away. We can use that in the quest browser to sort of guess if we're going to the right place. 
He has one 789 meters away, which could be it, but it's also a restore power, so that would not be helpful. So it looks like he's not going to give us a Bob Spores and Carl's Corn POI. That is fine. Let's take this clear four. Rural drive in. Oh, I hate this POI. One. Just sell him a couple things I brought here. There we go. Drone holds on to this money. Yeah, let's go do the rural drive in. That'll definitely give me the level I need to get Huntsman 3. And then we can go fight Grace. Really quickly, let me grab this meat. I do still need more farm plots. Oh, and there's corn in this farm. This means I can get more seeds from my farm. That coyote just killed a rabbit. And now I'm going to kill it. And now I'm going to eat you both. That's nature, right. There's that skill point I was looking for. Let's go Huntsman. Now we're getting 60% more meat from stuff. As well as like leather and animal fat, but the main thing is meat. For me, anyway. Also, I believe it does give me more rotten flesh. If I was to find a dog or a vulture or a zombie bear. Medicine I think I saw some vitamins in there. Oh, uh, let's not play this game. There we go. There we go. We can cure the um, fatigue. This might be more magnum range, to be honest. Where are they even going? Oh, you survived. Armored zombie, of course. There we go. Maybe I should put a scope in my revolver. Then I can put a suppressor on the revolver. Then I can read all those fun comments about how you can't suppress a revolver in real life. Everyone knows, by the way, you don't have to keep commenting about it. Doesn't make you look any smarter, you're just repeating annoying things everybody knows already. Oh, I got lucky there. And of course, I missed some zombies somewhere, because that's just how tier 4s work in Alpha 20. Wait, let's see what loot we got here. Rad remover. Or anything I can even put that on. I could put it on my magnum. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, more damage. I've never found the regeneration of radiated zombies to be all that big of a deal, to be honest. Let's do this the normal way. Uh... And the award for the most boring gameplay mechanic goes to the Fun Pimps for this bullshit. What do we got? Steel tools, scope, scrap that, uh, scrap that, military armor parts is probably worth more, yeah, three would probably be worth more, right, let's get out of here, oh wait, yeah, we still have to clear out the last couple of guys around the other side of the place. I wonder, how much meat do I get from a chicken now? Sixteen. That is three boiled meats or three meat stews from one chicken. If I had Master Chef four, that would actually mean I could get four meat stews from one chicken, and that's a lot of health from one chicken if you think about it. I can't remember the exact amount of health that a meat stew gives, but I think it's like thirty. So that would be like one hundred twenty health from killing one chicken and having some corn and potatoes. Farming is not bad if you can tolerate the tediousness of it. Surprise, surprise. What do we got? Level 6 I military helmet? Sure. Steel pick or sledgehammer or magnum ammo? 
Honestly, I'll take the magnum ammo. No, wait, no, I won't. Because I can craft loads of that now. So let's just take this pick and sell it to him. Those damn See, things military helmet. Like oh yeah, cakes. much better. Let's take these off. I didn't realise my helmet wasn't already military, but that's because of the cowboy hat mod. Here we go. I look exactly the same. Let's sell him some stuff here. Actually, I kind of want most of this. Even the money would be nice. Right, let's go and do Bob Spores Carl's Corn. Oh, speaking of boars, you has boars. Apparently. Let's just, uh, let's just, uh, achoo, it was an accident. Oh my god, did you see that? He's got a gun. He was gonna shoot me. This guy's feral. I had to put them down here. You. Your boars are insane. Do we normally get 30, now we get 48. That's, that's pretty good. 96. 144 meat from that. And that's three boars. Where we're going, there's more than three boars, let me tell you. That's a stack of meat and a bit. Also kill this coyote just for testing purposes. Don't run away from me! 19. 19? A weird number. I think that gives me extra feathers from vultures as well, which is really nice actually. Feathers can be a pain at times. Although I suppose at this stage I should switch to steel bolts. They don't require any feathers. Why haven't I just done that? I can just make steel bolts, right? Am I missing something? Is there crossbow bolts? Of course. I actually did. What? Excuse me. You're in the wrong biome. Now let's see how much meat we get from a wolf. 40, not bad. So how much meat have I just got from this mission so far? So we know how much we get from the other one. Almost two stacks, just from killing things. Right, let's go to the POI and get started there. And hopefully no strange animals will get in my way and distract me for another five minutes. Here it is. Folks, if you've not tried this POI, if you don't know what's here, this is one of the best POIs in the game. Specifically, if you're in need of food. Because the whole place is made of food. It's also filled with cement and cobblestone and super corn. Fantastic POI. And I really like the redesign they did of it. They gave it a nice little outside area. Anyway, let's get started with this. Uh, I think we're on the wrong side of the building, actually. Well, that's a lot of rotten flesh as well. That was strange. The desert united against me for a moment there. So, when you come into Bob's Spores and Carl's Corn, this is the first room here, you're gonna find boars. Many, many boars. Now, boars aren't crazy hostile, usually. But they're not friendly. You see, they're, they're, they're reasonably chill. But they do fight back. And they do the same amount of damage as everything else. So don't just think, oh, it's a pig. <laughs> What's the problem? These guys will kill you if you don't pay attention. They're worth a lot of meat each. Usually they're 30, but I'm obviously boosted by the Huntsman perk or whatever it's called. Also, am I boosted by the Hunter books? That is worth checking really quickly. I am not. Okay. Well, this will give you an extra 10% from all your kills as well. So if you'd really want to make the most of this POI, getting that first would be a good idea as well. 
Um, and of course, if you really, really wanted the most out of this POI, you would fully max out the Huntsman, but that's a bit excessive. Unless you're already doing Fortitude build, in which case, go ahead. It's just a good perk. It gives you so much food. We got another boar. Also, there's loads of um, gore piles in this POI. Which are just free rotten flesh, which you can use for your farm plots, or you can use it in hobo stew. So this is more food, assuming you have a farm and can make hobo stew. This is all just food absolutely everywhere. Uh, let me kill this guy. Now, if you get unlucky and your boar falls like that way, you're going to have a hard time breaking it. The easiest part of these to break is the top. You see? You can just get in there and then chop up your boar. I say that because a lot of the times when I was doing this early on in my playthroughs of Seven Days to Die, I would like break through one of these bars. The top is usually pretty fragile. You can just do that instead. That boar went the exact wrong way. Go. Also, I shouldn't understate the importance of getting lots of animal fat from this PY, because you're going to need a lot of animal fat to make most of these food items. There's a zombie somewhere very close, I'm not sure where. Ah, hello. What are you doing? Also, yeah, regular zombies do still spawn in this PY. It's not exclusively boars. Got some more boars in this room. Ah, I probably wasted a bit of meat there. Yeah, a little bit. And we got one hiding around this corner. Let's pop out here. Really quickly, just deal with some of the zombies I've attracted here. Well, let me just come down completely. Uh, I'll grab this cobble. And there's actually a load of cement out here as well, and I don't think the PY ever takes you out to this part. So I will just grab that. Yep, cool. Let me put some stuff in my gyrocopter really quickly, because I'm already filling up on a lot of stuff here. Okay, so that is what I'm dealing with. Let's get back in there. Okay, so this is where I jumped out. We want to go over here and in here. Oh, a level 4 pistol just in a nightstand. Okay, we're at that level, are we? Got some more boars in here. Let's go ahead and shoot this guy. Oh, he just dropped instantly. Ugh, have to go in there with him. Let's, um... Ah, yes, one of the cement rooms. I'm gonna grab these for the clay. I need clay. By the way, if you do that to your own farm plots, you'll actually just get the farm plot back. You won't get, like, clay or anything. So you can move your farm plots around if you didn't know. So in this um, tube thing is your first piece of super corn. I obviously have living off the land these, so I'm probably going to get a decent amount in there. Yep, four. Super corn is a crop that isn't naturally occurring in any other PYs, at least to my knowledge. It may have added a few more in Alpha 20, but... But it's used in those really expensive things like Awesome Sauce, Moonshine, and Learning Elixir, as well as glue if you want. But it's really not necessary for glue. You can use bones for that, usually. But it's an option. Damn, look at all that meat. Right, we got some zombies in here then? No? Hm, I assumed there was. Right, so this room's just filled with useful stuff. You've got workbenches, which you can scrap down for forged iron and mechanical parts. We've got more super corns, which are going to give you three to four each, depending on your level of living off the land. If you don't have living off the land, you'll get one. Still decent, though. 
turn those all into seeds just now. That's six more super corn seeds for me. An anvil, cool. Lots more bodies. Any actual zombies? Nope. Be sure to check for the munitions box or weapons bag that spawns under here as well. Ergonomic grip, nice. I can't pick it up. Give me a second here. Four bones. I mean, if you haven't figured out that something bad's gonna happen by all the dead bodies in here, I mean, you're an idiot. Let me do this. I want this bag. Ah, a bone, of course. And then let's chainsaw this. And when you're looking in this room, you're gonna want to look in that direction there, to the west. That's where the fun happens. Now I'm gonna take it. Oh, there it is. Hello, Grace. Um. So if it's early game, just just um pipe bomb it. But I'm gonna do something a bit smarter. So I want to preserve as much of the meat as possible. But yes, that is a giant boar. Its name's Grace. It's filled with meat, and it does hit very hard. So be careful. Uh, where's it gone? There we go, dead. How much meat can I get from Grace here? Big green eyes. 160. So you'll normally get 100 meat from that, and I got 160 because Huntsman made the maths nice and easy for me there, game. And then the last thing to do is break my way out of here, which will need the chainsaw for. More bones. this chest open it's only a tier three but might as well grenade schematic not bad but my inventory is completely full so let me drop some dumb stuff i have here here we go got some attachments and explosives nice now if you want that loot really easily by the way the cage is actually the entrance to it and it's really low health so you can just do that with a pickaxe or a stone axe and get to the loot. You don't have to fight Grace, you can just come back up and you're good. Now then, let's get to the gyrocopter really quickly. Now let's take a look at what we got there then. That is... how much meat is that? That is 665 meat right there. That is 133 meat things. So that's 133 charred meat all the way through to 133 meat stews. And of course, if you have... Master Chef rank 4, that's going to be even more, because you only need 4 for those, so instead of 5, so yeah. We also got 125 plus some more rotten flesh, loads of leather, just an absurd amount of bones. How much glue is that worth? Wrong one. It's not telling me. Hang on. So with advanced engineering in a chemistry station, that's enough to make 344 glue. That's a lot of duct tape, as well as three and a bit stacks of cement, a stack of cobblestone. It's just a really good POI, along with 140 animal fat for me. Of course, I have boosted harvest rates from the Huntsman perk, so I will be getting more than just the average player would. But it's still a really good POI for this kind of thing. Of course, the drone is filled with stuff as well. You'll get a decent amount of nitrate from this as well. Right, let's fill up the gyrocopter. Oh, the gyrocopter is filled up. Um, so I am just full. Okay. So now in total, including the meat I got from other missions there, I have 908 meat, which is enough for 180 meat things, along with 181 rotten flesh, which is enough for a lot more farm plots or hobo stews if I want to make those instead. Yeah, today was a very profitable day when it comes to food and farming. I'm going to head back to the base and sort out my inventory and see if I can't make some more farm plots as well with all that rotten flesh.
All right, so I am back at the base. I'm just sorting out my inventory here, and I'm going to take all the aloe I grew earlier and turn all that into first aid bandages. 43 more should be more than enough. I doubt I'm going to run out of uh, any as it is anyway, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to get more. I'm also crafting up another 26 farm plots just to finish out the farm. So one of the things I'm still actually lacking that I'm going to need a lot of to make a lot of food is glass jars. I know it's kind of a weird one. You would kind of expect me to have millions of those, but I just don't. And it's mostly because of all the glue I've had to craft. So I am going to smell in just all the sand, as well as getting a little bit more clay, because I don't think that's going to be enough. And I'm going to make as many jars as I possibly can to just solve the problem. I'll take them all out to our river, I'll fill them, and I'll have all the water I could ever possibly need. So let's get that started. And each sand gives me four, and I need ten for one jar, so we're going to get a lot of jars from that. But I have so much sand that I could just afford to do that, because obviously I live in the desert. There's a lot of sand. Right, so it looks like I've got about 20 more slots. Let's make some yucca seeds and plant those down. Still have some slots open. Oh yeah, I'll save those for the chrysanthemum. So we're, we've got the full farm going now. This is looking pretty good. I kind of want to give it a little bit of a, like, frame. Yeah, let's do that actually. It's kind of annoying me, this transition here. There we go. I've made it look a little bit more nice. I've made the transition between the terrain and the blocks less severe. Uh, while I was doing that though, the chrysanthemum grew. Because it's obviously out of sync with most of the rest of the farm here, so grab those. Turn the rest into seats. And then we can fill out another row of chrysanthemum. We'll have plenty of paint in no time. I will at some point stop all the crops from growing and just plant them all at the same time so that they're not out of sync because that will annoy me forever. Uh, I'm going to get back to transferring all the stuff from the gyrocopter to the base. And I'll see you guys when I've got something interesting to show you. Apparently I had corn seeds just in my inventory. Oh yeah, I remember now. I gathered up a load of corn near Trader Hugh and then turned it into seeds and then stored it away. Let's see if we've got any room to plant this. If not, we could always break some yucca. I'm I'm not attached to the yucca to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, I'll I'll break some yucca for this. I don't need any more. You get the seed back, nice. I actually thought I just killed the crop. I actually, I genuinely was surprised by that. Right. Well, there you go. Right, there we go. Now there's loads of corn planted as well. This can be much better. We're going to be behind on potatoes, which seems to always happen to me when I farm. Potatoes always get left in the damn dust. There's another 200 jars crafting. Nice. What I'm going to do in the meantime, and I'm not going to show you guys this in much detail because it's very miserable to watch, is I'm going to cycle clay. And what that means is... If you craft a topsoil, a block of topsoil, 16 clay, and then you harvest the topsoil, you get more clay than it takes to craft a topsoil. As you can see, 16 to craft, and I got 39 out of it. Now that is because I have mother load 4, but believe it or not, even without mother load, that is still a net gain. I think you get 24 without mother load. You do still gain clay by crafting one topsoil, placing it, and then breaking it. You get more clay back. I'm going to do that because I'm sick of getting sand. There is sand everywhere, and I need more clay for various things. So I'm going to turn this all just loads, loads of topsoils. Let's go for like 30 and I'm going to do that for a length of time that would probably be considered by most to be insane. But you don't have to watch that, so I'm going to do this for a while and get back to you guys. Okay, so it's the night of day 33 here. I've got myself a couple more stacks of clay. Now that's not actually that fast for how long it took. But the thing is, is there's no real damage to the terrain. That would just need some blocks to go over that to bring it all up to the same level. And I really dislike disrupting the terrain by digging clay. I think it's really annoying, so that's why I did that. I also 
took a paintbrush and stripped all the paint off of the main building in the ranger station and that was just to see exactly what every block was so that I know exactly what I need to do to the upgrade in the future. I know it's pretty ugly right now but it's better in my opinion because now it's all natural materials like cobblestone and wood and concrete and stuff other than it being like 25% blue paint, 25% wood, 25% cobblestone and 25% white paint. Now it's all just building materials which I can paint over perfectly fine. There's also some burned paint I think here. Yeah we'll fix that. The way I did it by the way was doing paint surface and paint all sides and left clicking and it strips the paint away. This is a bad example because it's a really small part. We can do it to something else in a second but let me clear the paint off of this first. Anyway so I can show you exactly how this works on the floor here. This is on paint all sides and paint surface and what that's going to do is anything you paint is going to be applied to every surface of the block that you click and paint surface is going to find a continuous stream of blocks to apply the paint to or in this case remove the paint from. So if we look at this floor here and maybe jump back up and then left click it removes all the paint from the entire surface. Some blocks will be missed for weird reasons you just have to go through and make sure you grab those and then if we look at it from the underside surely there's a way in here here we go you can see it's applied to this side as well and it means you can really easily strip paint off of big areas if you want to you know figure out what shape you're looking at or figure out what paints you want to use instead you can do that and I'm just doing that so that when I do eventually get to renovating the ranger station, it's just a bit easier for me to make sense of. And I decided to do it then for no apparent reason. I have no explanation for that. So yeah, it doesn't look pleasant the way it is. Maybe you like it, I don't know. But it looks better, in my opinion, with it all just being normal colours rather than weird mixes of paint and construction materials. And of course this is on the inside as well, it looks a lot cleaner with just the removal of the weird paint. But yeah, that is pretty much all I've done in the past like hour, was dig clay, craft jars and strip the paint off of this so I could get a better look at it. Speaking of crafting jars, we have many of them now, we can craft a load more. I'm going to take these jars out to a water source and fill them up because we don't have snow to do it the easy way somehow creating water by doing this. This game's water physics are completely busted. Anyway, that's a lot of murky water. I'm gonna need some more campfires, I think. Let's see, let's place some just here. Then I have a cooking pot for each one, of course. So I am going to boil up two of these murky water sacks into regular water, because you'll need a load of boiled water if you want to make, like, stews. Let's do one, two, five here, and then one, two, five here. Need a little bit more fuel there. And then I'm going to keep a good, like, 250 for paint. And the rest I can just keep for glue or whatever at any point. And of course, I'm going to have a lot more jars coming in future as well, because I'm just going to use all the sand I put in there for jars. Okay, so we have solved the water issue. We've solved the meat issue. And of course the farm is slowly solving the rest of the food issue along with the paint issue. So several problems have been solved today and that Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn POI really helped. Yep, I think what I'll do once I have enough seeds to do it anyway is I'll do an entire crop of corn. Oh, they all just grew as I was looking at them. That was really weird. <laughs> Uh, well, let's harvest the ones that have grown at least. All right, and the rest are obviously on a different cycle. Um, how much corn did I get from that? I got seven. I got seven seeds and 120 actual corn. Great rates there, game. Great rates. I do have a video on how all of these things are calculated. By the way, I'll leave a little thing up in the top right if I remember. If I don't, um, and you want to see it comment and I'll remember to do it. So let's get 30 corn seeds and then let's get eight more potato seeds. I really want to just overpower this farm with corn and potatoes in particular and anything else I want to put as chrysanthemum. The other crops are just here to stop me wasting space. I feel like I've said that too many times. I do apologize for repeating myself. Uh, but yeah, once what I was saying before the crops 
just popped into existence out of nowhere was I want to do like a whole crop of corn and then get like a hundred seeds so that I can always create another crop of corn if I need it and then do the same with potatoes and then do the same with chrysanthemum and then once I've done all that that's going to make sure I'm going to have all the corn and potatoes and corn seeds and potato seeds if I need them as well as all the paint I could ever desire thanks to this farm. It's just going to take a matter of days because it obviously takes about two days for all this to grow which means I have to do other stuff in the meantime which I have some ideas for. But yeah I got a lot done today it solved a lot of problems for the future including paint, food, water, glue, farm plots, anything like that solved basically from one POI and a farm. Hello and welcome to another episode of Desert Ranger. Today I feel like doing a tier 5 job. If you recall earlier in the series I said I wanted to do all the tier 5 jobs that were available on the map and I did a little research and I discovered that it was basically just Dishong and the Poppin' Pills factory that was left. So today I think doing the Poppin' Pills factory would be a good idea. So he has five tier fives, let's see if we can get the factory three, which is the name. Here we go, factory three. Let's go and do that. I have all my guns, I have medicine, food, even a little bit of quote unquote water. I should be fine. Uh, how's my armor doing? I always forget to check that. We're up to 47%. Eh, for an agility build, that's enough armor. If I was doing strength, I would want to have steel armor by now, but this is fine. Steel armor would just make my build worse if I was to use it right now, so I won't, won't switch over to that. Oh, and I'm going to crash into this wall, that's fine. <laughs> so here we are at the Pop and Bills factory, there's Dishong Tower being a resource hog, honestly. This is truly the Google Chrome of this world. Just stealing all of my system's resources, but that's fine. Yeah, if you're new to this game, or you just didn't know, the Pop and Pills factory is a tier 5 factory POI, which was added in Alpha 20. So this is one of the two completely brand new tier 5s that were added in Alpha 20, but it is worth noting that most of the tier 5s were completely reworked in Alpha 20, so they're all kind of new. So we're going to tackle this like I've done all the other ones, trying to use stealth where possible, and probably relying a lot on the SMG here. I didn't bring many explosives, which could be my downfall. Let's hope not. Anything in this drone? No, right. Let's get started. I'm gonna steal this chair through a window. I'm a master thief. Oh yeah, that's a lot of red markers. There's something else I kind of want to deal with first, yeah. There's a couple of cops in this room here and I want to deal with them before they become an issue. There's one of them. Oh, the other one woke up. Anyone behind me woke up? Yes. I want to deal with them first. They're more dangerous to me. Yeah, this is usually how stealth goes. Let's just get this over with. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Oh, barrel. Let's take a gun out. No, this just seems very convenient. Ah, door. You guys won't really be able to see this because the video is locked at 60 frames per second, but I am getting some real frame rate issues from Dishong Tower over there. It's uh, really hard to play on like a third of the FPS you're used to. Deal with these guys quickly. I also see that guy over there. Right, let's get back in here. Where are those two? Are they on the outside? Oh no, they're upstairs. One second, some gun parts. Some steel armor. Some stuff. Ah, there they are. Isn't there... yeah, there's medical supplies in here. The other one fell down behind me. You dead? I think it died from the fall. You don't see that very often. The fun pimps try to, like, remove killing things with fall damage. Double loot. Coffee and medicine. Food and armor parts, nice. Ooh, 
Whoa. I have several questions. I hate the crawling thing. I feel like that's one of the most unpopular changes in Alpha 20 was that damn crawling mechanic. Not because it's necessarily a bad idea, just because it doesn't work right. They just start crawling in the middle of combat because there's like an inch of wall above them or something. Very inconsistent. They're only going to make it worse because that's the point of it. You're going to be able to go through one by one holes soon. Anybody in here? Right, when I open this, isn't there like a million zombies on the other side? I mean, we can try some stealth again. Yeah, but crossbow's just a bit loud now. Yep, I think I need to turn the loot settings down next time. This is on 100% loot and I got five items out of this medical cabinet. That's OP. I'm too used to getting nothing from every container I open. There, I've got some inventory space. Right, hang on, let me check these books. Oh, red tea. Great. <laughs> exactly what I've been looking for. Another first aid kit. Yeah, the game's just throwing them at me now. Okay. The loot in here is insane. Hello. Maybe time for a gun. Oh, hello. This last one will do double damage. I don't know if it hit him. I can't tell. Ah, too fast for you. This top area is always fun. Let me get the grenade out just to speed up the process. Need to save one for later in the PY though. Yep, here we go. And jump. Anybody else? You know what? Screw it. I'll find some more explosives. I still have the SMG to survive every situation possible. I'm getting lots of loot today. Oh, sledgehammer schematic, great. Uh, let's see. A farm. Whoa, hello. Truly am a genius strategist. Let me grab this chrysanthemum. It's useful. Eaker, and let's go. There's a couple zombies hiding behind there. Oh, are they all feral? Right, let's clear the area because clearly I've attracted some attention. More loot. Steel pick and some stuff. Uh, where's my chainsaw? There we go. Blood bags. Nothing in this container go deeper into the complex. Now where's, yeah here, guy hiding there, let's just stealth kill him. Or not. That was a five times sneak attack damage with a weapon that does a hundred damage, please explain. Uh, brawler, some medicine. Now then, can we get the radiated zombie in this room to just trigger? Or am I gonna have to do something silly like I sometimes have to? There he is, you can see, just, just between, do you see that right there? Little green layer? He's in there. I don't know if I can just, I wonder if he's detected me. Yes, he has. Oh, why'd you have to do so much damage? Rude. See, this is why I like strength builds. You can just box everyone. Right, how many zombies are on the other side of this door? Well, there's definitely one. Oh. That was four ferals. We're in the end game now. One of them's woken up. 
quietly cut his head off. Quietly. He's staring the wrong way. Okay, we cleared one room stealthily at least. Anything interesting back here? That's a dead yeah, that's not interesting. Another beaker. Hello, Feral. Hello, also Feral. I'm imagining I'm going to be fighting more Ferals than non-Ferals now in this POI. Oh. Because I know of the impending doom, I'm going to take a first aid kit for preemptive healing. If you've never seen that strategy before, that's something you can do. You can take a first aid kit so that you automatically have healing for the next few hits you're probably going to take. And the upcoming areas are kind of swarmy, if that makes sense. So I, if I have such an excess of first aid kits, I do tend to use that little cheese tactic. Put someone on this room here. Oh, a feral light, okay. Kill that with fire. Apparently wrong about which rooms are the swarmy rooms, but I'll just do it when the swarmy rooms come up. Because I have so many first aid kits at this point. It's not like I'm going to do this PY a lot of times. I believe this room is the fun time room, right? Oh yeah, super mega fun time. You're going to see a lot of zombies here. Who do we want to try and take out stealthily? Let's see, can I take a step in? There we go. So we've got some behind that door, some up there, some up there. I can see him there. There's some hiding behind all of there. I believe there's even a couple down there and there. And in that room over there and up there. This is a room that can go very, very wrongly if you play in, say, Nightmare and aren't prepared for it. Let's hope I don't colossally mess it up, though. Seems like I've randomly woken up one over there. That's fine. Okay. You wanna fight? One down, a million to go. I'm tempted to just shoot my gun. Oh, that was a complete accident, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm tempted to just shoot my gun and uh, just get them all to attack me. Look, you can see them in there as well. There's millions. Feels like it would be easier to just line them all up and shoot them. Seriously, though, this room does become an absolute hellhole when all the zombies wake up at once. So do try and sneak into it, at least. To make your job a little bit easier. Hello? Oh, let's just go loud. It doesn't seem too bad since I thinned out a bit. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. Imagine that was nightmare speed though, them all running up here and chasing you around there. Good fun. Terrifying though. I saw a bolt over here. Yeah, I mostly thinned the herd so it wasn't too bad. And there's usually radiated zombies in that fight. When I do it anyway, maybe I'm a little lower level than I usually am. One more zombie, where is he? Yeah, he didn't stand a chance. Right. Let's grab this early loot here. I've got a bunch of ammo. A spear. Ugh. Eat these peas, why not? Where is my drone? I need some more storage space. Ah, there you are. I don't have much more storage space to give, but that's fine. So there's much more to this room than just that initial swarm. I say swarm, it wasn't really a swarm this time, but usually it's a swarm. Um, there's a bunch to clear in these rooms around here. But first, let me grab the end loop. And no, I don't really know why the end loot is so easily accessible compared to usual POIs where you have to kill everybody to get to it, but here we are. That was easy, it was only one that broke. So, we have a dart trap bundle. I don't know what I get in that. I'll show you guys later to conserve storage space though. Great heist 3, make time charges. 5 first aid kits, so I mean I really could have just spammed them. Steel armor, which I'm going to scrap all this and just put all as the steel armor parts um, pile. Gold, I don't need a bandage, so we can throw that away. Not terrible, look, dart traps are probably the worst one to get though. They have their place, but they're not as useful as say blade traps or 
SMG turret. Yeah, there's another big pile of them in that wing over there. There's probably three radiated zombies in that room over there as well. And then you also have a way to get out here. And there's a zombie on top of it. And then you can just climb up out there. But I have business to attend to. There's more zombies to be cleared. Honestly, this has been a pretty quick clear. I didn't realize this PY was quite so fast compared to other ones. This could be a really good PY to grind if you've got a good weapon. Similar to Crackabook Tower. But I feel like this is easier than Crackabook Tower. Yeah, as I said, three radiated ones there. Did I keep any explosives? Did I find any explosives? No, okay. Let's use our brain here. Not that they're that dangerous. They're just ferals with extra health. But Oh, I actually just killed that. All oh, right, nice. Um, Let's see. I've got fortitude. I should use it on something. Let's get some pain tolerance. Because... I'm finding this pain pretty intolerable. Since I'm using light armor, I might actually get something from pain tolerance. If you're using heavy armor, don't bother with it though. And the reason for that is mostly just because your heavy armor is going to really keep you alive quite easily. Ow. Let's just gun this one down. Even on Insane, which is the hardest difficulty setting in the game, it's not the hardest way to play the game, but it is the hardest difficulty setting, um, getting a set of level 5 or level 6 steel armor will make you take stupidly low amounts of damage from zombies, and the pain tolerance really won't do much. But since I am using light armor, and I do still take damage, I will take some pain tolerance since I put all those points into fortitude anyway. And if you missed the video where I kind of explained how it works and why it kind of sucks, it only calculates after your armor is calculated. So if your armor is already protecting you from stupid amounts of damage, it's not going to help you any more to have pain tolerance. But my armor is barely protecting against 50% of the damage I take, so I can I can bear to have it. Let's grab that chrysanthemum back. Don't need that. 100% loot is honestly easy mode. I should turn this down next time we do a playthrough. Getting that many first aid kits is kind of absurd. Even for a tier 5 PY. Right, apparently I've missed some. Oh, no, I haven't missed some. I just haven't done the last room, which is... Uh, how do we get to it again? Oh, yeah, we need to open up over there and over here. Let's do this room first. Oh, no, this is the way back through the building. Just over here, then. Give me a break, it's a new POI. Is this a bit we've been to as well? It is. Here's that final room. I have an image of that final room stuck into my brain, but I don't remember where the door to it is. Is it this one? Here we go, this is the room I was thinking about. That is a lot of... Uh, lab people. What are they called? Scientists. Lost the word there. They were all feral. Every person in that room was feral. <laughs> Imagine that one on Insane Nightmare. Whew. Okay, and I think there's one room with like, yeah, this guy here. Being an absolute bullet sponge. Would you just die already? And apparently I missed some on my way in, which is par for the course. Whoa. Where'd she come from? Oh, of course. Where's that screamer? Oh, 
Okay, there's apparently a zombie under here. Oh yeah, I always forget this one. You would think I would learn. There we go. What did you even attack me with? You don't have arms. You just headbutt me. I can't find that screamer, but I, I'm not getting paid to find that screamer, so I'm not going to worry about it. Have I got any inventory space? No, but my gyrocopter does. One second. More zombies. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to what the uh, dart trap has. 1500 darts. That's not a small amount of iron. Yeah, they, those cost three each. So that's 1500. That's a, nearly a stack of iron there. And then plus the blade traps. I probably won't use them because I just don't really incorporate them into my base things, but it's cool. I could maybe melt down the darts and just get a little bit of free iron. There's so many zombies around here. See one in there as well. Ah, I'll hit my gyrocopter if I take that shot. Hang on. There we go. Let's get over here. Yeah, that didn't take too long at all. Relative to the other tier fives, like for example, Gashi and Dishong, that's a relatively short one as well. Although they do do that thing where they fill rooms with ferals just to make it harder, even though it will take less time. But I prefer harder POIs that take less time to easy POIs that take ages. So I like that POI. Speaking of easy POIs that take ages, there's the Shong Tower in the background there, which we're going to have to do next. The last one not to scratch off the list, but I'll do it in another video, because that is a big POI that will take a while. <laughs> I don't want to make my editing any harder. Let's go see what we get for this. Probably nothing useful, if we're being honest. I'm pretty much past the stage of needing much other than slightly better armor and maybe marginally better weapons. It's not really going to make that much of a difference to my chances of survival. Q, I have returned triumphant. A nail gun, I have a nail gun. Grandpa's awesome sauce recipe, or an M60. Um, I'm not gonna use an M60 because I've already said I don't want to use like, other than the SMG, I don't want to use tier three guns because it's too easy. And even then the SMG is really easy, but you need some kind of crowd control. Uh, So I'll take the M60 to sell, but I'm not gonna use it. And I'm not going to take the Grandpa's Awesome Sauce recipe because one, I will never craft it. And two, it's actually really cheap to buy if you just find it in a store. It's like a thousand, so it's not really worth it. Nail gun, I have a nail gun, so I'll just take some frags and an M60. Sell him. I'll keep the M60 until it's modded. Get better money for it. Out of all these parts. We had some stuff I want as well which was a banded armor plate. I'll take these first aid bandages because they are literally pocket change, but I don't need them, if that makes sense. Blood bags, obviously, can't craft those or anything anymore, so we want to take those when they're available. And if you're wondering, yes, in older versions of Seven Days to Die, you used to be able to use a blood draw kit to draw your own blood to temporarily reduce your maximum health so that you could make a first aid kit. I don't know if people really used it, though. I know it is still a feature in Darkness Falls. Ooh, some meat stew. Well, I'm going to be able to make my own, so let's just buy the potatoes, the raw meat, and that'll do. Okay, that's all Hugh has. No, I use like all my 9mm ammo, but that's fine. I have another like 20 stacks of AP, something like that. Let's go back to the base. Since I am so low on regular 9mm, I will just open up quick stack of regular AP there, just so I've got something to fire from my gun for now. I'm not going to craft regular 9mm because it's barely more expensive to craft AP 9mm at this point. Um, Let's see, that banded armor plate, do I have a slot for it anywhere? Ah, nice head. There's 2% more damage resistance. There we go. We're getting somewhere with that. We're just a very fragile character build right now. I mean, look at how many first aid kits I have. It's like half as many first aid bandages as I have. Absolute insanity. Where are my lockpicks? Oh, there they are. Some more AP 9mm. Yeah, I may just switch completely to AP 9mm. Right, so that is... That's been like 10 minutes of inventory management, which is just, you know, welcome to 7 days to die on default loot settings. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. I was planning on just mining today because I do need a lot of resources if I'm going to be renovating the ranger station here into concrete. But I forgot the seven times table and as it turns out, it is actually a horde night tonight. So here's the plan for today's episode. What I'm basically going to do is I am going to mine resources all day and I'm going to just skip straight to the horde night, which is probably the thing you'll want to see the most if you clicked on the video about horde night, which makes sense. So I am going to go and mine in my mine until 
later today and then we'll do the horde night and then after that i'm not sure what we'll do i do kind of want to get more traders up to level five as well as getting the tier five completion bonus from more of them so maybe we could do a bit of that but yeah in the meantime i'm just gonna go and mine more resources i'll see you guys when horde night begins all right here it comes Make sure these sides are good. Nothing seems to be happening over there. Oh, it sounds like the electric fence broke already. Uh, wrong box. Iron, some small amount of electrical parts, one second. Uh, is it the left or the right one I use on this one? Oh, it's the left one, okay. There we go. I'll hold up for a little bit longer. I'm being much more economical with my, uh, SMG this time, burst firing, you know. It's fun as just spraying it as it is kind of ammo inefficient. How are these holding up? Relatively well. Someone in there? There we go. Sounds like they're all running through the blade traps. That's fun. They'll find their way around, I'm sure. There they go. That's probably the electric fence is broken because the uh, cop pops have a tendency to go through blocks. Yeah, the fences are broken, that's fine. Another pipe bomb, it looks like. Got a skill point there, let's put that into perception as well. I think it's time for another pipe bomb. Last few shots with the SMG here. Let's just mag dump it. Nice. Right, let's switch to the shotgun. Actually, I think I'm not at the right range to use the bump action. Let's, uh... Pipe bomb out there. Try the magnum for a bit. That reminds me, I really should make some armor-piercing magnum ammo. It's really strong. Now, let's get some more pipe bombs out there. You really can just do most sword knights with only pipe bombs. I only use the SMG so it doesn't get completely boring.
double check the health on all of these. They'll probably be mostly fine though, I guess. Yeah, it looks... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mostly fine. Seems like it's thinning out a little bit here. Yeah, I think all that's left is just zombies that have fallen and are deciding to hit the blocks instead. And that's just because I refuse to bother putting spikes all over the place to stop them. Blade traps do it a little bit though. Anyone else? Still kicking. What were they doing down here? It sounds like they were really beating on the walls. Yeah, this is normal behavior. What happens is they decide to fall, they take damage, and that sends them into a mode where they try and attack the base. And they always like to target these stair parts. No idea why. And they also like to go for hollow areas like this part of the base, which I didn't even remember. I left hollow, but we can fix that really easily. I'll just need to grab some cobblestone. Let's see what loot we have here. I got a level 6 robotic sledge from one of those bags. It's a shame I'm not really specced into robotic weapons though, it won't be very helpful since they nerfed it. You really need to put points in for it to be all that useful. And there's not many opportunities for the robotic sledge to do much in this base, that's for sure. Oh, I do have some cobblestone here, nice. Uh, let me get up these and we'll do a little bit of basic repair work here. Let's see, concrete and let me store some stuff away. Oh, turned that into steel. Classic mistake. I can't go one horde night without that happening. There, so that little issue is solved. Fill this in. Uh, before I repair these, I should turn the power off so I don't split myself in half. Here we go. Nice to see they actually survived for once, rather than just being completely disintegrated. I'll have to bring another one over for that back area there, though. Some random attack points have gone for here. There's probably not even any point repairing the floor parts because if they break it doesn't matter, I can just replace them. I also saw a few of them targeting these bits here. I might actually put those to steel deliberately, yeah. There we go. So the front's mostly fully reinforced. Let me do this. I still haven't figured out a way to stop the cops from damaging the electric fences through these walls. I think it's mostly just a bug. I believe it could be because of the diagonal here being completely unprotected, which would mean the solution would logically be some kind of corner pole like that, but maybe one that fits a bit better. Uh, pillar. That might work. It's a block. Let's use that. I'll repair the uh, electric fences, or rather replace them because they've been completely popped, uh, and see if this little, oh, if this little block here is enough to protect them from cop explosions. I don't know if it will be though. I'm honestly, I think cop explosions might just be really buggy, and they might just go through blocks. Which you know, I suppose this game is early access. 
on an entirely unrelated note, the game is also almost 10 years old, so, you know. But I picked the worst block to try and thread the needle on there. At least I ran out of steel, so I can't do the damn mistake again. Right, let's see if that little hole is enough to fix that next week. That'd be really interesting to see. If the issue is that the damage is travelling diagonally between these two plates, then that should protect it. But this is seven days to die, and any kind of logic doesn't actually apply here. Right, let me head back to base and sort out my inventory. And then, so with that out of the way, I should grab these meat stews, just because I have them, and... You know what, let's just bring these red teas. I want to go and see some of the other traders and get their job levels up, but I'm not sure who I want to do that with. I think I've started doing it with Jen already in the north. Or is that, yeah, to the northeast there? Maybe we should go over there. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's do that. Okay, so she has a couple of tier 1 fetches I can cheese in a matter of seconds, so let's do those first. Oh, it's this place again. Interesting. And it's on the other side. Can I break through a wall and get to it really easily? Ah, you know, I'll just fight them, it's fine. Grab these loot bags. Loot case. Nothing helpful. While well, I'm here, I might as well grab the end of dungeon loot. Don't you bled out. Anybody else alive up here? Oh, we got a biker. What do we have? A pocket mod. <laughs> Not great loot, but what do you expect from a tier 1, really? Uh, did I remember to bring my chainsaw? I did. And some armor parts. Okay, that was easy enough. Let's go grab the motorcycle and get out of here. There's a wolf, apparently. So, I think it wants me to take some Molotov cocktails. I'm going to take one of those and the Hunter's Journal, just because why not? Is that enough to level up? It was. Let's just dump it into Perception again. Let's do another Tier 1 for Jen, another fetch I can do in a few seconds. The reason we're doing this, by the way, is to unlock more traders with Tier 5 jobs, and if I can get the Tier 5 complete from more traders, I can get some really, really good bonuses. So it's always a good idea to grind your traders up, even though it's kind of boring. <laughs> you do get some of the best rewards in the game if you really put a couple of days into it. Alright, it's this place again. It's like there's two Tier 1 PYs around here. Blue loot bag. Hello. Another blue loot bag. Oh, awesome sauce recipe. See, I told you I shouldn't have taken that quest reward. Let's head in here. Ooh, mega crush. Give me some. Damn it. There we go. Errol Biker. Let's take a step in here. Close that behind him. Or in front of him. That also works. Ow. That's ran too fast for you, Biker. <laughs> Another blue loot bag. He's getting all the blue loot bags today. He really hits hard. He did like 40 damage. And that's with some armor. Burning shaft and some stuff. Alright, let's get out of here. I'll take these needle and threads so I don't have to find them elsewhere. And I've still not completed tier 1 with Jen, apparently. Okay, let's do a clear. I could have sworn I had like one more to do, but here we are. Anyone home? Should really check these, they can have vehicle mods in them. But they won't, of course. Right, anybody in here? Hello?
Okay, I'm just gonna use a gun on you. Get the end of dungeon loot here. Uh, don't care about that. Just eat the soup, why not? Drone, can you hold some stuff for me? And let's head back to Jen's. Oop, some red dye on these glasses. Let's take that. On the leg armor. Nice. I do need to find a savage country just so I can get loads of dye. Get all my weapons the right color and stuff. Nine mil, and I'll take a grave digger. Okay, so... I guess I'll take the money and a melee mods bundle. Why not? Yeah, that's some decent stuff. Right, got any special jobs? Trader Hugh to the east, is that the one I already know? Show me on the map. Oh no, it's a new Trader Hugh. But we can go and see him after we've done that. I will go and see another trader who I can start leveling their jobs for as well, because Jen can't be leveled up to tier 3 yet. But first, let's go see another Hugh. Oh, there's an airdrop over here. Let's see what we get out of that. Scrap armor bonus bundle. Nice. I can sell that for a decent amount of money. Uh, I'll actually keep it until I've got loads of armor mods to put on it. Right, let's continue over to Trader Hugh. Let's raid all of his munitions boxes at least. I don't really need any of the other stuff, but I will grab this. Free ammo. And a magazine extender. Nice. How did... You fall out the sky? How did you get there? How did you do that? Okay. Hello, you. Well, you did, uh, okay. Anything interesting for sale? Not really, no. Here, have this magazine extender. Unlock this gun safe. Don't look at me, you. Look over there. Oh, good. That was definitely worth it. Here, you. Right, who do we want to go and see and level now? Because we don't need to level this Hugh. He's already maxed out by the other Hugh. So there's a Bob nearby. There's another Hugh there. There's a wreck down there. But this Bob might have better jobs because he is in like a tier one area. Let's go and see him. All right, here's Trader Bob. Let's see what jobs he has available. Surely I've done some tier ones for him in the past and this will go a little bit faster. Uh, they're all fetches, except for one. Where did I put that motorcycle? Here we go on our way. The sooner we can get to like tier fours the better. Some military boots. Are they better than mine? No. There's the and I don't see anything else I really want. Grab that though. Alright, let's go. Needle and thread, and I'll take more pipe bombs. Let's go on another fetch. Need that needle and thread. There's a munitions box under here. Where's my chainsaw? Nice. Anybody home? Someone's home. Oh, hello. No point merely fighting those guys, it'll take like a hundred hits. Oh, it's on the other side of that wall. And this is the final room. Damn, tier 1s are really tiny when you get like later into the game. Sniper and some random stuff. Get this bookcase. Oh, military armor schematic, nice. At least now I can level light armor and make better armor if I want, but I imagine quest rewards will handle most of that issue for me. At least the weather is improved. More ammo, more explosives. 
at least tier 1s are really good for getting loads of that. And I am still waiting for Art of Mining 7, aren't I? Yeah. I need to get the 7th book of that, and tier 1 jobs will give me a really good chance of getting that, so I should keep an eye out for that. I didn't actually realise I didn't have that, I've been getting my playthroughs confused, I think. No wonder my mining was so slow earlier without that completion bonus. Right, and another fetch. Is it even worth the trouble of going through the building here? Hang on. Is there not a pill case in this room? There's a bookcase. And some medicine. There we go. Alright, let me quickly... Oh, this is the one with the mines in the attic, right? Some books. Just more paper. It's always paper. Ah, there you are. Go up here. Hello. You're gonna take a while, aren't you? Ooh, these are worth popping open. Ah, just more gas. An armor mod, need to remember to keep that. Steel club, not bad. I could probably sell that with uh, some of the mods I got from the last completion bonus. Make a, ne a decent amount of money. Bipod and some 9 mil. Let's do this clear. Need to dump some stuff in my gyrocopter quickly though. Wait, where's this clear? Over there. Right, let's go. Oh, is that another ranger station? Well, well, well. Vulture. I know there's a vulture on this one somewhere. Really need all those stairs. Clear. Clear. Nice. Double pocket mod. Again, let's keep popping these passing gas containers open. A wheel. Alright, let's get back to Trader Bob's and get that buried supplies job. With an auger, it really shouldn't take very long. <laughs> okay, what do you have for me, Bob? Well, now we're cooking with gas. I'll take some 9 mil and I'll take the improved fittings. Last one is a buried supplies. Here we are. Didn't take too long. Who have I attracted? Here we go. And there it is. Yeah, 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 let's have a fight. I wasn't talking to you, Cactus. Oh, hello, dog. Really? Sprained leg. A root. Fortunately, I do have steroids. And, I mean, the infection isn't exactly hard to get rid of. Right, where is... Here we go. Of course a dog would have to randomly spawn in and decide to bite my leg. Any health bars? Yes. Here. This brain is just solved now. Right. Ammo. Oh, I'll take the antibiotics, actually, just for the sake of uh, getting that dealt with quickly. And he's out of jobs. Oh, I had honey. Let's use the honey, then. Where did I get the honey? Whatever. Uh, so that's all his jobs. Jen will get better jobs tomorrow. Let me take a bandage. Oh, yeah, I don't have physician. I'll need to take a couple. That's all the jobs I can really get done today. I could maybe go and find, like, Trader Wrecked and get one done, but I don't think that would be worth my time. Uh, let me grab the gyrocopter and I'll head back to base.
I am going to need a bigger storage system. It's completely leaking into each other because I just have so much of everything. A few of these are empty and I'm just filling them up with other stuff, but it's really annoying. Hello and welcome to another episode of Desert Ranger. Don't worry, you haven't missed any episodes. I decided to take a couple of days out of the series to just do some tier 1 and tier 2 jobs for Trader Jen to get her up to tier 3 complete so that I could do the tier 4 jobs because honestly I can do most tier 1s, 2s and 3s with my eyes closed and I didn't think it would make very interesting content. So I just got those out of the way over the course of a couple of days and I also added a basic lighting system to the house here because looking back on some of these recordings it's been very dark in here. So I have a lighting setup which is rigged to turn on at half past 8 and turn off at 5am. So that'll just keep the lights on in here. I got a basic generator bank here with a battery in case the fuel runs out. I switched up my storage system a little bit. I've got all my old stuff here but I've got an ammo storage area now because ammo was the really difficult one I was dealing with. I had to keep putting ammo in other boxes. So I just split it all out. Now they're all like basically empty. I also crafted up a bunch of paint using some chrysanthemum. I have some more here. So we'll be able to get on paint soon. I also got some meat stews and some yucca juice smoothies just with the stuff my farm has been producing over the past couple of days. I also got night vision goggles from tier 3 complete which I just thought was cool so I have these now. Um, by the way this bed design if you really want to steal it it's scaffolding plank supported and I 100% stole it from guns nerds and steals latest darkness falls video. Shamelessly. At least I told you I stole it. There were some annoying things with cables here so I placed in some lockers and I had a chair so I placed a chair. One second, let me deal with some of the locals. Looks like we had a wandering horde. There we go, that's dealt with. So anyway, as I was saying, now that we have tier 4 jobs unlocked at Jens, we can do those. And getting tier 4 and tier 5 complete from her will be really nice. I really want to get a good lever action rifle, because I'm bored of using just pistols. While I was out, I did get a skill point and I put it into perception to get me up to 5, so now I can go up to 3 Deadeye and really use good rifles, but I should get a rifle before I go into that. Uh, I also found the Magnum Enforcer book that I was looking for, where is it? I don't know which one it was, but the one that allows me to bulk craft 44 ammo is now with me. I just need more ammo crafting supplies to actually make the 44 Magnum ammo. But I have everything I need, I think, so let's head back out over to Jen's and do some tier 4 jobs. We're here just in time for Jen to open. Alright, well, let's just get on these tier 4 jobs. What do we have? We have three jobs I could probably do today. They're all very close. Fetch and clear, gun store 2. Mm. Gun store 2 is a classic nightmare POI. Let's go have some fun. Get started. Eat some meat stew to heal up that damage. This is the really fun area. Let me make sure this machine gun is loaded. Should have brought some explosives. Oh well. Nobody detected me instantly. That's a good start. Yeah, hello. Didn't bring my crossbow today, so this could be troublesome. Oh, no, they noticed me. And there's all the red dots. Whoa. Let's bring this into this area then. What are you doing? Leave the E alone. Hello. 
uh, areas not clear. Who's still alive? Hmm, I must have missed someone. Whatever, let me grab the loot first. Some ammo. Some more ammo. And gun parts. And ammo crafting stuff. Uh, I suppose I should try log picking again. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, motorcycle handlebars, 19 sewing kits. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Not great loot, but we knew that coming in here. I'm assuming the last zombies are in here somewhere? And just didn't trigger? How odd. I really don't know where I could have missed any. Did I sneak past someone in here? No, doesn't. Doesn't look like there's anywhere they could be hiding, and I'm not getting the yellow marker. Maybe the quest is just bugged. Hmm. Anybody want to attack me? Okay, I've given this place a pretty thorough once over, and I cannot find any more zombies. The clear is not complete. I wonder why. I mean, it's probably just bugged. Right, well I can think of one solution to this that wouldn't make this whole thing a wasted fair. Let me step back outside here. Definitely no zombies hidden anywhere. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the game and come back. Yep, and now the quest has reset to before I activated it. This was put in Alpha 20 as some measure of preventing exploits. This seems like an exploit to me, because now I can just start the quest and do it again. But hopefully this time actually works. Let me dump all my stuff in the motorcycle here, because I got a decent amount of loot from that, actually. If I was going to double loot NAPY, this would be one of the better ones to do it in. But it is a bit of a waste of time. Anyway, let's continue through this then. You see, nobody spawned in here last time. I assume you're the reason that it wasn't working. Whoa, hello. Feral bikers, the bane of my existence. Right then, let's go into this final area again. Please work this time, game. But he's triggered. Okay, okay. Damn it! Oh no, I actually got the sneak attack. Can I jump up here? No. Where are all the zombies? They're trying to get to me. Ow. I have to watch out for that barbed wire. That one hadn't noticed me yet. No, they all know where I am, though. Who's on this side? Hello. Level 69, nice. Will you survive that? Okay. Here we go. So we've cleared the area now, and I just have to grab the um, satchel here. So it worked that time. Who knows what happened to the last one. Machine gunner. Sidechammer parts. Urban combat. More rifle parts, nice. Some ammo crafting stuff. Let's open this. First try. Some diamonds, which I will just drop this jar for. It's worth that. Right, let's get out of here. So that took longer than expected, but mostly because I had to do it twice. Still, we have time to do the other two jobs, hopefully. 
Amazing. Pump and bow. Like your reward. And some boots. I should have taken the AP Magnum ammo there. I didn't see it until the last second. I'm terrible. Still, that works. I was thinking about it actually. Maybe I should put points into archery and use my bow for general combat. So that I don't use as much gunpowder. That makes sense. Oh, I've got a bunch more tier 4s now, of course, because I left the game. Apartments of 1, sure. Well, still, let's try and get two more done anyway. Maybe even more if I'm fast enough, but I doubt it. <laughs> Hello? Another feral biker. Leave me alone, damn it. Oh, hiding behind the curtains. Ow. I hate the screen shake when they hit me. Just annoying. Almost, dog. Almost. Oh, there you are. I saw the red dot and I was like, where is, where is that? Apparently standing right next to me, punching the wall. Ow. Well, okay, I'm on the floor now. And my gun is reloaded. Okay. Feral bikers. So fast. So furious. So much damage when they hit you. <laughs> Can't catch me. Could probably take a painkiller. Yeah, you can't keep up with me. He's forgotten where I am. Oh, I hate them so much. They have so much armor, so much health. They hit twice as hard as anything else. And they run so fast. They're one of the faster nightmare speed zombies. And I think I have Feral set to nightmare speed. I actually don't know. Either way, bikers are very fast. Every corner I turn, there's a feral biker. I really don't think there's that many bikers in the world game, I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh. You again. Another feral biker. Where? Where are you? Oh. And they're clear. Right, let's get the loot. Double pocket mod. My inventory's already unlocked. Open this up. Boots, which are slightly worse than mine, and some stuff. I hear a screamer, but that is not my problem right now. Oh wait, there's some more loot over here. Bunch of ammo. Useless. And some sewing kits. Probably have time for at least one more. Assuming it's relatively close. Well, my weapons need repairs. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Jen. If you got the dupes, Ooh. I'll make the time. A good tactical assault rifle. Can't really use that though. I'm not specced into machine guns. I was just kind of excited because I want one of these in my other playthroughs. <laughs> now let's take the Magnum ammo as well. Here for clear. Hotel 01. Oh, oh, it's this one. This one's so annoying. Hello. Oh, look who it is. Errol Baker once again. Do you have any other enemies you would like to give me, game? What even happened here? Am I actually getting hit by this? I am. Not the best strategy. Points for trying, though. Ow. Ow. 
now would be a good time to move away from him. Wing. Oh, there he is again, Luke. I know you see every zombie a lot of times, but that one in particular is annoying to see all the time because he's so fast and he hits so hard. Anybody want to come fight me? I should probably get, I should get one sneak attack. It didn't wake the other ones up because I actually killed them. Okay. Uh... You as well. Uh, they're not waking up. Okay, okay. Oh, there he is, Feral Biker. I am assuming it's Feral, just because I've not seen a non-Feral Biker in a while. This rarely works normally. Oh. Why is that not connecting? Am I hitting the... Am I hitting the pallet thing? Whatever it's called. Clearly I was. Alright, everybody wake up. Except for that biker, apparently. And that guy over there. This is really weird. I've never had stealth go this successfully before. Yep, he was a feral, right. I missed some, of course I did. Of course I missed some. I was too busy complaining about feral bikers. Bunch of schematics I already know, and some ammo. Disappointing, but to be expected at this point. Right, so where's this zombie I missed? I always miss this one now that I think about it. Yeah, hello. There we go. I don't know why I miss that one in particular. Maybe it's just a room I always skip. Hello, Jen. You are quite the daring adventure. Uh, Spear Hunter? No, let's just take these and sell them back to her. Should have put that triple armor Pokemon on the armor. Alrighty, I'm terrible. terrible. Stay safe out there. Okay, we got another right. fetch clear really Fantastic. close by. Oh. Alright, in we go. This is one of the newer POIs. Oh, hello. Let's stop wasting so much ammo. him again. It's Feral Biker. Uh oh. He's gonna pop. Also, I hear a dog. What the hell was that? <laughs> Oh, hello, there's a million zombies in here, apparently. I guess there was some barrels in here. I'd rather you didn't do that game, to be honest. But, uh, let's go down. Easy. Played from that one cop that went nuclear. Motor tool parts, medicine, parts again. Let's open this up. Learn an elixir recipe, crucible recipe, which I already knew. Plus some stuff. We can maybe go get another job from Jen and do it at night. Oh, there's a button here. That was a nice and fast one. Where's my motorcycle? Hello. Yeah, 
and line them right up and get the penetration on them. Heal knuckles, some painkillers, why not? Sell her those knuckles back. I right, I've got back time for another back. one. Do a restore power a bit. Yeah, let's I just do a restore power, problem. sure. And while I wait for even being allowed to start that job, let me transfer some stuff into my gyrocopter here. Right, let's, um, 700 meters, put on my night vision goggles. Ugh. Those are quite bright, hang on. Here we go, now we can actually see with the night vision on, that really does help. It doesn't make anything brighter, to be honest. I don't think these night vision goggles work, but they turn everything green. If you're wondering how I did that, by the way, it's just pressing F with the goggles equipped. Let's do this for a bit. I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone use the night vision goggles in Seven Days to Die except for me. Hello, wolf. Goodbye, wolf. Here we are. Now oh, the wolf wants a second round. Don't run away from me! There we go, he bled to death. Right. Here for restore power. Let's go. Spooky. Damn it. I knew closing the door would make too much noise. Oh, hello. Ow. Hi, please. Oh, she did. Oh. <laughs> the inventory isn't coated with green. That's really disorienting. <laughs> Where did all they come from? Well, you broke through that door very quickly. This is the place where you get chased out of this room, right? I should heal first. You know, let's use some recog as well. Hello? I, I, they heard me. <laughs> they literally must have just heard me say hello. <laughs> that would be a cool feature, like an alien isolation. Close for business. Hopefully this green isn't annoying people too much. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to show the night vision goggles off. Right, the first... Well, this is the ground floor. The ground floor is clear. There he is. My nemesis. Damn it. I can't believe I missed that shot. <laughs> Just a nice detail for those of you who maybe haven't noticed. It says chicken on the wall. And there is a chicken. Because they apparently killed them in the middle of the uh, the store. I don't think that's accurate. I think they took some creative liberties with that. Call me a conspiracy theorist, I don't think they killed the chickens in the building. Although I would admire the dedication to freshness. Okay, the power thingies on this floor, along with a million zombies. Um, that head. It was. Yeah. 
here we go, this is the thing. Now I stare at this for 20 seconds. But sometimes it breaks. This is real gameplay. It feels oddly familiar to another mechanic that I despise though, I just can't think what it is. Wow, I'm having fun. Then you. Are you the last guy? No. Oh, I know where they are. Whoop. Hello. Oh yeah, the loot room. That's where they probably are, right? I forgot I hadn't got the loot yet. <laughs> oh yeah, they come in that room there, and then that room over there. Also over there. That's right, break the door down. see two more red markers. Where are they? There was one of them. And we're clear. Well, we're not really clear, but we've cleared the job. Oh, my eyes. Ammo pile. Now let me get this passing gas container. Great and the gun store crate. Expanded seating. Not very helpful. This is a single player series. Who's still trying to get in here? Oh, yeah, screamers here. Boo hoo. Too late. I already got the job done. I have to say, the night vision goggles make everything much spookier. I can't disable them while I'm driving because of the headlights. Even holding F doesn't do anything. Oh, this game. This game, this game. Well, I'm just gonna wait for Trader Gen to open. God, it's dark. No, I think that's enough of the night vision goggles. We're in some light here. Let me read this. So, I'll just wait here until morning, so we can get that reward from Jen. Okay, so it's the next morning. We're gonna get that reward from Jen. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get two more tier 4s done today, and complete tier 4 in general. I think I need four. Ooh. Some actual good boots that I need. And I'll take the axe to sell. So I gathered up all the stuff I want to sell to her just because they're taking up a lot of slots in my inventory. I'm going to quickly see if there's any sugar butts. No. Eh, it doesn't matter. I have so much money anyway, it's more just for clearing up the inventory. Let me switch out these quickly. There we go, so now my boots are great. What's my armor rating up to? 51. I can get some more. Actually, actually, actually. Um... There's a banded armor plate here, next time. which I can put on the boots. And do I happen to have any mufflers? No. Right, let's sell all this stuff. Oh, we've got another two skill points. Okay. Spinicky Duke's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, I think she reset today, so I will quickly check that out. Sniper 3. Sure, I am going to be getting some kind of rifle soon, so I should grab that. Otherwise, I'm fine. Just... Right then, let's get some more tier 4s. Uh, fetch and clear 750 meters. Utility waterworks. Ah, it's a fun one. Where's my gyrocopter? Just need to check if I have any more 9 mil. A little bit. Okay, so I'm a little bit short on 9 mil, that's fine. There's always the magnum. 
Let's head out to the waterworks. Here we are. Get the magnum out and get on our way. Really quickly before I go through that door, I forgot to kill the dog outside. The foolish of me. Hello. There's also one in here, right? Let's see, can I get an angle on these guys? The ones that are under the water and are really annoying to kill? Hello. There's one. Reload. Oh, I could have got another one there, but I was. Too busy. Oh, wait. Another one. I don't know if you guys can even see this, to be honest. If you're watching on a phone screen, you're not seeing what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Here's a third one. He dead? There we go. I think I killed all the ones that are in there. That room can be annoying, with all the water and guns not firing underwater, of course. No, I think I got them all. Let my stamina regen so I don't fall in this water. Where's the third one? Oh, there he is. And there's one in here. And then there's sometimes one up there. If not, they're in here. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, I know this PUI quite well, and that's because back in Alpha 19, it was like one of two tier 4s that we had. They added a lot more tier 4s in uh, Alpha 20. I have this one memorized like the back of my hand. What is going on upstairs? Okay, I've cleared them all out. I'm gonna have to go back through the building and grab the satchel, though I wasn't paying attention. I thought it was on a normal clear. Quickly, let's grab this slip. Uh, a wheel. Okay. Medicine. Some motor tool parts. Some food. Let's see, auger schematic, knuckles, and just some random junk. Not great. Hello. Did you decide to break through? Ow, barbed wire. Here we go. I think it always spawns there, to be honest. I just always forget it. <laughs> right, we're this way. That was pretty fast, though. Well, that didn't take Military long. gloves. So glad to see and face. I'll take a ratchet as well. Sitting by myself all day. My wrench is kind of terrible. I hate how you have to modify the wrenches from your hotbar because they're used in a recipe. Real interface issue there. If I had a duke for every time let's take one more. They're all kind of far trainer. away, but let's we get this 1km one. Oh, Are these gloves better than mine? Do that job. Nice. See, I told you guys I would get better armor from these jobs. Right, let's get to that next job, and that'll give me tier 4 complete. Oh, it's this place. I hate this POI. Before I do it, let me just double check. Do I have that urban combat book? Good, so I can just stand on all the landmines that are in here and be fine. That would be an unfortunate way for the series to end. this outer area completely clear? I think so. I usually end up missing zombies on this PUI though. Up the 
stairs. Oh, on this side. Up this weird spiral staircase. Some food and some more magnum ammo, nice. You know who I haven't seen in a while? Feral Biker, where's he? We need another one. I have woke up zombies on the other side of the place, that's annoying. Can they get to- oh, are they up here? Did I just go right past them? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Let us continue. I'm just gonna run all the way through this. Before I go through there, I need to remember this room. Ow. I need a better magnum. Just thought about that. Maybe I should uh, craft one back at my base at some point. I might get lucky with this quest reward. Really surprised I've not gotten at least a lever action so far though. They're not a particularly rare weapon. Oh, that was almost bad. Isn't there a zombie down there somewhere? Ooh, medicine cabinet. Three fort bites in one medicine cabinet, okay. You say so, game, I won't say no to that. Now isn't there a zombie down here? Here you are. I'm terrible. Here we go. That open. Come up here. Let's have a fight. Oh, the penetration. You don't even need armor piercing ammo to do it, it's so good. See a red marker, but I don't see the actual zombie. Through here? How did he get here? Oh, he must have. He must have came in the window from a landmine. Okay, I'm, I don't want to go back outside yet because there's no easy way back in, and there's still plenty of loot down here. Open pills, guns, and tools. Right, medicine, of course. More medicine. Ammo and parts. Construction stuff. Ammo and mods. Get this final loot. Some custom fittings, nice, and some other stuff. Let me put those custom fittings on something. It looks like I should take out these mufflers and swap them for custom fittings. There we go. Ron, do you want to carry some of this stuff? Grab that as well. There is more loot to be had though down here. Bullet casings. Arrow tips. Bullet casings. Bullets. Weapon parts. Armor parts. And shotgun parts. Well that's disappointing but we do have one more container. That's worth looting anyway. <laughs> Ran out of lockpicks. I assume there's more on the drone. Yeah, that's where most of them went. There we go. Ah, uh, all that for some buckshot and weapon bars. Oh, hello. Right then, let's get out of here and get that last zombie wherever they're... Where is this guy? How the hell did you get in there? This game, honestly. There's another airdrop out here. Many of these things have I been missing? Just a bomb. You thought to yourself back at HQ, 
So what they really needed was 10 bomb, 2 potato, dog food. That was the checklist. That was the survival kit you sent me. Perhaps it's a message, a code. But you can call Military me helmet that's apparently slightly better than mine, but mine has four slots, so I'll keep mine and shovel. Let me drop some other stuff here. I forgot I was going to get the completion bonus. Right, so food bundle, 10,000. I'll take a battery bank bundle. And I have so much money. These aren't level 6 armors, so I'll just take the money, I guess, for the food. I'll take the money. Right, let's see. If you need medical supplies. Nice. You just got a whole electrical setup with that one. Alright. Well, that's tier 4 complete with Jen. Um, I think the game broke several times today, and it kept sending me feral bikers, which wasn't fun. But, clearing all those POIs was still pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Desert Ranger. Today I want to do some more tier 5 PYs, hopefully I can even do Deshong Tower because that is the last tier 5 on the map that we haven't done yet. But before I do that I want to upgrade my weapons slightly. I want to make a level 5 magnum? Yeah, level 5 magnum. Do I have the handgun parts? I don't, okay. I have 9 handgun parts here. And I need 15. I have this pistol, which I can scrap for some. It'll give me three. And I still need three more. Interesting. I could scrap my SMG, but I don't want to. I've made all this ammo for it. It would be a waste. Okay, well, maybe I'll have to check out the traders before we go and do any more jobs. Because I really want to upgrade to a level 5 magnum at least. Right, let's go and see the traders and see if they have any pistol parts for me. Um... Bring all this one up. Do I have any sugar butts? I do. Hey, Hello, you. Quick, oh, I had a quest to come see you, but apparently. Where is my drone? Okay. Let's take the sugar butts and sell all this junk. Oh, it won't buy any more mining helmets, okay. Have to sell that to another trader. Right, so I have almost 200,000 dukes. <laughs> I might buy a forgetting elixir. I don't know, maybe it would be a good idea. Why not, right? I could get rid of a few skills I'm not really using much anymore. And I saw a magnum somewhere in here. Yeah, I'll just buy that for the magnum parts. Or the handgun parts, sorry. Here we go. Right. So let me take a look at my skills. I can live without hidden strike these days. I'm not using my crossbow anywhere near as much. Honestly, I could probably go without huntsman... And I could probably get rid of all of Fortitude, just because I'm done with farming mostly. I already have two points available, apparently. I could live without Sexual Tyrannosaurus, but I would still need Minor 69er and Mother Load, so it wouldn't be that helpful. Yeah, I could get a lot of good damage perks. Let's take that Forgetting Elixir. There we go, 73 skill points. First of all, we need to get Agility up to 7, because that's my main combat thing. Four ranks of Gunslinger, four ranks of Deep Cuts. I'll get two ranks of... Parkour, and that'll do there. Strength, we'll get up to five. I already have a cigar, so I can hold off on that. Let's get four minor 69er, four mother load. Intellect, of course, we'll need that. I should get more dating adventurer. It's kind of not that helpful now. I should take it. Yeah, let's do it. Well, come this far, why not? Let's also get better barter up to four. And advanced engineering up to four. That leaves me with all the agility perks I need right now, all the intellect perks I need right now, all the mining perks I would need. No fortitude, so my farm is worthless. But I've also got 24 skill points to put into perception here. Let's get it up to at least 5, where it was. Let's go for 7. 4 ranks into dead eye, so I can make a better rifle. 4 ranks into demo expert to make my pipe bombs insane. What else could I use then? I've got eight skill points. Where could I use them? Probably not a terrible idea to still get sexual tyrannosaurus so that when I use my machete it's good. And then in the same vein, flurry of blows applies to machetes. And that'll give me even more stamina on kill. Leaving me with two ranks. Hmm. 
you know what, let's get running and gun. I've been doing a lot of hip firing with my Magnum and of course it's only got six rounds so that reload movement speed can be a bit of an annoyance. So let's do that. There we go. Now it's really pinpoint accurate. Hope I didn't forget anything, that would be really annoying. <laughs> do you have a rifle I could purchase from you, Hugh, just to get some parts? Here we go. And for anyone wondering, no, I'm not going to make a desert vulture because it goes against the theme of the series, which was the Magnum, right? So let me scrap That's that right. hunting rifle. I'll still need three more parts to make level five lever action, which I can make, right? Yeah. Let's go see the other traders really quickly. Go, Bob. A lever action rifle level two is not... It's, I've had that already. It was terrible. <laughs> well, I can buy that lever action and scrap it at least. Okay, let's do that. Where is it? Lever action rifle. Four round magazine. Ugh. Just, just for scrapping purposes, we'll take it. I think I had nine rifle parts and I should now have the 15 you need to craft a level 5 item. And I should have all the rest of this stuff. I would like some more just in case I get a terrible roll, but I'll live. Let's go make those new weapons. Right then, let's see. Parts. I've got my rifle parts, my magnum parts. I don't know why I'm calling them magnum parts, they're handgun parts. Just get five duct tape. I'll hold on to the rest of the cloth in case I need it for something else. And then in my other workbench here, I should be able to make a magnum. Here's hoping this lever action rifle has like a five round at least. I'd prefer the six. You have to get pretty lucky to get the six rounds. Here we go. I got a four round magazine size, ooh. Ah, you know what, I'll just stick with it. It's just not efficient to go out and find another 15 rifle parts. Um, still, it can have three mods, so it's workable. Let's give it a scope. Suppressor. And... Oh, a bipod would be really helpful. Do I have one? Yes. That's reasonably fast zooming in. Not as good as a sniper rifle, but it is also using a can of chili as a suppressor, so, you know, you work with what you have. Here's some zombies outside. Let's go test this rifle out. Where is he? Oh, nice, it just one-shot him. Nice eight-time scope on this. It's a bit excessive, but you can always zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. Oh, this is extremely sensitive, but it is getting one-hits. Nice. Ah. Oh. That was just really satisfying. <laughs> Let's get this last guy. Look at all that nitrate. That man is the nitrate janitor. Right, I'm going to move my mouse in the smallest amount possible. Look at that. This is the tiniest movement you can make in Seven Days to Die. Aiming is awful. I wonder if there's a setting in the menus or something. He dead? No. Nope. Body shots don't seem to be as effective. There we go. You know, I've always wondered about the aiming in this game. Let's have a look. It's probably not in there. It's probably in here. Look sensitivity. Let's turn that all the way down. Let's turn it all the way down and see if that helps. So, oh god. <laughs> that was really weird. This, I'm using the entire mouse pad. How many rotations is this? One, two, it's like three to do a full turn. See, you can do it like this. Okay, so maybe... Right, let's turn the look sensitivity just back up. That was fine. I don't mind how fast that is by default. But this this is fine. I like being able to turn like this. That was probably horrible for you guys to see, but that's just how I like it. And then this is normal look sensitivity. It seems like the zoom sensitivity stat should just be put to the absolute lowest if you want smooth aiming. That's really interesting. I don't know why I've never customized that. Look how smooth it is. If I just, just tiny adjustments, I can actually do them. So there's a little tip for you guys. Just turn that off. <laughs> just turn off zoom sensitivity and you can actually adjust. Let's test it with a non-scoped weapon though. Ah uh, yeah, that could be an issue. That could be a definite issue if you're not using a scoped weapon. Is there a balance? Uh, let's go for like two. See, that's pretty decent. And how is that for scopes? It's still very sensitive. But you can definitely make better adjustments. 
I don't know, I kind of, for this, I'm kind of okay with this. I have like 2,000 hours in this game and I've just never customised the aiming sensitivity. This is terrible, I'm having to throw my mouse to make these tiny adjustments. But for the scopes, that's really good. And I hip fire most of my non-scoped weapons anyway, so I think I'm going to keep that. Oh, it's really weird to go between the sensitivities though. Right, is my new magnum done? It is. Let's take a look at these stat differences, I'll just take the mods off this for clarity. 97, 85, so that's a big boost. Six rounds, of course. This one fires ever so slightly faster. This one's slightly worse at range, but it's got more durability. My magnum is a close range weapon, typically anyway, so let's see, what else can I put on here then? I could put a scope on it, so that when I do aim it, it's scoped, rather than iron sights. Yeah, that's probably the best idea, let's see, scope. I don't think you can put an 8x scope on this anyway, I need broken glass, forged iron, glue and scrap polymer. And I've probably got some jars I can scrap at least, right? Yeah, there we go. Craft a 2 times scope. Not that's busy with ammo. Here, so now when I aim in the magnum, it'll be scoped, meaning I can use it at long range if I want, but it's probably going to be the better option to use the lever action rifle, of course. Put on two of these mods. Oh, 133 damage. The armor piercing ammo and those mods, that is hard hitting, to say the least. Right, so I've got my scope now. 142 damage, that is a big scope. <laughs> and of course I can do small adjustments as needed. Well, I should get some supplies and go off to do some tier 5s. Alright, here we are. Most of the day is over. So we're going to be doing a bit of this POI at night, it looks like. That is fine. Hello, Jen. Do you have anything we interesting to sell me? I didn't bring any money. Like... It's fine. She doesn't have anything particularly interesting. Right. Let's take if a drop. A dupe for every Skyscraper to do, 01. I have a protection payment. You looking to earn some? If you finish two more jobs this week, which is ah. Deshong Terror, by the way, if you didn't know. Let's uh, pull this. Put it in the motorcycle. There we go. Well, I hope I'm ready for it. Where's my drone? Oh, it's stuck inside. That's fine. Let's go. And here it is. Shong Tower, which is the closest thing Seven Days to Die has to, like, a final POI, currently. It's the biggest POI in the game. I wouldn't honestly say it's the hardest. There are harder POIs. But this one's a real test of uh, stamina. In that vein, I'm going to bring a little bit of extra supplies that I normally wouldn't. Let me take some vitamins for in there. Some extra explosives. Extra first aid kits are probably a good idea, and extra ammo. I don't want to waste all my inventory slots, of course. Right then. With my brand new scoped magnum, brand new lever action rifle, and no SMG. Because, of course, it would be just cheesy to use the SMG all the way through here. See if we can take on the, quote, hardest POI in the game. I imagine I'll be fine. Take this back outside here a little bit. The radiators are going to get a few good hits in. There we go. And of course, I now have flurry of blows, so my machete really swings quickly. Ooh, I will take some more dye though if this place has any. Some yellow dye. Some purple dye, some red dye, there we go. And I think my boots are still the wrong colour, there we go. Uh, let's take the green. I like green magnums. It's a cool look. There we go. That missed. And she didn't hear that? What's happening? Whatever. It works. It works. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Hello? 
Oh, I don't even have to get a stealth attack headshot to kill some of these guys. There's one. Not a terrible hip fire weapon, honestly. It's not as good as the Magnum for hip fire, but it works. Anybody here? Nope. Oh, empty room. Okay. Plenty of opportunities for scrapping in here, by the way, but I've got places to be. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> Barrel extender. Hmm. Could be good if I need to take the suppressor off my rifle and want to do more long range damage. Oh, there's all the red markers. Let's go this way. There's some chaos happening downstairs. Okay, so we have five zombies, at least one of which is feral. There we go. Oh, feral light incoming. Out the window. Ah, the bleed. Step into my office. The outside, that is. Oh, hello. No need to generate heat killing you guys with guns. Close that. Right, let's head up to the next floor. Oh, the frame rate down to 50. Ah! Also, I got a skill point there. Let's put that into run and gun three. There we go. So now I can just reload at full speed while running away. <laughs> and also, the hip fire accuracy is just that is amazing. Hip fire accuracy. It's what we like to see. Ah, uh, so much stuff I could scrap, but it would take like four times as long to clear. One second. I've woke up those two, but he's he's still asleep. Thought I would deal with him quickly. Frame rate down to 40. <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm gonna break my wrist with a sensitivity, but it is really good. <laughs> because he just won't die. There we go. Oh. Ow. Inkiller time. And then double back on him. I should probably put, like, first aid bandages on my hotbar so I stop using painkillers to solve every problem because they really do cause a lot of problems themselves. <laughs> my hearing going on down there? Is there a- f is there a demo in here? Wait a minute. We need to go back through the building. Oh, the frame rate's nice over here. I know this is an interruption, but this is a rare sighting. Yep, I've attracted a lot of attention down here. Also, I forgot to clear these guys out. Interesting. Well, good thing I came back down, right? It's real! The wild demo's real! Don't kill it, it's an endangered species! 
This is the first time in Alpha 20 I've actually seen a wild demo. Previously, they were exclusively Fortnite zombies. Oh, well, I've got myself into a corner here. Any of you guys are there. Ow. Ooh, hello, dog. Hello. I'm just having a mini horde night down here, apparently. That's fine by me. This is just XP. Okay, are we done? Is it just me in the demo now? My new friend. Look at him. It's majestic. Some people might be confused. This is extremely rare. I have played... When does Alpha 20 come out? December? I've probably played 600 hours of Alpha 20, as well as many more hours outside of Alpha 20, and never seen the wild demo. I think they only spawn in town centres under very special specific circumstances like near tier fives. I had seen it once before in a Guns, Nerds and Steel stream. Alright, so I came through the building and just got back up to where I already was. Because I heard that demo, I had to go and see it. So very rare to find one in the wild. But we're here, we're continuing, let's go. That cop's gonna blow up. him dealt with them. Right, so I saw a tourist in the lifeguard chair. You really need a lifeguard for a pool that is a meter deep? Two meters over there? I mean, just saying. That was very close to ending the series. <laughs> uh, well, are you guys gonna jump out and fight me? Right, where's my gyrocopter? Or my motorcycle? I have steroids and a cast. Probably just kill her back up the faster way. I guess they don't want to follow. Understandable. Let's uh, cast this up quickly. There we go. And then I'll just need, what, three steroids? And it'll just stop it from hurting me further. While I'm here, I'll grab a little bit more vitamins as well. Okay. One second. Right then, let's pillar back up. Where did the zombies actually go? Oh, I see. Did they jump down? Did they go up? Who knows? Well, we'll deal with that at some point. Is this the... No, it's not the room that falls. Right. Where's this last guy? Ah, oh, 
Uh, time to go back up to the building again. Let's see, I'll take a shortcut. Okay, we're back in the swimming pool area. That took so long to get back here. <laughs> now we can go up instead of going down. How many floors are there? I wonder. Oh, it's, this is the room where they're in the ceiling. Right, right. How do I deal with this? Try and wake some of them up. Nothing? Try and shoot that, maybe. There we go. Ah, but they're gonna fall, of course. Now there's some below me. I think there's just a cop left now. Where is he? Oh, he's below. Here we go, that's that dealt with. Let's grab this ammo. Nice. Oh, the completion bonus is so nice. far up are we? I probably don't fall from this height anyway. That would be a bad idea. This magnum is so good. Cases. Hello. French schematic and paper. 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 Some zombies to fight. Hang on. Back to the bootcases. <laughs> Stun baton. Super core, nothing good then. Oh, unfortunate. Not that I'm really expecting any good loot from this PY, I'm just here for the fun of it. Uh, oh, are we going back outside? Don't fall this time, idiot. That. There's, a, there's, a, there's an Arlene. There we go. There was an Arlene. And there's another couple down there. And there goes the nurse. I missed. I'm terrible. I see a chicken. Damn it. There we go. Oh, there's a biker. He probably won't die from... Never mind. I'm not even going to get to finish the sentence. I mean... Looks relatively clear. Let's go inside. Oh, hello. Bunch of zombies today. Let's stab him. The last one is hiding around this corner. Perfect. Now we're into this big open area, which can tell me how close I am to the top. And the answer is, I'm getting pretty close to the top. I've probably got about a quarter of the POI to go. We're doing well so far, except for the fall. Which was unfortunate. I'm head over here, there's some more bookcases. Contact nades. I don't actually think I knew that one. Without, um, Demolitions perk. 
Pumpkin cheesecake. A bit late for that to be useful, but I'll take it. Now let's head in here. What's in here? Why is it why is it locked? Why am I using my machete? Is there not ah yeah, the red ammo box. I don't know if red's better or if it just happens to be red, but I remember that one. Alright, let's continue with Ah, through here. you get through? Oh, I see there's a big hole there. <laughs> uh, two first aid bandages will do it. More bookcases. Bubble stew, paper, paper, more paper, and tech junkie. Okay, let's continue. Some ammo. Cases, nice. How is there yucca here? How, how has that happened? I don't think that's quite where that could have grown. Anybody hiding in these back rooms here? Oh, that's where we actually have to go, I think. Whoa. They load the magnum. bandages. Does this loop back to the beginning? I think it does. I have to break my way out. Hmm. A lot of markers. One hiding behind there. I can't get a shot on his head. Oh, yes I can. Ow. Anybody else still kicking on this floor? A gyrocopter chassis schematic. Great. I think that's the actual loot room, but I won't I won't cheese it. I'll go through it the normal way. Uh let's reload this. There's a head. Got the yellow markers, that means we're coming up on the end. That means I haven't missed anybody. I would be annoyed if I had missed anybody because I've had to go through this building like three times. Munitions box, ammo, pile. My inventory is full of ammo. Right, what would be the best way to tackle this? Can we go out? We can. Out is probably better. Does this change? It just takes me back inside, okay. Um. Hmm. Hi. Ah. If I had parkour upgraded, I could get up. Oh, never mind, I'm up here. And then up here, crouch, quick look in there. Nobody hiding? Nobody's hiding, right. This is the last actual fight of this PY, I think. You don't want me to climb the ladder, but I'm going to do it anyway. I believe there is a vulture up here, though. A machete out, just in case. Oh good, murky water. That's what someone left at like the highest point in the game. Okay, so let's take a look at this from above. We've got two vultures there, three vultures there, two zombies, another vulture over there, and there's a bunch of zombies in there, there, and hiding like out of the view of this. There's one down there. Hmm. Hmm. Can I do this? Like just throw that and they won't notice? I can, it didn't really work, but let's just throw 
and pipe bombs. Just, you know, I got loads of pipe bombs, I might as well have some fun with it. <laughs> I don't think I can make like a really cool chain reaction with this, but I could definitely do something. So if I take this and throw it right at the back and then start shooting the vultures. That's a good start. And then throw some more pipe bombs down there. Just loads of pipe bombs. Another vulture I'm hearing. Okay. Some of these are very durable. And then the last one is... No, he's still stuck in the thing. Right, let's head down. My leg's still broken, it is. And then we've got one more, just stuck back here. Hello. And we're clear. Here's the loot room. Where's my drone? Because I do not have any storage space. <laughs> Dump a load of this inside here. Now we can loot the place. Do I have any eye candy? Nope, but there was like 10 vending machines in here I could have bought some from if I had any money. I was an idiot. The moonshine, nice. Right, let's get this weapons bag first. Knuckles, some ammo. Disappointing. Um, Some red dye though, I'll take that. Any of my armor need red dye? My gloves. Nice. More books. Just more paper. More ammo. More magnum ammo. More ammo. Again, magnum. More ammo. All over the place. Right, so that leaves me with this room over here, which has some chemistry stuff. Ooh, acid. And then it's just the final loot, unless I'm missing a weapons bag or something. I probably am. Let's pop this open. There we go. What do we get from the hardest POI in the game? Uh, treasure map. Okay. Also got a recipe for cornbread, some ammo, some baton parts, armor parts, first aid kit, bunker buster, lockpicks, and a security camera bundle. Woo! The worst bundle there is. Let me clear up some inventory space. Alright then, and let me... Try and get the absolute most space I can out of this. Pop that open. We got five motion sensors, some trip wires, and some electric relays, and I think I dropped a wire tool on the floor. Yeah, I have plenty of those. I can live without it. That's what you get for completing the shock tower. Nothing. As is to be expected from looting in this game, but let's go see what reward Jen has for me, because that's going to be way more interesting. Is there an easy way out of here? Careful. Uh, we can go down another level. And another level. And we can even get down another level. We'll just sprint and then... You know, that seems like a place I can go. And then down here. And down here. With a broken leg. I'm fine because steroids. <laughs> right, let's go and see Jen. If you got the dukes, I'll make the time. <sighs> that's so bad. <laughs> Gumbo stew recipe. I don't actually know that, so I will take it. And a level 5 SMG I can mod and sell back to you. That was disappointing in terms of uh, loot. I'm just going to sell that SMG. I don't care. Um, I have so much money anyway. I'll take some more bullet tips from Jen, though, and some more AP magnum ammo, because it is really good. I didn't use much of it there. Right, let's go. Brighten my day. So that was Dishong Tower. Not too bad. The lever action rifle was a lot better than I expected it to be. I really thought it just wouldn't do enough damage on Insane, but it pulled through. I am going to go ahead and go back to my base, and I'm going to dump all this stuff away, and I'm going to get ready for the horde. 
Hello and welcome to another episode of Desert Ranger. It is the night of day 42, the horde is about to come, and as you can see, I am not at either the ranger station or the horde base. And that is because I decided I was a bit bored of the horde base, you know, it was too easy. So I thought I would come out here for horde night to this ghost town, really show these zombies who is the boss in this desert. And assuming I survive this, we will get back to the ranger station. We will restore it to its former glory, and then the series can end. Because that was the last thing we had to do in the series. I've done all the tier 5 POIs. It was just the ranger station that has to be rebuilt now. But before we can do that, we do of course have to survive the small issue of the incoming insane difficulty horde. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for this horde to begin and let's see if I can survive with no base. Here we go. Too fast for you. Gotta watch my sides because they'll run into me from other angles. There's one skill point. Yeah, they're not too fast on sprint, that's okay. I should have put it on nightmare. Would have been more fun. Probably would have still survived though. Jump up here onto the roof for a second. Oh, lag. First stage bandage up. Get out my way, vulture. And then let's take a look at the situation. Oh. Hello. Yeah, that looks like a good opportunity for one of these. Hang on. Or not. Snake is following me around. up on those first aid bandages take occasional hits here and there don't want to get snuck up on out why is there so many tourists I don't know why I'm using a shotgun. I don't have any points in it. Hello.
Honestly, I didn't realize regular sprint speed was that slow. Let me get some distance here so I can heal up. Last first aid bandage, I think, just first aid kits from now on. Armor piercing ammo is really helping here. Thirsty again, of course. Uh oh. That was almost bad. There we go. Don't try that one at home. You might just blow yourself up. learn about bows apparently right let's take a look at the set oh hello 15,000 XP that's probably a decent amount of kills then Running so fast. Oh. Nothing is loaded right now, I'm an idiot. Ooh, that was close. These windows open? No. Stay time. Honestly, wasn't paying that much attention to the clock. Oh, uh, apparently I didn't take that first aid to get there. Are they all just slowly walking now? Yeah, I need to play Insane Nightmare next.
Right, let's mop up the rest of them. Looks like a bunch of them got stuck in that room over there. What have you done to yourselves? That is the last of the bags. And the town isn't even that bad. You could repair all this quite easily. I mean, it was the ghost town to begin with. Right, well, with that horde dealt with all the way down here in the western town, let's head back up to the ranger station. There's a guy over there. Hang on. Oh, there's a wandering horde. Desert. If you're wondering, by the way, I left the drone in a box at home because they always die when you do this kind of thing. Now that we've dealt with that horde, let's go back up to the ranger station and see if I can't fix it up. Okay, so I've put all this stuff away and I've gathered up some materials. I'm very short on wood, so I have replanted some trees down there. First comes to the worst, I'll go around collecting all those wild trees. Uh, so here's what we're going to do for the ranger station. I've been putting this off for a while and it needs to be repaired. I've taken down those really weak walls. Well, they were more fences than walls. And I've dug in a little bit just so I can mark out where they were originally. And where I want to build my new walls. Which are going to be concrete, so there's not going to be any zombies bashing through those. So I think the first thing I'll need to do is get a bit more frames. Let's just go for like another 300 frames. And that should really be enough and then reinforcing them might take a while i do have some paint as well yeah i think i can do this and i think i've got enough concrete and cobblestone to get it all concreted up we'll get a decent amount of xp from it as well all right where to start I can put a 7x4 door in here and that'll that'll be fine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and in line with this gives you 8. So let's do that. 7. This is a partial block that's why it looks weird. Right. We can put a gate in like that. What I'm thinking for the walls is a very very simple style because you don't want your walls to look too fancy. Because if your walls are taking attention away from the buildings then why did you build the buildings if you just want people to look at the walls right so it'll need to be at least three high so one two three and then this one can be four and then what i'm thinking here is we can bring in cube centered for a really simple wall look like this and then assuming everything lines up we can put another thick pillar every third one test that out really quickly okay so this wants to line up here rather than like that that is annoying oh there's an airdrop <laughs> i was like what's that sound it sounds like a flag what's that the parachute move this all out by one and have this yeah that's what i'll do this has to be moved out by one compared to the original wall pattern and that'll give me a nice even thing go in there. Uh, I'm gonna go grab that airdrop. Can't just know that there's an airdrop nearby and not go get it. 
could have a bunch of concrete blocks in it. That would be really helpful. Tactical assault rifle bundle. Oh my god. I have another playthrough going right now where I would literally kill to get a level 6 tactical assault rifle. Anyway, let's get back to building this uh, base here. So I need to dig out this. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm wondering if there's maybe a better shape I could use on this part here. Wonder. Let me. Let me look at a picture of some walls in real life. Hang on. Okay. So some of the designs I'm seeing here are doing something a bit like this. Let me see if I can find the exact shape here. It's kind of sort of like that type of a shape on top of their wall posts. Okay. Honestly, this is like the best design I'm seeing. Unless there's like another version of the pyramid wedge. Let me search the word pyramid. Uh, key path. Oh. <laughs> that's on the wrong block. Uh, that's a bit too pointy, I think. Yeah, you know what? I like this cube path block. It, it looks kind of residential. But I'll live. There's a lot of shapes in this game, but you can't have everything perfect still. So let me mark out this continued wall pattern around here. Yuck, I'll get in my face. So this goes perfectly. Thank God. Right, let's try this way. Okay, so it doesn't fit perfectly here, but it actually does. Just I would have to slightly change the design. What about if instead of doing that, I did this? So bring that in there. Have this wall just come right in like that as a part of this and then we can do a bit of that maybe fill this in with topsoil bring in this shape and that rotation that's oh it is the right rotation and do interesting so they do this and then need some topsoil here so I can take that out now and then we could do like a, a merging thing here let me take this out and have it just partially go into this wall but then there's this weird thing here I guess it'll just have to be slightly weird here at this merging point. That's fine by me. I don't mind a little bit of weirdness on the back side of the base. Can't be perfect. And then we come all the way around to this side. Start it. One, two, three. And then this one can go perfectly flush against this. And the problem is this wall. There's no reason that this wall can't be taken out and moved in line with this. So let's do that. One, two, three, there, and then this wall can just line up with this perfectly. Let's dig it down, give it more foundation. Cool. So that works fine. This is all clean. That flushes in there perfectly. Probably going to make this wall one higher here just to line up with how I'm doing everything else. Okay, so now I need to fill this all in to look like this. So we're going one, two, three, and then that. Let me take some of these blocks, grab that, and drink some yucca juice. Oh yeah, of course. So this uh, EY gets higher by one block at a random point. How am I going to handle that? I know how I'm going to handle that. Take that off there. Pull this down. Bring this all out. And then just take out this extra terrain. So on the outside, it doesn't look like it gets randomly higher, which probably looks better anyway. Right, and then if we dig this down one more here. Am 
my brain is very big. Does that look fine? Yeah, you can barely tell. Right, there. Dig these all out by one. Okay, so there's all the pillars in. Now I need to fill it in with the half blocks, which I'll need more frames for. Let's go for like another 300. I'm really running out of wood here. I'm not going to have enough to uh, really reinforce all this, I think. Let's take this shape and this rotation and just copy it all the way around. Okay, that is the base of this wall put in. It's kind of tall, but I think it needs to be kind of tall to be a wall, you know. The reason those words rhyme, probably. Uh, I'll need to get the gate set up in here. It's going to be kind of weird looking, I think, though. So we might want to take this out and this out and then get another full block on both of these. And then take one of these again. We'll do that because it's four tall, so it needs something above it. And then if we take some kind of yeah, this and just run it along. I'm out of frames again, damn it. Like that, it should be relatively okay. This building is really annoying because it's only half a block, so it makes it look like these things aren't aligned when they actually are. Ugh, so annoying. Um, and I'm going to take out this floor part here as well. And just fill that in. So now when I do get a 7 by 4 door in, it will fit in there perfectly. Hmm. And then just give this a little bit of extra support here with another one of those. Alright, and the reason I've done that, by the way, is just so I can actually use the entrance. I am going to pull these sandbags back because it's annoying the hell out of me. There. And I'll put the sandbags in line with this wall here. You can craft your own sandbags, by the way. Um, I might also want to get some crushed sand. How do I make, like, the sand block? Is that made in... Can I make that in, like... Oh, no, it's called gravel, isn't it? And it's made just in my inventory, apparently. Let's call it, like, six. And just rip this out here. There we go. Now it'll be a little bit more symmetrical. A tiny, tiny bit more. And while I wait for those to craft, let's take a look at this in the gyrocopter. See how the wall shape is looking. Okay, so the wall's looking pretty decent. It'll obviously need to be reinforced and painted. But it doesn't distract from the rest of the POI too much. It's very... It's not a very flashy wall, and that's kind of what you would want. There we go. Now it's a bit more aligned. Okay, so it looks like I don't have enough springs to make these doors. But springs are... Very easy to get, so I might have to add going out and getting some springs to the list of stuff I need to do. Right, let me go ahead and do that now. Let me dump some of this stuff in here. I'll go out and I'll find myself some springs. Okay, so I've got enough springs to make all the doors I know I'll definitely need. If I need more, I can always come back out. Should be enough though. So I want two 3x3 doors. 
and one seven by four door but i need a little bit more forged iron for that Let's see how the forges are doing ah perfect and then we can get the seven by four door going okay so now i'm gonna go mine some lead or actually maybe not i can make 49 glass blocks with just the lead i have here i'll probably do 49 windows Okay, so I actually need 65 windows. Let's see, I probably have something lead down here, right? Something I can smelt. Oh, there's a level 3 car battery I could smelt. I think that'll give me like, yeah, probably like 150 lead. That'll be more than enough to make the rest of it. I also have some bullet tips if I really need to smelt some lead. But yeah, that, that lead car battery will probably cover the rest of them. Um... Throw that in there. It'll take a minute and a half. What I will do in the meantime is just rip out all the windows. Okay, I think that's all the windows. So let's see how the forges are doing. Okay, let's get a bit more glass. Let's take this glass out and craft some window blocks. Um, oh, they don't take much wood at all. Right, cool. I like that. That's, that's a nice, subtle window. Now here's... One of these has to be sacrificed for science. Okay, so it just becomes that. And then can you repair it? Oh. It repairs into those. Right, right. Okay, so if I ever need to emergency reinforce my windows, I can. Just try not to. Okay, I have put in all the windows, I think. I've got some spares here, but I think that is every single window in the ranger station accounted for. All filled in with this nice glass. Okay, with that out of the way... I think the next thing to do is reinforce, but I will most likely run out of wood very soon. I have like 500 left, 400. Hmm. Well, I can always reinforce more of the cobblestone areas in the meantime. While I wait for those trees to grow out there, let me break these letters. NF doesn't make any sense on that sign because we are not in Navisgain Forest. This is quite clearly not a forest. So let's go for I and a Z. And there, much better. I Z sixty nine. Okay, I think that's all the blocks placed in. I do want to replace the, um, I don't know what you would call it, the antenna that was on here. Uh, as part of the PY, it sits along this as a bridge, but I took it out because it was just ugly. I don't know what blocks it was. I should have taken a copy of the blocks before I did it. So recreating that is going to be a pain if the blocks are even available to me. I think that was the block it was, except it was um, made of reinforced steel. And then let's get a full block. And then just something that looks vaguely like an antenna. Okay, that's not the shape I was looking for. And then... Some like thin pipe. Okay. How does that look? I have parkour. <laughs> Whatever. Um doesn't look amazing, but it's kind of the same vibe as the like the original one. For an antenna anyway. Ow. Okay, so, steroids. Blaster cast. Health bars. 
and some extra steroids. There we go. That should be good. I can barely even tell my legs broken. Right. So all the blocks are placed. Now they just all need to be reinforced. Oh wait, wait. Force. I think I think we're actually done now. Right. <laughs> so here's one three by three door and the other doors are gonna take a couple more minutes here. So I will place this first door in. I think so. Yeah, that'll work fine. Okay, there we go. Really quickly, paint up some of these other shapes that I missed. Okay, so how does that look so far? Not bad, it looks kind of cleaner than it started at least. It looks like I took the original design and just cleaned it up. I think I need to use that asphalt texture on the sides, so that looks kind of messy. Grab this, and then not paint all sides. And just have it so that the black shines over. Okay, so now how does it look? That looks better, that looks cleaner. Yeah, okay, so it looks like I've taken the original building and sort of just cleaned it up, which I kind of like. Some textures just don't look good at range, and I think that wood is just going to be one of those textures that you just kind of have to deal with it looking a bit ugly at longer ranges. Yeah, it looks kind of ugly from above, but when you get closer, it actually looks kind of nice in my opinion anyway. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like a cleaned up version of the ranger close to like the actual building. Now we just need to apply that paint to the rest of the building. Okay, so I've painted the outside of this barracks thing here. It looks a little bit janky right now because you can see the insides haven't been repainted and it's still dirty and stuff, so it looks a bit weird. I like the really clean aesthetic I'm putting it into here, making it seem like the wood has really been replaced and polished. I've missed a bit, missed a bit over here. There we go. As opposed to like this really burnt look that you can see here. Looks like it's new wood and replaced. So I think I want to use white bricks on this building like it already has, but maybe some cleaner looking ones. Or maybe even white concrete? Concrete white, how does that look? That looks pretty good. The The bricks don't need to be exposed. Obviously I'll go on the inside, get rid of that cobblestone, because that obviously ruins the look a little bit, but, you know. Should be fine. Yeah, that looks decent. Again, the cobblestone on the outside here obviously looks bad. But I will fix that as I do the interiors of these places as well. I'm going to take that same white concrete texture and just bring it over to this building. Why not? It's using the same bit texture as it was before. Okay, so I'm out of paint in my storage, but I do have some more cooking here. And I've got a little bit of chrysanthemum still. I've got plenty of murky water. So let's head out to the farm and grab what little chrysanthemum has been growing. No need to replant it because I don't think I'll need any after this. I can just use it all for paint. Okay, so we got another 60 chrysanthemum. That equals another... Um, a lot of paint. I'm, I think it's 60,000 paint is how much that'll get me. Okay, so it's going to get me another 12,000 paint. That's decent. Not. It might not cover the rest of the PY though. That would be really, really annoying. Clean up this metal here. I really dislike how this roof looks, but I don't know what I would use to fix it. Because it's kind of... Uh, I don't I don't know if... Like, that roof over there has a lip. That roof over there has a lip. I don't know if these roofs have lip blocks, if that makes sense. Yeah, they just don't have a lip block for that. So that's just kind of stuck as it is, which is unfortunate. All these blocks and there's still some random things you just can't make. Perfect, right, and the 7x4. I want that facing the other way. What colour do I want it to be? <laughs> uh, well, it will depend on what colour I want the rest of it to be, but I think white would look nice. 
Yeah, that's nice and shiny. There we have the front front gate now. That's just the loudest thing ever. Um, oh, the trees have grown. Nice. Okay, so I've used a load of my wood there to reinforce the wall outside. Oh, the lights are on. And... I've placed down doors in all the doorways again because a few of them have just been aching out over time. So now I need a little bit of raw iron. I'll do. And some of those nails and forged iron. Here's some forged iron and there's a load of nails and more forged iron. Nice. And the reason we want those is because we're going to have to make a bunch of forged iron doors. Probably like nine. So that is going to take a lot of forged iron. Also, I need to get wooden furniture as well as some cabinets and cupboards. So let's start off by getting like 20 of those and then 20 wood furniture and then here let's get some iron doors. Just Let's go for 10 and then let's get some metal furniture here as well. Let's go for like another 20. And I also need some chairs, a specific type of chair. Leather, office chairs, need leather, cotton, mechanical parts. There, so now I can also make a couple of, I can make one office chair of that, that's probably enough. And I've got a bunch of these sofa thingies already, but what about the larger sofas? Let's make a couple of those. And that'll do, so that'll keep my inventory tied up for a while with this and this. So it's going to be a few minutes before I can do much here. In the meantime, I can take some of these cabinets and cupboards and get started in the kitchen area of the little barracks type thing here. So let's finish off what it was kind of already going for. I'll paint these to be all the correct colours. There we go. I don't think there's any way for me to get appliances without using cheats, so I'm just not going to do that. Uh, let's see, I kind of want an oven, which I believe I can just paint into existence here. Um, it's an oven door, yeah. Yeah, that looks cool, and then you can do the same with sinks. Oh, that's facing the wrong way though. If I remember correctly, if you take the cabinet that has a door, and then face the cabinet the exact wrong way. You can then do that, there we go. And I also want that same granite counter on all of this. And let's go for the same red texture. Paint that on all of these. Red just looks a bit cleaner in my opinion. We'll go with that. Uh, these covered textures on here like so. Oh, that looks kind of weird, but I'll go with it. There's a little kitchen area. Oh wait, these are... There we go. That makes more sense. <laughs> Again, grab that granite. There's not a lot I can do in terms of putting appliances back in here because they just they're not really craftable or anything like that. That looks like where you're supposed to put the oven. We can have a second oven, right? One can stop me. I don't abide by society's rules. What if I need a second? Oh, it's the wrong way. Why is it the wrong way? There we go. And then... Oven door. We can use the other oven. That looks different, at least. We have a wandering horde. So anyway, ovens. Yeah, this looks kind of nice. Kind of bare because I can't put appliances in, but 
he work with what you have. I like this little dining room type area, that's fine. I'd put some lights in, but it's such a pain, and I, I don't care that much. Also, I am a very big fan of random palettes, so you may see some random palettes. We can also put down like a couch between these windows, that makes sense. I will move the forges, obviously, it wouldn't make sense to have a forge next to a couch, but just go with it. Uh, yeah, this looks like a little table. I like that. Also put one down there. Yeah, tables. Tables are things people put in buildings. I am a human. I am aware of these things. last thing that needs to be done is the reinforcement of this broadcast tower thingy. Um, I just have wood left, so it's gonna be wood. There it is, I think I'm done. The ranger station is renovated. It looks very similar to how it started, admittedly. That's kind of the point. I wasn't trying to rebuild this into like some crazy cathedral or something it was always going to be the ranger station i just wanted to give it a fresh look you know restore it make it look like it wasn't destroyed <laughs> uh my forges are still going on in here of course but i'll take those out later but yeah let's let's do a quick quick tour just in case you guys haven't quite got everything of what's going on here yet so we have the little pillbox room here where you check in i don't know Another airdrop. Oh, we'll have to go get that before we end the video. So you come in here, you've got your little barricade thing here, and the actual big gate. Is the barricade redundant if there's a gate? I mean, you don't want people to ram straight into the gate. You want them to ram into the barricade, right? I don't know. Let's go with it. We've got pallets here for decoration. This room, just just uh, a utility room for utility things. The garage is in here. We've got our army truck, motorcycle. We have the barracks, which stayed very much the same. We've got a working vending machine here, of course. We've got a little kitchen area. I would have put a fridge in, like, here, but I don't know how you can get refrigerators in survival without cheating. A little quaint little bathroom. The room of the weird beds, of course. Of course, that is still floating. And then, of course, we have the main ranger building with the, uh, the chair of doom. Wine barrels filled with nondescript carbonated liquid. Just a lounge room here with some lockers of gear. Oh no, the desert is burning down. Grab a gun and run. Whoa. Little storage room here. This room is shaped very oddly, so there was only so much I could do with it. Up here into the, the, the master room. Ignore those forges. <laughs> we have the principal's desk, the commander's desk, the me desk. I sit here and I judge the world. Of course, we have our balcony from which I can shoot anyone. I think everyone I could have shot is dead. A minor setback. This is kind of bare, but I kind of also like it being so clean. 
compared to how cluttered the like destroyed POIs are in Seven Days to Die. It feels like someone's been through here and just picked up a load of rubbish. And then we have the basement, which is just a weird stone dungeon of stuff. Uh, and then, of course, we have this weird area here. I never really figured out what this area was for. We got the IZ-69, solar panels, they're not real, don't worry about it. And the communications thing, whatever this was for. I restored the well as well, of course. We have the farm over there. The mine, I would have put the doors back on the mine, but whenever I go down the mine, the doors are always gone when I come back up. So it's just a feature of it now. Let's take a look at it on the gyrocopter. It's definitely not the coolest thing I've ever built. Mostly because most of it isn't built. It was <coughs> pre-built. <laughs> no, um, but it's not the worst thing I've ever made. Looks fine to me. Let's go get that airdrop wherever it was to the east here. Pump shotgun bundle, level 6, nice. And with that, I think we're done. I did all the tier 5 POIs that were on the map. I built a horde base, which has not had very many troubles. I even survived one of the hordes just on my own in the street. I rebuilt the ranger station from the crumbling ruin it was. Okay, it wasn't actually that much of a ruin. I only had to replace like 20 blocks total, but still. Now it has a much stronger wall around it, so I don't have to deal with zombies constantly flooding in either. Uh, still didn't want to survive a horde night here though. No, the concrete isn't that strong. That's what that base is for. But yeah, I think with that, I just have to end the series here, guys, because what else do I do? Um, apparently I drink some yucca juice. I could sit here and collect every book in the game, but honestly, do you really want to watch me drive around every trader every four days until day 80? Just getting all the books, is that what you want to watch? I don't think it is. I could keep grinding all the traders up to level 5, but would it be any different from all the other times I did all those POIs in this series? Not really. <laughs> Sure, I could turn the difficulty up, but why not just start a new series if I'm going to do that, right? Yeah, I think I'm done with this series. At least it came to a satisfying conclusion, unlike Permafrost, the Survival Guide, and the unnamed Alpha 19 modded series, which all ended abruptly because I got bored. At least this didn't end abruptly. I set goals and I achieved them. And that is the end of Desert Ranger. I went on to explain some stuff that's really of no relevance to the channel one year later. So I just cut it out. If you got this far into a 12 hour video and you're still alive, make a comment featuring the word naturally. That's your password to being a cool kid like me. But seriously, thank you so much for watching all of this or just keeping it on in the background and giving me a huge amount of ad revenue single-handedly. Doubly so if you're a YouTube Premium subscriber, you probably just gave me like $30. I'm kidding, I have no idea what the conversion rate is there, but it's really high compared to a normal viewer. And hey, even if you're running an ad blocker, thanks for watching anyway, it does still help the video reach more people. But yeah, I won't be taking up any more of your time. I really do hope you enjoyed this again, or if it was your first time. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.